Hello, we are back. Hello, everybody. We are back for the finals of the Classic WoW Mock Garage, the OTK Starforge Classic WoW Mock Garage, and I'm here with Zaryu uh, joining us today, and it's going to be phenomenal. 63 people will die today, and it's going to be great. How do you feel, Zaryu? I'm so excited that we get to watch like actual Makaras, actual blood being spilled all day long. And I felt like a kid on Christmas morning looking at the brackets. Like uh, I didn't, I, I don't stay up very late, so I didn't see him last night, but I saw him this morning and I'm like, oh my gosh, like just like thinking, okay, who's gonna win this matchup? And if they win that matchup, what's the second round gonna look like? Then if they win that, what's the third round? Like I'm trying to piece this all together in my mind and I'm just authentically excited to be here. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, like I, uh, I haven't looked at the brackets yet because I wanted to save it on stream. I want. Oh, I you're in for a treat, bro. Yeah, I wanted to go over it in the pre-show here. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. You're, you're, you're hyping it up pretty good. Uh, I've seen people, people in chat were saying like, "Oh, the brackets look crazy," and I'm like, "Hold on, I haven't seen it yet. I want to, I want to see it live." So, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's gonna be very, very exciting. I'm, I'm excited. Yesterday was unreal. Uh, the turnout was unreal. People loved it, and. Uh, Man, I'm just, I'm so proud of the event so far, right? I, I know I, I, I thanked everybody like a thousand times yesterday, but I, I mean it from like the bottom of my heart. Like I, I've, I've been wanting to, to put on a, a, a big event like this for a long time now and to, to be able to pull this off and for it to go as well as it has. And, and I mean, it's, it was uh, from, from our perspective, it was basically seamless yesterday. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that was an unbelievable job from, from the, the, the team the uh, the volunteers from uh, from production, everybody on the back end, just putting an insane amount of work. Here they are, they're they're summoning Ooh. right now. They're getting our guys to our dual spots right now. Um, so yeah, it's it's been pretty amazing, man. Yeah, it's been pretty amazing. So I'm I'm very proud of uh, uh, us being able to put this whole thing together, and I'm proud of the team, and uh, I'm glad to have everybody involved and everybody being so supportive. I'm happy to have you here, Zaryu. So yeah, it's been uh, it's been great. Well, thanks for having me, man. And I agree with you. I was talking to production this morning, I was talking to Peckies, and I was like, how did you guys actually pull this off? Like, I'm a CIS major, so I'm trying to think, like, all of these different scenes and the, like, how they wrapped it in with your stream and my stream and, like, everything's so flawless. I'm just like, this is impressive. This is awesome. And, uh, man, I would love to do something like this in the future. It's just perfect. And yeah. Uh, yesterday, yeah, everything seemed really smooth. There was pretty much no drama, um, and we were expecting something could go wrong but not much i did want to clarify showbeck unfortunately did not make it on broadcast yesterday we we misspoke just a little bit so the makara that showbeck was in yesterday was more about the loser not making it showbeck was one of the rogues that went three and two the rogue bracket was very competitive a lot of the rogues went four and one so for the three and two ties what we did with this Swiss bracket is you count the wins of the opponents that they got their three wins against and the player with the hardest bracket based on wins will move forward and the players with the least, uh, like the easiest bracket, so to speak, did unfortunately did not make it. That was uh, our mistake. That was my mistake. And uh, I just wanted to clarify that for everyone. I apologize to Showback and his community for that misunderstanding there that is on us. And uh, congrats to everyone that made it. We do have our top eight, though, for each class. And uh, we can look at the brackets here in a minute. Uh, I'm, I'm excited for you as fan to see the brackets because... Yeah. It's here it is. Oh my here gosh, Deco and Flixy right off the bat, dude. Yeah. Okay, look at that. You got LT X Zane. Damn. Okay. You got you got Savix versus C Do. Damn, dude. This is gonna be great. Okay. Yes. Mez versus PS Hero, Spo and Bobka, Bean and Relay, Spicy and Proxy, Sot. Sot is another player that we have not talked about that much, but he went 5-0 and oh as a priest. He's the top-ranked priest going into right. today, so I'm really excited to see more of his duels. Um, yeah. yeah, man. Fooch and Mad Knox. Fooch, is, he's, that's, another, uh, that's another Crusader. That's another one of my guildies. Look at that. That's good stuff. Perplexity versus XN. Payo versus Flops. Zero versus DJ. And we got Steven a versus at the bottom. Yeah, we have a couple mirrors. And then I think Snuts is is towards the bottom. And there's there's a few things I immediately like recognize in this bracket that like uh -huh. we just have to point out. So 
towards the top of the bracket like if i'm zico this is the perfect bracket to make the run in he I, I'm, I'm i think as a mage you want to fight shamans rogues hunters and warriors as a mage you want to avoid druids priests and warlocks and zico has only classes he wants in his entire bracket besides spo um yeah spo is supposed to true so if he can dodge spo bro this could be zico's tournament yeah i mean he's got like, like you said he's got a pretty much a uh it's not a free shot but he's ha he has like the he has the rock paper scissors in his favor yes essentially I would be uh, happy if I was Zico. Like I would be mad fighting a lock first round or Druid or something. Yeah, that would that would if you're a mage, that that's gonna be kind of rough. Um, but like, yeah, I mean, you've got either either hunter or shaman uh, for your first two rounds total, yep. and then going down from there. Uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, it'll be either. I mean, dude, we might get a Zico Savix rematch. Yeah, that'd be dude, great to watch. A Zico, dude, that Zico. I went back and I watched that Zico Savix duel. And my gosh, that was amazing, dude. Yeah. That was absolutely amazing. I would love to see a Zico Savix rematch because that thing was like this close. The, it, oh, that would be amazing. So it could have gone either way, man. It was super, super close. Both these guys are playing at absolute skill cap. And yeah, I, mean, I would love to see that again. Sidu versus Savix round one in that A3 uh, position there. So Stadman is Sidu uh, for the viewers, maybe. Uh, wondering and that CD is playing enhance so it's going to be enhance versus rogue now I'm not completely versed on this specific matchup but I would think it would be rogue favored um, it seems like an uphill yeah. battle for the shaman so I don't know how happy CD is about this specific matchup um, but that's the way the dice rolls sometimes you know yeah I mean it's just that's, that's the thing and, and we talked about bracket RNG yesterday right we talked about bracket RNG yesterday and and uh, I mean, that's just that's just it. I mean, it's it's sometimes you you get a really good bracket and sometimes you, you know, it's hey, it's an uphill battle right off the gate or right off the bat. So right out of the gate. Um, so, yeah, no, I mean, it's uh, I, I think CDU might have kind of kind of drawn the short end of the stick here potentially. But uh, I mean, it's CDU, right? I mean, he's, yeah. God. he's 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 one of the most like he's one of the most decorated players ever. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't know uh, if you watched the recent AWC finals. Um, uh, I mean, you might have been traveling or there's a lot going on, but mm -hmm. with the AWC finals, they were they were down as a best of seven. They were down. Oh, three against oh, Luminosity. I, heard about it. I didn't watch it, but I heard about it afterwards. Yeah, they yeah, reverse yeah, yeah. swept them. I was watching it live, running around my kitchen, screaming my <laughs> like, yeah. screaming at the top of my lungs. It was great, man. They, so, yeah, never count c out. It might be a, a hard matchup for them, but, uh, you know, it's c -Doo. You know, it's, it's hard for me, though, in this position as fan, because, oh, here it is. Oh, there you what? go. You have the clip ready. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Look at that emotion, man. You'll love to it, see dude. it. AWC champion. He can't believe yeah. it on the reverse sweep. Yeah, um, but it's great, man. Dude, it's, it's so hard here as a as a caster and as a host, because Savix is also my good friend. You know Yo, what I mean? Yeah. See either well, of them lose. I mean, that's one of the things, dude. It's it's like we've we've been around for so long at this point. A lot of a lot of the people in the WoW community, not not that there's uh not people that that come in new all the time, but there are people that have been around for just years and years and years. And at, at this point, like we're all friends. Like everybody knows yeah. each other, and and even if you're not like close with somebody, like you you know them in passing, and it's very easy to like get to know somebody. So um so yeah, I mean it's it's uh that's just how it is, right? Like. We we know like half these guys competing at this point, you know. At least in in some way or another, we've like played against them in arenas. We've raided with them in classic. We've we've done something with with them or against them, and uh, it's cool to see. So yeah, cool to see how how well everybody's doing. I was just talking to Shannon this morning on my walk, saying that exact same thing. I've known all these guys for so long, and that's the number one reason I'm sad to miss BlizzCon. I mean, the announcements are one thing, but I'm gonna miss you guys there this year at BlizzCon, man. I really am. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if, at the bottom of the bracket, uh, if we scroll down, one of the other things that I was looking at, so Snuts, uh, first round is against a mage, and Snuts is another one of those players that we really want to be on the lookout for, of course, <laughs> I mean, he's dec decorated as you can be, and yeah. that first round against a mage, I don't see any issues, I think, I think, I, I, yeah, no, I, I was just going to echo that, I, I think, I think you're right, 100%. Yeah, and then in that second round, same thing. But I was watching Snuts' stream last night, and he said his hardest, the, the player he is most afraid of, well, he, he felt very confident, but he's like, he was talking about, you know, the, the matches that 
are mostly on his mind. And J Law is one of them. I believe J Law is a top, top, top tier undead warrior. And warriors are or warlocks probably hardest matchup. And he's undead. And Snus is going to be potentially fighting J Law in round three. So if yeah. J Law against Cheerios, J Law versus Warlock, say J Law wins because Warriors do really want the locks. I don't know if it's, if he's going to win or not, but say, just say he does. And then against uh, you know that second matchup, say J Law advances again, we could see Snuts versus J Law in that C eight spot. And uh, I mean, he never counts Snuts out. I I think personally, he's you know one of the greatest in this tournament. But it could happen where we see Snuts fall in like an yeah. early round. Yeah, no, it's it's uh it's not completely out of the question. I mean, Snuts is is obviously one of the one of the all-time greats. Um, but it's it's a hard matchup in, into a warrior and J-Law is is a fantastic warrior. He's really really good. Um, I like I I could see this going either way. I do think I I think going into that like you said, like Mage is not going to be a problem. I don't think he's going to have a problem with uh with with Druid or I I mean, I just I would take Snuts and Amir almost any day, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um but uh yeah i I don't really i don't really think i mean there is a world where j-law beats cheerios and then he plays vitochi in the second round and he loses to vitochi so if he loses to vitochi and i i think i would take snuts over vitochi with mage versus warlock uh at c8 and then snuts is probably gonna gonna uh go all the way really at that point so uh it's gonna be really interesting to see i think i think the key matchup in in this side of the bracket, I think it's going to be J Law versus Vitochi if Vitochi goes to the next round, or and if J Law makes it to the next round, that's what I would like to see in that second round. I'm 100 percent with you, man. If Vitochi takes out J Law, then Snuts is probably going to be like, ah, okay, <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. have to fight J Law. J Law could really uh, throw a wrench in things. Um, and for the rest of the bracket, we have Josito starting off with that Priest Mirror versus Sibs. Um, that'll be a good one to watch. Josito, just such an experienced player uh, on that Shadow Priest throughout many different expansions. It'll be great to see that uh, mirror matchup. Uh, we have Hydra versus Saga. Saga is that elemental shaman we watched yesterday, and that will be a really, really great one to watch. Um, what about Sony? Where's Sony sitting at? Oh, so uh, we have Sony versus I, a Warlock. He's probably feeling good. Uh... I'm I'm hearing I'm trying to get confirmation on something real quick. Uh so we have Sony versus Yones in that A13 spot and you know it's not, it, once again it's not like oh warrior versus lock warrior wins that's never the case right because it's always players playing their game. Someone can make a mistake, someone could be more or less prepared, someone could uh just have bad RNG, anything can happen, right? So you know, maybe there's there's upsets that happen. Um, and then we have Rocket Man, who's perplexity right under him. And man, once again, Warrior versus Rogue. <laughs> Look at all these duels, man. Yeah, bro, I'm excited. We we get to see uh, we get to see a lot of great duels. And just the hype yesterday when Shobek was doing that Makara. That's how every duel is going to be today, man. Yeah. No, I mean, I I think like I I think yesterday was just like a taste. Of of how crazy this tournament's gonna be, because I mean your character is dead. Like if <laughs> like sixty three people will die today. This is blood sport. This is like you're in the arena with gladiators. Okay, like this is this is just full on. People are gonna lose their characters. People have been grinding, working their ass off for a month straight, getting ready for this tournament, getting ready to get their piece of a hundred thousand dollars, and. There's only going to be one person at the end who survives. <laughs> it's crazy. It, like, I mean, I, I, I'm every second of this, man. I, I, like, I'm, I'm, I love it, man. There's never been anything like this, like pretty much at all, right? Like, there's yeah. never been uh, a tournament where everyone else is going to be dead on the ground and they can't play their characters anymore. And right when we were like talking about and like getting ready to announce this tournament, I was like. That is so unique and it's just so cool. And today's the day, man. October 31st. Today's October the day. 31st. We get to see it. Dude, the day of the dead on Halloween. <laughs> 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 That's what it is, dude. Yeah, we should get a... Yeah, somebody said we should get a picture of, of uh, everybody who competed. Dead. Like, like dead or the ghosts. It'd be great. So. Oh, that would be perfect. Yeah. Or just like all of their bodies on the ground in a pile. Like, yeah. yeah. That would yeah, be perfect. Be great. 
<clears throat> so yeah, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be fantastic, man. We have we have such a, a great day planned. I know the competitors are already uh, competitors are getting summoned and everybody's getting ready. Do uh, what what do you think was the most? Oh, there's oh apparently there's a bingo card that we have. Yeah, look at this. Uh, we have a bingo card for the Mot Garaz <laughs> today. Is a uh, who gets a coward debuff? Oh uh, no! Shadow reflect a death coil. <laughs> Keyboard turn, Snuts loses, Juke and Interrupt, uh, accidentally kills themselves. Dude, if somebody accidentally kills themselves, I, dude, can you imagine if we have a Sapper, a Sapper crit backfire? Not backfire, I can see it but happening. return damage. The dude, oh my gosh, dude. Today's going to be great because any of these things could realistically happen. Like, we could have both players die. You know, dis yeah, like a, a disconnect could happen. Warrior beating a mage could happen. Yeah. An upset. Keep Like, all of these things are very realistic. Yeah. <laughs> Today's going to be Competitor great, Competitor complains about a rule. <laughs> hey, if you're complaining about a rule in this tournament, like, there's a very short list of things that you can complain about. <laughs> yeah, true, true. So Not uh, many rules in this one. Yeah, wait, Peo is late? Wait, is Peo late? Okay, you can check one off if, uh, if Peo's late. <laughs> yeah, unbelievable. Unbelievable. No, Peo's not late. Peo's doing fine. Okay, unbelievable. So, oh, yeah, no, it's... Oh, uh, look at that. Yeah, look at that. Look at everybody getting ready, man. I, I can't wait, dude. <clears throat> Who's your number one favorite for the tourney and i'm not talking your heart here i'm talking your brain if you were like putting a bet on someone to win who is like what's your what's your brain telling you we'll get to see the heart next yeah let's take a look at the brackets here um i think zico has a really really good chance with the way that the draw worked for him yeah um Damn, I would love, dude, the storyline, <clears throat> the storyline of Savix coming back. I know you said not your heart, but the storyline <laughs> of Savix losing to Zico at the beginning of the tournament and then coming back. And if he, because that was, that was like this, it was this close. I mean, this might be too big of a difference for, that I'm showing. It was, it was that close of a duel. If yeah. Savix were to come back, that'd be amazing if, if he were to come back and kill Zico. But let's see, um, Zico does probably have like the, the, um, he has the best like mathematical chance. Um, let's scroll down a little bit. Uh, yeah, I think Sony has. You know what? Sony, Sony has a is pretty a good, good good run. Sony could have a really good run, dude. Oh. I think I think my my. See, I love all these guys, right? Like, I, I love Zico. I, I like it. Just for me, like, I'm thinking about like the storylines. I think, I think the storyline of like Sony's storyline of because Sony has gotten the short end of the stick, basically nonstop in every classic event for <laughs> the last like four years, and he'll let you know that, right? But he's <laughs> right. He's, he's, he's not wrong, <laughs> like because because there's so many arbitrary rules that are that are put in for warriors and all this stuff that like. They don't really get to do everything that you can do in Classic WoW. Now, when we're like, let the kids play, like, he's kind of owning, right? He's 5-0. Yeah. and 0. He, yeah. has a, he has a pretty, like, as far as the class matchup goes, he has, he has a solid, uh, uh, like, a solid draw for, for the way the brackets are shaking out. Uh, I think Sony could, we could see Sony make a big run. Um, because Sony, is, okay, say Sony wins against the lock, and then say Perplexity beats the priest, and it's Warrior versus Rogue, and and if Warrior, we kind of decided has maybe a slight advantage there because of the poison cleanse, then say Sony beats the Warrior, and then he's either against like a Rogue or a Hunter or a Warrior or a Druid, and I think those are all fine match. He, Sony really wants to dodge mages, right? Let's just say it. Yeah. Let's just say it. And right. Sony is probably going to dodge almost every single mage until he eventually, if he makes it up in the bracket, he'll be against Zico if Zico makes it there. So then we could see a Sony versus Zico, which for me, bro, I want to see like if, if the, the bracket could uh, turn out anyway, uh, I would love to see Snuts versus Zico grand finals. Snuts Zico. Yeah. Gr but be, grand finals. That, that'd be hype. That would Snut be the Zico best. Would be hype. Um, yeah, I, for me, I would say I would say it's between four guys. Okay. I, I would like to see a, a, some combination of these four guys make it. I would love to see Zico, Snuts, Sony, or Savix. That's 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 what I think 
is within the realm of of reason. I mean, Mez too. I mean, I, first I thought Hunter was going to be really good, but the Poison Cleanse really stacked up against him. I think. Yeah. Um, because I really felt good about Hunter. Mez has a pretty honestly. Mez could have a pretty solid shot. I mean, I, the thing is, it's hard. Look, we have PS Hero, yeah. we have Bobka. You know, we have Posito, we have we have Hydra, we have Perplexity, we have Sony. I mean, like Payo, we have some of these guys that have been playing duels their entire lives. It's like the the bracket is stacked. Like we're talking like, oh, you know, there's only a few. But when you really like start looking, it's like, oh, my gosh, dude. Yeah, (laughs) this can shake up any way. Yeah. I mean, Perp. I mean, I think we'll probably see Perp versus Sony in that round two. Um, that would be a good duel. That would be really good. Yeah. Um, let's get a. I mean, we could get some interviews too if we want. I mean, is there uh, is there anyone available? Production. This is my production. Whenever I do this, it's, I'm talking production chat. Uh, let's talk to. Uh, who do we? Let's talk to somebody we didn't talk to yesterday. Who do we not talk to yesterday? Let's talk to Snuts. Is Snuts available? Snuts would be great. Yeah, if we could talk to Snuts about how he's feeling today. You know, Snuts is in such a unique position for this tournament and for all tournaments that he plays in because a lot of people say that he's, like, the favorite. And it's, like, when you have that expectation, there must be so much pressure at the same yeah. time because he's so good. And it's, like, you're, you're, you're so good, but then it's, like, if you win, everyone's, like, okay. Yeah, he won again. And if you lose, it's like, oh, you are washed up. You know, dude, like it's just I a lot know. of pressure. It's so you know? dumb, dude. People, yeah. are, people are so obnoxious about some of this stuff, man. Like, because 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 you hit that point of an expectation, and then it's like, okay, well now now you always if you don't always win. Yeah, I, my ner- my nerves. Like I I. I, I'm not like in my lifespan. I haven't been like a historically like real nervous person, but I feel like for something like this, my nerves would just be shot. Like I, I would be. I, I, I don't know if I could do something like this, man. Like these guys, these guys are putting it all on the line. Like this is crazy. One thing we haven't mentioned too much is that some of these guys that are newer to the competition scene, they might be just like up there in terms of their gameplay but their nerves might be getting the best of them because there is so much money on the line there's so many people watching and they might not be able to bring their a game in a position they haven't really been in and then some of these guys are tournament veterans they've played on big stages they've played at blizzcon they've played at mlgs you know i'm thinking like c um right like these these players are used to that pressure they're used to having a bunch of eyes on them and it's you know, it's just like another day at the at the office for them. You know, it's like, yeah, I'm playing in a fifty thousand dollar tournament. And I got the nerves aren't going to be there. They'll be able to pull out their best plays, and it's it's not going to be a big deal. And yeah, it's like here it is, guys. The prize pool, hundred thousand dollars total. The way that's going to be divided and distributed is fifty thousand dollars will be going to that Makara champion, the first mm-hmm. place, and these will all be best of ones because it's a Makara. Now. Six thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. The remainder of that fifty thousand will be divided between the top of each class. And just to clarify, if a say a warrior wins the tournament, then the second place warrior would get that extra or that you know top of class warrior sixty two fifty because a warrior won the fifty thousand. Just to be fair, and yeah, this is like uh, you keep mentioning it as fan the largest prize pool tournament uh, maybe ever. Like yeah, it, I, this I, is I'm just insane. Sure it's ever in in like wow history. Yeah, it, which is just insane. So uh, getting back to the point. If some of these players are top, top, top tier players when they're playing alone outside Orgamar with their friends, they might not have the the practice of being on the big stage and having that pressure, you know, coming at you. And oh, man, we get to talk to the legend himself. We get to talk to Snuts here in just a moment. I'm so excited. Snuts, how are you feeling, man? How are you feeling? Good morning. My boy. My boy. Yeah, what's, what's going up, on, guys? How are you feeling? I'm uh, nervous. Actually, really nervous right now. 
yeah but yeah we, we were just going like two to three minutes about how you've done this your whole <laughs> life and how you've been on the big stages and how there's gonna be no nerves for the pros <laughs> you like, you're, you're were wrong bro you were wrong today's a big day <laughs> oh my oh, gosh man. that's great that's great yeah man no you i mean you absolutely killed it yesterday you always do i mean it's it's uh yeah like i mean that's exactly like what zor you said it was we're talking about how like some some guys they they've done this forever and how there's like an expectation right you 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 reach a point of like oh well well it's nuts like of course he's gonna do well right but how does that feel for you like is do you feel the same way do you feel like oh crap like now now i got people paying attention or how's that for you uh yeah i've, I've had that feeling for a while now where like i'm usually the favorite to win something so it sucks when i lose as the favorite but you know, my mindset is I just got to play my game, play well. And if, uh, if, if it goes my way, then we can make it far this tournament. Um, looking at the bracket today, I wasn't the happiest, but I'm not going to make any excuses. I'm just going to try to do my, do my best and play well. And I feel like if I just play my game, I, I can take this thing. Yeah. You know, well, a lot of times, you know, that's, and that's a big part of these tournaments is the brackets, they, they play out the way that they do. Um, I, I, I use the Evo example a lot with this tournament because that, that was a big inspiration for like the, the design of this tournament. If uh, in Evo with fighting games, like you have times where like sometimes you have like some of the best of the best players end up playing each other like in a qualifying round, like before yes. the finals. Mm -hmm. And uh, this it happens the same way here too. So like, uh, you know, we saw some really good players not even make it to the finals today. Yeah. Uh, who, in, in from your perspective, who do you think can win this whole thing? Uh, from my perspective, who can win this whole thing? I think, uh, definitely think Zico's side of the bracket. He he is looking pretty good there. If he can make it through the rogues, but so to name a few, I think Sony was looking really good yesterday. Mm -hmm. I think the warrior that I potentially could play against, J Law or uh, J, I believe the other J warrior is looking good as well. Uh, I'm scared of the Warriors, man. Warriors are looking scary. And obviously, I think for myself, I can, uh, I can, I can do a good showing as well. But yeah, like you mentioned, it's, it's kind of crazy how you can, you know what I mean, all this prep can end in just the first few rounds because you play against someone so good and you might not even get that top, top earning uh, spec or class just because yeah. you play such a strong competitor early on, you know? Yeah. So no, it's, no, it's, no, it's exactly. yeah. And that, that's, just, that's just the nature of it. Yep. Um, I mean, at this point, I think... Uh, I do think that a lot of the, I mean, is there anybody who, who you got surprised that, that didn't make it? Were you um, I was definitely surprised Shobek didn't make it, but I think it was due to the, his bracket. His bracket yesterday, his, uh, his group was really, really stacked. So I knew that one of the rogues weren't going to make it. And unfortunately, it, he was the one who came out of tiebreaker. It was really close, but you know, he yeah. was someone that put in a lot of effort, a lot of time, caught all his gear. Um, and and yeah, he didn't make it, but. Aside from that, I think, I think the players that, that put in the work uh, all made it through yesterday. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, great, man. Well, good luck today, dude. We, uh, we can't wait to see you play, and uh, we can't wait to, to get this thing going. Me too, man. Thanks again, guys. Appreciate uh, you guys having me, and, and uh, hopefully, hopefully I could put on a good showing for you guys. Yeah, dude. Good luck, Snots. I'm rooting for you, man. Have a good one. See you, guys. Oh, cool, man. man. <laughs> he says he's nervous, but he sounds calm, cool, and collected. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm excited to see the games. And I think that that J-Law matchup, those Warriors, man, it's just going to it's just going to be those Warriors. If Vitochi beats J-Law, it just depends how the brackets end up, you know, end up. And that's the nature of tournaments. Like you keep saying, man, it's just the nature of how it goes. Um, yeah, I, I think Sony is probably feeling pretty good about his bracket right now. And same with Zico. And then there's players like Sidu that... It, it's just it's just tough you know and, and we have a look at sony right here i mean he looks ready Dude, he's focused look at him guns are out in and out of game i mean he <laughs> he looks ready to go focus calm cool collected there he is look at that yeah man i i uh i i, I really like to see sony do well because i like i said earlier i feel like he's just because of the rules that are in place a lot of times he gets the short end of the stick so uh and, and i mean his class as a whole right like He's he's a warrior player. He wants to play a Tauren warrior. That is what he wants to do. So uh, to to see him like get to play his class and then do well is like it's sick to me. I like I like that. Dude, I must give Sony some credit for sticking to Tauren. Like yeah, every know, other right? warrior is like I'm gonna play undead, and Sony's like you know what? 
I'm playing Torin because that's what I always played, you know. And, and he does yeah. like the war stomp and the extra range from leeway if if that is still in the game. Um, I know we were chatting about it a bit yesterday, but like every other warrior is like, all right, undead, will have forsaken against the priests and the warlocks. And Sony's like, you know what? I'm going Torin. I, I have to just respect it, man. Yeah, no, I, I, I love it. And you know what? I actually think it was actually. Uh, I, they might uh, they might be getting started. Are you getting started early? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Looks like Zico versus Flixie's getting set up. Oh my, I can't yeah, wait, they, dude. They might just be getting set up here, but uh, yeah, let's take a look at their gear. So Zico, he's coming out. Zico's armed to the teeth. I mean, he's got his uh, gnome net on, Book of the Dead, Sage Blade. He's got a spirit enchant. The spirit enchant's nice too. I wonder if he has a second weapon and he switches between them. I, I, I just wonder, because the spirit enchant's nice for him to be able to get the mana for five and, and uh, like if he needs to evocate any of that uh, outside of that five second rule. But um, I wonder if you if you got a second weapon just for more spell power as well. Um, I don't know, maybe. Yeah. But uh, I guess before we get started, real quick, I think they're setting up. Let's go ahead and shout out our sponsors. Huge shout out to Blizzard for allowing us to put this tournament on. Oh, they're starting. Is it... yeah. We're, no, we're, we're actually in this. Yeah, that's a normal. Oh, okay, dual they're practicing. Okay, they're, this is an actual Amakura. Yeah, yeah. This is this okay. is a normal dual flag. Yeah, they're they're we're, they're telling us that they're starting, but they're not. Okay, okay. This, they're not actually starting. Um, so anyway, huge shout out to Blizzard for allowing us to put this tournament on. Uh, this could not have happened without them. I mean, this is we had to go through them, had to go through their approval because it was such a big prize pool, and uh, yeah, a big big shout out to Blizzard for even allowing us to get to do this big open community event. Anybody could join. Anybody could get uh, anybody could get into it. It's gonna be great. Um, and also Raider IO for doing all our back end for everything. Raider IO is a place to go for you want to set up a raid, a tournament, anything like that. They've got a bunch of WoW guides, and of course our title sponsor, Starforge Systems. Huge shout out to Starforge Systems. You guys can check them out at StarforgeSystems.com if you guys want to go spam that link mods. If you guys want to spam that link in chat. Exclamation point Starforge. Uh, they've got the new custom cases, the new plate lights, and uh, you can go and buy those plate lights and get the acrylics and stuff on your own if you have that same Lee and Lee case on your own custom build. You don't even have to have a Starforge PC. You can get that plate light. You can put it in there yourself. So Starforge is even looking at getting some stuff for non, uh, uh, non-Starforge PCs if you, if you make your own custom builds. So uh, huge shout out to Starforge Systems too. That Clouded Gates custom is so sick. I love that one. <laughs> great okay so what ended up happening there is zico versus flixie they accidentally put down a normal dual flag instead of the makara they did end up using longer cooldowns so we're gonna move on to the next match and 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 wait for those cooldowns to come back that was a mistake uh was not a warm up <laughs> so we'll be okay. moving on to the next one can, can we get the bingo card was that on the bingo card or not probably <laughs> let's see let's see if that was on the bingo card do we have do we have that available Let's see. Look at that. Do we have a... Uh... No, I don't think so. Uh, maybe not. Yeah. Major, Major upset. upset? <laughs> yeah, they were upset <laughs> they used all their cooldowns. Like, I Major upset they yeah, used Tidal Charm in a yeah, practice. Yeah, I did Tidal Charm go off, and I was like, uh, okay. Oh, that's great. Payo is late. Is Payo actually late? I see in the Twitch chats that people no, are saying. I, no, I think I think they're just trolling. Okay, I don't okay. Think they're actually late. I can't wait to watch Payo play again. Payo is one of those players that's just fun to watch. And you know, another one of those is Showback, man. I got to give a shout out to the guy watching oh, those know. YouTube shorts. I don't know if you get, I get his recommended like every day on my YouTube and just watching him with, you know, the RP is just great. And yesterday, you know, he just looked like he was having such a great time and uh, just such an entertainer. It's just it's fun to watch. Yeah, I think Showback is, uh, uh, I, I, I haven't seen, I think I'm, I might have seen one of his shorts, but uh, the I, I did some random like twos with him or something at the beginning of Wrath. And uh, I, I just liked the guy. He was he was fun to play with. I enjoyed playing with him, doing some like Rhett Rogue stuff before uh, before I quit Wrath. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wrath, Wrath PvP. I do. I miss Burning Crusade so bad, dude. Dude, actually, I, I don't know. Like, do you remember we were so 
Zaryu's team and my oh, team. Oh, I forgot about this. Dude, we played each other at the end of season one. We, like, we both, I think we both put together that, like, our teams that week, didn't we? Something like that. Yeah, like, like my, like, I know for us, like, we only were around six days. And we were, both of our teams were right at the glad cutoff. And then we were facing each other back and forth and we knocked both of both teams got knocked out of glad because of each other we knocked each other out of glad it was so annoying yeah i remember the last night of that that was uh yeah i felt a little bad <laughs> well that was not good <laughs> yeah. All right, so in this first matchup, guys, uh, like we said, Zico versus Flixie is going to be moved until later because those cooldowns were accidentally used. But today, the first matchup, we're going to be watching X Zane versus LT, Hunter versus Elemental Shaman. X Zane is actually, he leveled uh, to be in our guild, uh, Fallen. LT's gear, not not 100% here. Wow, a couple green pieces. Impressive. He, he's made it to these top 64. Um, but yeah, Xane leveled to be in our guild on Horde, and then this tournament got announced like the next day. So Xane leveled to 60, and then got like previs, so crazy grind. This tournament got announced, and then he re-leveled to 60 for this tournament. And I'm just excited to see a guildie in here. I, I'm really rooting for Xane here. Uh, looks like he has the gear advantage. Uh, Ellie Shaman versus Hunter. I don't. I'm not like extensively aware, but look at that Makara flag, as fan. Dude, look I at know. that man. I know, dude. Like you can just feel it, man. You can feel the the intensity. You got Xane versus LT. I mean, I I, I could see uh, I could see this really going either way. To be honest with you, um, Xane getting all of his totems and stuff set up. He's uh, he's ready to go. LT. Oh, opening with a charge. Okay. So, so Xane wanted opening... to. Yeah. He wants to open up with a charge because I, I think he's trying to set up to, to get the, the big open. He's probably going to want to purge him. He wants to clean him, and then he wants to go in and, and uh, hit him with a big chain lightning or a shot combo. Um, you can see he's going here. He wants to get as close to him as possible. And so here's the big thing is he's trying to keep him inside of that dead zone. And uh, he is he is a Beastmaster Hunter, so he has a lot of pet damage coming in. But as you can see, he's chasing him, trying to stay in that dead I, uh, it's fun your mic might have cut out so that the what i really like here from x is the viper stings seem to be uh getting dispelled fairly fast here from x -Zane. having said that x already oom doing his best job to dead zone the hunter and and this if this chain lightning goes off lt could just drop major healing potion coming in and the hunter has a lot of mana to work with that was the nature of swiftness and the t from x -Zane. the t guys is a, a three use item that gives you a ton of health and mana a separate cooldown from potion i believe it shares cooldown with that health stone instead lightning bolts connecting lt going to the max range here viper sting's not gonna cut it lt uh 15 mana 40 percent life this is dangerously close for both players looks like the goblin rocket helmet looks like lt charges x -Zane right there going for a little reset well played he gets to eat and drink food and water back up to about half of x -Zane. getting the early break goes for a tick of uh food uh food and water himself how funny frost shot coming in and looks like lt is in that dead zone with the arcane bomb coming out it's a five second silence on the x -Zane. it's not what you want to see if you're x -Zane. lt is getting all the distance in the world right now what is x -Zane gonna do yeah one lightning bolt but that's not gonna finish the job lt should never let x -Zane get in the range but a quick back pedal comes out x -Zane closes the gap the wing clip lands lt might be able to to get a little bit of distance that he needs here. Both players, oom. Um, both players low on HP. It might be down to one last engineering item. <laughs> LT back into that melee range once again. Who's going to finish it off first? This is dangerously close. x 10% life. It looks like x going to fall here. LT finishing it off with the Hunter melee. That might be all he needs. The grenade coming in. Viper Sting. x can't do anything. One or two more attacks. And x is going to fall. But the major healing potion comes off of cooldown. He saves himself for the time being but it might be the same exact result just a few seconds later. I don't know what Xane can do. That's the Gnomish Harm Prevention Belt there from LT. A big absorption that Xane's going to have to work through, and it doesn't look like he's going to be able to. Xane falls, and he is dead on the ground. There you go. Hey, that's the first death of the tournament. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, yeah. You're okay, we're good. You can hear me now. All right. I don't, it wasn't off on my end. I was looking at it. I was like, it never turned off, so... Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's, uh, I, I was fixing my mic, uh, or trying to fix my mic, figure out what was wrong. But there it is, guys, the first death of the tournament, 07s in chat. Hats off, X-Zane, 07s. 
Thank you for your service, brother. The first of 63 deaths that will occur today. I think that was a great attempt. I think Xane's strategy was really, really good going in there. I mean, fighting to the last second, using the health potion. Uh, he, uh, I mean, he just got drained down. I and mean, that's really what it was. That's really what it came down to is he got drained down. Uh, I'm a little bit surprised by that because uh, just being a shaman, you can get rid of poisons. And, and even with all the poison consumables, uh, I was surprised to see him lose the mana battle a little bit. But he also was fighting against a lot of damage and... Uh, Having to having to heal up against the uh, against the big uh, bestial wrath, the big beastmaster damage. So, uh, yeah, that was uh, that that was an incredible duel. That was great, man. I think uh, you said it as fan. The start of that duel, I loved the opener from Xane. He used the Goblin Rocket Element. He charged in and and closed the gap. And I, I liked the strategy coming out from Xane. I think Xane also had the gear advantage. Uh, maybe it's a difficult matchup. I, I do think those Viper Stings were being dispelled fairly well, but not perfectly. I think the Viper Stings would get like a tick off before the dispel, and then another tick or two off before the next dispel. And then since it was just taking a little bit too long, um, Xane went oom um fairly fast. And and that's how Ellie Shamans roll. I mean, Ellie Shamans do go oom um fast. They have a lot of burst, but in a super, super, super long game versus like a mage, what you do is kite it out, wait for the shaman to go oom, um, and then win. Um, and we have another shaman in this next matchup, a shaman that some of you gay guys may know. We have Stadman. This is C-Do. And we have Korean SFMG on the rogue. This is Savix. C-Do versus Savix in such an early first round matchup today is an exciting, exciting game to see. I know players in old chats were, were mentioning that C-Do is a little upset with this specific matchup. Um, but, you know, that's the way the dice rolls. We got that title charm on the Savix. Who do you yeah. give this one to, us, man? Dude, Savix is stacked, man. I mean, if you look at his gear, like you said, the title charm. Uh, is that a Goblin Mortar on uh, on Sea Dew? Let's see that. Yeah, yeah. The Goblin Mortar. Okay, we got to get our cameraman to watch out for that Goblin Mortar. We don't want to have that happen again. Or the <laughs> Freezing Band. Okay, so the Freezing Band tech. Sea uh, Dew, knowing that he's going up against a rogue, going with the dual Freezing Bands. Can you scroll over that real quick for us, please? Uh, that Freezing Band has a 1% chance to... Uh, to to freeze the target, the person attacking them, the freeze the attacker for five seconds. So if you have two of them, it's two percent, right? It stacks. And uh, with a rogue, you're getting a lot of small attacks in, a lot of quick attacks. So it's a very high likelihood that you get a big stun off uh, off the freezing band. So I, I really like the freezing band tech. And oh, here we go, we're getting started. Savix gets the open, uh, opens with the chief shot on him, goes he thistle tees. And exposes armor, trying to trying to break his armor down a little bit, taking out the totems in the meantime. Burned his combo points. Gets uh and oh you know, here we go. Here's the clean. Yeah, the rocket helm into the purge spam, trying to clean all those uh, all his buffs off. That's gonna be like a pretty typical strat, I think, that we're gonna see for a lot of the shamans uh today, is trying to clean them as much as possible. Once again, I love that Goblin Rocket Helm opener. It slows things mm -hmm. down. And not the opener that Savix was looking for, but another Vanish Cheap Shot coming out. Here's the Cold Blood. A lot of damage about to connect here. That man has that kidney shot to go. Arcane oh, Bar looks like it coming. lands. Sidu's out of mana already. Oh, there's Here's a Freezing the Man. The Freezing Man proc. Yeah, that's really great. That's the RNG Sidu is looking for. He's down to 30% mana, though, post T. I think Savix lost a lot of big cooldowns. There's the preparation second Cold Blood here. So much damage connecting. What is Sidu going to do? There's a big blind coming really soon here from Savix. Going... You notice he did an Oil of Immolation as well. So he's uh, Oil of Immolation and the Flame Shock. He's trying to keep him from resetting. He's trying to keep him from re-stealthing. But uh, Savix is going to come in here, and he's going to the blind. He's going to re-stealth. Oh, is he going to make it? Yeah. Nice. Big sprint. Big sprint to get in there and make sure he doesn't have time to retaliate uh, between the blind and the... <gasps> oh, no! The totems. The he's totems go for got it. him. Oh, my gosh. He's, so he's just going to go for it. He gets caught out from that <laughs> totem. He's probably kicking himself for not killing the totem a little sooner. But the Goblin Rocket Helm used, and that's going to be the reset Savix needs. This is this is very close. Savix going to sit and stealth for a second and eat... Uh, back up some HP, going for the half diminishing return Sapir, opening up with a cheap shot just to build combo points. Gonna go for another restealth. Savix praying that there's no heartbeat break here. Sidu low on mana, but I think this duel is kind of going Sidu's way. Another immolation or a use that might knock him out. Lesser healing wave being casted. Does it knock him out? Does Savix. Did he disconnect? What? Oh no. What, what, what's, what's he doing? Oh no, no, it was the, uh, the totem. The totem. Uh, but did he, did he not. Out. He just wasn't yeah. moving. Savix, he wasn't moving. He's what so happened? low. That might be it. Oh, That's another DC'd. tuber. Oh, he's no. I, I think at this point, like the duel, I mean, it's I mean, almost over. That was too over. short of a time for a DC. 
I mean, he logged in really quick if it was. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. We'll have to get dude, that's uh, the Korean reflexes, confirmation dude. from admins. It looks like Sidu and Savix have a gentleman's agreement to, to restart the duel. I mean, it looks like they're both honoring that maybe Savix disconnected. What great sportsmanship from both of these players, especially Sidu, because Sidu could have taken the win there, decide yeah. to let Savix re-stealth, bandage to full. Sidu gets full mana. Now, the duel restarts, essentially, but Savix has no prep. No vanishes. I might have one blind. Actually, maybe no blind either. No goblin rocket helm. So Sidu, despite not taking the win, is probably maybe more in the driver's seat than he normally would be. Yeah, big shout out to Sidu on that too, man. That's uh, there's there is a hundred thousand dollars in prize money on the line. Fifty thousand dollars to the winner. So I mean, these guys they they know their their honor and their uh, respect for each other is worth a lot more than a big prize pool. Oh, that's great. Arcane Bomb, once again, that's the second one that lands. I love to see that coming out from the rogues once they lock someone down. Kitty Shot misses. That's not the RNG Savix wants here today. He's down to 20%, but gets a nice big major healing potion back up to half. Kind of energy starved, and it looks like Damn. he goes down. Sidu. Savix goes down. Sidu with the victory, man. Wow. Damn. Well, man, Sidu, I know was very nervous about today, and it looked like things went in his favor. I have to say, I'm I'm sorry about uh, circumstances. I just think of the bingo board. <laughs> dude, yeah, kidding. that's unfortunate, man. My dude, I I like all, all the respect in the world for Sidu, but I, I feel so bad for Savix, man. That's just that is unfortunate. I mean, the fact that he the fact that he disconnected is is uh, that that completely blows, man. He he's been grinding all month and. Uh, he, he's done a phenomenal job and all, all these guys have man, but uh, my, my heart goes out to Savix man. That's 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 painful, but um, but look see do again. I mean just having the honor and having kind of the the um, Having the presence of mind to be like look I, I know this is for fifty thousand dollars, but it would be really really shitty if I won uh, Off of like a, a you know, this guy's disconnected. and He can't fight back like that's that doesn't feel good, right? So, yeah. uh, I mean, it's, it's it, the honor and the respect for each other is, is worth a lot more than that. So uh, huge shout out to Sidu for that and uh, coming back and, and finishing that duel oh. off. So all oh, we get to watch Zico versus Flixie next. This is that first round matchup where it looks like their cooldowns are probably back off of cooldown. This will be Elemental Shaman versus that Frost Mage Makara duel. Uh, this is going to be an exciting to one to watch. I, I think Zico is very well prepared. I want to see if Flixie has potentially any hidden tech that we might be missing or anything up his sleeve that we haven't seen yet. I think the traditional way this specific duel plays out is Zico is going to try to oom the shaman, right? And just run around with rank one frost bolts until the shaman burns himself of mana. And then you kind of go in for the kill, so to speak, once you find that opportunity. Yeah, let's see. Uh, can, can we take can we take another look at their gear yet, uh, again? If we have time, or they might just be starting. We might not have time, but yeah, uh, he's got the Banthok sash. Yeah, you can see Zico is just armed to the teeth. Got absolutely everything. Got the uh, Sorcerer's Oath, Flixy as well. He's got the big, big. Is that a Flurry Axe he's using? He's using a Flurry Axe. Okay. Oh, is he uh, enhanced? Then I said Elemental. I might be mistaken. Well, he was Elemental, and uh, his gear is Elemental. But you know yeah. what he might be doing. Uh, he might be doing something with the Flurry Axe and just hoping for like a big win for you. Oh, open with a Tidal Charm into the Polymorph. Okay, this is hey, this is yours. You're the mage guy. I I love this opener. And you know, it, like you can you can play a couple of ways. You can use Tidal Charm as like a something in your back pocket, or you can guarantee an opener with just Tidal Charm Poly, kill all the totems, and you get the opener you want. And at the same time, Zico dropped Combat, so we got to swap trinkets there to another valuable trinket. So you get the Tidal Charm on cooldown, you swap to another uh, trinket, and you get the opener you want. So it's a very safe play from Zico, and I love it. I, I think it's a great opener. Once again, Zico's playing max distance and taking it slow. He's 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 using Frostbolt, very mana efficient spell here trying to slowly dps the shaman down the hard thing from the mage perspective in this matchup is the shaman has Urshock to interrupt uh spells he has grounding totem to interrupt spells um but the nice thing about the mage perspective oh nature lock this could be it actually wow the healing potion comes out flixie's gonna have to use something Dude, he's locked he's out he nothing. can't heal that might be it. There's oh! the Goblin Rocket Elm. Blocks it. Zico's Offensive playing block. aggro. And Magic Dust aggressively for the kill. It's a pseudo interrupt. Wow, this Damn. is not normally what we see. Flixie getting caught there on the healing wave. Zico decides to use the Mana Pot to just finish it. He's probably just going to go all in here with Arcane Explosions, Coin of Colds, Fire Blasts. Let's see what happens. 
so did it, did it break and he got the grounding off? It looks like it, he got a heartbeat resistant and, and uh, he got the grounding off before it actually landed. Yeah, that might have been the case. And yeah. uh, the issue here is Zico playing very close is kind of like the, the kill shot, right? But if he doesn't kill, Flixie, this is what Flixie wants. Flixie wants to fight close so Flixie can get value out of shocks. Zico wants to kite far. Um, so Zico's kind of going in for the kill here. But there's the ice reflector. Zico sees it, cancels his cast. Zico playing very aggressive. And uh, if he can't kill, he's going to have to Damn, reset with another again. counter spell. That's, yeah. that's it, man. There's. Yep, that, I think he's got it. him right here. Scorch. Oh. oh, man. What a duel, man. Man, <laughs> when he got that first lock in, the pressure just tilted, just full, full, full tilt. I, I think uh, I think Flixie did a, as good of a job as he could have trying to uh, trying to stop it. But then the, the offensive block to stop the uh, uh, to stop the rocket helm and then to come back with the sleep and to keep that pressure on and not give him an opportunity, not give him an opportunity to take the, uh, take a step back and heal and, and to, uh, reduce the pressure was, was insane, man. That was a unbelievable play by Zico having the, uh, the thing that's a lot of these guys do that's so impressive. A lot of the really, really good duelists is they can, uh, they can swap between like a, a defensive mindset and an offensive mindset really quickly. Just off the bat, like they don't go into the duel and they're just like the whole time they're playing defensive. It's they go and they're like, OK, like I'm waiting for this, waiting for this. And then whenever they have their go, it's just full tilt and they press super, super hard. And uh, that's what it was. I mean, I, I, that's that's exactly what happened there. Yeah, exactly. I, I, you said it uh, great, man. Like Zico is so much experience. He knows, OK, I need the run here. And I need to play defensive here, or I can go in for the kill. This guy's dead. Let me switch and just play aggressive. And we're taking a look at the brackets. We have Zico moving on. His next matchup is going to be versus that Hunter LT. It's exactly uh, what Zico wants: is to be fighting these shamans, these hunters, rogues, warriors, and that'll be exciting. Sidu moving on as well. And we have this next matchup underway. It's going to be another mage versus shaman matchup. This is going to be Svamp versus New Jack. That Sage Blade, wow, Svamp is very, very geared here with the title charm. We haven't touched too much on uh, Svamp's uh, gear and gameplay, but he looks as prepared as you can really be. And New Jack looks similar. Ice Reflector equipped, Medicine Pouch, Veramondis. This is a very, very min-max gear set here from both players. Should be a similar style duel in terms of the strategy both players are bringing out. I'll be curious to see if Svamp pulls what Zico did and kind of goes in early for the kill with that lockout or wants to play a longer duel and fully oom the shaman. Yeah, I think uh, we, we talked about this yesterday. I, uh, I, I really don't know how the, uh, I, man, I, I really don't know how the shaman is, is going to be able to play this and uh, be able to come out with a win here. I mean, this is going to be, this is going to be one of those situations where you almost have to play and you have to hope that the, the mage makes a mistake at yeah. some point and then really capitalize off of that mistake. The way the shaman wins is honestly like a chain lightning NS chain lightning one shot. Right. Yeah. And the mage doesn't block it and you can just get like the mage can get one shot. You know, what's so cool, uh, bro. Look at the dead bodies on the ground. We're seeing dead bodies stack up uh, by the end of today. There's going to be dead bodies everywhere on the floor from these Makaras. And the duel commences. Duel the flag. Duel the death flag down. Looks like some totems are, are already chunking down Svamp's life bar. And, and Svamp going in early for the Nova Kona Cold and blinks out far. Another totem dropped. Distance. Yeah, kiting for that distance. Uh, well played. Going for the polymorph. Grounding has been destroyed. Wands to kill the totems. Very mana efficient play here, and I like it. Not, not like a crazy action packed opener. Is the mage once again trying to slow things down? The mage not using the title charm yet, but using it now oh. could have used it to burst. Um, Barov's trinket being used as well. Looks like he might have a strategy wanting to rotate through those trinkets. Looks like both trinkets from New Jack used as well. The looks like a Pokemon battle. Yeah, all these, all these pets coming out. <laughs> Yeah, you love to see it. And Svamp rebuffing with a bunch of scrolls, it looks like there. New Jack, though, closing the, the gap game. with the Goblin Rocket Helmet and Ice Block immediately coming out from Svamp to break that CC and to gain distance once again. Man is looking equal here. I think from the mage perspective, you want to go for that sheep soon. And then, well, you can like I, oom the shaman a little bit more than sheep than Evo back up. I really like the strategy that he's using to spam scrolls. He's been spamming scrolls and yeah. uh, I don't know if it's rank one scrolls or not, but he's basically putting up a bunch of trash buffs so that he's uh, essentially burning uh, the Shaman's mana with the purges. 
Dude, yeah, that's that's brilliant. A lot of the times, so, ooh, here's the Ellie Mastery Chain Lightning. Be careful. Ice Barrier put up just in the nick of time. Spamped negates a lot of that damage coming in. Celestial Orb, level 30 Mage Quest offhand being used to regenerate some mana there. He's going to swap off of it after that cooldown has been used. Mage blinks out of range. Polymorph being casted. And now this is not what New Jack wants to see. Spamp now able to Frost Nova the Mechanical Yeti. Bandage back to full and then get ready to set up an evocate after this. And now New Jack's going to be in the situation where the mage is fully reset and he is not. There's the evocate on spam. He's going back to full mana now. And, and Jack is kicking himself because this is exactly the mage's game plan that he wants to see. Now Jack going for a drink himself with the grounding totem. It's going to force spam back in to cancel this. Frost Nova misses, unfortunately. Kona Cold with the nice Frostbite RNG lands. This is going pretty decent for Jack here. Counterspell misses. Grounding totem has been killed. New Jack going for some more purges and spam forced to kite out once again i think spam has a has a big opportunity here if if uh or sorry new jack has a big opportunity here if he doesn't get polyed good he stopped the poly he can he can get a big burst here it's so another full duration polymorph sitting and uh that's really a great awareness from spam those polymorphs need to reset off the diminishing returns about 20 seconds for the poly to go back it seemed like he was at max range whenever he polyed. It would have it would been nice to see him be able to range that poly and to come back in. But I think he was just going for the full send, trying to go for the lightning bolt combo and finish him off, just hoping for the best. Kind of like what you said earlier. Like, he, he knows that that's, that's his, his win condition is just get him low and then go for the big burst. Yeah, and Spam's getting so close. I'm really worried for him because this is the range where Earthshocks can come out where you can... Oh, that's the second ice block from Spam and he's half HP. This is it's going really well for New Jack, really. He's, he's kind of low on mana. The mage is playing so defensive, trying to just give these resets. And I, I don't want to count Spam out yet, but he's getting dangerously low. There's no ice blocks, no big defensive cooldowns. That's the T. The back pedals oh. are coming out. We can uh, knock that off our bingo card. Polymorph's <laughs> being casted. Looks like New Jack is out of mana completely. He's going in for the pokes with that Veramondi's dagger. Polymorph lands, and once again, it's going to be 20 seconds. Svampir is going to have to kill the totem. He's going to have to regenerate HP. And really, though, this is this is kind of what the mage wants to do. Look yeah, at this. New Jack, I was going to say, New Jack's completely out of mana here, but uh, when he's getting polyed, I mean, he is regening just a little bit. He comes out with a sleep. This is going to give him a big chance to drink. If he, if he gets a drink here, if it doesn't heartbeat resist. Oh, heartbeat, oh. heartbeat. Oh, but he, oh. See, he reacted so slow, man. He reacted so slow. He could. He had an opportunity to stop another tick. Uh, oh, this is it. Here's the big combo. Yeah, and this is what, where the Shaman gets in trouble. Chain Lightning being casted. Ice Reflector being faked from Spam. So great awareness there. This is problematic, though, for Jack. He's at 20% mana, and the Mage has a lot more mana to work with. So the Mage can kind of just go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him and, and take him out. He doesn't want to eat these Lightning Bolts, though. Mage might go for one more reset. Furbog's Medicine Pouch coming out. It's at least two or three offhand. Spam is swapped between. This guy has been prepared and ready for this tournament, and it's really showing today. Jack, though, down to 2% mana. This is his last chain lightning. It's probably a low rank chain lightning, to be honest. Fam gonna go for the first aid on cooldown. Great awareness there on that first aid debuff. He's gonna be really able to good. tick himself back up. And this is kind of Fam's opening. Like if it was me, I would drink back up right here and take out New Jack. Like you can just you can just kill him. You can just you can rush him down. Like the the, the shaman won't have any mana to work with. Um, if there's a mana pot, you can also mana our health pot and kind of just kind of just take them out. If you want to play it slow, though, like Spamp is doing with fifty thousand dollars on the line for that first place spot, it's it might be a good idea to just keep taking it slow because there it is, New Jack with the mana potion back up to forty percent, oh. and Spamp's finding himself on the back foot. Yeah, I'd, I'd I'd like to see Spamp play a little bit more aggressive here. I mean, he because uh, I feel like he's he's playing too slow and it's putting him in a position where he's giving New Jack an opportunity. And uh, it's happened a couple times here. Oh, but he's coming back with the Arcane Bomb. Frost Nova. Yeah, he's uh, he's trying to go for the big Shatter combo here. Was that a... He's just Perch Spamming him here. Grounding Totem into the Perch Spam. And he's just trying to stay close. You, you, New Jack is going to want to stay close as much as possible. So he has the Shocks. Big Whoa. Chain Lightning! Holy! So much damage. So much damage, but it's not enough. Spam gets grounded again. Trying to separate, trying to get distance. He's probably going to want to reset with the Polymorph here. Earth shocked. Gets Earth Shocked. This might be a finish for New Jack. No! The Polymorph <laughs> at the last second. Holy, dude. This duel is starting to go crazy, man. 
So this that's what Ellie shamans are known for, right? Ellie mastery, chain lightning, boom, one shot. And we we saw his fam go from 60% down to 20 or 15 right there in a second. And New Jack, maybe with one more crit, would have just killed him. There was no ice blocks left. So that could have been man. Yeah, that could have been game set match. And Mage once again trying to kite it out more. And I think you mentioned on this uh this morning as fan, but the top, top, top player tier players are gonna know when to play defensive, but they're also gonna know when to push in aggressively, right? It's like, right. okay, I can finish this now. Um the problem is when there is uh a situation where you don't know maybe you're just you know you just don't know you're like I, can i finish here i don't i don't know if i can finish here then you start playing overly defensive that mm. kill window might elapse right like you've kind of waited too long and now the window to take the win is it has shut and now all of a sudden you you can't take that win anymore and we might see ourselves in a similar situation here another arcane bomb lands well played from spam but he's he's getting low and honestly now new jack has the mana advantage he's he's pushing his advantage spamming those purges has the grounding totem down trying to close the gap spam gets a polymorph resist which is definitely not what he wants here another lightning bolt connecting another polymorph resist or maybe it was just another oh, grounding is it finished is it the finish to get resisted? Oh my gosh, the heal, the health potion. He double potted, he tries to build distance. What is he, is he, is he not gonna try and sheep him? He's been trying, but it's grounding totem, resist, sheer, uh, not wind shear, earth shock, another grounding, another resist, sheer, like it's just, it's just constant stops. And, and that is the difficulty for mage in the matchup. It's like threading the needle, man. You gotta bait all of the shaman's interrupts, right? Yeah. And then you have to, uh, you know, kind of find your way into that polymorph into the, the full burst window and then new Jack going for the grounding totem into a quick drink. I really like that play and another reset here from Svamp with the goblin rocket helmet. I don't I don't know if I love this play. Yeah, um, I, I don't know if I would have gone with a rocket helm there because um, it really is just. I think he, I mean, it, it's almost like he's running out of tools here. Uh, Svamp has a lot of opportunities to, to reset and to get mana back and He's not really doing it. I think New Jack is is playing the uh, like the meta of the matchup. New Jack is just kind of playing it better, and uh, he's just waiting it out, trying to take the opportunities whenever he gets them. Ooh. And, oh, this might be it. This, yeah, this might be it right here on this big lightning bolt right here. I oh no, no, he's back. He cancels and dies. Oh, he cancels oh and he's gosh. dead. I've, I've got to see. Well played oh to New gosh. Jack. That's that can be a hard matchup for the shaman. The it's just I mean it's hard for from both perspectives, but really well played to New Jack for taking his time, going for the big burst windows. New Jack did exactly what he had to do to secure that kill, you know? Conserve the mana, go for those big one shots, and eventually mm -hmm. the crits lined up in his favor. The resists lined up in his favor. Yep. And he actually came out ahead in a matchup that's historically pretty hard for shaman. So really yep. well done to New Jack. And, and to your point, that's exactly what we talked about before the matchup. We, we said it, this is going to be something where the Shaman just has to try and survive as long as possible until he gets that opening and, and, and hope that uh, the mage makes a mistake. And that's exactly what happened to a T. I mean, it was uh, he actually had two or three opportunities where he, he got him down really low. I think he got him down to one percent at one point, which is just insane. And then uh, to, to be able to survive, and I mean, that's gotta be, imagine getting a guy down to 1% and then a, a, a mage resets on you and it's like full health, it's like, oh God, not again. I know, it can happen too. <laughs> like, but uh, but yeah, man, that was uh, that was phenomenal, man. That was, a, that was a great, great job by the Shaman there and uh, he goes on to the next round. Man, I've gotta say, I, I really have to just say, I am so happy to be here. <laughs> thank, you, thank you guys for having me and putting this off. I'm so happy to be here. I, yeah, I, I, we're watching PS Hero versus Mez in a Makara. Uh, on a Tuesday, like this is the yeah. best day ever. Like this is this is the best. Um, we saw the PS Hero gear set. There's some frost resist, and that's really smart. The frost resist is to resist the trap from Mez. If PS Hero gets one or two trap resists, it could be the difference, the deciding yeah. factor in this matchup. Uh, this matchup historically is maybe slightly hunter favored. The hunter does a great job at scatter, uh, feign death, trapping, and kiting the rogue out, and then the rogue can't really ever catch back up after you're out of sprints, blinds, and vanishes and uh, PS Hero knows that so he's like if I can just resist a trap or two I could turn the tides here in this duel and Mez if, if he gets two resists on traps in a row Mez will probably just die even one though could turn the tides yeah no absolutely I mean uh, I, I really like the call out about the frost resist uh, a little bit of frost resist can actually go a long way against hunters so uh, 
I, I really like that call out. I like that play by uh, Pachero, and uh, it looks like they're starting. He's in stealth. Is Battle Me Mez is just sitting there. Oh, okay. There you go. Rip Battle Chicken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's almost like he, he like threw the flare and it killed the chicken. <laughs> Oh, that's a really smart opener. So instead of pushing into the flare, he goes for the magic dust, frost reflector, and runs over the trap into a restealth. PS Hero playing on another level, inventing an incredible opener against hunters. This flare will expire. PS Hero will be able to get a proper opener versus a hunter for once. The flare doesn't expire quite yet, but still not a bad opener. There's a scatter concussive shot and Mez getting the distance he wants. We haven't mentioned today quite yet, but the Makara dual distance is a lot further range than normal dual so Mez can kite forever here. There's a net insta vanish from PS Hero. Reconnects. Cheap shot lands. Trinket to reply. Mez and PS Hero going at it. Mez, where's Mez's pet? Maybe the pet's still in stealth because he doesn't want it to die. I'm not sure. There's a second vanish from PS Hero. Prep being expended. There's Fred. The pet. Maybe he forgot to summon it. There it is. There's the blind. It breaks instantly. This is not what PS Hero wants. Not at all. There's the helm, the rocket helm from Mez. He's seeing PS Hero. It looks like it breaks. Kenny misses so much RNG against both of these guys right here that it's almost even. Mez popping the fat. Goblin rocket helm from PS Hero. Damage connects once again. Mez getting low. Hellstone used from Mez. 45% life now. PS Hero is not liking this. Thorium nade might land here. Big Mez nade. looking for blood. PS Hero looking for this next big stun here. There's the scatter. Mez getting distance. There's concussive shot. Nice RNG. PS Hero is going to fall. It looks Damn. like it. And he does. Mez taking out the behemoth of PS Hero. Dude, absolutely fantastic duel. I, so the beginning of that duel, I, I think, was was really, really, really interesting. Uh, that's not something I'd seen before because a lot of times you don't. That's that's usually a rule in a lot of these dueling tournaments, right? Where hunters can't just sit on a flare and, and wait for you. So I liked the strat of hey, let's just go and sleep the guy. Let's go and sleep the guy and try and wait out the flare and and uh, go for it that way. Unfortunately, the flare actually didn't expire in time. The uh, the ice reflector onto the frost trap also was a very, very good play. I like that as well. Uh, burn that first trap so he doesn't get distance. So I think Pashero went into it with a uh, really good plan. But uh, I mean, Fred came in, man. He called on Fred. Fred came in for the assist. And uh, next thing you know, it was, it was over. I mean, that... that uh, that concussive shot, concussive shot stun proc is uh, pretty massive. I mean, that's one of the biggest things against rogues is if you can get a good stun off of them with uh, the amount of agility they have and between uh, evasion, ghostly strike, uh, the, just the amount of uh, avoidance they have is huge. So uh, if you can get a stun off on them, then you can just really tee off on them right then. So a uh, huge shout out to Fred and uh, a huge shout out to Mez as well. So <laughs> That last duel, man, was like watching a master class in classic WoW, Hunter versus Rogue. Both players played so well, such great strategy coming out. And despite RNG, honestly, they both got unlucky with RNG, but that's classic WoW PvP, right? You have to, uh, to bake in room in your strategy for things like resists like crits like uh you know just things not going your way and that's that's part of classic pvp and that's something that you have to account for in this next matchup though we have bobka on the rogue and spo on the druid oh man i wish soda was here to cast this one i know he loves that those druid matchups uh spo very experienced i would love to see uh the gear choices from from bobka and spo going into that, that alarm bot <laughs> i'm not actually sure what it does but it looks like a little alarm bot from nomergon or something and the duel to the death flag drop here we go Spo having the big armor on his gear stacking up all that armor to uh to get the bonus in bear form against the rogue i mean Spo is Spo is stacked up i mean so Spo uh, so Spo competed in mlg uh back in the day is that is that right i believe so yeah so that was uh i i uh that, that was during the time where i i wasn't really playing well so i wasn't really familiar but chance was talking about yesterday how he used to watch all this guy's videos like growing up he, he used to do a bunch of videos and uh like a lot of a lot of the content that he made so it's kind of cool like this is like an og vanilla like og classic player coming back so here's a big open from vodka Bobka opens up with the cheap shot into a gouge taking his combo points stacking it up expose armor into a gnomish death ray doesn't really do a whole lot of damage reloads on him he's got a couple combo points saved up right now and goes with a blind he probably oh there's a slice and dice he uses the slice and dice she's gonna try and kill the pet so he has no combo points banana died wait who died? what Somebody is died? that a competitor later today oh, i no. don't know 
<laughs> uh, anyway, Thistle T, uh, he's teeing off. He's really going off on him. He's got the cold blood. Big Eviscerate out of form. I think he hit him out of form. He's low. Spo is on the ropes right now. He went out of form to use a health stone, I believe. Bobka is using everything. He's got a rupture on him, and he is teeing off with the sprint. He's ready to go. Spo trying to stun him, and I believe it got dodged. So this is his reset right here. He's going with the Gnomish Rocket Helm, or Goblin Rocket Helm, excuse me. Going for the reset. He's going to want to heal up. He's going to want to drink. But this is going to give Bobka an opportunity to open back up with a stealth. That fairy fire is going to prevent him from doing so. The Thorium Nade oh, the yep, there you go. going out. I, Soda would be proud of Spo right now, keeping that those stacks up. I know Soda yesterday was like, keep up those fairy fires. There it is, the refresh huge, in huge, huge, bear huge. form. Spo going toe-to-toe -to -toe with him in bear. That big armor uh, reduction there for that physical damage coming in. Kitty shot, though, on to Spo. Doesn't get too much done and blind. Insta breaks it. I don't know if it was a mistake yeah, there know, from Bob Cup. I don't know if it was an instant heartbeat or if there was something that uh, that broke that there. This is not really what Bobco wants. I think Spo is, is playing this really well. I think that's the second blind, the net coming out. And now Spo is in a, a really great position to just net, to Moonfire, keep up uh, dots. And... Like you said, that's a, good, that's a good call out on that Fairy Fire because he, he had some trouble with that yesterday, uh, dropping the Fairy Fire. And he's uh, he's doing a good job of that today for sure. Yeah, the Moonfire, I don't think he is, looks like he's not expecting the Insect Swarm, uh, at least he's not using it here. Oh, no, there is the Insect Swarm, my, my apologies, the Gouge coming out. Bobka looking away to set up this kill, but man, how do you kill a bear a full life? Like, the Kidney Shot isn't going to do much at all. Bobka's down to 50% now, there's less and less cooldowns available for him. I think Spo is looking really great here. Bobka committing another Vanish, tries to get uh, an opener, doesn't look like that Cheap Shot connects, though. Bobka and Spo evening out here in terms of the total health. There's the T being used from Bobka. Only three uses of that in the whole tournament. And that's one of them. Stun coming out from Spo into the entangling roots. Hoping for no resist there. And he gets gets that root landed. Spo going max distance using a T himself. And mana on health evening out from both players' perspectives. Maybe another Moonfire Insect Swarm to connect. And it does. Looks like Spo's going to want to just max range this. There's the uh, the Yeti coming out to yep, assist Spo in his endeavors here today. He's sitting down, shrinking his mana back up, and Bear Form once again committed from Spo. I think I think uh, Bobko's really in a uh, unfavorable position right now because he's rogues have like the, the a list of cooldowns right, and he's burning through. He's, he's trading all his cooldowns in right now. He he has a slice and dice. He's going to try and kill the pet. Uh, calling his own pet up. Is that a battle chicken? There it is. It's a battle chicken coming up. Maybe he's hoping for that haste proc. We'll see what happens. Uh, he's now trying to separate. He did just get fairy fired. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what exactly Bobka is trying to do here. Uh, he's getting teed off he, and he used the gouge. He can't re stealth because he does have that fairy fire on him still and he is. He's got to find a way to stall this out and try and get a bandage off. He doesn't have the uh, he doesn't have the bandage debuff yet, and I think that's what he's trying to do. But I don't think he really is going to have that opportunity, and he might just try and turn it around and go for it. Stack up as many combo points as he can and try and tee off in a stun is what it looks like. He is just going to keep that fairy fire on him the entire time, and he is just going to keep that pressure on Spo, making a smart play with the stun into the heel, making sure that he doesn't get too low for Bobka to get a chance to tee off on him. Bobka seems to be completely out of cooldowns, and he doesn't really have an answer for Spo being able to keep him out of stealth with the fairy fires, with the roots, with the moon fires, with the insect swarms. Bobka is in a bad situation against Spo, the MLG. Uh, the MLG competitor from years ago, the OG classic player. And he lets the fairy fire drop. Did that drop or is our UI bugged? Because we uh, saw it, it looks... take all the way down. I think our UI bugged it back up. No, it did drop. Okay. So the fairy fire dropped. This is Bobga's opportunity. Spo knows it. Spo's, he's, he's chasing after him, trying to get a fairy fire on him before. Okay, we got the moon fire. Let's see if he can get a fairy fire off on him, because that is huge. That is so important right now. Bobka stalling out long enough to get a big heal, big health potion. He's got his health back up. He's going to start getting his cooldowns back up soon. Going for the expose armor right now on Spo. Seeing if he can get a chance to tee off on him. I think he's jousting with him here to try and build up combo points and make a play. Try and go in with a kidney shot and uh, try and push him. And he goes for the kidney shot there, but it misses. Goes for the goblin mortar. 
And Bobka is just going to try and rinse and repeat that. He's going to try and kite, going to try and joust him, build up combo points, make a play. And uh, I really think Spo needs to try and, and push the advantage as much as possible here. Make sure to keep his health up. Don't give Bobka a chance to turn back around on him with a big kidney shot. Uh, obviously, try not to get caught out of form. But Spo is really... Spo's got the advantage here. Bobka turns it around, making a, uh, making a last ditch effort here with a kidney shot, going for it. Ghostly Strike, Evasion. He's going to dodge just about everything here. And I really think Spo just needs to... Oh, no. Oh, oh no. Gouge out of form. That's exactly the opening Bobko is looking for. I don't think... Oh, he gets the kidney. It's only half DR. Spo insta trinket NS Nature Swiftness. Uh, heals himself back up to almost full HP and swiftly back into their bear form. That was what Bobko is looking for. He didn't get too much work done. And Bobko looks like his back's against the wall. I mean, what do you do when you're fighting a bear? I think and <laughs> sometimes sometimes you're, it's good to, like, scare him if it's, like, a little bear. But, like, a, against a grizzly, I think you just curl up in a ball. And yeah, sometimes maybe that's, you just gotta lay down. Yeah, maybe or Bobka sit down. should. Looks like Bobka's doing right now. Oh, but he gets the kidney shot. He's going toe to toe the with the bear. Out of form is huge. Maybe he can. Big, get oh my gosh! Huge cold blood eviscerator. That could have been the end oh. for Spo, but that Goblin Sapper could have killed Bobka. That was such Dude. a risky play. Spo's kiting it out. He's almost out of mana. Uh, Bobka's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Spo here, and I don't know. Oh, there's a T from Spo immediately back in the bear form. Well played. He does not get gouged from Bobka. That was a pretty fast gouge, but not fast enough. Might have been caught on that global cooldown, and Spo pushing that advantage once again. That was Bobka's opening full kidney shot lands, and he's doing his best, and I've really got to commend Bobka here for surviving so long, min-maxing the potion cooldowns and looks like he's going to kite out Spo here. Spo can't use that elixir of poison cleansing because it'll take him out of bear form. If he shifts, of course, that also takes him out of bear form. So Bobka knows this and he's uh, punishing Spo. There's oh. the war stomp into the regrowth. Spo's getting dangerously low! That's 6% so life and he goes oh, down! I've got a finish, man! Doing the impossible and taking out the bear of Spo! Oh my gosh! Dude, I thought Bobka, about two and a half minutes ago, I thought Bobka was done for that was unbelievably impressive spo is a is a fantastic druid unbelievable player uh but unfortunately bobka just just barely inches it away from him i mean i i thought bobka was completely done for it now the thing that spo did now he let that fairy fire drop and some people might say like oh, okay well he had moonfire on him okay he had insect swarm on him is that not the same thing no it's not because fairy fire uh, doesn't even give you the opportunity to stealth at all. Whereas if you have a dot on you, you can still stealth, but it'll uh, it'll knock you out of stealth whenever you take damage. So you could theoretically like vanish cheap shot insta between dot ticks or something and, and still be able to do something even if you have a dot on you. That's why it's so important for druids uh, to be able to keep a fairy fire on a rogue in that in that whole duel. And that's why we saw him trying to separate so much um, also, in addition to that, Fairy Fire lasts for 40 seconds as opposed to the, the shorter time of a Moon Fire or an Insect Swarm. So that's why that was so important. And whenever he let that drop, I really think that was the turning point because then it got Spo out of his rhythm and it kind of it gave Bobka that little tiny bit of an opening that allowed him to turn it around. That was uh, such a great game. I, I do want to touch, too. It, it uh, maybe we can confirmation from admins here. It looked like Banana died at the start of that duel. I believe Banana is supposed to be up here later today. In the brackets, I see his name. Uh, if we can get confirmation from admins, did Banana actually die prepping somehow for this duel, practicing? Uh, was it a, some type of backfire? Um, we'll, we'll have to wait on that and see exactly what happened there to Banana. In this next duel, though, we have Relay versus Bean. This is Warrior versus Hunter, go. and this is a matchup that we can see go either way. I think, uh, though, for, for Warrior, it's not like... At least you're not fighting a mage, you know, from the warrior pov. It's like, all right, this is okay. But being such an experienced player, uh, he came second place in BlizzCon uh, with Sidu, and he is multi, multi, multi rank one through many expansions. Relay, getting the charge off and starting things off right. There's the last stand immediately getting on a cooldown for that health optimization. I love it. The Thorium Nade unfortunately misses though for Relay. Big Bean kiting it out, and I don't know where Bean's pet is. Maybe it's starting in stealth once again to prevent the pet from being killed. Scatter Fain Death Trap coming out, and Bean. Looks like he's going to go for a couple ticks of water. 
food, make sure he's fully healthy before fighting it out. But the, the mount comes out and the harpy breaks the trap. And that's not oh, what Bean was looking for at all. This is really bad for Bean. Relay's teeing off. And there's no scatter quite yet. Having said that, Bean seems like he has a decent positive uh, exchange there. Relay at 50% using the health uh, stone from the warlock, which is allowed here. Anything pretty much allowed in a Makara. We have the slow fade from Relay and the scatter feign death trap coming up from Bean once again. That was quite the blunder, but it looks like the, oh, trap, the trap resists, the trap and that resist? is oh, two no. unfortunate events here for Bean back to back. Oh no, yeah, Bean's uh, he's, he's definitely on the back ropes here. Uh, he tried to get on his mount to separate and gain mo more distance, but whenever it resisted, whenever it heartbeat resisted, uh, a big problem, something to keep in mind in vanilla versus the later expansions, vanilla mounts are three seconds. So he didn't move for three seconds. He was standing in place for three seconds where he could have just kept running, but he was trying to, he got a little greedy with it and he was trying to get as much distance as possible. But it might not matter because he's got all the distance he needs right now. Relay, Flask of Titans, Sapper doing anything he kill can to kill the pet and try and get away. But Bean is pressing him right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and snipes him from across the field. There it is. Bean. Oh, no, man. Bean with a big win, just teeing off on relay and getting the ability to separate after having pretty much as bad of a start as you could possibly imagine in that matchup. I mean, he, he got greedy, went for that mount, ended up not moving for three seconds. Heartbeat resist gets him. And then he, uh, uh, he has the second trap resist. So, I mean, I, I thought Bean was in a terrible, terrible position. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was just, that was, that was something else, man. That was really good. Uh, okay. Okay. So, so we're getting an update on uh, Banana's situation. So Banana, he, uh, he was uh, a no-show. So he, uh, he was DQ'd because he, he was a no-show and was replaced in the bracket. And he, uh, uh uh, he uh, he died. <laughs> his character died. <laughs> yeah, unfortunate way to go there. Um, yeah, so man, that last duel though. Um, just to just to reiterate, Bean had two or three very unfortunate circumstances happen, and still won. I just want to emphasize how awesome that last duel was because normally you have your set of things that you're expecting to happen and if one thing goes wrong you know you might be able to make it up if two things goes wrong that might be it for the duel but being kind of playing from behind expecting the unexpected so to speak and ended up coming out on top despite the duel flipping on its head from the get-go and the next matchup we have spicy versus proxy we have a, a rogue versus hunter looks like he accidentally uh, fapped there uh unfortunate timing i don't know if they're going to be able to wait out two minutes for that cooldown or not. We have full, almost full Shadowcraft set here from Spicy. Spicy did fairly well here in the standings. And uh, Precise, Proxy. Precise Boonstick, I like that. Yeah, very nice. And a lot of these players opting for that Goblin Rocket Helmet. And uh, I mean, as they should, it's such a great CC. But not only that, it's such a great gap closer for something like a Warrior. Yes. Something like even like a mage that wants to dead zone and push a hunter. Uh, but having that CC in your back pocket on a separate cooldown than, than a lot of other items is uh, is a really great cooldown to have. And looks like the dual flank drops and spicy go stealth and proxies posting up on the flare with the freezing trap. Mm -hmm. I like how you mentioned how the, the goblin rocket helm uh, could also be used as a gap closer as opposed to just a reset. Because I think a lot of people look at the rocket helm as, as a reset, but there's so much you can do with that with... Uh, Sometimes you just want to use it to close the gap. Oh, here we go. The duel's starting up. Uh, in, immediately gets frozen trapped. He gets knocked out of it. I don't think that was a trinket. I didn't see a trinket there. But uh, he's getting scattered here. His trap is still on cooldown, so he's not going to be able to trap again. Goes ahead and does the rocket helm on spicy, but this, the rocket helm is DR'd. So he's not going to be able to get the full distance and the full benefit out of that. I believe rocket helm and trap are is on the same DR, if I'm right. But uh, Spice is going to open up on him. Proxy is in a really, really bad spot here. Um, he's, he goes ahead and faps, so he's able to get away from the uh, crippling poison prox. But uh, you have Spicy using the blind to go ahead and... I don't know. I don't know why he tried to... Maybe he was just trying to get a tick off while the pet was hitting him. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why he, he bandaged there. It might have been a mistake. But uh, yeah, Spicy is uh, using that as a gap closer. I don't know if he's not using his combo, if he's not hitting the pet because he doesn't want to use his combo points. 
Because I feel like the, the strat here should be go ahead and just burn a slice and dice or something and kill the pet whenever you're sitting there. Because uh, I, I think if he can't re-stealth and he can't do anything else, it might not matter though because it looks like he's just able to go in and if he doesn't get trapped, which he does... Yeah, there's that full trap that lands on Spicy. That's what Proxy needed. I mean, look at him. She's 20% life. Trying to get some distance here onto Spicy. Spicy has to find a way to close the gap. Another Fap coming in. A full blind, though, to reply. That's Fap plus blind. What's Proxy going to do? I mean, what do you do? I don't think there's anything you can do. Full kitty shot lands, and that's going to be Spicy's duel. That's it. Good night, Proxy. Go. Well played to Spicy. Oh, wow. That's a good one. Uh, just for clarity, too, uh, Fap is a... Free action potion, F A P. Free action yes. potion, just for clarity. Yeah. So uh, I, I, one of the things I was confused there, uh, I uh, I don't know why he uh, why why he was uh, standing around and not killing the pet instead of like he I, I think he gouged it and then he uh, was just waiting it out. But uh, I don't know what how did you feel about that? I mean, he, he ended up winning the duel, so it kind of doesn't matter. But uh, how did you uh, what did you think about that? Would you have, would you have tried to kill the pet there or? Uh, what, what I think I agree with your assessment. Like, it seems like, why not? At the same time, it, it really worked out for Spicy. And yeah, like you, like you mentioned, maybe it was a combo point thing. Like, I have five combos. If I can get there a kidney, I can just end it. I don't want to, like, even mess with my pet. I just want to keep up the pressure and kind of maybe just back turn the pet with an evasion and just kind of ignore it, you know? And it looks like that strategy really paid off. Um, yeah. Now for this next duel, Sots. Sots is a player we haven't covered uh, too much of, but he was one of the, I believe, four players that went 5-0 and yesterday. It was uh, Sony, Snuts, uh, Zico, and, and, and Sots, if I'm not mistaken. And that's really impressive to go 5-0 and in a Swiss bracket because the matchups get harder and harder as you go on because it forces you into a uh, harder and harder opponent. So Sots, 5-0 and on the Priest. I can't stress it enough. Uh, must have some brilliant uh, you know, gameplay in mind to be able to do that. We have this matchup here. I'm not super well versed in Hunter v Priest, but I'm excited to see how this one unfolds and unpacks. We have probably a strategy from Lil Bach of Viper Stings. Uh, song is sweet. Uh, and there it is, the Viper Sting right off the bat. So it's trying to close the gap. We have Cat back with the BM connecting on the Sots in the opener. Another Viper Sting being pressed and, and Sots doing a great job of not only closing the gap and landing the fear, but also removing the Viper Sting swiftly so it doesn't drain his mana. And Little Box gonna come out on the negative side of the mana drain exchange if Sots keeps up with the incredible um, reaction time to those Elixir cleanses on those Viper Stings. We have some decent RNG there on the concussive shot, another Viper Sting coming out, but Little Box mana burning himself because Sots doing so well at the dispel. Sots miles ahead in this duel so far. Stun's coming out. Thorium Nade is being chucked into the air. Sots does have the Viper Sting and realizes it. Takes it off there once again. Sots has the mana advantage, the health advantage, the pressure advantage, oh, the, the cooldown advantage. The sleep. I think that's pretty much it. Mind Flake connects. Little bot goes down and Sots looking like an absolute professional Damn. in this first round of the day. Damn. Yeah, uh, the thing is with Little Bok there, I mean, he, he he had the pressure on him really, really heavy right off the bat. He tried to separate with the sleep. Unfortunately, he had him Serpent Stinged, and uh, I, I guess it was just uh, it got, it got to the point where you're just trying to, oh, what do I do, what do I do? Panic, throw out the sleep, can't can't separate, can't reset, and uh, it just it just kind of fell. So some of these duels are going to be like that. That's, that is vanilla. Some of these duels are really, really long, and some of them are just going to be like that. So um, great showing by Sot, man. Great showing by Sot. I think Lil Bach went in there with one game plan. The game plan was to use those Viper Stings, kite it out, oom the priest, and then take the win. And Sots was like, well, I have Elixir of Poison Resist and had a good keybind for it. It's probably keybound to space bar or something because he pressed it instantly <laughs> every time. And little Sot, there's no there's no cooldown on Viper Sting, right? So he just revipered, it got dispelled, he revipered, it got dispelled, he revipered, it got dispelled, he revipered, it got dispelled. Now, now all of a sudden the hunter was ooming himself. Yep. Dispel, the Elixir of Poison Resist caused zero mana. Viper Sting has a pretty substantial mana cost. So the hunter oomed himself and then the priest took the win because not only was little Bach ooming himself, but he was also doing no damage because if you're viper stinging it comes at the cost of not aim shotting multi shotting arcane shotting uh, other stings uh you know getting damage off solo block is doing no damage mana burning himself and and sot really just looked like a professional I'm, I'm a sot fan i can't wait to see how the rest of the tournament unfolds for him i'm, I'm excited for his next matchup that was that was really uh really well played yeah and uh, i mean that's that reverse mana burn that we were talking about yesterday too it's like a, a lot of times 
you can make these classes that mana burn. Ironically enough, hunters and priests both do that. But uh, you can uh, you can make people burn their mana with uh, with dispels or with other abilities, putting up rank one buffs, and they'll like spam dispelling you, stuff like that. Like for like for a hunter, he's shooting that viper sting and he's forcing it. So um, that's that's great great assessment on that. I think the uh, trying too hard to do nothing basically because it's just immediately getting removed and uh, doing no damage. It's just you're not going to get anywhere with that. And that's going to separate like a good player from a great player. Um, like a, a, a good player will have a strategy in mind. A great player will have a strategy in mind. And when it's not working, change that strategy in real time. And here we have this next duel underway. It's Shadow Priest versus Warlock. Generally, we've seen Warlocks have a slight advantage here. Shadow Priest looks like he's going for early dispels using max range to dispel the priest and to avoid or to dispel the Warlock and to avoid a lot of the incoming pressure, incoming assault here from Madnox. And Fucher's doing that to quite a successful degree here using Shadow Word Pain building up stacks, but the Death Coil comes in. Looks like Fuchsia is actually killing the, the Fell Hunter here, going for the pet kill. Uh, when that second pet comes out, he might go for a second pet kill. Let's go for a long game. Shadow Reflector used, not too much value coming in. And yeah, this might be a little bit longer of a matchup here. Yeah, I could see this going back and forth for a while now. I mean, this is a, it's a pretty classic thing that we see with the Shadow Priest Warlock. Uh, <clears throat> they're constantly going to try and separate. Obviously, Warlocks have a ridiculous amount of sustain, not only for themselves, but for their pets with a health funnel. So if you're trying to kill the pet, they're going to be able to heal it. Uh, the, the life taps, the drain lives, using health as a resource, uh, just l large part of their kit. And then uh, the priest as well, you know, being able to pop out a shadow form, being able to heal themselves. Uh, so I really think this is going to, uh, this is going to go back and forth for a little while. Fooch actually, by the way, Fooch is actually a uh, somebody who was in my guild is, was in Crusade, and I actually met him uh, a week ago. So I uh, just saw him at TwitchCon randomly. But yeah, he's been he's been grinding real hard. So it's uh, it's cool to see a, a guildie of mine get in this. Yeah, that's great. I, I was talking about that with X Zane too. Like seeing those faces that you know, and look how cool this yeah. is. Health funnel healing the pet, mind flay <laughs> damaging the pet. It's like you will not kill my pet. And Nox knows if that pet goes down, it's not going to be great for him. But Future looks like he's certainly on the back foot here, down to twenty percent mana and forty percent life. This is exactly the position Madnox is looking for. Drain mana is coming out. Madnox looking for that long game. Looks like a potion might have been used. A mana pot being used. Looks like Future comes out of shadow form, gets counterspelled or spell locked on the heal and that might be the beginning of the end here for the priest because it's going to cost mana to go back into shot of form which he does but now he's pretty much oom so how are you ever going to create pressure from the position of madnox you just want to keep the priest oom looks like he does uh regenerate some mana there might have been a t a health and mana regenerated looks like the nade come out the inner focus mind blast connects but it doesn't do as much as future wanted and this might spell out the end form for bulk medicine pouch but future <sighs> drops and madnox takes it Rip to your guild, yes, fan. I'm I sorry. Oh, know, I know. I was hoping to see Fooch make a make a run. Fooch was a, was a great. He played. He actually mained a warlock in vanilla. But I was hoping to see a a, a, a great run from Fooch. But unfortunately, it did not pan out. Uh, but yeah, what a what a great duel, man. I mean, that that was one of those where it goes back and forth for a little bit. I, I actually thought it was going to last a little bit longer, but um, going for that medicine pouch late, it just wasn't enough to to keep him up and keep him going. So. Yeah, some of these items are, man, low-level quests that, like, mages, for example, will use Celestial Orb. I believe it's a level, like, 30 mage blue offhand. And normally, like, most players will use it for a bit and then, like, vendor it. But for this tournament, players had the foresight to be like, wait a minute. I could get back a couple hundred mana. That could be the difference between winning and losing. And, like, once again, at that medicine pouch, it's not like it... It's, it's not like an innervator. It's not like it's a... Uh, full heal but it that little edge all of these little things add up right one more resist one more miss one 300 more mana you know and that's why classic wow is so cool like even in pve like warriors going for like one percent more crit like that's a big deal you know and that's what's so yeah. cool to see with these duels every every inch they can get they're gonna take and and competitors really went out of their way with such a big prize pool to min max their gear as much as humanly possible we have gripping versus crazy here in this next matchup this is a warlock mirror matchup we saw a couple of these yesterday and some of the warlock strategies were to kill the pet and then kill the resummon pet and another strategy is just to 
go for the kill on the warlock and and see if you can rush him down i'm curious what these two specific warlocks are going to opt for in this matchup we have dots coming out to the pets here both warlocks opting for the pet kill i wonder if yeah. health funnels are going to be committed well that's something we saw yesterday in the warlock warlock duels uh we, we saw that at the end too where it was like uh going to kill the pets was uh was a win condition Ooh, it was, it was arcane bomb that arcane bomb finish off the pet and the, yes. the the swift resummon coming out there from crazy and from gripping so one pet down from each warlock second pet is up from each warlock and it's really going to be the race to finish on this on this next pet they're not they're kind of ignoring each other for the time being whatever pet falls first it might be a situation that where both second pets fall in that case it would be a true 1v1 with no fell hunters to disrupt the gameplay here but Rallum's pet looks like it's going down yeah so gripping is going to be the one with the pet I believe and crazy is gonna be stuck without it crazy is gonna be on the back foot for a little bit Actually, I might be mistaken. It might be the other. Yeah, it looks like it's the other way on crazy has the pet gripping does not gripping at 50% life still needs to kill that pet No, it is gripping oh, spit. I was right the first time <laughs> <laughs> It's like confusing me that elf funnel. He's trying to save him. He can't quite okay Both warlocks have no pet summon fell hunter coming out from gripping that, <laughs> that Chicken is so annoying dude gripping the push back on the push back on the chicken and the pushback from the chicken actually gave him enough time for uh for for uh, uh is that i'm dude I'm, I'm getting confused back and forth now but it gave him enough time to actually cast the fell hunter as well to, for crazy to cast the fell hunter as well uh after the uh after not starting it until he was maybe halfway through the cast so it was super super funny the the difference that it made that chicken was actually big time it was man and gripping is really low and crazy might have the advantage off that arcane bomb misses unfortunately but crazy has such a big lead here i'm curious if the warlocks are gonna gotta go for the kill now or kill the third pet it looks like both warlocks opting to actually play the game and go for the kill against each other crazy using that offhand spell stone i believe and full fear comes out through it banish comes out from banish. gripping maybe gonna go for a first aid on the banish that was really well done from gripping evening the tides here crazy's getting feared so far i i don't think it's gonna be far enough for the duel to uh, expire. The nice thing about Makaraz is the duel range is really far. We'll see if that is in or out of range. Yeah. Looks like it's in range. He's he's coming back. Crazy, not quite full life yet. Yeah, he was, it, I think it was. I think it was life tapping while he was running back. Is what that looked like. Okay. Like, okay. So he's going for a bandage. I mean, they're basically going for like a full on reset here. They both got their pets up. They uh, they're they're manning up. They're drinking up. Drinking. They're drinking up. They're uh, they're just kind of waiting it out. Looks like they're going for a full on. They're starting the duel over essentially. Both warlocks though, no fell dom, so these pets are going to be extremely fragile. No resummons when they die. So the first player to kill the pet and to commit after that might be the victor. There's a death quail coming out onto crazy and gripping is probably pretty happy with this exchange and this reset because gripping was was definitely on the back foot there and i yeah, think crazy was. might be kicking himself for not pushing his advantage and instead opting for the reset dots coming out and gripping gets the first pet kill now gripping is totally in the driver's seat here and crazy must be super upset with this last minute or so of the duel spell lock into the full fear coming out gripping getting full dots up actually confident enough to go for a life tap into a health stone keeping his health and mana healthy Drain life coming out instead of the drain mana, just really pushing this advantage. Barov string it being used. It's going to summon three helpers to help the onslaught of crazy, but using it defensively like this, we'll see if it can turn the tides. Yeah, it's really important for Gripping to keep pushing this, especially given that they don't have Feldom, right? They, they did a full reset, but they did lose some of their cooldowns, right? The Death Coils and the Feldoms. So what Fell Domination mm -hmm. does, it allows them to cast a pet really fast. But an Arcane Bomb is going out. It misses. The oh. Arcane Bomb misses. Arcane Bomb coming back, changes his mind, starts casting a fear. Gripping really wants to push this on crazy. Lands Ooh. a grenade, and this could be it. And it is. What a finish from gripping who was on the ropes for the entire duel really before that reset they did the full reset and gripping comes back and finishes the job against crazy fantastic man absolutely fantastic job uh yeah with that with that reset that happened they uh it was a full reset but they didn't have some of their cooldowns right i talked about the death coil the fell dom so losing your pet uh, losing your pet first hurts really bad. That fell hunter casts something called a, sp a spell lock. It'll interrupt you. For those of you guys who are maybe new to classic WoW, new to dueling, it can it can spell lock you. So whenever you lose that pet, 
uh, you lose a big portion of your kit. You don't have an offensive dispel. You don't have the spell lock. And uh, obviously, you're, you're losing damage as well from just the, the auto attack straight up. So uh, huge play, man. Huge play after the reset. I know we've touched on it before, but with this much money on the line, with $100,000 on the line, it's really easy to succumb to the seductions of a reset. Let mm -hmm. me get back to full life full mana full yeah. health let me just play safe let me just get full life and i think um unfortunately there for crazy you know it might have been the wrong choice like crazy could have taken the win but instead he's like you know what let me eat the full let me get full health and just re -go, you know go again but on the on the second playthrough it, he didn't quite get the same rng right the, the maybe the resist the crits were different and then gripping took that advantage and i think crazy's like oh man right and that's what we were talking about with a player like uh i think it was zico like knowing when to run but also knowing to be like i can't reset i'm 20 percent life here but i can't reset i have to take the win now or else i'm probably gonna lose and yeah. if we get the full reset my class doesn't work in a way where that's going to be advantageous and in this next matchup we have dakata on the shadow priest up against luxia on that restoration druid does have yeah. a green chest there has quite a bit of stamina another green helm though it looks like luck no, this is Dakota, rather. That Dakota didn't quite have time to get fully bis gear for this tournament. Shadow resist gear, opting in there for Luxia. I like that. One or two resists can spell out the difference here. It's really nice, though, uh, to get shadow resist gear that also might have stamina. Because like you were mentioning yesterday, as Fanda, if you're giving up stamina for resistance, it's really just a gamble. Yeah, like you're, you're going for that RNG, really. You're, you're going to, uh, you're gambling to, hey... I, I'm going to have less total health, right? I'm going to have less total health, but I'm going to go for some resistance and hope that I just avoid the damage altogether instead of taking uh, a lower percentage of my health and damage. So That's right. And we have the dual flag down. Every time this goes down, it's just like, it's just like you can feel the intensity. And I'm so happy Blizzard opted for a unique flag design here. Instead of just a normal dual flag, it's like, no, let's make this one epic so everyone knows what's actually occurring uh, when one of these flags drops. I know when you're outside Orgamar, Stormwind, and you see one of these flags, it's like, okay. You know, even if someone declines, just just seeing it drop is pretty cool. Looks yeah, like yeah. Looks like the duel started here, and Luxia getting the opener on Dakota. Looks like some bleeds are coming out. The full fear connects. Instant trinket from Luxia. Luxia popping that Brav's trinket and connecting a lot of damage here on the Dakata. Cat form, uh, he, he comes out of cat form to get the Moonfire and Insect Swarm. A lot of bleed damage on the Dakata. Um, I'm, I'm curious on the strategy here from Dakata. Looks like purge spam to start with is pretty standard because there's so many buffs these players prepared and just purging all of those buffs off is going to drastically reduce the power level here of Luxia. Shifts out of form, gets the full fear. Well played there from Dakata. Mana pop back to full HP. It looks like our spectator UI is not updating the, the mana quite yet onto Dakata. There it is. 60% mana and 50% for Luxia. R Luxia opting for Wrath Spam into the Rocket Helm to close the gap. It's a pretty nice opener for Luxia. And Luxia using that early interface and spamming those scrolls, the low rank scrolls, the Noggin Fogger Elixir to protect the innervate from being dispelled i really like this play luxia knows if he can get value from the innervate mm -hmm. regenerate mana that he can win in the long game but if that gets purged not so much that will be the beginning of the end if the innervate gets purged jakata is not so happy with that exchange decides to run it out and play an equally long game and decide to run with the ticks of the server to regenerate mana with that water yeah, I mean that's that's the uh, that's that's the big deal there. I mean, especially being able to take the innervate, and, and if you can capitalize on innervate with a with a drink, it's it's absolutely massive. Uh, putting up the uh, putting up the scrolls was also big, like you said. Uh, and right now, I'm kind of surprised. Luxia is uh, there. We go. He, he goes and he opens up on Dakota. He goes in with a feral charge bash combo. He's going in with an arcane bomb. He's going with an arcane bomb to. Uh, I think we might have had a we might have had a little hiccup there with the uh, with the internet or something, but yeah, uh, arcane bomb and uh, going in entangling roots. So he's he's playing out of form a lot right here to uh, try and find him at a range, and uh, I don't know why he dipped out of cat form. We'll uh, we'll see here. Okay, he goes and he's gonna engage. I wonder if he's gonna go with a bash here. He gets feared. How bad am I lagging out? You look great on my end. Okay, yeah, we can just keep going. Uh, so yeah, they're uh, they're going for it. They're uh, they're just fighting. He's just wanding right now. Dakota is just wanding in place. Yeah, so he's mana. 
probably just trying to save as much mana as possible. And one of the nice things about Wand is it, it's actually a fair amount of damage. It's kind of like auto attacking on like a, a warrior, auto attacking on a, you know, a fair a cat, cat form or something. It adds up and it costs no mana. But the best thing about a Wand is that it doesn't count towards this five second rule. And the five second rule is how mana regeneration works, not only in classic WoW, another arcane bomb coming out, Luxia trying to even out that mana advantage. But what, what's nice about wands is the five second rule doesn't get activated. So if you guys are unaware, after five seconds of not casting an ability, you will start to regenerate mana. And Dakota knows this and he knows it and he's playing into that five second rule by using the wand to push the damage primarily. Another nice play from Dakota, drinking with the server ticks, using that five second rule to his advantage, optimizing wand usage to conserve as much mana as possible so that when he needs that mana to finish it off, he'll have exactly what he needs in his back pocket here luxia on the back foot 10 percent mana kiting it out we've seen luxia come back from worse but innervate has been expended dakota's in hot pursuit here insect swarm from luxia mana pot used and i like that nice and early we want to make sure to get the pots on cooldown so we can wait until the next pot comes back up and this could be a longer duel on our hands yeah i mean it looks like this one's just gonna go back and forth sorry about the uh the lag issue apparently i had an issue with the lag uh, I don't know where it came from, but but it's fixed now. So uh, yeah, sorry about that. We're we're uh, we're all good. Uh, I really think Takata's going when, and and playing the slow game on this. Like you said, you you mentioned the uh, taking advantage of like a spirit regen, uh, casting with them, uh, or sorry, saving with that mana, uh, the five second rule, getting his mana per five back from uh, from spirit, and uh, using that wand a lot just to get a little bit of damage in. It's not very much, but. Uh, just getting that little bit of damage in and not actually casting a spell goes a really long way. Um, kiting out, going back and forth with this duel. This could be a long one. This could be this could be big, big, big back and forth. Another full fear That's connects fear. from Dakota. We get a blackout proc, and that's kind of what Dakota needs, right? Like, we need nonstop RNG. We need the, the stars to align, so to speak, for Dakota to actually line up that kill. And Luxia knows that, and Luxia is waiting for his opening. And and like we've, we've mentioned a lot before, a lot of the times in a duel like this, it's waiting for that first person to make a mistake, right? You're kind of just staring them in the eyes and waiting for a mistake to happen, and boom, when they make, when they make a mistake, you, you take your kill. And that's exactly what Luxia is doing. Luxia, very experienced player here in the PvP scene, and he knows this, and he's maybe not in the matchup that he wants here, but waiting for Dakata to slip up. The unfortunate truth here for Luxia is Dakata is not slipping up. He's playing an incredible game here. There's that, uh, uh, that bomb being used. Silence coming out from Dakata. Aggressively, Luxia getting very low. Bash comes out. Swift men to follow. So Luxia is talented in that Swift men, just like yesterday. Inner focus dots coming out to keep keep that mana conservation up from Dakota. Luxia uses the mana pot, and I really like the early mana pot from about two minutes ago because it probably saved him there to have that another mana pot. Now, here's the thing. If Dakota presses his advantage too hard, Dakota will oom, and then Luxia can win. And Dakota knows this. He's keeping that mana around 30 or 40%. You might be thinking, why doesn't he just spam Mind Flay and Mind Blast, whatever? It's like, well, if Dakota goes Oom, um, Luxia doesn't die, gets the reset. Luxia can then keep Dakota Oom um, and take the win. And that's why both players are playing so passively here. It's like, well, you know, we, we don't want to we don't want to get to that situation where we're going in. We want to save a little bit of mana to, to maintain a little bit of healthy HP here. Luxia, though, pushing in with that arcane bomb, and that could turn the tides for him. Dakata dotted up that mithril, mechanical mithril dragonling uh, doing damage to Dakata. And Luxia has just taken any little bit of help he can get. Yeah, I mean, it, like you said, I mean, Luxia, and this is how druids play, right? Druids want to kite it out. This is this is their game trying to run around a whole bunch. Uh, Chance mentioned it yesterday too, and that's with the Makaraz, when you have three times the dual range of like a normal duel, that's a huge advantage for Druids. Uh, if, if this is your playstyle, if this is your game, if this is your matchup where you want to go and you want to kite out as much as possible and you want to stall it out as much as possible, possible. Uh, I, I think the way Dakota is playing it where, uh, where he's just trying to conserve mana con and, and not let Luxia go and get that full reset and have the mana advantage over him, uh, is really, really smart. I mean, you can even see he's drink walking towards him now at this point because he knows Luxia has the range. Luxia has that move speed bonus from travel form. He's going to be able to just straight up run away from him. And that all 
also is one of the downsides of being a Shadow Priest, right? You have a Mind Flay which slows them, but when you slow them with a Mind Flay, you are standing in place, right? So they are gaining distance on you regardless. It's not as much distance as if they weren't slowed at all, but you're still standing in place and they're still gaining distance. Outside of that, you only have uh, Blackout procs from uh, spamming Shadow or Pain or something like that that you can hope for. Uh, otherwise, movement is really, really bad. Mobility is really, really uh, a, a strong counter towards Shadow Priest. Like, if you can kite them out, it's uh, it's pretty tough for them. So I do think Dakota is probably playing this as, as, as well as he possibly can. Yeah, I absolutely love it. I, I do want to clarify uh, on the rules for flask usage. I saw some, some comments on it. Flasks um, are allowed, but you can only have three flasks in your inventory, and players opted into an inventory check before check-in uh, today. So each player will have three flasks. If you do use that flask at low mana, it'll give you a bit of mana, but you have to keep in mind, we have a long day of duels. If you use a flask in that first duel, you only have three for the full day. Mm -hmm. um, so that is something important for these players to remember. But it's like, hey, if, the, if you have a flask to use and you don't use it and you die, well, it's not going to do much, you know, for you when you're dead. So you want to, it's like this very difficult balancing act of using enough consumables to push you further ahead in the tournament but not overusing consumables when you don't need them because yep. you might need them later in the day in those harder and harder matchups well, well they're saving it for the next hardcore tournament <laughs> they're saving yeah, well, it for the next Magara. oh here's a push here's a push from dakota silence doing a comes. bunch of damage mind play spam he's got a mind blast he goes into the fear he goes and he puts a blanket silence on him luxia trying to get away trying to burn his mana to try and keep himself up as much as possible throws a sleep on dakota dakota has his ears pinned back and he's ready to close on luxia but unfortunately for him luxia sleeps him and gets away and we are probably going to be back in a kite fest for another five minutes so, <laughs> <laughs> i mean here's the Here thing go. though like his luxia has Luxia ever pushed Akata to feel really scared, right? It seems like Luxia has been on the run, really. Luxia has mm -hmm. gone to sub 10% life. Uh, multiple times now, and Dakota is really just playing a, a good mana game. He's not ever really that afraid. So if Luxia is never pushing Dakota to, to feel like he has to play defensively, I mean, I don't see how this goes Luxia's way. Having said that, Luxia might be able to turtle this out all day with with mana potions and healing up and and i mean as i say that takata now uh you know is in kind of the back seat here uh luxia uses the mana pot and takata has 15 percent life he's going for mana burn it will be max range it's well played there from luxia kind of playing that max distance and playing at like 32 yards and whenever there's something casted you could go to 36 yards or same thing with like 24 and 27 yards and, mm -hmm. and knowing that distance in your head as like a pseudo method of like line of sighting or like a pillar to stop that interrupt very well played from luxia luxia charges in and looks like things have evened out once again mindfully being cast an arcane, arcane bomb, bomb. It misses he missed the arcane bomb because he th i think he was predicting that dakota would move and dakota didn't so he ends up missing that arcane bomb. They, that arcane bomb is is terribly difficult to hit because it's a long cast time and you can't move while you're doing it. So it, it definitely throws it off compared to like a thorium grenade or something like that. But Luxia getting very, very, very low. That's the war stomp. Dakota might be able to finish it off here depending on what consumables. Luxia, I don't think has a mana pot available. Nothing left is mind blast if it crits. Could spell it out for Luxia. 5% and Luxia goes down. Huge finish from Dakota. It was the perfect RNG, right? Like, Luxia's kind of low. He's caught out. He's trying to reset, and that's when the blackout came in. That's when you start seeing the crits. No resist. Mm -hmm. It went perfect for Dakota at the end, and I've really got to commend Dakota here today. That was really picture-perfect play with the server tick mana drinking, with the mana consumption, with the wand usage, with the consumables. He played patient. He I didn't let Luxia, patience. you know, turn it around, He and he just he was persistent but patient, and it's exactly what you need in that matchup and dakota came out ahead well played yeah I, I think the patience was what was so impressive i mean uh some of these matchups will come down to it's it's like a boxing match where they come in and they're 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 not coming in swinging but they're trying to tap and, and kind of just jab each other feel each other out get get hits on people and see what happens and uh when they get the open they go for it and right there with dakota 
uh, to your point, it was he, he got the blackout proc and he got the tee off, right? He, and he had the chance to tee off earlier, didn't finish, right? Didn't finish because of the sleep and, and uh, uh, Luxia got to, uh, got to separate there. It happened again, I think really after that arcane bomb. And I would say even before the arcane bomb, right before that, if you noticed, uh, Dakota had low mana, started drinking and got debuffed before Moonfire. I think it was an insect swarm. Now, if you get hit with a debuff, it doesn't stop your drinking. It, you can get hit with a debuff and it won't stop your drinking. You need to get hit with something that does damage, like a Moonfire that does instant damage and then do, uh, ticks afterwards. So that's why uh, you saw Dakota's mana tick up after uh, after he was casting on him is because he didn't do that direct damage to him yet. So, uh, so yeah, he ended up getting a little bit of mana. After that, the Arcane Bomb missed, and then it was the tee off. So super, super impressive. Super, super impressive by Dakota, that patience and, and being able to finish. I love it. This is an important... Right here. This is an important duel here. Sony on the Warrior versus a Warlock. Warlock actually having a really nice opener. Summons the Voidwalker, sacks it, and summons another one. So there's Sony has so many shields to get through. Yone's doing a really great job of kiting with the FAP and the Sprint Boots. And Sony's finding himself in a really tricky position early on in this matchup. Sony had that full rage, but already expended it. Now he's going to go max range, potentially look for a mount up here. The charge was stopped with that Curse of Agony. That was well played from Yonez. And this this Warrior versus Warlock matchup, I can't stress enough, could be the, the information we need to see how the rest of this tournament's really going to play out. We have the Arcane Bomb and it Big lands. Arcane bomb. Well played from Sony. That's a five second silence, mana train, and damage done onto Yones. There's a two stack Sunder from Sony. He's building damage big shadow to really lock, go. Big pummel. Yeah, to, to really go crazy here. The first pet is about to die. Hopefully, the sacrifice comes off from Yones. I don't know if he knows it's about to die. If Sony gets that execute before the pet goes down, there will be no sacrifice shield. There's the coil and the fear. Great Berserker Rage into an intercept. A lot of damage connecting. There's a second shield summoning another Voidwalker. So much damage for Sony to get through. But not only that, it's preventing the rage generation yep. because he's hitting into the absorb shields. Yones going in for the auto attack, popping the lip into the full fear. No break for Sony. Sony. He's Torin. No Berserker Rage available to him. And this is the time Yones needs to life tap and bandage up. This is your safety zone. When that warrior gets back on you, I'm it's going to be a world of hurt. But Sony at 95% life still and gets mounting up. Before he gets hit again, look at him avoiding that Voidwalker. Just, just well, reducing the damage just a little bit, a little bit. And it keeps him out of combat so that he can go and get a charge in. Huge, huge play by Sony. Yeah, and it looks like Sony's reconnecting and getting a second Arcane Bomb. I mean, dude, this looks like Sony's duel to win here. Mortal Strike comes out. Another Fear being cast, but immune with the Zerker Rage. That's going to be 30 seconds. We get to tee off here from Sony, or maybe not quite 30. Uh, there's the net coming out. Yones gets the uh, distance, and Sony closes the distance with the Goblin Rocket Helmet. Immediately, Howl of Terror. But how is Yones going to get out of the situation? Sony's full life. Shadow locked here on the drain life. It's not going to be enough. Sony is doing so much damage, going for another intercept play, potentially. There's another pet to sacrifice from Yones. A Howl of Terror coming out, potentially, for those pets as well. Sony finds himself uh, pretty far from Yones here, the Warlock, but I just don't know how Yones is ever going to get enough pressure going to kill him and this makes me scared for any warlock in the tournament against a warrior the sack comes out just in the nick of time for the shield to come out and sony aware of that and decides to maybe just play defensive and and kite out this 30 second shield and then go I, in afterwards i think he's gonna try and mount up here he's trying trying to uh he's probably gonna try and eat mount up if he can and try and re-engage he gets back in content con combat so he's not able to uh, and re-engages here. Now, keep in mind, Yones does not have any more Absorb Shields. The Absorb Shields do prevent you from getting Rage, which uh, obviously is, is pivotal, pivotal in this matchup. Did he? I think he missed that Arcane Bomb right there, and uh, he's just pulling out the crossbow, trying to make sure he doesn't get out of combat so he can drink. So that one hit of that crossbow, while it might have not been any damage or many, much damage, it keeps him in combat, and he's going to have Berserker Rage back up. He uses it, and he's going to be able to tee off here, and this is his chance to finish. He's going to get him in Execute Rage and finish right here boom there it is sony winning his first match of the day against yones incredible and excuse me i was wrong i said arcane bomb did hit i didn't see it hit but uh it did hit but incredible dude absolutely incredible Dude, something really cool about this tournament that I just kind of realized is the winner is going to have what like 5 or 6 ears 
just by oh, default. Yeah, true. Like they're gonna have this character forever with like five or six years kind of vibing, and everyone will know like what kind of happened here. And that's so cool. Like so, Sony got an ear there for beating the lock. If Sony wins today, he's gonna have a bunch of ears racked up. And man, if I was a warlock dueling Sony, I'd be scared. Like, I'd be scared. Like, Sony just played that so well. So much damage yeah. was coming out. There was no blunders. I mean, I, I must say it was well played from Yones. I, I can't really can't really uh, pinpoint no, any, like, large mistakes. Yeah, no, I think I think Yones played great. Uh, I, I think it was just uh, Yones played great. Sony played great. And he, he that that's a matchup that favors them and uh, that favors the Warriors. And it just, it just panned out for him. So... Man, I would love to see like a Sony versus Snut later today or something like that. It would be a really yeah. fun matchup to get to watch. But speaking of fun matchups, we have Rocket Man, which is Perplexity for those of you Perplexity fans out there, versus Exens, the Shadow Priest. We've seen matchups like this go back and forth. We saw Perplexity in the qualifiers yesterday win against a Priest and lose against a Priest. Um, and today, I think he's going to try to do everything he can to, to build up that advantage to not take another loss against the priest xns though knows this i believe has some practice versus rogues as well and this, this could be this could go either way it's a close matchup here yeah no for sure i think uh i i think seeing what what uh perp can do against the shadow priest i know perp was a uh <clears throat> he's a he's a bit of a fan favorite he's competed in i'm pretty sure every single dueling tournament that that uh has existed for the cdl and all that so it's uh it's always fun to see perp play sap coming out and perp's patient he's going for a max range resell the heartbreak heartbeat break does happen there in the favor of xns having said that perplexity gets that restealth off so it's not a massive massive deal here xns kiting it out there's uh inner fire refresh and potentially another power word shield refresh xn sitting down for a sip to make sure he's in the best position possible for when uh rocket man decides to open here another full duration sap cheap shot coming out and another reset just to clarify for for viewership there is a rule that says the rogue has to open within 60 seconds but strategic acts like this like sapping and cheap shotting and running and restealthing to build combo points is 100 percent legal this is part of rogue strategy it's similar to a mage sheeping to to build that advantage and that's that's part of what we're seeing here right now is rocket man pushing every advantage he can as the rogue player with so much money on the line he wants to do everything he can here yeah, I mean, I, I mean, it's, it's that's absolutely it. I mean, he's trying to wait to get his perfect opener, um, and we're gonna we're gonna wait for him too. <laughs> trying to get as many, trying to get as many combo points as he can. Those classic rugs, dude. Typical rugs. Yeah, and and here's the thing, like, it, what's the old old saying? It's like, don't hate the player, hate the game. Like, I'll I'll see some comments and when uh druid is kiting out and people are like oh come on fight him and it's like dude you can't be mad at the druid playing how druid is supposed to play and you can't be mad at a mage for pollying and running when that's how a mage is supposed to play and similar here you can't really get mad at a rogue for sapping building combo points with cheap shots and getting that exposed up because that's how rogues are supposed to play at like the highest end level um so for me that's just how the game design ended up panning out and the players uh you know with a lot of money on the line are doing everything they can to ensure the victory and and for me that, that's how i see it i don't i don't see it as uh, a big deal besides that yeah no absolutely oh that's the arcane, oh, bomb, arcane opener. bomb opener okay we are yeah, we were talking about this from yesterday, the Sap Arcane Bomb opener to get that value, although it might have resisted. I didn't see the silence come through, and that's not the opener Perplexity was looking for after two to three minutes of preparation. There's the Goblin Rocket Helm from the Priest to build uh, distance and dispels, oh, oh, but it breaks. Heartbeat. Yeah, you got the big heartbeat resist there. He was trying to clean him after the uh, after the Rocket Helm, but uh, Xen, it really, he, he is on the ropes here. I mean, uh, if he gets, yep, there it is. If he gets blinded, I was going to say, uh, this is going to give Perp the opportunity to go in and reopen on him again. Uh, if he can last out the, uh, the the Shadow of Pain, which he realized he couldn't. So, uh, but he went and he did Vanish Cheap Shot. And uh, here we are. 
Full Fear comes out, Trinket to reply, Closing. Goblin Rocket Closing. Helm to close the gap. XN in a world of hurt or about to be 26% life. I mean, what do you really do? Perplexity's at full life here, building the combo points with the Cheap Shot Priest, uh, uses the no mission visibility trinket and some sprint movement speed. It looks like the Skull of Impending Doom. Well, oh, nice combo there. Huge. Tidal oh, the Charm title though charm. from Perplexity to close the gap. Uh, Blind Sand misses, Vanish Cheap Shot coming out. This is fantastic play from both ends. Will have Forsaken to answer the fear from X ends. Power word shield used, but he's tapped. Sprint to close the gap. Cold Blood comes in and X ends falls. Huge, huge, huge play by Perp. So the thing we saw there that Perp did, and we talked about it with Fairy Fire and the Druid duel earlier. So he had a dot on him, but he got out of combat, right? So he was able, he looked at the dot tick, and it's ticking, 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 ticking. It ticks, he stealth cheap shots in between the ticks. So he, even though he has a dot on him, he's still able to reopen on him. And uh, Perp played that beautifully. Just absolutely phenomenal. Just uh, going in with that blind reset and then uh, the gap closer with the uh, uh, the Goblin Rocket Helm as well. So uh, phenomenal duel by, by, by Perp. And we have him facing Sony in the next round. That'll be a fun one to watch, man. I can't wait to see how these brackets shape up as we get closer and closer to these uh, finals. In the next matchup, though, we get to watch Peo. And Peo, if you guys haven't seen him, he's a, he's a great streamer. He's always fun and entertaining to watch. And he's just an absolute character. He, he's a ball to watch. If you guys want to watch it from his perspective, I do believe he's live right now. Check him out. Um, and we have Peo versus Flop. And Peo looks like he has the cold blood pre-pop, the goblin rocket helm equipped, and, and Flop. Flop. Probably, you know, a little a little nervous for the burst that Peo has prepared here today. If the uh, duel goes long, though, and Flop kites it out, it can be a bit scary um, because once the rogue's out of those big cooldowns to press, and that's kind of what the, the druid is turtling for, that's it. Like, there's nothing the rogue can do, but the cheap shot opener comes out. There's the cold blood gouge, and here's a lot of bursts about to happen from Peo. The bear form, though, might circumvent that a little bit. Crusader proc, kidney shot lands, and Peo doing his best to collect as much damage as possible. Yeah, Peo, the Pokemon trainer, coming back in. He's pulling out <laughs> all his pets, as always. He's got, uh, he's, uh, <clears throat> so you can see he does have the rocket helm equipped and he's showing it. A lot of these guys don't show their helms, but he's got his, uh, he's got his rocket helm equipped. He gets it used on himself. Flop uses the rocket helm against him. Uh, and Peo is, he's getting kited out here. I would have liked to see Peo just go full aggro and use the rocket helm to close the gap there. Oh, there oh, it is. He's there using it now. <laughs> so yeah, he, he goes in, closes the gap with this. Pets are not attacking. He does have a fairy fire on him, so he can't really do anything. He uses a T, or he uses a, uh, is that a Resto Bot, I think he used, to try and get rid of it, but it didn't come off. He can't re-stealth. Uh, he goes, he, oh, it was a Moist Towelette. There we go. I was, uh, I was just told it was a Moist oh. Towelette, so. Uh, yeah, so he goes in, and uh, yeah, he's closing in on him now with a blind. He doesn't have anything on him, so he does have a chance to re-stealth on him. As long as we don't get a Heartbeat Resist here, he does have a chance to re-stealth and reopen on him, and he can press him, and he is out of form. Keep that in mind. He is out of form, stunned. He's going to go probably take this into... He goes into bear form. Didn't didn't get a kidney shot off of it. Might have been on cooldown. Uh, Flop is trying to separate. He's in cat form. He's dashing. He's back into travel form, trying to get away, but it is unable to do that. And Peo takes the win against Flop. Fantastic job by Peo, pushing the advantage. Unbelievable, man. Unbelievable job of Peo. That was great pushing the advantage there. Uh, I, I love seeing the, the aggressive play, using that Goblin Rocket Helm whenever Flop started to get away. Uh, I think he hesitated a little bit, but he, he definitely he turned around, decided to go ahead and send it, and it was great. So really, really good. Yeah, really, really good job by Peo there. Uh, great duel. Great duel. We have we had a earlier matchup against Bobka and Spo, and that looked like such a hard matchup for the rogue to finish the druid and i must say peo looked like a pro there he took flop out it looked easy peo was full life the whole time peo landed that kidney shot when flop was out of form flop was forced to shrink it and then peo instantly throws out the blind the fairy fire fell i mean that is just not the duel flop was looking for by any means peo must be feeling pretty good with himself after that one we have Hunter versus Warrior up next. And man, that's just another shout out to the uh, the team behind us. Like the fact that we're just getting duel into duel into duel. It's just nonstop action for hours is great. Uh, and we do have some green gear here from, from Gukars. And 
that's obviously not the optimal setup that we're looking for but he did make it to the top 64 competitors today which is still very very impressive to be here and we have zero eyes of the beast we have those swift boots on we have the fur bulgs medicine pouch and that nifty stopwatch lots of different items and gear to use and that's the unique and exciting thing about classic world of warcraft is we get those items from random quests uh random turn-ins or random purchases and the fap pre-used by zero on the charge and the charge actually doesn't go through in the rule set anything goes we pretty much have no rules no guaranteed openers nothing it's just it's a makara play your class play your game and and that's exactly what's happening here zero getting the opener he's looking for pre-pops the fap gets the distance Gawkers just can't connect at all a lot of cooldowns already used from Gawkers, 50 percent life and that fap's gonna fall from both sides shortly here yeah, he goes in. I mean, he, he loses a lot of health. I think I saw him, uh, I think I saw him Diamond Flask, but uh, apparently not, because his, uh, his health doesn't seem to be going up at all. Maybe Diamond Flask without changing his gear. Uh, but he is really just on the ropes here. Yeah, no, it was a Diamond Flask. He didn't have any plus healing on. That's what it was, because his health is going up now. So, uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he's completely on the ropes now. Uh, Ziroji, very good hunter. He's got the distance on him. Pops Recklessness. Uh, that Reckless is going to make him take more damage. I think I just saw Reckless's pop, and uh, I don't really think that was a good idea. Ziroji is just going to take him out here. He's just going to, I think he's just going to kite him out and be able to finish him. Uh, comes back in with the intercept. He's he's on him. Ziroji is probably going to wing clip spam him, trying to hope for a proc. And there oh. it is. There's that wing clip proc, that uh, improved wing clip proc. Gets back out of range, out of the dead zone, while Gucker is trying to get back into it but it's going to be to no avail. Zoroji leaving no doubt, making sure he's full health, not underestimating him, making sure that he does his due diligence, getting as much health and stuff as possible as he can, gets the trap out, gets the distance, and makes sure that uh, there's no chance for Gucker to come back and, and finish this duel. Zero looking like an absolute pro, doing what he needed to do. And I mean, let's be honest, that wasn't close. Zero looking prepared and ready to battle today. Guckers falls, unfortunately, but yeah, man, that was a good duel. Zero just prepped with that opener too. I like that prefab. Like right when the countdown was like three, two, one, he faps in case the warrior gets that charge. He could instantly get away without any slow happening or a, a, that little mini stun from the charge happening. Um, with fap, if you have a slow on you and then use that free action potion it's not going to get rid of the slow so you have to pre-pop it if you don't want to get slowed and that was really nice insight there predictive play there from zero very well done yeah really clean really clean i mean zero zero is uh i mean he's a pro man and and i think uh having having the um having the presence of mind to to be like okay like look i know this is i'm i'm winning this i'm way ahead this is looking really good I'm not going to do anything stupid and fall asleep and, and give the guy a chance to come back on me. So uh, I think that was great. Yeah, in the next matchup, we have uh, Steven versus Gordon. It's going to be a Druid Mirror. I'm, I'm really sad uh, Chance isn't here to cast this one. Uh, just for clarity to you guys, uh, Chance could not be here today. He's doing a, a, a planned 24-hour stream uh, for Halloween. Uh, and we're missing him here today with this Druid expertise. A lot of the expertise of these duels. We have uh, Steven and Gordon up after this. And yeah, that's going to be potentially one of those longer duels. Chance was explaining how it works yesterday in detail. And what he was saying was it was if you go cat form, you get hibernated. So you don't want to go cat form. Yeah. And if you use uh, like Moonfire and Insect Swarm, you can't hibernate. So you don't want to like use Moonfire and Insect Swarm. And if you cast Wrath, it's less mana efficient than just healing because someone else will take the damage heal and get the mana advantage. So you don't want to cast Wrath. You don't want to Moonfire. You don't want to Insect Swarm. You don't want to go Bear. You don't want to go Cat. So Chance was kind of saying like, the best thing you can do in a Druid Mirror is just to start hitting them and you just yeah. whack them down and that's it. You know what I mean? And uh, so we'll see if that happens or if some of these competitors have planned out a strategy that might be unique to that. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I think I think you hit the nail on the head with this one. And oh, it looks like they went ahead and started. We are going to take a break, uh, a short break after this duel, because I suspect that we are going to need it. Uh, Druid versus Druid. This could last a long time. We'll see. Looks like it might be going a, a little quicker than expected. Gordon at 40% life already in cat form. They're kind of committing. Stevenson, Bear, Gordon's and Cat. And I respect these players for, for giving us some quality entertainment today. Gordon, though, coming out of form, war stomp into that regrowth. 
69% mana back in the cat. Once again, Gordon's committing. Not that he necessarily needs to, but he is. And Steven playing the long game of just efficiency and bear. More armor, a little bit less damage. But in terms of the trade, looks like he might be coming out slightly ahead. I don't know Steven's exact mana total, but since he's been in bear so long, probably close to full. Gordon just going with claws, trying to build damage. And maybe Gordon has built himself a slight lead here. Steven at 68% mana. Title charm from Gordon out of form on Steven. Very well played. Looks like Innervate's being used from Gordon. Not sure if Steven has it quite yet. Innervate from both sides being committed. And this duel looks fairly even. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is just uh, it's just going back and forth right now. And, and I, I fully suspect that this is what we are going to get for a few minutes here. I mean, even though their, their healths are both low, I mean, they, they've uh, got a fair amount of man mana out of form. You see Steven just hopped out and he's at 84%. I'm sure we're going to see uh, what Gordon's at in just a moment here. Um, yeah, 100%. <laughs> so, yeah, these guys are going to be able to keep themselves up. These guys are pros. They're, uh, uh, this this duel is going to take a minute for sure. Absolutely. I can't remember the exact item name at this, at this moment. It's escaping me. But there is an item that makes the druid flee if they're flash bomb, uh, if they're in cat form or bear form. And that flash bomb coming in so like pro there. And it's like one of those things that the competitors have to keep in mind of like, okay, if I'm in form, flash bomb can happen, you know? And then that, it, that can build your advantage here. Looks like Arena Grandmaster being used here from Steven, coming out of form, getting dots up, then back in the bear form. And this is super interesting, right? Because we have Steven, who's opting for a slow bear form strategy. And we have Gordon, who's spent the majority of this duel in cat form. Arcane Bomb coming out in human form. Such a good play from Gordon. He's burning the mana from Steven with the bash. He went bear. Oh, and there's to that keep... tweet. Uh, that's that tea with sugar that he just used. He just used that tea with sugar, that uh, mana and health potion another flash bomb used as well the t would use all of these different items being used i just want to stress that was such a good play from gordon mm -hmm. gordon catches steven in human form by going to bear form bashing him out of form and then arcane bombing like plays like that are going to be the difference maker here today especially in a mirror matchup when you're playing the same class as yourself steven oh, though replies with it Great War Stomp. Yeah, that awareness on the Reselt. He gets the War Stomp, one of the few AoEs available to him. The Hibernate comes out onto Gordon. And, and this he gets duel... the Hibernate out of form. I guess it got batched. The tiny little batch one of the, that, that exists. So something else that happened there that was uh, really impressive from Gordon. Gordon separated, and he popped a Mana Pot before he drank. And a lot of people might see that as a waste of a Mana Pot, but it's not because he knows he doesn't have enough time. And he was able to get to 100% Mana before they re-engaged. Super impressive. Definitely. We have the double bear action going on. I am curious what's going on inside of Gordon's head right now, right? He spent the majority of the duel in cat well, that form. flash bomb going out again, that fear. So he got a flash bomb off him, and it gives Steven a chance. Steven was on the ropes a little bit, gets him a chance to separate. He is majorly losing the mana battle. So uh, we'll see what he does here. He's, uh, it looks like he's going to try and get out. Oh, nice. Huge, huge stun. Steven the, using uh, that Goblin Rocket, Rocket Helmet for another reset. Steven at 10% mana. I'm, I'm curious if what Gordon's mana, it says 100%, but I, I don't know if it was a UI uh, error there. When when Gordon leaves combat, we can maybe uh, see. Maybe he is just maybe he is just at full mana. Oh my gosh, if, that, if that's true, Gordon has a huge, huge, huge lead right now. He can press. The Hibernates, though, that's what's tricky, right? Because the Hibernates are being casted. And if he stays in cat form, he eats them. But if he leaves cat form, it's a pseudo mana train coming in from Steven, right? Because he's faking these uh, hibernates over and over, forcing the shift. And then all of a sudden, if look at the Gordon's mana, yeah, down to 40%. So it's really well played from Steven to just spam those hibernates to force the shifts to come out. And Gordon eventually is going to have to uh, succumb to the hibernate. Just be like, okay, I'm going to get hibernated here because I want to mana the shift forever. So then it sits. And that's the reset Steven's looking for. And that's why um, Chance's explanation yesterday was so on point is because... I mean, wh what are you going to do if, if if you can't go in cat form and you have to shift? Then really one of these optimal plays might become kind of just waiting uh, and playing uh, responsively to the other druid. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's that's a that's a really, really good point, because uh, whenever you're whenever you're in that situation, it, it eventually just turns into this, this back and forth that we keep seeing. Right. Like it's because they, they go one one guy does it one way, one guy does the same thing. And, and they all know what you're going to do. Uh, you got the hibernate going out. But it, oh, he, he, he changed forms, got him to swap forms, do that, doing that pseudo mana drain that you talked about. And then Steven is low, but he still has plenty of mana, so he's gonna be able to heal up here. 
Arcane bomb, arcane bomb floor, going out. Massive arcane bomb. Is he going to be able to do anything off of it? No. We are in a Druid versus Druid battle because Gordon got flat bombed again. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these matchups just go this way, and that's and that's classic WoW. Is you know sometimes it happens. Gordon using the uh, or got magic dust there from Steven. Steven trying to drink and eat back up. If we could get a mouse over on Steven, yep, ninety four percent mana now. And Steven going bear. Gordon gets that restealth with Cat. Gordon can uh, sit in stealth for up to sixty seconds if you would like, but after that he has to open up. Uh, Steven in the mana lead. Steven maybe even with a slight health lead, but we've seen this duel go back and forth um, here. I, I, I must commend the players. I, I'm really excited that they're actually, you know, uh, in cat form and in bear form instead of just auto attacking, though. This is great. I think seeing gameplay like this, we will see an end at some point. Uh, fairy fire landing onto Steven just in case the re stealth comes out. And then, yeah, once again, I'm really curious why Gordon is opting for that cat form and steven opting for that bear it looks like gordon is just taking so much damage um, I, well, I think i think what he's trying to do in cat form is he's, he's trying to put the bleeds up right and the bleeds go and they they avoid the armor so I, I i really think he's trying to go for just damage at the cost of hey i'm in cat form and bear doesn't really do much damage anyway that's that's what i that's what i think he's thinking now you're probably spot on there. Steven now pushing that advantage with the flash bomb, with the insect swarm, with the bleeds, and Steven himself going cat form, and Gordon now back to bear. So they kind of swapped roles here, uh, so to speak. Now Steven popping up the insect swarm has the bleeds rolling as well from cat. Decides to kite it out a little bit with the root. Gordon getting out of that root, bear charge into the bash, into another arcane bomb. I love the arcane bomb plays here from Gordon. It's, it's great yeah. that every every uh, minute or so he's trying to get that bash out of form on the arcane bomb to kind of uh, burn steven's mana and like w landing one of those might not be that big of a deal but landing two three four five of those could be the difference in like a 10 minute duel because over 10 minutes you're burning yeah like fifteen thousand mana and that that could be the difference gordon gets stunned here steven kites it out gets nature locked though on the feral charge gordon reconnects Damage coming in from Steven, and that's another T committed from Steven. So all that hard work from the Arcane Bomb from Gordon's kind of been erased with that big T coming out. Once again, uh, that's a three-use item. You can use three times from a quest. It'll give you a substantial amount of health and mana. And Gordon committing that second Innervate of the duel. Uh, Steven has that Innervate back up, because last Innervate, they used him at the same exact time. Yeah, I... Uh... I mean, you can see both their health is, is getting low here, but I don't actually think it's it's nearly as close to finish as, as people might think. They're both like neck and neck on health. I mean, you get that stun out flash bomb. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe oh, the flash oh. bomb can finish it. Oh. Hold your horses. Steven. Hold your horses. Gordon me. finishes it. Oh my wow. god. There right when go. we were thinking, like, is this ever gonna end? Gordon's like, dude, yes, I, yes it will. <laughs> I was so like, dude, there's no way this is gonna end right here. That's great, man. Fantastic with the flash bomb. So the flash bomb is a fear, but you can you can hit them while they're flash bombed. It doesn't break instantly. So uh that's uh that's why he was using the flash bomb in that way. A lot of times in duels you'll see people use a flash bomb. It's a it's a consumable that you can use to scare scare beasts. Um the, the, they'll use it to separate real quick. Um, they're separate and be able to, to be able to heal. Sorry, I had production in my ear. Uh, to be able to heal, to be able to reset, something like that. But also, you can use it offensively to be able to to be able to push, and that was cool to see. So, um, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna run to the bathroom real quick. Uh, I I don't know if I, I guess we uh, we aren't gonna take a break from the next duel, but I I need to run to the restroom, and I I will be back as soon as possible. So, uh, Zaryu can. Uh, I'll cover it away for a duel. Yeah. I'll be back ASAP. So sweet. Next yeah, matchup, right we have flames versus stars. This happens to be a mage mirror matchup. Really, uh, actually great time for the restroom because mage versus mage. I love this stuff. Having said that mage versus mage guys is one of those duels just like druid versus druid or maybe just like lock versus lock or priest v priest where, well, you just kite out. Right. And the mage that gathers a mana advantage over many, 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 many minutes over a lot of small plays will come out ahead. Now, alternatively, 
there's a rushdown strategy that mage versus mage often opt for. So if both mages are kind of impatient and they're like, you know what, let's do this thing, let's play, both mages can kind of just run in, collide, Kona Cold Fire Blast, Arcane Explosion, spam with Arcane Bombs, and it's just a lot of damage coming in at once, and one of the mages can just die. Um, having said that, we're going to go to a short break, <laughs> and we're going to watch that matchup right after this. Um, I'm really excited for this one, guys, so don't go anywhere. All right, guys, we are back. And like we were mentioning before, and Esfond's back too in just a second, we have Flames versus Stars. It's going to be that Mage v. Mage matchup. And I don't think we have seen a single Mage v. Mage yet. I might be incorrect there. Maybe we can get uh, the admins to take a look at the brackets from yesterday. I don't think we've seen a Mage v. Mage at all. So this will be really cool new ground to discover. Um, welcome back, Esfond. We have not jumped quite into the game yet, but we're about to see a pretty epic duel on our hands. Yeah, I uh, I mean, Mage v. Mage can be pretty crazy because uh, you will get a lot of resets. I I don't know. I, I think we did. We may have gotten one yesterday. I don't know, but admins can check and, and they can let us know. But, yeah, Mage v. Mage can be kind of crazy because uh, we talked a lot about the uh, uh, how, how people can go from playing defensive to, to offensive. And, and Zico is a really good example of somebody who does that really, really well. That, I think, is a, a key trait that you need to have whenever you want to win that mirror matchup as a mage and you know better than anybody i mean you're 
I mean, you're the mage guy. So how, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, if so, there's there's two ways the duel can go. And I was, I was starting to explain that before the break. Right. Both mages can decide. Let's go all in that. Like the downside is if you're one of the mages that decides to go all in, the other mage decides to play patient, then you kind of spend all your mana. The other mage resets on you and you just lose. It's over. Like, like you're, you're done. If both mages go all in, it's just going to be like a one minute duel. And whoever gets more crits, more RNG, less resist and uses better globals and better items is going to come out ahead. Now, if both mages decide to play patient and I would expect with this much money on the line, that's what we'll see. It's a lot of waiting for like a frostbite proc to get uh, shatter combos off. It's a lot of um, running away and kind of waiting for that other mage to make a mistake. It's a lot of, okay, this mage used a fire blast and a cone of cold, which are not mana efficient spells. Hmm, I'm noticing that. They're starting to spend their mana. Let me kite out and just use rank one frost bolts for a while. Let that mage go from 70% mana down to 60, down to 50. Every fire blast is a mistake. Every cone of cold is a mistake. Every blink is a mistake because it's such high mana cost. And it'll be really cool to see these players kind of kind of figure that out. Or maybe they have it figured out and they have a lot of preparation planned for today in this duel. Or maybe we're going to see them just rush each other down. Skull of Impending Doom equipped um, from Flames. And that's one of the key items here from the mage. So when a mage is trying to turtle out on you what are they going to do they're going to sheep you right and when they go for that sheep you have a few breaks you can ice block and aggressive and go for that kill but then they just re-sheep you it's like okay well you can ice block again you have two ice blocks but then they're going to re-sheep you again and to really push the advantage when you feel like okay i have enough mana to kill this guy let me actually push this you need things like skull of impending doom to break the sheep you need things like those ice blocks off of cooldown so you can push the advantage without them what you're going to do is spend all your mana you're not going to get the kill the mage is going to successfully reset and now you're in a bad spot so it's like having the knowledge of okay i have the skull of impending doom i have the double ice block i have enough mana let me all in this guy duel has begun and star instantly going for an ice block on the reset uh, I mean, early ice block there with no mana advantage yet. I would say Stars is a little behind there. Flames knows this, goes for the Polymorph, and that's the opener Flames is looking for. And the Polymorph will sit. Flames might be swapping around his trinkets. Um, Stars might be looking to do that same exact thing, but Flames must be pretty happy with this one. The first Frostbolt comes in, and then another uh, Sheep comes in right after. That's just to hurt the shield. And the Arcane Bomb plays from Flames land, and then the re uh, Goblin Rocket Helm into the ice blocks so both mage uh one ice block down i believe and they're using a lot of fire blasts and kona colds and kind of just fighting this out so they're they're kind of going for more of a rush down strategy here um so we might not see as long of a duel as i might have expected there's a skull of impending doom from flames it will break the sheep well played but at the cost of breaking the sheep it's going to cost mana some wands coming out during the counter spell you can wand during counter spell which is really nice the frostbite rng flames must be pretty happy with this this duel in its totality so far the Nova comes out, Stars blinks it, Tease, the blink does break that Nova, and Flames misses the Cone of Cold because of it. Flames going for the Evocate, this is good value from Flames. Now, in the Mage v Mage Mirror, the Evocation is very important. It's kind of like the Innervate for Druids. You want to stop the Evo by blocking and counterspelling it, and that is what you want to save that block for. Skull of a Penning Doom and stopping that Evo. That Evo sticks, that's going to be big, so that's really big for Flames. Having said that, Stars and Flames are pretty much even mana and stars is the one with the evocate now stars no ice blocks available that's the second one stars has that uh evocate advantage if we can mouse over stars to see his mana actually it looks like it is updating it's 64 percent so stars might have a slight mana lead with that evocate in his back pocket this is going back and forth we have that arcane bomb it does land that's the second landed one from flames and uh that might mean he's a, he's a little bit of a head here Dude, I just love listening. I mean, you're the mage guy. I love listening to you. This is like your Super Bowl, dude. Just, just watching, just listening to you cast two mages. This is great. I'm just gonna let you do your thing here, man. Yeah, I apologize for being long-winded. There's just a lot of things happening back and forth. We have frostbite procs and 
Frost, Nova's, Kona Cold's uh, being exchanged from both ends. Both mages, 50% life. And I think uh, while we were chatting there, the, the evocate from SARS might have happened as well, meaning Flames is the clear, uh, in the clear advantage here. Looks like Stars is kiting it out. They're both mana uh, drinking or doing the server tick drinking method. Polymorph coming out. Detect magic. So both mages can see what buffs and debuffs the enemy mage has. And looks like the full sheep on the stars and flames going to drink back up and this is what we we're talking about dark rune might have been used there as well flames up to 67 percent mana no evocates from either side i believe flame has one ice block stars 0 for two five minutes left on that cooldown frostbolt being casted decides to repoly a lot of the time we are going to see an opener where it's going to be a frostbolt into that ice barrier into a repoly just to kind of whittle down the ice barrier fireball being casted for some efficiency there nova looks like it resists conical does land fire blast being used from stars it's not a super mana efficient way of going about the duel though might be trying to push for some advantage but it looks like stars is in the back seat here first aid being casted here from flames topping himself back off i love the min max i think flames is in a position if he still has that skull of impending doom um to maybe push down stars stars is at 26 percent life with no ice blocks and the arcane bomb lands he's at 10 percent mana now title trying to reply you can use that well silenced that was nicely done major mana pot used and a blink expended flame must be smiling right now i know i would be if you're flames there's no mana pot from stars no evo and no ice block you've pretty much worked through absolutely everything here stars is gonna have to sheep he's gonna have to try to go for some reset but he doesn't have many cooldowns to to work with yep <laughs> I'm, just, I'm gonna let you do your thing for this one <laughs> it's been i mean it's, this, is a, this is a great one to watch man i mean just knowing knowing mage duels go back and forth just like that um yeah go ahead another polymorph from flames connects Flames is going to just take his time here. Stars sitting that full polymorph. The thing is, if Flames doesn't close, like we are talking about as fan, like if he doesn't close when it's his time to close, he could blow his advantage. Stars will rotate more cooldowns back up, right? Second evocate, second ice block, third ice block, mana potions come off cooldown, and then all of a sudden you kind of blow your chance. But this is this is it right here. Frost, Nova, Counterspell, big shatter combo coming, but Stars trinkets the Nova, another arcane bomb. And that's the big difference between these two mages. Flames really pushing those arcane bombs on cooldown. That's the third arcane bomb to land. Remember, 1,500 mana purge after every single arcane bomb. That's three of them. It's 4,500 mana drain from stars, and that looks to be the big difference maker. Flames also only using Frostbolt. Uh, does go for the Fire Blast here, pushing the advantage. Let's see if he blocks aggressively here. Might be the time to do it. He does pre Barav's Trinket to keep stars in combat. We get a lucky heartbeat from Flames. What's stars going to do? Kona Cold lands. Not much to use. There's the Tuber, the Lip. The Counterspell comes in. Flames finishing with Scorches, and that's going to spell the end for stars. One more ability lands. Fire Reflector. It's not going to be enough. Flames. Oh, dude. Dude, looking incredible duel, in the mage mirror what a duel man that was dude that was great man i know I, I, I was just want to listen to you do your thing man mage versus mage you're the mage guy that was great dude that was killer i love how uh i love how you pointed out the exact point whenever uh when it flipped from like defensive to offensive and uh that was uh you you killed it on that one man that was phenomenal yeah, I think Flames killed it on that one, man. He <laughs> played that so well, start to finish. The Arcane Bombs, you know, manipulating that in his favor over many, many minutes. I, I just thought it was really well done. Um, well played to Stars as well. It can be one of those matchups. Uh, I'll just be transparent. That can also come down to a lot of RNG. It's like, if you're... Uh, two really good mages fighting and you get a resist and then the other mage gets a crit you know and then you get another resist and the other mage gets a frostbite and it's like okay like you know it can just be a tough there, rng so, matchup there's so much rng that's built into it because of all the procs and all the uh like get, getting big crits off of a shatter or something like that that's it yep exactly man mm. so next one we got coming up we've got uh rubius and mfb tv MFBT, we got Druid Shaman coming up here. So is this, uh, we got our, we got ourselves an Enhanced Shaman. The gear is, uh, can we go over the gear one more time for the Shaman? Need to get closer. Yeah, we got some Nature Resistance. We, uh, Blood Mail set. 
Yeah, not a whole lot of stamina using a slave driver's cane. Now that's a 3.9 second speed weapon. So the big thing with Wind Fury is uh, it, it's not uh, the damage isn't reduced. It's not normalized with uh, uh, by instant attacks because it just it counts as like a full swing. So using a really slow weapon is going to give you really really big hits, and that's probably what is going to be going for here. So close the gap there. He's probably going to go for the purge spam. Uh, we think Rubius is going to go purge spam him. Uh, it's something we've seen from the shamans a lot so far in this tournament. Open up with the goblin rock helm, clean him up. There's so many buffs that getting the opportunity to go and purge off two buffs per global with that purge is absolutely huge. Druid shifts out of form, and uh, Rubius is going to go, and he's probably going to engage on him right after this. Oh, he's got an arcane bomb. He cancels it because he starts getting away with the travel form. It's going to be very difficult for him to be able to hit him with an arcane bomb because he's moving so quickly in travel form, and it is such a slow cast. Druid doing druid things. He's going to kite him out. Keep in mind that in the Makara, there is a three times uh, bigger radius than in a normal duel. So he's going to be kiting him out the whole time. Rubius is going to want to keep those frost shocks, sh frost shocks up. He's going to want to be able to close in, get Earthbinds up, and MFBT using that medicine pouch, trying to get some healing in, trying to uh, get some hots ticking on himself while he's moving and kiting away. Moonfire spam build. He's got a net on him, but he just shifts right out of the net. He's got a lot of mana, so it's not that big of a deal. Rubius using that tea with sugar right there, spamming that frost shock, and just keep chasing him. Uh, MFBT's health is just going on slowly while he's getting, uh, oh, he uses a health pot right there while Rubius keeps ticking him down. Rubius is probably going to lose the mana battle here, playing an enhanced shaman. He's not going to have a whole lot of opportunities to heal. He's probably going to get some spell pushback as he's getting right there. He is going to try and heal, but I think MFBT is just going to be able to kite him out here. I think I just saw an innervate go out, uh, and he's healing himself a little bit. Yeah, Innervate's ticking on him. He's healing himself a little bit. He's not going to get out of combat. He has the pet hitting him. Rubius going into Ghost Wolf, and he wants to close the gap, but I just don't think he's going to be able to. And MFBT is going to close with some Moonfire Spam here and the Insect Swarm ticking, and down it goes. Rubius, the Enhanced Shaman, trying to stick to the Druid, but unfortunately he just cannot. Just cannot do that, and we are... Uh, stuck with another dead orc, another dead shaman, 07 <laughs> for the shaman. Seems to be a reoccurring theme with shamans. Like, one of their biggest weaknesses is just going oom. Like, yeah. we see it in shaman versus druid. Uh, you know, the druid looked weak at the start, right? Shaman ran in, closed the gap, purged every single buff off. It was really well played from uh, Ruby. And all of a sudden, the druid ran away, innervated, played a nice long game, and the shaman zoom the shaman doesn't have an innervate or an evocate or a life tap right they're one of those classes that like they're really strong when you have that mana and you have a lot of big cooldowns especially in group play like a battleground like alteric valley really even world pvp yeah really really great class in classic world of warcraft but when you're in a 1v1 and you just go oom and a class is going to know that, kite you out, and only play once you have no more mana left to play with. And MFBTV did a really great job of showing us exactly how that was done. And Shaman, you know, unfortunately fell there. In the next matchup, we have Dendario, who really impressed me yesterday. I thought he did a great job on the mage. I'm excited to see him play again, but I must say... You do not one. want to fight a druid as a mage. And we were talking about Zico's bracket, like Zico getting that bracket that he wanted today, fighting uh, hunters, rogues, uh, you know, warrior, whatever. And Dendario fighting the druid. And Dendario, I know as a mage, it's like, oh man, that's going to be tough. Now, it's possible to beat a druid. It's possible. It's just really hard. Um, yeah. The way Dendario will win this is by bursting him down with like a goblin sapper charge with a six demon bag shatter combo everything crits and you just kind of just kill the druid in one hit that can happen it's not like a, it's impossible like the mage is still a mage but if ek is really aware to not let all of these things happen play max distance stay Cheetah form and just kill with Moonfire and Insect Swarm. Depending on what spec EK is, then it's going to be a hard uphill battle for this mage. 
Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think him coming in here, uh, you can see Dendario wants to be aggro and he's playing him close, going in with the Rocket Helm, Arcane Bomb right off the bat, trying to make sure that EK doesn't have enough mana to be able to constantly shift forms. Mm -hmm. That's <clears throat> that's what I'm seeing here. Goes in with a Tidal Charm, trying to burst him already, has him kind of low already. Uh, he's doing the uh, the uh, Frenzied Regen right there in bear form, trying to stick in bear form while he generates Rage to be able to heal. And be able to shift out as soon as he uh, as soon as he has a root or something else, so he doesn't get shattered right there. Uh, Ek getting nature locked, huge nature lock. This could be a big opportunity. He doesn't avoid the war stomp, but he blocks it. Offensive block. That spell lock is probably going to end soon. That counter spell is probably going to end soon. Comes in feral charge for his own kick. Uh, ends up blinking out of it, and he is keeping Ek at bay pretty much perfectly. Not keeping too much distance to where Ek is at an advantage, but. Uh, Man, if he his counter oh spells gosh. about to come up soon, that was close, dude. I think his counter spells up any second now. I I don't know if Ek's playing the right spec here. Ek might be a more of like a feral spec. I don't know if he's insect swarm. I don't know if he's I don't know if he's nature swiftness. I don't I don't know if he's any resto points. But if Ek's more of like a full feral build, uh, maybe Dendario can do this. There's another counter spell in the regrowth. What is Ek gonna do? Dendario looking phenomenal. There's the sleep oh, dust. He can sleep. will have forsaken though, and he stole another block. Ek's on the run now. It's not gonna be enough. Dendario taking him Damn. out. What Dendario. a finish from Dendario, man. Just to, I, I I love I love seeing that ability to when when that that go is open when that window opens up being able to see these guys go in and they see it like you you literally it's it's almost like a uh, you can see the body language of their character how they move their character it's like they just get more aggro and it's sick I love watching it I love seeing the finish and uh, that was uh, that was beautiful man yeah I I'm just impressed to see a mage take out Druid is. Some, I must say, uh, I, I do want to clarify, EK might have been playing a build that was suboptimal, uh, you know, for the mage matchup. Maybe it was EK's bread and butter. Maybe EK wanted that against Hunter or maybe against Warrior, maybe against Rogue. He's like, I hope maybe EK was like, I hope I don't fight a mage with this build. And it might have been a build that wasn't quite as good in the mage, right? Because normally the Druid would just kind of moonfire and run away and cheat a form, right? That's normally what you'd see. But it looked like right. EK wanted to fight it out. Um, yeah, he was he was playing pretty aggro at the end there. I, uh, he was he was getting in, in range of him, which I, I thought he was going to be in. That's uh, Dendario's advantage, but uh, no, I think I think you're absolutely right. Ooh, Fell Striker. Okay, Dalren Fell Striker combo here for Vanus. I didn't see that yesterday. I don't, I don't recall seeing the Fell Striker, but uh, he's got the the big dagger offhand, and uh, yeah, good stuff. Can we take a look at? Uh, oh, they might they might be starting. I don't know if we'll see his gear in time. It's too far away. Uh, Tony <laughs> Deflector, nice. Like, put the hairs on four piece of the tier 0 0.5 Magma Forge band. Here we go. Big open from the uh, from the rogue here. He's going Blade Flurry. Uh, Blade Flurry, he uh, is getting kited here. But uh, Jimmy, Jimmy switches back to a two-hander. Oh, huge, huge crit off the intercept. Closing back in on him. He's cutting him out. He doesn't he's he's jousting him essentially because he doesn't want to have Vanus come in and, and build combo points on him and be able to uh, oh. uh get a kidney shot and be able to re-engage on him. The pet knocks him out of oh no! It knocks him out of the bandage. The the bleed from Jay broke the vanish and it stopped the bandage. Vanus is not having a great duel at all, and this is Jay's duel of his life right now. This is so one-sided. Vanus had the kidney miss, the vanish break. And the the bandage uh, interrupt. So Jay is feeling good. Having said that, Vanus has sixty seconds to kind of sit in stealth and collect himself. Having like like there there are still uh, there's one blind or maybe two blinds and one vanish remaining for Vanus. So like things could still happen. But Jay must be smiling right now with an opener like that. Jay mounts up, has they field the sword and board on probably sitting d stance just ready for this opener we do want to maybe have a clock from the admins running here because this is a situation where vanis probably wants to wait as long as he can like 59 seconds but he has to open up according to the rule book yeah, um I mean, after that first, aid, that first aid debuff just about ended i mean it's over now so he's he's getting close to that 60 seconds he probably stealthed 
probably at this. But if he doesn't open within the next couple seconds, that's 60. Oh, he's out of stealth. Oh, he's out of stealth back oh, there. Oh, he's, so out, he's of, out. Oh, Jay doesn't see him, bro. You got to pull up the binoculars, Jay. Oh no. oh, no. He sprints back in and goes for the re-stealth. Jay just didn't notice he was out of stealth there. Cheap shot comes out. Vanis maybe like, okay, maybe I can get better RNG this time. Kiting it out with the poison. Kidney shot does not miss this time. Trinket in reply there for Jay. There's the Zerker stance. Big damage connecting. Vanis though, kiting it out with the net. But I don't know if it backfires, <laughs> if that was just oh, a double net. Oh, the first net. stopped. Yeah, Here. once again, Vanis is just not having the duel he's looking for. We have the sticky glue coming yeah, out from Jay to counter the net. net from Vanis and the evasion being committed here with those overpowers might hit through. Three seconds done on the intercept. He's going behind him. Execute might land. There's a health potion into the mortal strike. It's not going to be very effective. Blind connects, but the mithril dragonling is going to chase Vanis down, keeping him combat, stopping the restealth from being uh, able to happen there. The cheap shot comes in. Vanis is just so dangerously low and Jay is so tanky. Execute yeah. lands. Vanis falls and Jay takes it in a very convincing warrior versus rogue duel here. What an unbelievable showing by Jay. I mean, I, dude, that first open from Vanis was was rough. I mean, that was unbelievably <laughs> yeah. unfortunate. That, that, rough is a good word. Yeah, that was. Yeah, Sorry. the kidney shot miss. He, I mean, it just everything that could have gone wrong. He had a bleed tick on him. The pet was hitting him. He, I mean, it was just, uh, it was brutal. He lost the stealth. He lost the bandage. Uh, now it was I love how crafty it was that he was like, okay, well I have to get out of stealth within 60, within 60 seconds So he just went and stood on the other side of the map was yeah. just eating and drinking out of stealth was hilarious to me. That works. I, I, I didn't see him <laughs> I, I was like what's going on? He uh, needed binoculars or something to spot the rogue there and in this next matchup We have Gorthax in one Gorthax. hit. Gorthax. Gorthax, this, Gorthax is my editor for my YouTube oh. channel, actually. <laughs> Hell yeah. Maybe you can edit so, his own video here. Yeah, maybe maybe Gorlak's going to edit his own video here. We'll see what happens. <laughs> okay, let's see. Warrior versus Shaman. I mean... Huh. Wait, can, we, those... can we take a look at the, the Shaman's gear again one more time? Yeah, I was going to say, some of those greens, they, they are green, but they're actually some of the times best in slot. These these greens have damage and healing and stam and in, so they're actually very good greens. Yeah. See, Gorthax coming in. He's going. Uh, he's got some uh, some hamstring spam on him. Pops Rex. So he's going. He's going aggro right off the bat against one hit. But he has chain Ooh. lightning coming up on him with the recklessness. That's a lot of damage. He does a tuber major health pot combo, and just trying to spam hamstrings on him goes for the whirlwind just going for big damage nature lock gorthax actually might have a chance here arcane bomb. with the wreck with the arcane bomb he might actually finish oh. a huge to holy gorthax let's go let's go gorthax that i love wonderful. that arcane bomb five second silence like bro if you're five seconds silence and a warrior is on you and you're in execute range it's uh -huh. just like i mean all you can do is alt f4 really like i don't think that's brutal dude dude, dude the, hey, popping wreck and then having that chain lightning combo hit you was that's so unbelievably scary i, I thought it was gonna kill him straight up because uh, you just you take so much damage the the thing is huge to begin with but then you take so much more damage with the wreck and everything else uh, that was great to watch, man. I, I love watching like bang bang duels like that. It's uh, it's fantastic. Yeah, that was a good one. I, I like that. I, I appreciate both players just like going in. A couple more greens here from Lapons. We were talking about. Uh, oh, this is the the uh, diamond flash set rather. Okay, yeah, yeah. diamond flash set just with the plus healing to get himself a big hot. And Oko's is a mage we saw perform pretty well yesterday. Pops that freezing ban for the RNG mm -hmm. Novas. We have uh, Witchblade for Bug Medicine Pouch. Alana's Embrace from Scalo. Uh, some really really great gear here from Oko's and. We all know this is mage favored, right? Um, it's mage versus warrior. I mean, come on. Having said that, warriors in this tournament are allowed uh, pretty much anything they they want. And Skull of a Penning Doom looks like it might be on for Lapons here, which will give him the opportunity to uh, take damage, breaking a polymorph and other crowd control effects, um, and increasing movement speed. And at the same time, you can pair that with a FAP and just kind of go ham. Like right here, it's off the bat. Golem of Penning Doom immediately, and then uh, looks like some type of CC break into the Golem of Penning Doom. He hasn't clicked it off yet. Lapon's just wanting to go in on the mage, but no charge or intercept yet. But I actually like that because the uh, intercept will be able to come in after the mage blinks, and that's key. 
I like the skull diamond flask combo because you're getting you're taking damage from the skull, but then you're also getting healed from the diamond flask to uh, not get CC at the beginning. I thought that was uh, I thought that was pretty crafty, but unfortunately, it didn't really amount to much. Yeah, looks like the Kona Cold resisted, and this is probably not the opener Lapan wants. I mean, the mage can turtle this out forever. Nice yeah, frost stuff, reflect right? there from Lapan. The mage wants to obviously kite this out. What Lapan's going for here is is really ooming the mage, not dying and letting the mage go oom. And look at this, the mage is forty percent, and Lapan is still full life from all of the magic resistance potions he has on, and all of the uh, maybe frost uh, reflector and frost resist. And the heartbeat breaks. Charge comes out into an intercept. No more blink, and that's an ice block. Frost Nova oh, resists. This is like perfect is RNG for Lapan to win this. This is exactly what he's looking for. And now the Goblin Rocket Helm instant yeah. breaks from the Zerka Rage. This is what. Lapan has been waiting for Arcane Bomb. Sleeping Dust, though, comes out. Will Forsaken! Will. The Poly gets interrupted. It misses Arcane Bomb. Once again, does it land? It would be huge if it does, and it does! Yeah. Oko is popping the mana pot. He has the second block available. He's down to 30% mana. That We might see a warrior take out a mage in our bingo game from earlier today. We have the Frost Nova. It might break a... So many of these sheeps are resisting! Oko is just probably feeling terrible right about now. Oh, no mage cloaking the device. Invisibility device. Yeah, the bleed is going to take him out, though. Lapan getting another charge. Oko's might have to use his second and final ice block in just a second. Cold snaps, another Frost Nova. Polymorph first aid, Evil K combo from Oko is probably coming out here. He needs to get that Evil K off because he's very low on mana, assuming he still has it. Lapan, though, had a great stretch in this last minute or two. Dude, this has been an unbelievable start for Lapon. Not right at the beginning. Right at the beginning, it looked kind of bad. But then he he turned around. Every single thing was going his way. He just he's got to do his best to keep Okos from being able to reset this. You can see he's drink walking. That's what that pausing is. And his mana is ticking up. Lapon goes in, gets the charge on him. Blink intercept. Okos is going to try and separate here. He blocks. I'm assuming trying to stall out cooldowns. He's going to get his blink up. He's probably going to be able to get a Nova up here. There it is. There's the oh, Nova. The resist. And resist it again. Lapon is getting the RNG of a lifetime, and Okos is tapped. He, I think he has in, uh, Evocate, unless I'm mistaken. He used the Mana Gem. Warrior already used Wreck. He won't be able to connect with that either. But this is really Lapon's uh, duel here. Like, Lapon is 100% life. He's going to get the mount up. He's getting charges. He's getting value from intercepts. Okos is back to 60% mana, but zero ice blocks. He needs that Sony. He needs that Sony Digital Epic mount. That's what he needs. Yeah. <laughs> Lapon is going to have another free action potion coming off cooldown. Uh, some of these things, though, are like 30 minute cooldowns and they'll pretty much never rotate back up. Okos yeah. is still in this. He has 45% mana, but these heartbeats, the resists, the RNG is not going Okos away. Lapon must be smiling with that. Rank one blizzard to keep the combat. And it actually was maybe just out of range. Lapon mounting up despite the blizzard. Charge comes in once again. Nice nade into the poly. Great combo there. Okos building some distance, popping some some fireworks. <laughs> Zerker stands charge on that frostbolt. And Lapon is just so tanky. He's using those potions probably on cooldown. To keep up as much resistances and damage protection as possible and the mage is trying to burst through it lapon though as i say that dipping to about 60 percent live hellstone to top him back off and this is going to be the mage's mana versus the warrior health bar here there's the will of forsaken on the fear mage good bandage uh, too going Good for another reset in. oh there's the evo so something something that's interesting for me to watch here is it, with the mages a lot of times mages you guys have the ability to uh to reset the duel and, and you you go until it's like an advantageous situation for you to, to really be able to to go what happens in these duels with the warriors now because it, this is an anything goes tournament essentially you're using a greater frost protection potion every two minutes so if you stall too long then they're going to get a massive absorb shield on your next go so you don't really have that same opportunity that you normally have as a uh, as a mage versus a warrior to be able to just stall it out as long as possible and uh it's made it really 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 exciting to watch i love watching these warrior mage duels that's a great point like lapon is is getting those cooldowns back he's getting another free action potion or another magic resist pot so okos can turtle all he wants but now like let's be honest okos has no ice blocks okos has no evo okos has oh and there's another nova resist and, and he's just Dude. waiting until he gets the right rng like lapon is walking in just like okay let me get a resist here another resist or two and i can finish him off and okos is he's kind of in a bad spot right now i mean yeah. to be completely honest he's he's low on mana now it doesn't mean he can't win i mean it's a mage 
Okos can kite forever. Having said that, the sticky glue comes out after the blink. The arcane bomb connects. You cannot counterspell that. <laughs> it's going to land. Okos has no outs and no mana. I don't know what the mage is going to do here. The polymorph casts and does land. Unfortunate for Lapon. That's going to maybe be another successful reset. It was well played from Lapon there and that and that last advantage. It really was. It really was. I like seeing the uh, counter spell in the arcade bomb. It's funny. But, uh, but yeah, man, this is uh, this is going great. Okos has to get mana here, man. He has to get mana. You can see him drink walking. Even though he's so far away, he knows every single sip is important. Every single sip matters. And Lapon has just a little bit of frost resistance equipped, I believe, whenever we saw his gear earlier. And that little bit of frost resistance is going a massive, massive distance in this duel. And it is, uh, it, it is really looking bad for Okos, man. It really is. Getting that grenade. That was a good grenade. Trying to open a little bit here. Trying to do as much damage as he can. Trying to separate. Was that a resist on that first one? Did, like, no damage. <laughs> he just has so much resistance. I see people <laughs> in the chat are like, these Frost Bolts are doing nothing. And that's why with this specific rule set, Warrior versus Mage isn't so one-sided anymore. Warriors all of a sudden are raid boss tanks. Mages have their mana pool they can work with. And it's like, the question is, does Okos have enough mana to even take out Lapon? 20 Frost Resistance on that one ring there. There's that Spider Belt that's going to give him that freedom, get him out of the Root Break. And we've seen that. We have the second Diamond Flask used from Lapon. We're probably going to swap trinkets we have that frost resistance shoulder enchant as well from lapon and another five resistance on that cloak so lapon is just buying time till the rng is in his favor oko is doing the same thing but he's just not getting that rng he needs lapon um, wants to connect now these counter spells coming out from oko is just to clarify the use case Okos is keeping combat on Lapon with the counterspell so the charge doesn't come through. If people are wondering in the broadcast, like, why the heck are you counterspelling a warrior? That's why. And it's very well played from Okos. It's, uh, you know, nice foresight there. The piercing howl lands. Mortal Strike connects. Looks like it's a crit with the deep wounds. Lapon lands another arcane Big bomb. Arcane Okos. Bomb. It's Oom once again, but Lapon's getting low too. But if the mage decides to fight this head to head, he's gonna lose. Lapon oh, might have a chance here with a big shatter. Lapon might be done for. There's a nope. Zerker Lepon. stance charge. Mage has just enough mana to blink. Here's a tough decision for Okos. You can sheep the warrior back to full and reset because you're Oom. But Lapon is already so low that it's like, should I just finish and kill him? Now Okos has the decision to make here really soon, right? Do I reset or do I fight? Lapon at 60% life. It looks like Okos is 40% mana, 50% nearly with the drink walk. And it's like, okay, I think I have to fight him out here. I think Okos might actually go for it here. There's the counter spell to maintain combat to stop the charge and battle stance. Another Frostbolt resists, it looks like. No damage nearly coming through. A Frost resistance pot committed from Lapan into an intercept into a goblin rocket helm answered with the ice block quickly from Oko's thorium grenade lands frostbolt being used decides to cancel the frostbolt go for the polymorph reset we got to resist on polymorph another resist on frost Oof, another resist on Kona cold that's three in a row my friends and that is not what Oko's wants he's trying to fake out the polymorph cast and two more resists what is this this is unbelievable <laughs> Oko's had like five resists in a row there he's not happy with that he finally lands the polymorph and 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 runs away for his dear life but man with the rng like that it's gonna be really really tough for okos to ever secure a kill onto lapon you know what's crazy is i actually think this this duel might have already been over if lapon had a, an epic mount because okos be right. has been able to get so much more mana like two to three ticks per <laughs> one of these resets because he doesn't have the epic mount oh. Oh. i don't know what happened uh -huh. <laughs> question mark <laughs> Okos has defeated Lapont. Was that a not a Makara? It timed out because it was a normal duel. <laughs> they forgot to Makara. <laughs> Guys, yes, this indeed is a Makara tournament. <laughs> duel should not time out here. This is a uh, duel to the death. Not a uh, normal duel tournament. <laughs> 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 I love how nobody noticed. A GM would like to I, chat with you. I didn't see anybody in, oh, wow. in chat say it. We didn't notice. They didn't notice. Literally nobody, nobody noticed. That's hilarious, dude. <laughs> um. Hmm. Oh my gosh. So I, 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 we'll hear from the admins in a second. I think the best thing would be to just 
replay that get that get into that macro as soon as we can with the current cooldowns maybe um we'll see what we decide on it could be a situation where we move on and and wrap back around to that duel properly uh later but yeah. man that was that was cool to see i i really like that oh they are getting into oh, an actual right okay. all, that was all practice guys we were kidding this is the real duel <laughs> 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 it's just cool to see though man like yeah. I, I like to see a really even matchup in the warrior versus mage versus this one-sided uh experience that we normally get to spectate yeah there we go okay so they're back opened up i mean they did they again they're 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 empty right now they don't have all their cooldowns they normally have they had like a 30 second maybe maybe one minute break there uh getting basically uh getting their cooldowns back so i do think we're gonna see a lot of uh kind of more of what we've seen and i think lapon is is just the way that it has gone so far i think it's uh most likely that lapon is just gonna get his opportunity to uh to get okos whenever he's low on mana and he's gonna get a big resist and it's he's he's playing for that rng he's playing for getting those resists and he's gotten a ton of them i mean it just looked like just off the cuff looking at his gear and, and not seeing it it looked like he probably about had about 50 60 uh frost resistance and on top of uh just some other random resists which uh, matter for like the fire blasts or uh even polymorphs arcane magic there you go there's one there's a resist right there so uh it's huge man it's uh it's huge yeah, and when you're coming from behind here in this matchup like the Warrior is, a lot of the times, yeah, you're just, just praying for those resists. You land a resist, and it's like, okay, that's my opportunity to strike. And and Lapon is doing that very well. I think the the difficulty for this mage is, is like, do I have enough mana to even kill this guy? Like, if I have 100% mana... Like, Okos needs full mana and a mana pot and a mana gem to probably kill Lapon if Lapon was AFK just just kind of sitting there doing nothing because so many of these abilities are resisting and he has so much life and uh, even partial resists um, and stuff like that and it look, looks like there is a coward debuff we'll need to see from the admins and hear what that was that wait does looks like he fled we're getting word <sighs> And when you flee from a mock gara, there is a three day debuff that reduces stats by 20%. Lapon, unfortunately, now has that debuff. Um, it looked like it was an accidental flee. Now, uh, we'll hear from the admins on the ruling. You can still duel with his debuff. Like, they could go for a rematch, but that coward debuff will mean he has 20% reduced stats. And that's three days of play time, by the way. It's not three days of real life time. So. Um, <laughs> it's not okay, what you want to see gonna, for Lapon. We're gonna figure out the answer here. Um, we're gonna figure out the uh, <laughs> Coward Debuff. <laughs> Druid wins a duel. Major upset. No, oh, I'm uh, yeah, what? I'm uh, I'm I'm kind of shocked that that actually happened. I mean, the range is three times as big as it normally is. <laughs> we're gonna get a ruling from the admins here. They're working on it on the back end. We 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 have a team of admins working on everything. Uh, I would say, hey, let's message that GM back. By the way, camera. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's not hey, a bad idea. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, Blizzard, what up? please yeah. <laughs> <laughs> remove that. Yeah, that would be yeah. that would be the ideal situation. Um, yeah, I don't, I, mean, I, don't a, know if, I don't know if we'll actually get that or not, but uh, we'll we'll get a we'll get an answer from the admins here shortly, and uh, we will hear what uh, what we're gonna be doing next. How do you think that duel was gonna go, Zaryu? How do you think that was gonna end? I thought I thought Lapon was gonna. I mean, I, I thought he was kind of playing for RNG. He was playing for the resist and hoping, hoping for the best. But it looked to me like he did have the upper hand. I, I think he was going to be able to win that. Look like Lapon had the upper hand. Having said that, it's a mage. You know, Lapon was down to 30% one time in a Nova with the Shatter. Okos can turtle that out and kite that out for another hour if he wanted. Just waiting for a uh, go where he had no resist at all and Lapon could eventually die. So I, I don't want to say it was 100% one way or the other. I do agree though. Lapon seemed to have the, the upper hand there. Um, especially with how RNG was in his favor and Okos was struggling to get enough damage to actually take out Lapon just with the HP pool. So it, it could have been one of those duels that you know, theoretically never really ends until one player kind of, it's just like, all right, I'm done at this kind of a thing. Um, 
We are going to review that footage from where I'm sitting as fan. I did not see any malicious intent from the mage uh, there. I, I really didn't. Uh, maybe I missed it. And maybe it, when reviewing the footage, the admins can give me more clarity. Um, I don't know if I saw malicious intent in terms of baiting someone outside the duel area and then CCing them. I, I don't know if that was the case, but we'll have to review the footage and get the final wording on that. Um, and see, yeah. I mean... we. There are so this is one of those situations in a Makara tournament where if someone dies or if someone gets that deserter, it's tough. It's tough, right? You have to make a call at the end of the day. Um, no matter what, Lapon has deserter or uh, coward, right? He has yeah, that he has for a, three days. Yeah, so for the rest, for three days. <laughs> no matter what, you, if they replay it, <laughs> yeah. just saying that out loud is such a funny phrase. But uh, he has yeah, coward. Yeah. He has he has cowered for three days, um, but yeah, we're uh, we're gonna try and find out and see what happens. I'm uh, I'm, I'm talking to some people too, uh, to see to see what's gonna happen here, and then we we will get word from the admins. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's the case, and uh, that's the current case of what's going on here. Um, oh, hold on, let's see. Um, chatting, chatting, chatting. Yeah, oh, and you know, we'll, we'll you have know what else is great. By the way, we're talking about it would be great if if you know we could we could figure out a solution to this. Starforge Systems, man, Starforge Systems, our title sponsor is fantastic. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, Starforge Systems is also great. If you guys want to check out StarforgeSystems.com for your uh, new PC, you're looking for a new PC, you can go to Starforge Systems. Uh, we have new custom cases as well. The Golden Dragon, the Clouded Gates, the Jellyfish Crossing. If you guys want a cool uh, custom case build or uh you can get the plate lights on their own the plate lights are sick if you're watching my streams at uh twitchcon or new york comic-con you probably saw them on stream at some point where uh you can actually take those plate lights and you can buy them on their own you don't even have to get them as part of the custom case you can buy them on your own and uh you can put them in your own build if you have that same case so starforge we're also looking at making some uh cool custom pieces for people who want to build their own pcs uh instead of buying uh buying a pre-build so um hey what's up guys hey hey so we've got a ruling um the ruling is as follows the mage oko was eating outside of the dueling range mm. and Lep charged him. He frost noved him outside of the dueling range. Competitors are supposed to be mindful of the dueling range, so that's on Oko. He uh, has forfeited this duel, and he's okay with it. Lep has the coward debuff. He will be moving on. If there is a guardian angel out there that can remove that debuff, that would be greatly appreciated. We're going to see if we can get that done behind the scenes. But for now, Lep moves on. Oko loses that duel, and we're going to the next duel. Okay. So Perfect. Thank that's, you. That's the ruling. And uh, I'm... Uh... I'm uh, I'm 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 praying a lot. I'm praying a lot on the keyboard right now to see if uh, see if we can find a guardian angel. So uh, <laughs> we'll yeah, that would be happens. the ideal situation. Obviously, uh, <laughs> you know it's it's tough to be where we're at, but I, I do think that's that's a great ruling, um, especially after relooking at the footage. If the mage was already out of bounds, the rules do say to be mindful of that dueler. If the mage was out of bounds drinking, and then the warrior charged him and then CCs him out. You know, eh, you know that could have been, could have been prevented. It's like, it's like a yeah. It's like it's not. It, I don't think it wasn't. I don't think it was malicious. I don't think it was intentional. But it could be seen as like a bait or something. That's that's why that rule is in place. That's why that that decision is left up that way. But uh, I I want to say props to props to Okos. I mean Okos being being like hey like I I get it. I see I see how it is and um you know good good on him man. Good on him for for kind of accepting that because I know I know that's like a tough way to lose whenever it's like off of a weird like technicality like that but uh him kind of seeing how how it was going to play out or whatever i'm accepting it i you know hearts and chat for Ogos, for real yeah seriously uh being mature about it just being like all right these are the rules i respect it and uh yeah we'll we'll move on and hopefully find something to circumvent that uh coward debuff next matchup we have <laughs> hydra versus saga hydra the Shadow Priest, household name. You guys yeah. know and love him. He's been here since the start of WoW PvP, pretty much. And uh, I'm, a, I'm a big Hydra fan. I can't wait to see this next match. Hydra Saga, guy. the Elemental Shaman. And, and we've, seen, we've, we've been seeing a lot of Shamans uh, in this tournament. And a lot of the times when the game goes long, the Shamans oom. And 
Hydra ends up, you know, or the, the enemy player ends up building the advantage, but wow, Saga's gear. I didn't realize, man, look how stacked he is. He has that Shadow Reflector robe, the Ogre Magi from uh, Dark Moon Tribute there, the Shell Necklace. The, I mean, he's, Saga is stacked. Stacked. Hydra, though, same thing. Also, best in slot gear here, pretty much all around. Hydra has the zoo trinkets on the Barabs and the chicken. Uh, Necropile robe, tons of stamina, tons of resistance. And of course, both players with the Goblin Rocket Helm. Should be a fun one to watch unfold here. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, <clears throat> you can see. Uh... I, I like seeing these guys gear out for uh, like for the long haul, right? Like getting the spirit and chance on the weapons and knowing that a lot of these duels against other really good players, they're they're going to be long naturally. They are going to be long duels and they are prepared to play it long. Uh, and it's just having that uh, ha having the, the presence of mind to be able to uh, flip to like aggressive mode whenever you need to. Yeah, that's right. And Saga, I'm curious if he's mindful of shaman mana and that, and that being a weakness if he has a strategy to play against that like maybe there's dark runes maybe there's an early mana pot ghost wolf uh being casted and the the charge helmets interrupted hydra saving the mana and using uh his auto attacks in between the global cooldowns kind of swinging purging and auto attacking down the totems i just love to see it full fear coming out from hydra after the full purge inner focus used early to get it on cooldown both trinkets used hydra playing aggressive right off the bat grounding totem uh instantly slain there from hydra mind flays being cast and saga actually the one trying to slow the duel down with the magic dust onto Hydra. Will of Forsaken, I believe, comes out to interrupt that. Major mana pot used early from Hydra to keep the mana nice and healthy for the long duel. And Saga seems to be on the back foot from the start on this one. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, <clears throat> seeing Hydra go in and play aggressive, and uh, he, he's staying in range of Saga uh, for, for the whole time, to, which is kind of odd because you would think it'd be kind of odd because uh, Saga gets the advantage of his shocks and stuff. But what this does for Hydra Ooh. is uh, it, it keeps Saga from being able to separate from him. That rocket helm is huge. Yeah. He, was, uh, he was absolutely massive, by the way. <laughs> Trying to get a reset here, healing himself up first as opposed to going for the purge spam, which we've seen a lot from a lot of the other shamans the whole time. Uh, absolutely huge because he doesn't want to uh hydra wants to keep close to him so that if uh if saga gets away he doesn't he doesn't reset or whatever we talked about earlier with shadow priests having trouble with mobility shamans do have a fair bit of mobility uh between frost shock and between ghost wolf being able to uh to separate like that hydra's doing a phenomenal job man sticking to him really really good and being able to keep that pressure up oh. the whole time going for a big chain lightning combo that was it. That was the one opportunity yep. for Saga to win. It didn't connect as hard as it wanted to, and Saga falls. Hydra made that look easy, man. Dude, Hydra like <laughs> was on fire, dude. He that was that was textbook. Unbelievable, unbelievable by Hydra right there. Really, really good. I mean, start to finish, it, like it, he just looked comfortable. He looked like he was in his groove. It wasn't like hmm, like all these decisions were thought out. He just played perfectly like every button just used 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 every global expended played aggressive from start to finish shaman win um saga had that one chance like if we got like double crits maybe um but hydra had a shield up and ready and doesn't get one shot and saga lost and so yeah i'm just i'm really impressed with hydra i'm excited to see uh who he moves on to next here in the brackets we have big sad and nick another shaman priest matchup after this and man hydra made that look incredibly priest favored in that in that last round so we'll see if Big Sad is anything different in store for us? Yeah. No, that was uh, that that was that was a beautiful, beautiful last round. Uh, so Big Sad's going into this. He has a shadow reflector on. Uh, he's running the the axe of the deep woods. We've seen that. Uh, we've seen that a little bit this tournament, haven't we? A few times this tournament. And uh, I think he's got. Can we can we scroll over a little bit slower? Did how much was he was he wearing much resistance gear on Big Sad? It didn't seem that he had much resistance outside of the uh, outside of that shadow reflector. So um, we'll see how this goes for Nick and Big Sad. Let's see if we have a, a similar outcome. Man, both these gear, both these guys just put so much time to leveling these characters one to sixty. I know we've mentioned it, but just to repeat ourselves, to gear to hit 60 to get these items all without dying it was a prerequisite today to play in the tournament right you had to level 1 to 60 without dying which is a feat in itself you had to go for that 0.5 gear without dying which is another feat in itself so every competitor today has played the last 30 days on hardcore mode without dying and without further ado the duel's underway we have nick <laughs> using the same opener hydra just did 
Use the Goblin Rocket Elm, CCs the Shaman, and slays the Totems with the Spam Purge. This is an exact opener hydrated. Yeah. I don't know if these guys practice together, if there's some strats being shared here, but uh, Nick might have a Hydra repeat here with the strategy. Purge is coming out from the Shaman as well to return fire. Shadow Word Pain being reflected with the Shadow Reflector from Big Sad. Great tech there. Fear looks like it resists, and this is not the same duel uh, we saw from last time. Nick already at 50% oh. life. Big Sad putting on the pressure putting on the heat two-hander comes out from big saddle it's, maybe it's an enhanced shaman that's uh, my mistake for not pointing it out sooner oh, here, it looks like the, the shadow oh, pain the reflected pain though broke, broke the goblin rocket helm but nick is one shot bro it's, it could be over nick oh, is 10 percent live big sad oh, made it look wow. easy the other way around big oh my gosh sad what a play by big sad that's crazy, dude. It's so funny because that shadow reflector from earlier breaking that rock helm it ended up not mattering. But how funny is that? That it's like this one random thing that it's an ability you don't have, whatever. It's just this one random thing. It's like, oh yeah, ends up breaking the rock helm, but it's all good because he needed that gap closer to come in and to be able to finish the job. So uh, yeah, huge, huge, huge. Wow, it's so funny. Like we talk about these duels like this is favored and this and that or that looked hard or easy and then you see a situation like this where hydra takes out saga like no issue and then you see a shaman versus priest again and big sad takes out nick no issue and it's like oh wait a minute uh, what's going on here <laughs> yeah i, I guess yeah. for a bit of clarity i think big sad was in hands and that, so that is a different matchup to be fair to saga um you know the ellie matchup you go oom you're trying to go for that big one shot big sad just put on that two-hander got some good swings off and uh nick by the way he's the same opener hydra did it just didn't go with the same for him um even though it was a nice uh, shadow reflector that shadow word pain actually broke the goblin rocket elm which was kind of funny too <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I think I think it's uh, we're we're going to be able to see stuff like that happen in Classic WoW all the time. Where I said we're going to, but we see stuff like that happen in Classic WoW all the time, where you think there's one matchup going one way, and uh, whenever it comes down to it, it's like, oh, well, never mind. We were totally off. So it's it's just going to happen. That's just part of it. Uh, so cool to see. I mean, I, I love that we got two two of the same classes, and like you said, there, there might have been two different specs, right? Where you had one Ellie and one Enhanced, but still, it's two two of the same classes going back to back, and uh, having two completely different types of duels really outside of the opener. So, yeah, in this next matchup, I'm really looking forward to another Warrior versus Hunter. JMD, we saw perform very, very well yesterday. One of the top performing warriors of the qualifiers against big traps. Normally, once again, it's a hunter, maybe. Well, I don't know. I think this is closer to a 50 50 to what we've seen it, I think, go both ways. Um, and this is kind of going to be a big deciding factor for how the rest of the tournament uh, unravels, right? If hunters are making it through or if warriors are making it through, that's because that's going to. Uh, dictate what the warlocks and the, and the priests are then going to be facing in these next rounds um looks like jmt uh fully raged up ready to go dual flag drops and that's not a dual flag that's a duel to the death flag actually which is exciting to see and uh yeah we have this hunter versus warrior both both players with pets here jmd pre-popping the chicken and dragonling and that's probably to get them on cooldown to swap to new trinkets um, so when the duel starts, you have the pets, you swap new trinkets, and you can use more trinkets. Yeah, I, I like. Uh, I I I think that's um, with hunters in general. I remember whenever we were raiding and, and leveling up with hunters, these guys just always wanted every single trinket. I mean, it's always that's the whole meme with hunters. That everything's a hunter item, but that's the thing. They just constantly want to ch swap trinkets all the time, so they want everything. <clears throat> Duels underway. Fap's been used from JMD. Zerker Stancy swapping to it. Intercept pre fap from Big Traps. Pre sprint as well. It's well played to maintain that distance. JMD is doing the best he can to close the gap, but it's not looking like he's going to be able to do that. Damage slowly ticking in from Big Traps, but really he's just looking to maintain that gap. JMD changing the strategy, and this is what top tier players do. And one thing's not going your way, you change it up. Decides to kill the pet back to Brill, sending him home decides to uh, relieve pressure by having the pet being retracted here. Big Traps is going to have his pet die, and that's going to be a huge win there for JMD early on. Yeah, I think uh, I think JMD really needs to go ahead and push this advantage here before... Uh... I mean, he's he's running away here, but if he can if he can get healed up a little bit, I think he needs to be able to go before Big Traps gets too much mana back or be able to get his pet back. <clears throat> 
Yeah, the revive pet, I'm surprised it's not being casted. Maybe he thinks yeah. he doesn't need it to win. Uh, if he gets caught like mid revive pet, maybe he's nervous. Uh, aim shots coming through. Big Traps just wants to maintain that distance. The trap does land. Uh, maybe he's waiting. He might yeah, be waiting to do the revive now. We'll see. Yeah, good call. He's he's popping the aspect of the cheetah. Decides to go for the aim shot. He's like, you know what? I don't need a pet here. Screw okay. my pet. Boar, <laughs> Boar died. You can stay dead. I don't know. Thorium nades land. That's a long range grenade. If that lands, that would be insane. Oh, that nope. would have been sick. <laughs> yeah, that would have been sick. <laughs> we have uh, we have big traps just keeping his distance. JMD removing the poison sting so he can get a couple ticks of first aid. Well well played there. I'm really min maxing that first aid uh, bandage tick. But it's, I mean, it's hard. It's hard for the warrior to to close that gap. You especially with the hunter long range abilities concussive shots you can go zerker stance and get that charge but in zerker stance of course you're taking more damage so if you're sitting in zerker too long it's going to be hard to uh close that gap without just dying yourself another elixir of poison cleansing removing the uh sting there from the hunter and a diamond flask has been used from gmd maybe that'll be able to top him back off yeah, I think <clears throat> the way JMD's playing, it seems like he's worried about taking too much damage, trying to engage on big traps, and then getting a, getting stuck in a frost trap, which he might get right here. <laughs> yeah. There it is. Yeah, <laughs> which, uh, yeah, he'll uh, get right here, and then big traps is going to open on him again. That diamond flask is now gone. Keep that in mind. So he did lose some of his healing, and it does look like he has a skull of impending doom used. So uh, he's using that skull of impending doom. He's going, he's going to want to use that skull of impending doom to prevent getting trapped later he popped a fap earlier and now he basically has a full go to to be able to stick to him there's no wing clips no nothing nothing's going to be able to help big trap separate from jmd so <clears throat> jmd really needs to take the opportunity now to push he switched back to his two-hander there's no more uh there, there's no more skull of impending doom so he is going to sit that trap unless it heartbeat resists which leaks looks unlikely at this point he's going to open back up Big Traps, was he bandaging? Uh, I think we got out of range of him, so we can't. We didn't see the update, but yeah, it did. He did bandage right there, and a huge grenade, huge grenade. That's going to help him be able to close, get back into range for the intercept. He's got the hamstring on him, pops Berserker Rage, and he is trying to, He's right now he's PVing. He's trying to parse, but unfortunately, he's going to get scatter trapped. He did get trapped, and Big Traps is going to keep trying to separate. Now, Big Traps, he already used his bandage. He has, uh, he's not able to bandage right now. He also has the pent on him, so he can't drink. So, JMD really just has to keep pushing this. Thankfully, he does have the pet following him along. He is hopping on the mount. So, the pet is chasing him. He's out of combat. The pet comes back. He's on his mount, and he's going to be able to try and close like this. I would assume he's going to shoot him here, probably with a concussive, trying to open again, or he's going to try and get mana. He does not, because he did not shoot him. He was able to get a charge in battle stance, be able to get more rage. So uh -oh. charge, he gets some distance, goes for intercept. He's got the big stun. He throws the net that looks like a sticky glue, maybe. And Big Traps is low, but he is able to get away. Oh, JMD also retaliates with his own sticky glue. He's probably going to get a combat here, back into battle stance, and be able to charge. Charge, but no, he gets too close and he gets shot. Ah, big blunder there from JMD, but man, I must say, if I'm JMD, I'm smiling right about now. It's a very similar matchup to Warrior versus Mage that we were just casting a second ago. It's it's that mana and health uh, of the Hunter versus just JMD's life bar. Look at that. JMD is just 88% life. The Hunter has no pet. The Hunter has finite amounts of mana. Like, JMD is just a tank, and he's not stopping his assault, just going in over and over and over, and eventually, you're going to get a, a one of these traps that resist you're gonna get um look at that a heartbeat break early potentially and that's the rng jmd's waiting for it's just a couple nice resists or, or anything like that it looks like the duelers have have stopped for for uh, a moment the duel might have ended i don't see either of them with a coward debuff thankfully um are we getting another was that a normal duel? i swear i saw the duel flag maybe i'm mistaken i swear i saw a duel flag Duel of the Death Flag. I don't. I don't know what happened there. If we yeah. could see, I'm not sure. The Makaraz were okay. I thought the Makaraz were not supposed to time out. Whatever. They're going for it. I guess they're, they're going, they're going right away. If it times yeah. out, they're going. They're going again right away. Yeah, and that, that I, I like that. It's like okay, something something happened with the duel. Looks like Makara might have timed out, but they just they just put that another flag and keep dueling. Uh, if if anything, the hunter. Got a little bit of life, but it's not like not that crazy big. Concussive shot has, of course, landed. 
big traps kiting in massive circles with no pet available champ he gets that charge that's a three second stun every intercept and the scatter feign death trap now if one of these resists and it looks like the frost reflector or the resist or both might have come out there and that's what jmd wants to actually finish this off we got sleeping dust we got to resist he's just been waiting for this for so long and he finally has his opportunity to get some damage in but there's a timer there's gonna be another scatter trap coming in about 20 seconds or sooner now uh so jmd has to push this advantage or it's just gonna be another trap it's gonna be the same thing we have the net come out we have big traps kiting it out with the wren so there's gonna be no first aid available jmd pops the free action potion pops zerker stands tries to get the intercept off big traps keeping the cheetah form on uh looks like that rend isn't quite gonna tick the days jmd mounting up and uh yeah we, we've seen this duel before right jmd the warrior he's a tank he's running after the hunter hunter is running as far as he possibly can looks like a mortar might have struck the hunter there uh fap is still up for a couple of seconds the intercept stun lands and big traps kiting like an expert uh, i wonder if he was trying to bait out a concussive shot while he was fapped because he went he went out of the dead zone like he was he was gonna get hit i wonder if because he, he had his fap up he was trying to burn the concussive shot cooldown or something i'm almost thinking warriors like okay maybe this is stupid of me to say oh another trap resist maybe it's stupid of me to say but they're so tanky they yeah. could almost just sit there and use their bow and shoot back <laughs> no, i'm not even kidding they could just I mean, shoot they could shoot back and then throw nades and then use we, pets so they use their own pets their own nades Sony yesterday he, he almost he almost finished the duel with the crossbow didn't he i think he, he was about to i'm not i'm not kidding like these warriors are so tanky they might be able to just use their bow and the hunter will oom and then i i don't know um I, I i guess putting the pressure on is important though jmd constantly running towards big traps makes jm uh big traps feel scared makes him use more mana on things he might w not want to since he's not stationary he can't just charge up aim shots so the, the keeping of the pressure is important i'm, I'm kind of half kidding there but um the t is used from jmd it's gonna be a quite a substantial heal there for jmd topping himself back up to at least 73 percent life and uh, you only have three uses of that ever and then it's gone so that was one of jmd's t's and then after that i mean he only has two more for the rest of this tournament assuming he used none yesterday concussive shot does land jmd though gets the mount up which is really great i'm really surprised uh big traps hasn't made an effort to revive his pet at all yeah i i, I feel like big traps is making a huge mistake by by leaving his pet dead um because it's the, the the duel's been so rinse and repeat jmd is just trying to charge in waiting for the opportune time to charge in and and <clears throat> be able to make a play on top of that getting the charge in the first place like he can get him in combat and he can stop that charge so it's uh not having that pet up is uh i i i think that's a big mistake and seems so like it to do it too yeah seems like it uh you know i i don't main a hunter and you know maybe big traps has a strategy uh you know maybe he doesn't want jmd to build full rage on the pet I, I, who knows yeah maybe there's something that we're not thinking of and, and big traps has the attack and <laughs> that nade would have been cool if it landed once again doesn't quite land it's a really hard to land nades at that range jmd going battle stance to try to get a charge doesn't quite land at the intercept though does land big traps pre-fapping it going with the aspect of the cheetah back to hawk getting more damage in jmd has no gap closers for at least 15 20 seconds here that fap's coming off and jmd is just getting teed off on and poor jmd there's nothing you can do in this situation you're just waiting for that next intercept but when it happens scatter trap will be the answer scatter trap and there it is jmd's just praying for a resist Ooh. there it doesn't happen big traps building distance once again and it could be a nice big aim shot finish here jmd is not feeling too hot with this a lot of damage 39 percent tuber being used root tuber is a uh, use item two minute cooldown that will restore a bit of hp there for for the warrior diamond flask used again it might be the second or third time now it's going to restore a little bit of life he doesn't have the plus healing gear on to amplify the effect however yeah just that little bit can help mitigate some damage but it's not going to be the whole uh It's not going to be your whole thing there. What did he use to get away? Was that an invis pot? No mish cloaking device. Oh, I didn't, I didn't see it. There you go. <clears throat> One for a drink reset off the, the cloak. 
which is nice but jmd's back to full life do you do you think big traps made a good exchange there like jmd got to get full and big traps barely got any mana now jmd's on top of him i think big traps might have set himself behind with that cloak yeah i think i think he did too i mean uh so there's a couple things with the pet the pet will allow jmd to get more rage back but the ability to keep him in combat and big traps can just separate from him so well i i feel like being able to keep jmd in combat and not letting him mount up and charge at you constantly uh -oh. is, uh it's worth oh but that was a improved hamstring now this is bad that was a charge fab, so he actually dropped combat there. I believe it was a heartbeat break. Free action potion. JMD is not going to be stopped for at least 15 more seconds. I believe the intercept's available. Hamstrings being spammed. Deep Wounds ticking down. Big Traps has a fab of his own, trying to get out of range. Mortal Strike connects. Another crit. Deep Wounds. There's the intercept. Three seconds stun. Will an execute connect? We have a scatter coming up soon. JMD's doing his absolute best to avoid it. JMD does not want to get scatter trapped. Of course, it's inevitably going to come. He's praying for the resist. It doesn't happen. Big Traps, though, 20% life, 20% mana. This is the opening JMD's looking for, man. Big Trap's running as far as he possibly can, but the trap's going to end. JMD might be able to get a long-range nade, a mount up, or a charge. And, I mean, this isn't looking good for Big Traps. It reminds me just of Lapon versus Okos. It's the same thing. The Warriors can get kited so easily, but for Big Traps... You can't kill him easily. It's really hard. You dump in so much uh, mana and so much damage, and uh, JMD just tanks it. So it's like, what are you supposed to do? Another charge! Frost Reflector comes out on the uh, pre-scatter trap. That might be reflected. There's a Sticky Glue. A Sticky Glue to reply. It gets resisted. That's pretty lucky for Big Traps and unfortunate there for JMD. We have the opportunity to swap to Zerker and to get the charge off, but a concussive shot RNG once again helping out Big Traps. There's a oh, sprint. Boots. Yeah, a sprint boots from the, JMD. Uh... He's coming in with a rocket boots now. <clears throat> and oh, Big Trap's got rocket boots of his own trying to separate. He's got a concussive shot on JMD. And he's going to keep trying to build that distance on JMD. It really was looking bad for Big Traps. I'm assuming he's going to be able to come in, drop a trap right there, exactly, and be able to separate and be able to turtle this thing out even longer. I'm surprised he did not bandage or heal up at all before shooting him. That might have been a big mistake as JMD comes in with the oh. intercept. He's going to scatter. Is his trap up? It is, and he traps <laughs> him again. No way. Big oh, traps, man. dropping the traps, shooting him again. Not able to get his health up at all. He has his bandage cooldown up, so he's not able to bandage. And he is getting chased down by JMD. JMD putting on, it looks like he's wearing the skull and the one-hander he is. And he is getting ready for that next trap to hit. Keep in mind, there nade. is a 30-second cooldown. The nade misses. There is a 30-second cooldown. Excuse me, he's fapped. So the nade didn't miss, but the the uh, he's immune to the, the stun itself because of the fap. His skull might still be on cooldown. Never mind. He took the skull off, and he cannot get out of the trap anymore so unfortunately big trap gets away one more time and he is bandaging again my goodness this is uh this is something i mean JMD if you hops at his mount if you're big traps like what do you do to win this like you've been behind for so many minutes jmd finally closed the gap and this might be it we have the deep wounds and the ren ticking and the hamstring the sticky glue comes out maybe jmd is oh there it is there That's is what I the wanted. big bow Two Take percent. him out, JMD. Give him the oh, bow. He flasks. He flasks to get his health back up over 20%. If he can get an intercept here, intercept execute, it is over. Yep, that's all it's going to take from JMD. Big Traps is so low. 15% life. There's a scatter trap. Oh, the trap he is dropped on the, the ground. Trap. He saw JMD the animation. Doesn't Hopefully have he doesn't get hit by it. He has to dodge it. He's Where's dodging, the trap? he's dodging it. Oh, Shoot him. Shoot it's him. like a pseudo pillar. <laughs> shoot him. He boots his ticket. Concussive RNG. Come just on, GMD. Him. Send him with shoot the bomb. Send him up with the bomb. No, oh, the it bomb. misses. There's a scatter. <laughs> Big traps is on his last leg. He's 3% life. GMD, <laughs> try to close the gap. Another concussive lands. Bro, bro, if I'm GMD, I'm taking out the bow next time, man. Just shoot him down. He, he won't be able to handle it. 8% life. He's tick eating uh, with the server ticks. That's Dude. well done. Mount is off. Charge connects. This might be it. This might be it. One execute. He's trying to dodge that trap. Really crafty play there from JMD. Another fap from Big Traps. Could be a fap to answer with JMD. Is he going to pop it? Maybe not. Execute is all it's going to take here. Another scatter. If, it, if this resists, he's dead. 
Oh, he resists. Oh, he resists. my it's God. It's going to be it. Oh, the concussive oh. stun Brock. No way. Oh, my gosh. What is this duel, man? Holy. What is this duel? This is insane. <laughs> Complete insanity, dude. And he is back over 20%. He is out of execute range. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> There's another uh, scatter. Let me guess. Feign death trap. There oh, it my. is. There it is. We get big traps with a big trap once again. Aspect of the cheetah. JMD is going to have to sit it. I mean, big traps has been on the run for minutes. Like, JMD, despite, you know, taking a while uh, in this matchup, must be feeling pretty good about himself. It's like he hasn't had to play defensive once, I don't think, yeah. really. He's just been Absolutely. vibing. There's the charge oh. with the sticky net, I think. Oh, no, the sticky glue um, from Big Traps. You know, that would be nice. Now, here's the bow. There it is. I like those strats from JMD. Oh, the pets, the zoo coming on Big Traps. Collar. I think the peasant collar is going to go a long way in this one. Yes, the pets are going to keep him combat. You know what could be great? If one of the pets eats the next trap. That's yep. what JMD needs. He needs pets to to eat the scatter trap. Another concussive proc from Big Trap. I don't think Big Trap has the damage to finish this or the mana. Um, Big Trap would to win this. Big Trap would have to reset full mana, full health. I just don't know if it's gonna happen. The charge comes through. Oh man, JMD See, is he's waiting. He's got the skull on, but he doesn't have it used yet. He might have put it on. There's a 30 second timer. One of you use it, put on an on use item to where you can't actually use oh. it yet. Oh, huge scatter. Oh. I think he has his trap off cooldown, That's it. though. That's Can he get be. it off? <laughs> that is it. Finally, JMD does the impossible, and he avoids big trap traps <laughs> at the end. Wow. Holy. Dude, so what a duel. That went, from, that went from a duel that, like, I, I, I felt it. I got to a point there where I was like, good Lord, when is this thing going to end? To that last, like, three minutes of that was so intense, man so absolutely intense just waiting for waiting for a resist we finally get the resist but then you have the stun proc on the concussive shot the improved concussive shot huge man that was uh that was insane that hey huge huge props to big traps uh making that thing last as long as it did and jmd as well that was a really really good performance from both of these guys phenomenal man really impressive yeah. Yeah, that was a great one. It, it took a while, but still a really fun duel. And man, I feel like the, the story for this tournament uh, is Warriors just being so tanky. Like, so tanky with all of these potions up. It's like, if a hunter can just sit there and tee off on a warrior, the hunter's oom um before the warrior dies. Same thing with a mage. And with, with that amount of resistance, it's like, Warriors can just be like, sure, tee off on me all day i'll wait till your room and then kill you <laughs> you know <laughs> like warriors just they have it they have that longevity with yep. this rule set no absolutely dude you 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 are 100 percent right like it's uh the the ability to sustain for for a warrior with all the cooldowns all the uh all the consumables all the potions everything that's available to you in the game the Warrior doesn't use mana or anything, right? So there's a bunch of consumes that are good for, like, spellcasters that they don't have to worry about. And a lot of those things share cooldown, uh, like a health and a mana potion share cooldown, for example. So you can just focus on the things that are going to help you sustain, whereas a lot of the spellcasters use their cooldown on things that, that focus on both. So it's, uh, it's very, very cool to see the Warriors playing at a high level and uh, competing toe-to-toe -to -toe with everybody in this one. I know we mentioned this yesterday. But Josito has leveled four characters for this tournament. The first three unfortunately died. The fact that Jose is standing here today on a level 60 after three deaths with full gear is an incredible feat in itself. And, and same with any of these competitors. This is going to be a Shadow Priest Mirror matchup. Um, Jose uh, has a pretty big name in the PvP scene. You know, he's multi, multi, multi rank one player on retail, mm -hmm. on TBC, on Wrath. Uh, he's done very well in classic as well. He's just so experienced on the priest. Um, so I, I don't know if, if Sib has any nerves going into this or anything like that, but this uh, expertise is certainly uh, on Josito's side here. Sibs, though, he's made it here today. He's level 60. He has some great gear. He made it through the qualifier round yesterday, um, which is just awesome to see. And we're going to see two great priests duke it out here. I don't think we've seen a priest mirror matchup 
uh, yet today, so it's going to be kind of cool to see that one. Once again, it might be more of a mana battle. I'm curious to see if these priests are going to go all in or kind of play a bit more passive, but one thing's for sure, we're probably going to see a lot of dispels to start this duel off so that priests can even the playing field without all of these different buffs coming into play. It looks like the um, offhand, Skull of Impending Doom is equipped there, so it can break CC. A lot of pets already being used and committed here from Sibs before the duel even begins to kind of get that zoo ready. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they're they're coming out with everything right out the gate. So he engaged on him. He engaged on him right off the bat. I'm assuming to try and clean him up, and that's what they're doing. It's a lot of dispel spam. He used a Shadow Reflector, actually, right now, but uh, it doesn't really amount to anything. Going to sleep, continuing to dispel probably there it is yeah he keeps dispelling he's trying to get the dispel advantage because it's it's a race really it's a race to see who can get the most dispels off right off the right off the bat and uh from there that's when the duel actually starts sibs now gets blanket silenced by hazito and uh we're still dispelling there's a lot of buffs man. there's a lot of buffs for both these guys doing the inner focus the mana potion uh we got another inner focus that comes out from sibs and uh, now it looks like our duel actually starts. It looked like that was a, uh, it looked like a fear resist, I believe. I didn't see the fear animation actually go off. So uh, now is whenever the real damage starts. You go, there's an AGM trinket opening up here. It looked like a resto pot medicine pouch into a health stone. Sibs is doing everything he can to sustain as much as possible. And, I must uh, say, it looked like Sibs was in the driver's seat. Hosey using that T to kind of mm -hmm. uh, even himself back up in this duel. But Sibs is doing a really, really great job. If Sibs has a T, though, now is the time to use it. I don't know if he does. Arcane Bomb. Look, I don't know if that resisted or missed. Mind Blast coming off. And they're both very close. Very, very close. Duel neck and neck. What a great uh, duel to spectate here between these two Shadow Priests. Hosito uh, around 26%. Sibs 41%. So Sibs is actually in the driver's seat despite the T. This is yep. incredible to see. I, I was not uh, expecting this. Sibs is coming out with a Im very impressive performance. Shadow Word Pain is ticking down, and uh, the Vampire can brace us up, so Sibs is receiving healing, and Shadow Priest is just one of the coolest classes in Classic, in my opinion. I, I've very leveled cool. 1 to 60. These, these are just so fun. You get to you get to do the damage and the healing as a support class, and Hosito, though, getting a tick or two of food, and the Blackout proc back-to-back. -back. That might be the turn he needed there to take his lead, but Sibs Sibs playing max range on the silence. He's not going to let that happen. I'm not sure if Sibs still has that T, but Sibs sitting down for a drink. Hosito is in combat from that Yeti, and Sibs is getting a ton of mana. The Yeti is being feared. Sibs is getting full health and full mana right now, and Hosey uh, just sat down right now. The... Uh, mount came out from Sibs. He's going to stop Hosey from drinking. There is quite a bit of distance, and Sibs using the helmet, the Goblin Rocket helmet, to close the gap, and I think Sibs came out ahead on that as well. So, he's just looking really good in this duel. More purges coming through. Another blackout from Hosey into an Arcane Bomb off the blackout, which is really, really well played. Nice five-second okay. silence coming in. Maybe that's what Hosito needed. You have the title charm, too, coming out from Sibs, but I think Sibs is really on the back foot here. Uh, I think Hasido has every opportunity here to be able to finish this out. Sibs does have a blanket silence on him. There's shadow a shadow reflector. reflector. <laughs> oh renew. my gosh, the reju, the renew. Oh, he's got Shield this the though. Blackout proc. Hosey's got yes. this though. Another T to hope for Hosey just to finish off two T's in one duel. Sibs has 8% life. He's out of shadow form. Hosey has the pet advantage as well. The fear resists on the pet. Mindplay's going to finish it off. Sibs wow. falls. I've got to say, that was a great duel from both Shadow really, Priest. What a great showing really from good. Sibs. Um, Dude, I, I thought mean, well, Sibs was going to win that at one point. Bro, about, about let me just say. Duel, I, thought, I thought Sibs had it. Let me just say, Hosito used two T's. Both T is about 20% health and mana. Use two. That's about 40% health and mana. That's kind of the difference for Hosey. Hosey won from those T's, really. In my mind, mm -hmm. Sibs played that out of his mind. Uh, very well played. I think with equal consumes, I don't know if it would have gone that way. Um, yeah. just, just well played to well, Sibs and to Hosey for finishing it off. There was some really great plays from Hosey coming out the blackout proc and right when he noticed the stun instantly charged up the arcane bomb and that play is what really sealed the deal for Josita jones absolutely yeah i think that blackout really opens up the ability to use that arcane bomb and let it hit and uh i, I wanna i wanna stick on the the thing with the tea with sugar the being able to use that tea it's it's more than just that you know 40 percent total health right like it's it's 
uh, it's about when the healing hits that matters so much too. So to your point, it's, it's even more valuable, I think, than uh, what people see as like the health difference at the end of the duel. Because sometimes you're, you're lower health in the duel and that gives the opponent an opening to really finish you off. And being able to use the healing at the right time is what can make a huge difference in closing that window, right? And making sure that, w that the opportunity for you to get killed isn't there. So uh, yeah. you're, I think you're 100% right on the tease. It's a great point, man. Like you can use it as a bait, like run away pretending you're low. And as soon as they overextend, you like T and then health pot and you're full life and you turn around on them and they're like, oh, no, I thought you were dead. Um, so, yeah, it's like using that as like uh, hidden tech. And the T does not share cooldown with major health potion. T has its own cooldown that uh, is shared with healthstone from warlock and the mana gem with mage i believe so it's it's kind of like on that cooldown chain so you can tea and health pot without uh at the same time and shares no cooldown you can just like top yourself so pretty cool next up lock versus rogue this is a fun one we have uh cool. two of the favorite classes for this tournament um rogue is uh one of the things early on people were like oh rogue's just gonna win undead rogue and same thing with warlock i mean Warlock won the last uh, 2019 CDL dual tournament. Snuts won that as, as Warlock. And, uh, you know, generally Warlocks just do really well in dueling tournaments. So it's like Warlock versus Rogue is about as classic as it gets. Yeah, no, 100%. Uh, Warlock, Rogue, it's a, uh, it's, this is like a tale as old as time style of duel. I mean, this is something that I think people are, uh, they, they always have a good time watching this and uh, rogues having all the tools that they have at their disposal, warlocks having all the tools that they have at their disposal. It's uh, it's cool to see like the, the trading card game of like, you know, trading cooldowns for each other. Uh, and in vanilla, in vanilla, you don't see that as often as you do in some of the later expansions. Like you, you get to, uh, now I'm, I'm, I'm not a, a retail arena guy, but uh, Zarya, you can speak to this a lot more where later on, it's like everybody has these different like, uh, like everybody has like a, a DPS cooldown. Everybody has a kick. Everybody has this. So you see the trading of the cooldowns happen so often later on. In vanilla, uh, you don't see that as much with all the classes, but with Warlock and Rogue, you ha you do have that. So it can be like a really interesting sort of back and forth that you get. I was muted there for a second, but yeah, it's just one of those situations where Warlocks have um, the sacrifice pet. They have another pet and another sacrifice. And it's like... The Warlock's trying not to get Zerg down, so much so that we saw Snuts yesterday actually take off spell damage gear and put on defense gear, put on stamina gear, and put on gear to just help him live a little bit longer, just be a tank against that rogue. And the rogue is one of those classes that you can just make another class not play like forever. We have Cheap Shot, Kidney, Gouge, Blind, Sap magic dust do it all again prep do it all again like you know so you can just ha have another class not play for minutes the warlock is just trying to tank all that damage sack all the damage wait for the rogues cooldowns to kind of fade and then take them out um we have death coil which is one of the biggest defensive cooldowns for the warlock the death coil not only is a hard cc meaning it can't heartbeat break it can't break to damage it like like a fear or a polymorph can um that death coil is also going to heal the warlock and and that's why that death coil is so important it, from that death coil it's instant cast as well so you can death coil into a fear that's not only going to heal you hard cc them but then you can continue your cc chain and so the warlock has those tools against the tools of the rogue i'm not sure uh what we're waiting on here the the warlock rogue duel they ran up back to the hill maybe there is uh something that we're waiting on maybe we can hear from admins here in a second um if not i'm pretty excited for this one yeah no i think i think this is gonna be a great one and and, and i love that I, lo I love you breaking it down like that for the viewers especially because we probably have a lot of people watching who uh they're not necessarily WoW players. There's a whole lot of people in the audience right now who maybe they're new to Classic, they're new to WoW, and they uh, they might not know uh, all these abilities like some other people do. So it's like uh, it's good to have people be able to break it down and explain to them what we're talking about, right? Because we'll we'll say things like heartbeat resist or whatever, and be like, oh, it's heartbeat resist, like which is it's second nature to somebody who's been playing for 10, 15 years, 20 years, but. Uh, for a lot of people that are new, and that's something that I think people got to realize is there's always going to be new players. You, you might not think there is, but there's always new players coming to WoW. And uh, kind of welcoming those people in the community and, and being positive towards them and being welcoming to them is uh, uh, a pretty important thing, I think.
so yeah dude it's hilarious like a lot of these uh words this jargon being used we get that korean stuff there uh i don't even realize we're saying it right as as veteran wow players i remember my dad would be in my room when i was a kid playing wow and i'm like full poly healer and he's like what language are you speaking like what what does any of this mean and i'm like it's a, a full as in not half or not quarter or not fully dr'd polymorph on the healer dad obviously um <laughs> But we have the uh, we have the warlockers, the druid on this next matchup. Uh, there might be uh, some connection issues with the uh, other competitors, so we're we're just moving on. Um, and this is uh, a, a great matchup here. The druid's going to be opening up uh, with that thorium grenade. It looks like it misses, and we have the death coil landing, the insect swarm and moonfire kind of ticking them down. Arcane bomb, will it connect? Yes, it does. That's impressive. Nice aim there from four, and he's pretty happy with that opener. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, <clears throat> I think what we're going to be able to see here, what we're, gonna, what we're going to want to see here is uh, I think the Warlock is going to want to be close and stay stay close to the Druid so the Druid can't separate and uh, really take uh, take advantage of the distance between the uh, him and the Warlock being able to kill the pet or anything like that. I don't know if the Druid is going to want to kill the pet here. I, I really wish Chance was here to be able to kind of speak to that a little bit better. But uh, I, uh, I do expect to see the Warlock try and play it a little bit closer. Uh, outside of trying to go for a reset and trying to keep his health and mana up, which he's doing right now, actually. Yeah, that was well played. The, the Moonfire had like one second left, so it did yeah. interrupt that bandage stick, unfortunately. But I mean, look at four's HP and mana. It doesn't even look close. Arzon uh, does get a Nature Swiftness crit back to full life with the healing touch, but he's down to 35% mana. I mean, if you're four, you're, you're feeling pretty good here. You get the full fear, trinket immediately from Arzon to reply with the corruption, the agony, the immolates are ticking down. The Arcane Bomb again off a of cooldown. I love this play from four, just using those bombs on cooldown to man to drain Arzon. I mean, what do you do if you're Arzon? You, you're going to need consumables. You're, uh, there's an Innervate. Great. Uh, maybe the pet can purge it. Does he? Does it get purged? I think it might have got purged from the pet on the it on the Devourer. Have. It might have. Might gotten devoured. Yeah. It looked like yeah. it. Yeah. Because his mana did. his mana didn't pick up. Yeah. Wow. That's huge. That's massive. That's massive. Yeah. So an, another fear being casted from four. Arzon really on the back foot. I mean, he already was, but the Innervate looks like it got devoured from the Fell Hunter. And Arzon is just fully feared. Four is just chasing him down, looking for blood here. Another Devour coming out on cooldown. I don't see a world where Arzon turns this around. I really don't. He's too low. There's a T. That, that's good. That's a consumable that, that we were talking about earlier that gives health and mana off of a separate cooldown than Potion. Arzon trying to get more debuffs and buffs up with the Nogginfogger Elixir, just spamming those low rank things. Uh, Arzon does have 63% mana now, a little bit of mana to work with, but there's like zero pressure coming out from Arzon. And yeah, you have the insect a swarm in the moon fires ticking down four but that's that's not going to be anything that the warlock can't handle with hellstones with potions with death coil heals with drain lives so i feel like four isn't worried at all he's just pedal to the metal on yeah. arzon yeah and that's exactly what we were talking about earlier is, is seeing him try and make sure that arzon doesn't separate and this might be it for him man i if he can get this regrowth off it might be able to, to delay the inevitable but i don't see a world where Arzon comes back from the current situation. He's hanging on barely. The arcane bomb misses. So it's not quite enough to finish just yet. He's redotting him up, putting up the emulates. He's got the corruption ticking. He's got the curse of agony ticking. And that alongside the pet, he's doing a nature's grasp to see if he can stop the pet from following him, but it's just not going to be enough. And Arzon is finished. 07, another death. Another death, another one gone. Fours advances to the next round. Congratulations, Fours. Uh, really, really good play by Fours. I think he, uh, I think he did a phenomenal job of making sure that Arzon really never got a chance to to separate and really got a chance to go away. So, uh, I like watching casters. I think for new WoW players, especially, you see a caster and you you play a caster and it's like, oh, I'm a mage. I'm supposed to stand over there and they're supposed to be over there. Right, or I play a warlock. Yeah. It's like that's not how in PvP, dude. Like these guys run in, and and Zar, you can attest to this, dude. It's full blazing, blinking, Frost Nova, Kona Colt, the whole nine yards. Like it's it's very uh, it's it's a very different playstyle than what would in, be intuitive to uh to people who aren't familiar with it.
I know this goes without saying too, guys, but I just kind of forgot and re-remembered, so I want to mention it again. This is indeed a Makara tournament. Every time someone loses a duel, they are dead on yeah. your screen. They are, like, all of their hundreds of hours gone down the yep. drain dead every single duel and that's just so epic to see and uh yeah thank you to all the competitors taking the time to, to level up and gear up and doing that it's just yeah every every time it's like it's almost like we're numb to it because we've watched so many duels like we've seen like 20 duels or whatever today and it's like yeah okay he lost he won no they're <laughs> dead dude we're they're just like dead a cold husk of a human being just like oh he's dead who cares next duel next duel I mean, <laughs> well, that's, that's why see that's why we did this as a horde tournament a lot of people don't know this we did this as a horde tournament because see we play alliance me and zaryu so like you know we're not we're not animals okay these horde players the horde are gonna kill each other for sport we're not gonna do that okay <laughs> that's the thing we oh my gosh that opener that opener was crazy so vitochi goes in with the goblin rocket helm but it gets scattered mid helm to get so it got interrupted so vitochi never got his like gap closer he was looking for and peace is going to be able to maintain distance poison el elixir cleanse there from vitochi well done and the fap to combo it getting into the dead zone and a big shatter combo is coming out frost nova gets trinketed from peace to stop the shatter combo and vitochi the mage is looking to uh kind of disrupt the the uh frost resistance potion here from peace so the frost potion scattered Matter Fane Death Trap combo coming up from Peace. If I was Vitochi, oh, it gets resisted. Great. That's really good for Vitochi. Frost Nova gets resisted as well. Polymorph coming through. And this is a pretty good opener for the Mage. We we could go for an early Evocate here, and he does. The pets, though, are going to knock him back. A, a Mana Shield could have been okay there to stop the knockback. We have the Frost Bolt being casted here. Big Kona Cold to follow. Mages, he's, Vitochi's playing this perfect. This is exactly what you want to do. Run in on the Hunter. Stay dead zoned. Sticky glue. Jump all over him. If you let let the hunter get away it's over it's over like there's nothing you can do frost reflector from peace he knows that he's trying to stop as much damage as possible pets are everywhere man we got barabs we got the yeti we have the hunter pet trap comes out insta ice block from vitochi as he should do peace finally uses the goblin rocket helm to disengage here gets max distance does look like the diminish return is on from the trap vitochi gets viper stung insta dispel on the viper sting well played and vitochi blinks in yeah, no, this is, this is great to see from Vitochi. I mean, uh, Peace Blade, uh, normally a Paladin player, uh, picking, picking up Hunter for this tournament. It's, uh, it, it's very cool to see him, uh, him come in and, and being able to compete in the finals here. <clears throat> Vitochi is a, uh, he's a, he's a multi-rank one, isn't he, in uh, retail? And he just started playing Classic not too long ago? I, I don't know if he's rank one. I think he might be a gladiator, top, like high-level retail player, decided to try out Classic, and he actually got world first 60 in hardcore which is a very impressive feat the arcane bomb gets blocked but vitoshi's still loom all right well there you go yeah i think uh I, I think vitoshi losing the mana battle here is uh is pretty rough peace blade is doing a great job of maintaining his distance and uh i mean he gets he gets uh goblin rocket helm here i don't know if he's gonna get a heartbeat i mean this is lasting a little bit oh it does heartbeat resist scatter trap and this is looking kind of bad for vitoshi Peace is a gamer, man. Like, if yeah, he's he not, doesn't main a hunter, I wouldn't have never known. I would have think, uh, thought Peace has been playing a hunter for years. He's he's kiting well. He's using his toolkit well. I, I would have never known. I'm really impressed here with Peace. I, I think, uh, unfortunately for, for Vitochi, like, that was a big shatter combo, right? Not really. It just resists. Like, one Frostbolt resists. Kona Cold doesn't crit. Vitochi's doing almost no damage in the burst windows where he should be, like, one-shotting the hunter. And once again, I sound like a broken record, but that's what casters have to deal with this, in this tournament with so many items not being banned. Like, there's basically no rules in this tournament. You just show up and fight. Vitochi, no ice blocks left. Low on health. Low on mana. At this point, Peace could maybe just finish him off with the melee. melee. Yeah. Yeah, that might be what he does. Another flask coming out from Vitochi. He doesn't want to die. The damage coming. Another ice barrier. So Vitochi has a little bit of health to work with. Another flask. There's three flasks available per day, my friends. And that was two of them. Vitochi blinks, blinks the wrong way. He's this gonna surely fall. And he oh. does. He, oh. In a second here. He, there oh, it goes. Vitochi there go. falls. Peace Blade. Let's go. Paladin brother. Let's do this. Hell yeah. Played, well like that was really impressive from peace Just he's plays really a gamer man he's a gamer he's uh he, he's like uh he, play, he plays a lot of rad he plays he, he's like me he does like all the paladin stuff so uh so yeah peace is uh uh peace is a uh much much better hunter than i would be that's for sure 
but uh, he's he's like a big Paladin fan, so uh, I'm really happy to see Peace Blade do well. So that's uh, that's big time. He's a fellow Crusader. He's, that's somebody else who's in my guild in vanilla. So, oh man, that yeah, I'm I'm super impressed. If you never told me that, I would have been like, oh yeah, this guy has mastered Hunter over many years. You know, he like <laughs> <Yeah>. looks, <laughs> looks like he was prepared. Um, we have a, a couple matchups. We have that Warlock Rogue matchup that. Uh, we might be getting back to i know we have snuts versus that mage we might be getting back to and Jayla versus cheerios looks like it might be up next uh the Jayla cheerios matchup very big very big right this is uh one of those swing matches for the whole tournament uh so to speak because Jayla is one of the best warriors in terms of rankings in this tournament and he's undead meaning Jayla is the warlock killer every warlock is scared to fight jayla cheerios fighting jayla first round today is just not what cheerios wanted to wake up to in terms of news here so it's kind of unfortunate i was looking i was watching snuts stream last night snuts was saying jayla is kind of like the number one person he's looking out for uh so jayla is the warlock slayer we'll see i mean it doesn't mean he's going to win against cheerios cheerios is an, an incredible warlock very prepared this could be a very close duel one way or the other um, but if J Law makes it through this bracket um, and goes against Nuts, like that's another crazy duel that we could see. I'm curious yeah. to see what Shirio is, is going to bring out here. Absolutely. And J Law gets the open here. He opens up with a charge. <clears throat> and he is getting, a sed or he's trying to get seduced immediately. They're trying to seduce him, but no, he's getting those crossbow shots in. Throw on the grenade to stop the pet. I wonder if he's going to go kill it. And he does. He goes to kill the succubus. And then he's going to go tee off. We get a fell dom for the void walker. Getting that void walker ready to sacrifice for the absorb shield. That absorb shield being really, really powerful against war warriors. Because it stops them from generating any rage whenever their attacks get absorbed. j -Lock coming back in. He gets, uh, <clears throat> he, he does the uh, Goblin Rocket Helm to close the gap, and he gets the net backfire on Cheerios, which is absolutely massive. That is an 18-second, I believe, net on Cheerios. Cheerios cannot kite because Cheerios tried to cast the net, and it backfired. Oh, so they, they are both netted on top of each other right now. So he gets full go. He gets to fear right here, but it probably isn't going to matter because I believe he has an out. He does. Oh. He has Will of the Forsaken into an intercept from J-Law. Laying into him, that net backfire was so huge, and that might have been the turning point in this whole thing. He is shadow locked. He can't cast a fear. He can't cast a drain life. The Ooh. pet is back in range. I expect him to sack it anytime here. He is silenced. Are we going to see a sack? We do. There is the pet sacrifice. Trying to cast a fear without any spell pushback. The pummel is back up. The pummel is used. The fear is blocked. He goes for the searing pain. Tries to cast another fear. Oh. J-Law does not get hit by it, and this is his chance to finish right here. This is textbook oh, from oh, J-Law. Oh, oh. Damn, damn, damn. Unbelievable performance by J-Law. Holy cow, man. That, might that was have been unreal, dude. One of the biggest turning points of today. We have J-Law taking out Cheerios, which means... Like Cheerios is an incredible warlock. Given there was maybe some RNG things at play with the uh, the backfire, but Jayla looked good there, man. If I was snuts, I would be a little worried. Uh, if you look at the bracket, Jayla next is going to be against Peace the Hunter. If I was snuts, I'd be like. Peace, take him out for me, man. I don't want to fight J-Law. Because, <laughs> yeah. dude, J-Law could take out Peace, could take out Snuts, and could make a run up, and then yeah. all of a sudden, yeah. Uh, man, that's that's crazy. Hey, I was really looking forward to that player, one. man. J-Law J -Law is a great player. I mean, he, I, I remember PvPing against him, ranking against him. J-Law is a very good warrior. So it's uh, it's it's cool to see him do well. He's, he's competed in tournaments and stuff before. So, uh, yeah, good to see, man. For sure, good to see. And we're back to nz versus uh, infestors rogue lock duel from earlier the connection issues are probably resolved about now the magic resistance potion used increases all resistance uh by 50 i i believe something like that and uh, makes it really hard for the warlock to actually land anything against the rogue it does share a cooldown with potions meaning there's no faps for two minutes health potions for two minutes and it only lasts three minutes i believe so nc popping that at pretty uh good time there but the dual flag needs to go down because that's ticking also the pets from uh infestors are ticking as well so both players are probably like go 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 you know start the duel uh rogue goes in stealth uh flag has been dropped and we've seen i believe we've seen this uh duel go both ways and this is another good one where it's uh 
you know, I don't know if I would call it favored one way or the other, but I know a warlock isn't like excited to duel an undead rogue as they would be something else. And a sapper coming out immediately, I kind of like that because it's like if you use the sapper early, there's no chance for it to just kill you. You can kind of see the damage that it's going to do. It doesn't do much. Full kidney shot. The death coil was reflected with a shadow reflector. Big play there from NZ. Tidal charm coming in out. from infestors into the full fear. No, this is absolutely massive. I mean, this is this is a very, very aggressive duel. Uh, <clears throat> you see NSZ, he gets gnome netted, ends up vanishing in it, coming out, reopening with a cheap shot. Let's see if he follows that up. He's got a gouge. He has combo points. Does he go full kidney? He goes full kidney into it. He's going to be able to lay into him, but he doesn't really do any damage here. Gets the blind out. Let's see if he does anything to the pet. He doesn't do anything to the pet. I don't know how many combo points he has up here. Instead, he tries to vanish, and he's going to try and re-engage here. Hellfire doesn't get hit by the Hellfire. Opens up with a cheap shot. Gouge. He's got the combo points. Does he go into a full kidney? He does. Full six-second kidney shot. Ends up getting sent out to a fear. I'm not sure what that fear was. Oh, it was, oh. Oh, it was the Death Mist proc. Very good. Thank you, cameraman. Very good. The cameraman Death owns. <laughs> Two-piece. Or the Death Mist, uh, yeah, the Death Mist four-piece, excuse me, procs. The second set bonus procs. Huge, 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 huge uh, turnaround there for Infester. But let's see if he can keep it up. Pet's about to die. He's going to have to sacrifice soon. The Arcane Bomb comes out. He does get the pet sack, even while silenced, because it's not his ability. The Voidwalker coming out. He fakes the kick on the Voidwalker. Well played from both of these guys. I'm really impressed. Drain Life being channeled. NZ on the back foot. Infester going into the full blind, but those dots are going to tick. NZ is going to put himself into a worse and worse position the longer this blind goes on, trying to wait out that... Uh, shield after the blind he goes into the goblin rocket only just waiting out to shield it's 30 seconds of of wait time here cross cc gouge and goblin rocket helm into the bandage well played from nz he Get does more damage block. after the shield fades and infestors have 40 percent life we're waiting for a big crit to come here can he probably see another health potion from both players death coil though putting infestors ahead life tap to gain the mana necessary to finish the job full fear coming out nz must be pretty scared of will of Take it. It's not going to be enough. There's nothing he can do at this point. The dots are going to tick. Infestor's coming out ahead. And NZ wow. does fall. What a, what duel. a, what a duel. duel, man. Jeez. Unbelievable. Unbelievable finish. Dude, I, I, I thought uh, NZS had it, dude. I thought, I thought, I thought NZ had it. Uh, for for uh, like that whole like middle portion of the duel, I was like, damn, I think he's actually got this here. But Fester turns it back around and finishes. Getting that death coil off. How about that shadow, uh, that, that shadow reflector on the death coil? That was so sick, man. Bro, if you're the rogue, NZ, and you reflect a coil and still lose, I'd be like, oh, come on. Like, I know, sick. dude. You no, must be pretty happy with that. Per like, NZ, if you're watching, you must be happy with that performance. You, that was a good duel from both ends. It was back and forth. Plays were being made. I was, yeah, that was a great duel to spectate and watch. I, I hope he's not too upset with that one. That was great. Yeah, I mean, we this, have... is, this is one of those times where, look, we're, we're in the finals. And I, I believe, was that a, I don't think that was our last match of round one. But that was all of round one. So we're taking a look at the bracket now. And uh, we're looking at the entirety of the bracket now to see where we are. So you can see right there, we are going to go with uh, LT versus Zico next. Dude, that first round was long. That was, uh, that was a long, long, long first round, but we got Zico and LT coming up right here. I can't wait to see. the start of round two. I can't wait to see this duel. Like, we saw Mage versus Hunter from Vitochi, and it, it seemed hard. The duel has started. I wonder if Zico has any hidden tech. Tidal Charm Sheep opener to close the gap. He's going to go for the pet kill. I really like it. So it's going to be a Nova Shatter. It's going to be Frostbolt Fire Blast. Uh, Kona Cold. Another Frostbolt. Another Frostbite RNG. Great RNG here from Zico. And a Resheep in case the Heartbeat comes out. Uh, nice and safe there from Zico. And now Zico is going to kill the uh, chicken. 
<laughs> just killing all the pets. Kona cold. There's a Yeti. There's still one more pet to go. And he kills the Yeti too, I think. Another Nova coming out. Uh, the pet eats the trap from Zico. What a play. Zico uh, is aware of that Frost Reflector. Doesn't cast into it. Kona cold will not be reflected uh, because it's AoE. Another Frostbite proc from Zico. And this is looking really good from Zico. I love the pet kill. Normally in the metagame, it's too slow. Oh, the Arcade Bomb gets blinked! Zico's an absolute legend. And he's showing you guys why. Magic Dust connects onto LT and Zico with an early evocate closing the gap. I really love Zico's gameplay here. He slows it down. Sheeps the hunter with the title charm sheep. Swaps the trinkets after that. Kills the pet. Opens up onto LT. Now LT still full life, but no pet to help him out here. Beautiful feign death. The pseudo interrupt the frostbolt being casted there. LT just stuck in the dead zone forever. Forced to use the goblin rock and Elm Zico instantly replies to the ice block. Another frost nova coming out on the cold snap. Zico's going all in here with the arcane explosions. It's a desperate move for more damage. Another viper sting. Zico's aware. Takes it off instantly with the elixir. Blinks on top of LT. Kona cold connects. There's another wing clip to respond. Zico's in the driver's seat this entire duel. What a showing here from the big Z. Kona cold keeping LT slowed at bay. Mechanical uh, chicken and the fab helping LT a little bit. Zico once Big again help. using the elixir and uses the helm to close the gap once again. Not only that, he's getting to get the opportunity to wait the fap out. The free action potion is ticking away. It's a two minute cooldown and it lasts for 30 seconds. So he gets that helmet off. And dude, the fact that this has not heartbeat resisted for this long, this is the best RNG in the world. Perfect timing. The fap falls off right after the frost bolt. Everything is in Zico's favor in this duel. This is absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely Another magic phenomenal. does. Getting to sleep. Zico is so aware of these Viper Stings. He's not letting them tick at all. Like, zero Viper Sting value. If anything, uh, it's, it's helping Zico that he's using Viper Stings because it's wasting damage that could have been used in other globals. Zico looking like an absolute professional as he is. The six Demon Bag and the Arena Grandmaster to finish it off. Zico's just going to stick this, fight him head to head here, casting the Frost Bolts. There's nothing LT can do. Feign Death. He's not dead yet. There's another Flask. It's going to be a little bit of health from that Titan. Zico completely tapped, but he could finish him off with Wands at this point if he wants to, and that's what it looks like he will do. 10% life here from LT. Maybe another scatter trap. Zico might have another ice block. Rank one Kona Cold just for the slow. Zico staying on top of him, finishing him off with the wands. Revive pet. I don't <laughs> think that's going to be the move there. Who really knows? Counterspell comes out though. 3% LT. Oh no. What a performance from Zico. Oh, scatter trap though. No. Insta block. Don't worry, I'm made to finish it off. It misses. Another wand. Viper Sting. There it is. Dude, what the a last duel. like 30 seconds of that duel was just like two guys just like just exhausted trying to smack each other. What a duel, <laughs> man. Dude, Zico not only uh not only did uh uh Zico play that perfectly, but the the RNG that he had, like the the perfect like the goblin rocket helm, like not heartbeat resisting for like the entire fap essentially was insane. Unreal, dude. Unreal. Yeah, Zico, that was like a masterclass, Mage Hunter masterclass. Like you could you could put that uh, in a textbook, you know what I mean? And have people review that footage on exactly how to play the matchup. Zico, excellent play there. I wouldn't expect anything else. I mean, it's not like I'm surprised. It was just cool to see it. It's like, yeah, he can do that. That's Zico. Next up, we have a Shaman Mir. We got C Do versus New Jack. C Do playing Enhance. Big two hander, Arcanite Reaper, fully enchanted and ready to go. That's the Stadman. His opponent, New Jack, I believe he's playing. Is he enhanced or Ellie? I can't quite remember. Uh, the spec here, we'll know in just a second. Looks like it might be an elemental shaman with the spell hit Banthok Sash. New Jack also looks pretty darn ready to go. He has the ice reflector on. I wonder, maybe to reflect a frost shock. Maybe that's a big deal in the shaman matchup. A lot of resistances here. Shell necklace from Strat Live probably means he is. Playing more of a caster focused build and the shaman matchup enhance versus Ellie. I don't know if we have seen too much of this yet, so it'll be kind of cool. Sure, Stadman is going to be running at New Jack. New Jack attempting to kite. Look at all those totems down by the flags. So many of them. Yeah, I mean, this is like, uh, I mean, <laughs> this looks like the shaman training area right here. You got enhance, you got Ellie, you got a billion totems. You even got a Mock flag, which looks like, I mean, it's like a. 
How come all the Makara flags are... Oh, I guess Makara is a horde thing, isn't it? So, yeah, I was going to say, why is it horde themed? I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Lore. <laughs> okay, big open with a, with a rocket helm uh, with a purge spam right here. Uh, Sidu does get the leg up on the first rocket helm. I expect New Jax to try and get the opportunity to do the same. Be able to spam those purges, try and clean all the buffs off as much as possible. Comes in with a storm strike and gets to chase him down, frost shocking him. <clears throat> and trying to lay into him as much as possible. New Jax is going to want to try and get the opportunity. I mean, this is an Ellie Shaman. So we all know how Ellie Shamans work. They want to set up for that big, massive chain lightning. So uh, a lot of this actually has to do with the consumables in this matchup. Shaman versus Shaman. What do you want to use your potions on? Are you going to be using a nature protection potion? Or are you going to be using something for your health and mana or otherwise? So uh, that's, uh, that's a lot of what we're going to get to see here. Obviously, for Sea-Doo, that's going to make Ooh. a bigger impact. Nature Protection makes oh. a bigger impact. Huge, huge Rocket Helm to stop the Arcane Bomb as well. Getting a first aid, getting a reset. Sea-Doo is almost out of mana, and New Jax is sitting at 40% mana. He's going to go for some heals here. Pop a mana potion, and let's see if he tries oh. to heal. No, he's not risking oh. the heartbeat. Trying to go for the big dam, and... Sea-Doo comes back with the, the uh, with a T to try and get his mana and health up. Sidu is, by nature, going to have less mana and more problems with his mana in general because he's playing an Enhanced Shaman versus an Elemental Shaman uh, because his gear is not designed for that. He doesn't have as much intellect. So, <clears throat> Sidu really has to take an opportunity to press here whenever he gets those opportunities, as you see he's been doing, and uh, he takes the opportunity now to try and reset a little bit. So, uh, New Jax is low on mana. We'll see if Sidu actually presses off of this, maybe gets some mana, each tick of mana that he drinks, each tick of water that he has, is a higher percentage of his mana than New Jax's mana, and that's because his mana pool is so much smaller. So, Sidu is coming in, he's pressing, New Jax is very, very low, he's not going to have the opportunity to, uh, to, to do some damage, you're probably going to see him downranking some heals, and try and rely on shocks and totems to do as much damage as he possibly can, gets the Frost Shock up on Sidu right now, and going for that Chain Lightning, with uh, it might have been a rank one chain lightning, I believe, because he had so li such little mana, it gets grounded. And Sidu is trying to press him, gets the storm strike, and here's his opportunity, and it's there. Sidu takes the win, takes down New Jack, and goes on to the next round. Sidu, dude, we get to watch Sidu versus Zico in the next round because right because zico beat the hunter Sidu beat the shaman we're gonna see zico versus Sidu. that's gonna be great dude yeah 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 that is, that'll be so fun beautiful dude that's crazy because man that this very well could have been an entirely different i mean this could have been that that zico savix rematch so either way either way this could have been uh this this was gonna be a big matchup coming up in the next round with uh Zico and Sidu. Uh man, I uh I really wonder what's gonna happen here, man. Zico Sidu is gonna be a uh, a duel for the ages, that's for sure. Yeah, I I must say it, it's it's a little mage favored, uh, unfortunately is. for Sidu's been fighting his uphill battle today, man. Against Rogue and then Ellie and now Mage. Sidu's probably like, come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> um he's but it'll still be a just fun such one. A phenomenal player that he's done for so long that I feel like we're going to get hmm. the best showing that we possibly can yeah. against a mage. Yep. And I think that's I, gonna be really fun to watch. I completely agree. Yeah, if it's if it's mage versus shaman, we get Zico versus Sidu, what a what a treat. We have Bobka versus Mez. Speaking of treats, Hunter versus Rogue. Bob got a great showing against the last Hunter, um, I believe, uh, in round one. Uh, moving on to the second round, Mez, AWC champion, multi-rank one. One of the players with the most amount of Gladiator title titles in the entire game. I don't think he needs much of an introduction. Bobka, classic Andy through and through. Rank one player, Gladiator, throughout TBC and Wrath on the classic relaunch. Uh, plays a lot of uh, classic era. So experienced, so good. Decides to go into the Frost Reflector uh, opener that we saw PS Hero do earlier today with the Magic Dust, Frost Reflector, eat the trap, and then open up with the Gouge, Evasion. I really like it. Looks like uh, Mez trying to use Skull of Impending Doom. That was Bobka's Skull of Impending Doom for the impending scatter to land, but there was no scatter there. Well played on Mez on the hold, vanish 
comes out for the sticky glue. Scatter to reply from Mez. Looks like Bobka and Mez are going toe to toe for now. Blind connects. Mez is sitting it for the time being. Barov's beating up that chicken. Poor chicken. It's coming back to Bobka. Bandage kicks uh, for a few seconds there. The heartbeat might have broken that a little soon. Net inside of the flare. Bobka's in a tough spot with the vanish because the flare will instantly break the vanish. There is a trap. He's avoiding it quite nicely, however. Mez kiting around that trap, using it as some pseudo uh, line of sight, like a pillar or something like that. Second blind comes through. It's a very close duel, as fend. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, this is going to be like this, I think, the entire way through. I have no idea how it's going to pan out. Let's see if he can actually avoid that trap. You got two flares down, uh, like right after another, to uh, to try and keep Bobka from being able to vanish, keep him from reopening on him. Now, he will have that opportunity <clears throat> uh, outside of the flare, but uh, let's see if Mez is going to be able to stick it to him, keep him, uh, keep him out of, uh, keep him without an opportunity to be able to reopen. Because Bobka I mean, does it just about as good as anybody. This this is what Mets wants, right? Like that was Bobka's done two blinds, two vanishes. Bobka unfortunately has nothing left, really. I mean, yeah. yeah, there's nades, there's consumables, but in terms of rogue cooldowns, Bobka's kind of out of cooldowns. Mez made it through the ring of fire, so to speak, and this is the other end. It's it's pretty hunter favored. There's uh, Bobka connecting, but we're gonna have a scatter trap very soon here. And once that scatter trap comes through, Mez will gain. Clip just hit too. That's the RNG we're looking for for Mez. Bobka must be pretty and upset. Concussive shot, shot. <laughs> right oh. after the improved wing clip. Bobka with the stings. I don't know how he's going to make it out. Mez looking like an absolute pro. Bobka using the flask because there's nothing left. Another concussive shot and a T to reply from Bobka. But what are you going to do? Even if you reconnect to Mez, he's still 70% live. Bobka has zero cooldowns left. I think Mez might have done it. Bobka wow. falls and Mez will move forward. Wow. Uh, unbelievable showing from Bobka in this tournament this week, or uh, these two days, I should say. Uh, Bobka, he, he's done a phenomenal job, but Mez bests him right there. I mean, Mez played that pretty much as well as you possibly could have. I mean, not even pretty much. I think, I don't know if there's a single thing Mez could have done better. He didn't allow Bobka to to reset on him. He, he shut him out of everything. Every single cooldown that Bobka used, it, there was an answer for it. Yep. immediately immediately had an answer for everything and that's that's something that uh i mean when you're when you're a player like mez at at, at that level right you're, you're you're a blizzcon guy everything that's that's huge that's big time uh almost as big time as otknetwork.com merch uh he, yeah otknetwork.com merch if you guys want to get merch <laughs> uh if you guys want to get some merch and help us pay for this tournament uh, that would be fantastic. You guys can check it out. It's incredibly, incredibly comfortable. I love that hoodie. I have it uh, actually in my room over there. I can show you guys later uh, if I can get up. Uh, but then, yeah. Well, uh, you guys want to check out otknetwork.com for merch. Also, a uh, huge shout out to Blizzard for allowing us to put on this tournament. Uh, again, this this Blizzard ha this tournament had to get approved by Blizzard to even be able to happen and a big shout out to raider io for handling the back end of this whole thing so big shout out to them and of course our title sponsor starforge systems which uh we'll talk about a little bit i think this duel is starting here though so yeah this tournament would not happen without the sponsors guys that everyone in the back end the admins the volunteers as and i are just we, we, we have the easy job we're just here and spectating mm -hmm. and watching the game so shout out to everyone making this event possible next match out we have another hunter v rogue bean versus spicy and uh we've seen a couple of these now and hunters seem to be doing pretty well although we saw a rogue win in the first round spicy not opting for a cheeky opener here just goes in pops the skull of impending doom to try to break a a, a scatter coming in doesn't quite get it though being too experienced to scatter into that skull there scatters a bit late goes for the feign death trap skull now used from spicy being Getting some distance, big aim shot. There's the Hunter's Mark and the Flare and the Slows. The Faps being used before the Concussive Shot lands, though, and the Vanish. Yeah, so like Spicy's going to close a little bit of a distance, but the Hunter's Huge Mark... Flare. 
Yeah, really great flair. The the uh, Goblin Rocket Helmet from Bean. Ceasing Spicy, though, on the gap close. The FAP is already over. That was a quick 30 seconds. It's probably what Spicy's feeling, too. Yeah. Sprint comes through. That's the last sprint. I think there's a uh, blind and a vanish. There's an evasion. Ooh, Goblin Rocket Helm from Spicy, and he gets back on top of Bean. Bean, though, 80% live. Pets doing work. There's the gouge cross CC from Spicy and the bandage. Really well done. Vanish. That's a second vanish from Spicy, and that's the reopener. Oh, man. Instant reply from Bean. These guys have thought all of this through. If this happens, this is what I'm going to do. If this happens, this is what I'm going to do. And that's the fast reflexes that we're seeing here from Bean. He's thought all of this through. Right when the blind hits, there's already a plan. Right when the vanish hits, there's already a plan. And we're, we're seeing that today. The preparation is paid off for Bean here. We have that Gnomish harm uh, prevention belt from Bean. Just putting up a pseudo shield for him as well. Not a pseudo shield, an actual shield. Spicy's getting very low. This is the last big cooldown from Spicy. The rogue, no bandage. It's on cooldown here. And the full blind restealth, the pet was CC'd, so doesn't quite get to land, oh, but the big no. flare into another scatter trap. And Bean isn't working with much mana. Concussive shot proc to finish, and I don't know if there's much spice he can do. The nade is going to do a little bit of damage, finish him off. 4% life. Bean finishing it off. Classy to boom, arrow there to the is. face. Spicy goes down, and Bean moves on. And once again, guys, we're going to have some fun matchups coming up here pretty soon. We're going to have Bean versus Mez. <laughs> and, oh, that's going to be a good one. Yeah, it is. Man, that, that last matchup was great, man. Brother Bean, he's, uh, he's coming in in the clutch. Uh, he did a fantastic job there, man. Great placement of the flare. Uh, in the middle of that duel, whenever he was coming to re-engage, he put that flare down right whenever he was about to re-stealth. And then he put in, uh, uh, he was able to get that flare out spamming it whenever he was uh whenever he was blinded so uh spicy unfortunately did not come back in and i, I thought he was going to sap him there but uh he he gave him just that little window of opening and and uh oh apparently oh i'm hearing it was a, mm. he got stun resisted he got orc stun resisted so he went for it but uh unfortunately he uh he didn't have time to to try it again after he got resisted so uh yeah big play big play that orc racial coming in the clutch big time so Congrats to uh, to Bean moving on, and we've got a mirror in the next round, Mez versus Bean. So that'll be uh, that'll be fun. Yep, that will be. There's oh man, Mez and Bean. It's just gonna be great. We have Sots versus Madnox coming up pretty soon here as well. Sots. Maybe not as big of a name, but bro, watching his last duel, I'm a Sots fan out of nowhere. Like this guy, he's five and zero. He's six and zero so far in his duels. Um, you know, it's kind of cool. Whoever wins this is basically uh, no losses, right? It's I mean, a single elimination. It's it's Makara, which is pretty rad. But Sots versus the Warlock Madnox, and this is a mana battle, man. It's a mana battle. Uh, we have Drain Mana. We have uh, Mana Burn from the Priest, and we've seen this matchup go both ways. It feels like the Warlocks though are generally doing pretty well into the Priests, and. And I think that's the, the way it's supposed to go. So we'll see if Sots can uh, outplay himself to a win or if Madnox is going to just crush it as the Warlock. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be fun to see. We've seen we've seen a fair bit of Warlock Shadow Priest in this tournament, haven't we? Yeah, we've seen a lot of rogues. We've seen a lot of uh, uh, hunters. We've seen a lot of Warlocks. We've seen... You know, we haven't seen like that many warriors, but the warriors that have shown up really have shown up. And yeah. it's really the top of eight class. So that class distribution is pretty even. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, so here we go. We have an open here. Sots came in uh, trying to go and he's, he's probably going to try and dispel spam here. But I think he's waiting for the right opportunity to do so. He drops the blanket silence, goes into a fear, gets stopped. Tidal charm. Going into an arcane bomb mana burn. So he's probably going with the strategy of trying to burn Madnox mana as much as possible. And he's doing a phenomenal job. Look at that. He's at 33% mana already. Madnox dropping the Curse of Tongues. And it's making a huge impact on Sots while he's feared away. Uh, <clears throat> is that fear still active? It is. And he's coming back in. That UI is updating. He's coming back in, following him in. Madnox is going to want to reset. He's life tapping and using a medicine pouch to get his health back up and his mana at the same time. Uh, I really, really like Sot Strat of going in with a mana burn. Yeah. I thought that was huge. And put Madnox on the back foot immediately. Right there, we got another big mana burn in. And Madnox is having to burn all of his consumes to life tap and to heal up. And those cooldowns are going to add up.
So yeah, this is like the new tech. We haven't seen any Shadow Priest really utilize mana burn into Warlock. Normally, the Shadow Priest Warlock matchups, the Warlock is trained mana, and the Shadow Priest is just doing damage. And Sots is like, you know what? Two can play this game. You know, like two can play this game. Let me mana burn you and see how it goes. And I really like it from Sots. Sots has that mana advantage, and Madnox is a Warlock, so he's going to have the ability to life tap. But Sots might have the long plan of like, let me just keep mana burning this guy so he is forced to life tap. And I'll kill him through his own life taps and just make sure he stays oom, or you have to life tap and then you'll eventually die. Looks like it's panning out decently for Sots. Um, but Madnox is a warlock. There's a lot of cooldowns to get through. That Fell Hunter is going to be purging with Devour. You have so much damage coming through. You have the ability to, you know, Hellstone and uh, life tap with that Hellstone. You have the ability to Major Healing Potion and then life tap more. So it's hard. Like Warlocks to some degree have like this infinite mana pool where you can tap and then drain life and then tap and then drain life. And now you're you're pretty much uh, sustaining yourself forever. And we have the first aid coming up from Madnox and that first aid is going to allow him to tap more. Sots though, in the meantime, gets another tick or two of drink and eat. Looks like he's back up to 80% health, 60% mana. Silence comes through into the full fear. Will it forsaken right away from Madnox? Knox. Arcane Bomb, will it land? Looks like it Duh, did that land? The coil might have interrupted it. Full fear comes out from Sots. Will of Forsaken um, on the fear. Sots is in a world of hurt here. He has mana to work with, but Shadow Priests are one of those unique classes where it's like, you don't want to come out of Shadow Form to heal, but sometimes you just have to. There's the major healing pot into the life tap drain life. This is exactly what we are just talking about. Sots going into the spell lock. What are you going to do? It's going to be in a flasks in the clutch. He's back up to 18% life, but there's no mana to work with. This does not look good for Sots. One or two more ticks of damage. Another, Another flask. flask. There's only two or three flasks allowed per day in Sots. That was two of them. He can maybe use one more. That's the last one. Flask and mana pot. He's a little oh. bit of mana to work with, but it's not going to be enough. He's at 1%. There's a shield, but it's going to break, and Sots is going to fall. Mad Knox, really well done. Really, really well done. Great performance by Sot. I think that, that was uh, that, that was great insight, Zor, you about the... Uh... Uh, the ability to counteract the the mana burn. I think it worked out really well at the beginning, but he just wasn't able to sustain it. He had to overcommit, and uh, and it didn't work out for him because he was able to sustain out sustain it. So, uh, great point there. Great, great, great play by Mad Knox being able to uh, withstand the barrage of the mana burns and the uh, the different ways to try and get rid of you with arcane bomb and everything else. So, uh, great job, great performance by Mad Knox, and uh, I I think it was uh, it's been a great performance all tournament from Sot as well. So, uh, yeah. look, we're getting to that point in the tournament. We're in the last few rounds, you know, and it's not – this isn't like a double elimination. You know, a lot of tournaments – this is a single elimination. When you die, you are dead. Best of one, everything. So I saw a few people in the chat, maybe not today, but, like, leading up to the tournament of, like, is it going to be double elims are – I'm like, <laughs> it, this is a Makara tournament. Just for everybody from, uh, tuning in from home – once you're dead, you're dead. Your character is gone. You have to restart at level one. And so these are all best of ones because of that nature of the Makaraz. We have another uh, Shadow Priest versus Warlock here. Takata versus uh, Gripping. I mean, if it looks anything like the last duel, that's fan. I, I think the Warlock is is just looks favored in this. Like It's not like it, yeah, it looks so. like super one-sided at first, but a minute or two in, it's like, dude... It's, it How are you gonna come back over time? That yeah, sustain that the warlock's kit kind of just the, the sustain that the warlock brings to the table. Like their their kit is just huge. So, <clears throat> so you you have him come in here, and actually the warlock is starting with the drain mana. Even though he has such low mana right now, he's going with the drain mana strat, uh, trying to drain Dakota's mana because I, I I do agree. I think that the uh, what we've seen so far in this tournament, the shadow priests, whenever they run out of mana. They are pretty much done for. Mobility is a huge issue for them. It's hard for them to get away. It's hard for them to chase people. So they need to stick to their target as closely as possible. Gripping is going in with the plan of, hey, I'm going to beat him at his own game. I'm going to drain his mana. If I'm draining his mana, I'm, I'm absorbing mana for myself, and he is not going to be able to burn me on top of that. So uh, good strat from Gripping coming in, and uh, I, it's, it's working out great so far, working out beautifully. Dakota coming in with a Mind Blast, trying to lay into him. Gripping actually going for the Shadow Reflector. Going for the Shadow Reflector. We've got a Fear going out on Gripping right now. And Dakota is trying to Mind Flame, trying to get his damage out as much as possible. I think Dakota realizes that he is running out of time, and he needs to try and make a play if he can. Misses the grenade. The Arcane Bomb comes in. 
And oh he actually got stunned himself earlier on that shadow reflector, and it is over. That shadow reflector ended up backfiring for him so bad, or so unfortunately, I guess. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's great. So oh, whenever man. he, uh, whenever he was... got the blackout proc, it ended up hitting him. So those you... final moments were just like hard to watch. Like yeah. gripping was already really far ahead, and he just does some dirty by chucking the arcane bomb. And once it's in the air, it's like, oh, you gotta look away. This this freeze is just yeah. screwed, man. He's no mana, no health, and he silenced. And then the damage ended up killing. Like add insult to injury. That was a tough position to be in. And I guess we can kind of confidently say that that Warlocks do pretty well in, in that matchup. I mean, she's next up though on that, on the next bracket, we have the Warlock mirror, Madnox versus gripping. And that'll be fun to watch once we get to round three for now though, we're in round two and we have Sony versus rocket man. It's gonna be a great duel. Great oh, duel. Sony needs no introduction. Uh, Rocket Man is Perplexity. Perplexity is a classic era OG, also rank one uh, TBC -er, like just really, really experienced rogue. I don't know if we've seen a rogue take out a warrior, at least if we have not very frequently. Warriors have been crushing it in this tournament with this rule set against rogues because of the elixir of poison resistance. The rogues are having a hard time kiting warriors out. And when a rogue and a warrior go head to head, the warrior generally wins. So how does the rogue uh, win then? Well, the rogue would kite with poisons, right? Crippling poison, run away, don't kind of dead zone the warrior, don't want to get intercepted, but don't fight too close, and then re-stealth, and then open up, and then crippling kite. But you can't do that if you remove the poison uh, slow from crippling, and that's why we've seen rogues really fall here in this matchup. Yeah, no, 100%. Uh, I, I think we uh, I, I think we're probably going to see more of the same here. I, I wouldn't expect uh, to see to see anything less. But both of these guys are at the top of their class. They're both unbelievable players, and uh, it's going to be very fun to see. Sony is a uh, OG uh, Burning Crusade. I think he's a Vengeful Gladiator. I think it was a season three rank one. That's so, correct. Uh, yeah, so he's been playing for for many years. As has Perp playing on uh, Perp playing on the private servers and stuff for many years. Coming in. With the sap opening up, Sony has the Draconian Deflector out, playing defensive to start out in case he gets stun locked and trying to mitigate as much damage as possible. Sony turning around with an intercept, getting his bleeds up, getting kidney shotted by Perp. Perp goes and he drops the blind on him. There's no dots or anything ticking on Sony. <clears throat> this gives him the opportunity to kill the pet and hopefully reset. That's what he is trying to do. He's trying to kill the pet. We haven't seen that from all the rogues, but some of the rogues have tried to kill the pet and reset here. Uh, Sony putting on his mount, or getting on his mount, excuse me, and trying to re-engage as quickly as possible. Alarmabot in hand, sword and shield in hand, and trying to make sure to keep his health up as much as possible. I mean, you mentioned this earlier, man, how tanky these warriors are. It's actually insane. It, yeah. is, it is absolutely insane how much damage these guys can really mitigate with all the consumes and everything on the table. So uh, I, I don't believe I saw Sony use a diamond flask or anything yet. So that's still on the table as well. And uh, it's going to be big time. I don't think there's any class in the game that can go head to head with a warrior in this tournament. If you want to beat a warrior, you're going to have to kite him out. You're going to have to play the long game and you're going to have to slowly kill them. But if you just, if the rogue just opens up and fights, the rogue will lose, right? So you have to be very clever on how you're going to engage in this matchup. Rocket Man opening back up. There is a rule that states we have to keep the duels going. So 60 seconds is the longest you can stay in stealth, if anyone was wondering. Vanish comes out on the sticky glue. Cheap shot to follow. Sony taking some damage. Finally, there's the Zerker stance. He's trying to dead zone, but does get intercepted. Full kidney, though. Sony's actually taking some damage here. He's down yeah. below 60%. Cold Blood lands. Might be a blind after this. I, I is that the second blind i believe i think it's a second blind and sony's at 60 percent life man 61 percent. i mean already though that's so much of perplexity's damage and uh, sony's at 60 percent life how do that's you finish i've seen often <laughs> yeah but no mish death rate's gonna be a big burst combo here we're hoping for some crits oh nice. okay okay Hits so this in the air before he gets rocket out yeah, the rocket helm goes off. I think the oh, the rocket helm to, to follow. This is actually really good. So that was the fear from Sony. Will of Forsaken coming out and a heartbeat break. That's not what Sony wanted. A full uh, re-stealth cheap shot. Sap, Looks like the, the cheap sap, shot. I believe is DR'd. I think that was a sap that got DR'd by the rocket helm. I'm pretty sure. 
Yeah, that's that seems right. Sony down to 44% life. This is the lowest we've seen a warrior against a rogue yet. Perplexity playing out of his mind. Intercept coming in though, and Sony's not out of this yet. I mean, the rogue is out of cooldown. 60% life here for Rocket Man. No vanishes, no blinds, not much to work with. There's the cheap shot. He's trying to dead zone. Elixir of poison resists, and no the sticky, sticky glue. glue comes out. Tidal trying to counter it, but it's not gonna be enough. Trinket comes out. Full kitty shot. Perplexity oh, no. is an absolute monster for this play. There's the kidney. Sony's at 37% life. Rocket Man's trying to dead zone him, but it's not going to be enough. Oh no, Sony's at 30%. Oh, Rocket Man's gonna get executed! Execute range slept. There's oh, no. the magic dust, the final lifeline for Rocket Man. That's the tuber. Magic resist breaks. The re-stealth cheap shot comes out. This is very close. Full kidney shot coming out, but Rocket Man, 27% life. Dangerously close to that execute range. Sony getting rid of the poisons once again. I don't think there's anything Rocket Man can do, but Sony falling to 12% life! Sony is an execute! Eight. Oh, no, no. Sony takes him out! What a no! What? I thought he was dead, dude. Oh my gosh, what a duel, man. What a duel. Holy hell, dude. I thought Sony was dead. That could have gone any which way. That was unbelievable, dude. Absolutely unbelievable matchup. Perplexity playing out of his mind. And Sony just barely, barely holding on at the last second. Absolutely unbelievable performance by both of these guys. Unfortunately, Perplexity falls to Vengeful Gladiator, Sony Digital. And Sony moves on to the next round to face the winner of our next match, which will be Peo versus Zeroji, Hunter or Rogue. That Holy. was probably my favorite duel of the day, man. What a duel. I've got to say, well, first, congratulations to Sony because that was so close and so epic and just so many great plays from both players. But I really have to give a shout out to Perplexity as well. Like, we haven't seen rogues take out warriors. That was probably the closest uh, duel we've seen where a rogue's going to beat a warrior. And Perplexity just played, like, there was just so many plays being made there. I, I need to go back and rewatch the VOD of that. It was it was just really well played from both sides. Um, what a close finish. I mean, one more parry, one more crit, anything could have changed that. Um, yeah, what a duel. Next up, we get Peo versus Zero. Peo is such a joy to watch. To watch him duel, he gets really excited and passionate about each and every one. And don't think he's going to be very excited or passionate to fight a hunter in his next matchup. Yeah, man. Uh, Peo, Peo's, it's going to be great to watch him play against Zero. Zero's been performing incredibly, incredibly well all tournament. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited to see how he goes up against Peo here. And uh, I'm excited to see how Peo opens up against Zeroji. We saw what uh, Pachero did earlier today uh, to try and counteract the flare. Let's see if... Uh, okay, he's doing something similar right here. For, uh, Frost Reflector to walk into the trap after the sleep. Summons all. Summons the entire zoo here. Uh, BFA was better comes to let Peo know that Classic was not good, BFA was better <laughs> and then uh, we've got, we got another Rocket Helm I think he's going to try and wait out the flare but it doesn't work out for him so Peo burned a lot at the beginning there to try and get the proper opener uh, unfortunately he didn't get it but he vanishes and goes into a full kidney so we got a full kidney shot on Zero Zero's actually taking it right now. Peo, Peo's got the upper hand for sure. Zero trying to lay a wing clip on him, but Peo is dodging everything, seeing if he can get a, uh, a wing clip on him. However, Peo has a fap up, so it's going to be ineffective. He needs to wait this fap out with that ice trap, scatter trap, and he's going to drink up and try and reset the duel. Hopefully, he can re-engage on him before Peo has a chance to get out. He drops the flare. Peo does not have the opportunity to re-stealth. Gouges the pet. Gouges BF8 was better. And he is going to try and close the gap here on Zoroji. Using whatever he needs to to remove the poisons. And he's at about half health right now. Getting concussive shotted. And Peo is... Things are looking rough for Peo from this distance. 
Yeah, Zero is playing this well. It's exactly what he wants to happen. Peo gets in distance to blind, though, and that's all you need to get that 10 yards to blind. The pet is going to be moved away because I don't think Zero wanted uh, Peo to slay the pet there. Gets the reself cheap shot, though. I don't know what's going on with the pet. Full kidney shot on a Zero. This is this is really good. Crusader proc. Peo doing a lot of damage into the kidney. Zero, though, I'm sure is going to have that scatter. Oh, a prep second blind from the little Peo. You love to see it. Gouge coming out on the pet once again. Again, don't know if he's gonna be able to get the resale. Probably not. First aid, damage coming in. Scatter though from zero into he's another trap. trap off. Peo is playing this really well. It's just he for is. a rogue, it's not the matchup you really are looking for. Um, also, hunters do, yeah. Well, I was also gonna say specifically an orc hunter. So because because yeah. he's gonna have all that stun resist. Absolutely. One stun could be the difference between a win or a loss, and a concussive shot proc as well. More RNG coming into play. Pe Oh, oh, zero damn. doing so much zero. damage at the end there great oh. performance by zero unfortunately peo falls to zeroji the hunter great performance by peo this tournament really really great performance by peo and uh, a great performance by zeroji and all the rogues have been eliminated out of oh this my tournament gosh. One of the one of the pre-tournament favorites to oh win the tournament was rogue people keep talking about rogue but we have two rounds to go, and all the rogues have now been eliminated. So uh, we'll see. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be uh, a determination of, of who's going to get the prize money because they, they were uh, – we had multiple rogues fall in the same round. I don't know who's going to get the best-in-class prize money yet. We'll find out from the admins how that's going to be determined. But, uh, but yeah, so uh, mm -hmm. congratulations to all the rogues who've competed. But, unfortunately, there will not be one in the finals. Dude, <laughs> There was more rogues, correct me if I'm wrong, admins, but more rogues than any other class in this tournament. And they're all gone. And there were so many, not only just, I shouldn't just say rogues. We had Savix. We had Bobka. We had PS Hero. Right? We had uh, Perplexity. We had Peo. Like, these are all big names. Spicy yeah. uh, had a great showing as well. They're all gone. I we even, we even had, I mean, we, we talked about Shobek earlier. Shobek didn't make it. Shobek yep. is another very good rogue. Vanis played really well. NZ with, with the uh, the place against the Warlock and Fester. Like, they're all, they were all really good. But with this rule set, rogues are not coming out on top. And the rule set being, there are no rules. It's a Makara. Yeah. Anything goes. So with this, with this open system, maybe rogues aren't the uh, dueler we thought they'd be. I thought maybe an undead rogue would take the whole thing, but looks like I'm wrong. We have druid versus mage, and it's a hard one. It's a really hard one for the mage. Having said that, we've seen druid versus mage once today, and the mage actually won. So Gordon, uh, maybe he'll go in at the different game plan here. Gets slowed, shifts out, cap form again. Wow, Flane wow. taking a lot of damage. That's Furbog's medicine pouch, misses the Kona cold. Blink to follow, insta... Uh, what charge is that? The Goblin Rocket Helm maybe resisted, but the charge worked. Oh, no. Goblin Rocket Helm now. Okay. Two different charges from Gordon. Early intervene. Love to see it. Gordon looks dominant in this matchup, and this is probably how the Druid versus Mage should look. Yeah, this, is, this, has, been a, this has been a huge, huge start from Gordon uh, getting up on Flane early. Flane is definitely, definitely on his back heels. He just gets title charmed right there after the blink, so he's not able to get out of it. And Gordon has a real opportunity to try and finish him here, but he might not be able to between the Ice Barrier and then getting title charmed himself. So yeah. Gordon continues on, keeps pressing Flane. Zaryu, is there any chance for Flane to survive this? Absolutely not. <laughs> so here's the issue. The mage is normally with Sheep and Reset. You can't sheep a druid, boys. You can't do it. Flane can't reset. Uh, okay, so you can use the Goblin Rocket Helm and, and uh, CC him. You can use the Magic Dust and CC him, but you can't sheep. Mage's best spell is sheep. You can't use it against the druid at all. How do you reset against the druid? You can't. Once you're behind, it's over. The only way to win would be just to kill the druid from the get-go. But once you're low, you can't come back. There's no coming back. There's no sheeps. You can't even Nova. He's just going to power shift. You can't. Look at that. Gordon in and out of cat form, running flames down. He's doing the best he can do, but there's not much the mage can do in this position. 10% life. Another Nova. Gordon's just finishing him off. One tick of Evo. Could be a mana shield or a blink. Um, uh, yeah, maybe another consumable, a flask. What are we working with, Flane? Another, uh, okay, an ice barrier. Dude, he's been grenade. holding on for dear life, man. I don't know how long he can hold on, Esfand. I don't, I don't know how long he can hold on. 
I I don't know either, man. This is uh, this is not looking good. This might be it. We get the Kona cold out. He slowed. He he eats the the Whipper Root tuber. Throws out a Frost Nova. It doesn't matter. Gordon can just shift out and shift back in, and he just keeps chasing him down. He's at 13%. Hell, at this point, I would just, just Moonfire spam him or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, just start sending the Moonfires. It can be dangerous, though, because... Him. He doesn't want to make a mistake, you know? You can burn yourself yeah. with Moonfires. So, if, so Gordon goes, play... if Gordon goes oom um from Moonfiring um, and then can't go back cat and is completely oom, um, then the mage could actually win. So it's, you yeah. know... Flane, Flane should have played like this from the from the start, just spamming Frostbolt and not letting the Druid get distance. Now he's so far behind. Ooh, he kites and turtles back up for the health potion. He has no Evo and he's low on mana, so I don't see him necessarily killing Gordon, but that's gonna buy him a little bit of time. Um, I, I like the, the the rank one Frostbolt kiting. I mean, this is if we saw this from the get go, it would have maybe been a very different duel. Uh, I don't know Gordon's exact spec. It looks like though he's not opting to just Moonfire Insect Swarm like we would normally see. So Gordon must be more. Uh, maybe he's not uh, playing Resto at all for that Insect Swarm. But Flame's doing a good job this last minute or so, uh, regaining his ground. Gordon's probably kicking himself as fan for not moon firing earlier, because now yeah, he has he some probably, HP to work with. He probably is. Yeah, I uh, just from looking at his build, it looks like Gordon is, is uh, playing like a, a Feral Resto hybrid. I haven't seen him cast an Insect Swarm, I could be wrong. Uh, so yeah, I think he's playing some sort of a Feral Resto hybrid. And uh, yeah, I mean, he's uh, he's he really just just cannot finish <laughs> like he just has to find a way to, to do it oh. i think there it is <laughs> ferocious bite will do there. it <laughs> <laughs> like, just, just finish dude yeah there go. great duel from gordon man great duel from gordon and uh man flame did a phenomenal job keeping him away as much as he can let, not letting him finish so uh really really good man really really good yeah, I can't give Flame too much, uh, you know, hate That's here. He, one. it was Mage versus Druid, and you know he lived a few minutes. He kited it out. He, he did all right. It's just you're Mage versus Druid, and that can be tough. Um, in the next round, it looks like we have another Mage versus Druid. Maybe Dendario, who's by the way done phenomenal so far in this tournament. In the last round, he took out a Druid. Let's see if he can do it again here versus MFB TV. Yeah, this is gonna be uh, this is gonna be great to watch. Uh, I mean, MFB TV did a fantastic job in the tournament so far. We didn't get to see him much yesterday, uh, but we but we saw him today. I don't actually know if, if any of his uh, any of his duels got broadcast yesterday or not. I think they didn't, but uh, we'll see. I mean, it's the same matchup as last time. Not, I don't think they're the same specs. I think MFB TV is is playing the uh, the Moonfire Spam Balance Hybrid spec. Um, so, uh, yeah, but I do think we'll get more of the same. Just like you mentioned earlier, you can't sheep a druid because they can just shift out of it. They can shift out of Nova's. It's a really, really tough counter for mages. And uh, we might see more of the same here, just in a little bit of a different way. The, the way we normally see this duel go is the Moonfire and Insect Swarm will do the job and the Druid will max range in Cheetah and keep running and won't even engage the Mage. And the Mage is in this position where you slowly die to the Insect Swarm Moonfire and the Druid never does anything except Cheetahs and runs. That's normally what we see. Um, we'll see here what spec. So it's the Moonfire. Uh, Insect Swarm looks like it resists there and MFBTV decides to run in Cheetah. So this is a very standard Mage versus Druid duel. It's going to take a little bit Bit longer but generically what happens is the mage will go out of mana the mage will never be able to really start much on the druid and the druid will never actually go bear or never go cat the, the druid will kind of just go cheetah and whenever the mage blinks in like this you just kind of cheetah form away i don't know if the bear form here is even necessary because yeah you get the bash but who cares you just cheetah and keep running and in the long game the the mage kind of goes oom and the mage doesn't really have the you don't really, you can't really pack a punch as a frost mage unless you shatter a combo, and you can't shatter a druid who's just max range and cheetah. And cheetah also doesn't cost much mana, so the mage blinks in, arcane bombs the druid. It, it does land very well done from Dendario. The problem with with the the mage um, strategy here, there's the innervate coming out early, uh, is blink is actually a pretty expensive cost for the mage. Yeah. 
So if you if you're spending your mana blinking in like that, it's it's great. It's it's kind of all you can do, but it's a lot of mana. I I think the bear forms might be a slight misplay here. I mean, it's not like you need to use bear for absolutely anything. The Evo coming out, and here is uh, MFB TV's chance. You kind of just let that insect swarm and moonfire, uh, you know, do the job. And this is normally what you see, and it's just it's a tough spot for the mage like it doesn't look that bad like right now you're like hmm okay it could kind of go either way but you fast forward five minutes and the mage is just oom and dead and the druid is still just healthy and the mage doesn't have the longevity um so the, the only way for the mage to win is to burst the druid down which can happen with the right rng but it's not easy to do yeah, I mean, you 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 know this better than anybody, right? And you've, you've talked about how how difficult of a matchup this is. How how impressed are you so far by how this match has gone? I, I feel like compared to the last match, uh, Dendario is holding on really well. He is. He's doing exactly what he should be doing. You know, he's he's blinking in on top of that druid and and getting burst when he can. The issue is um, every time the mage builds momentum with like frostbite, that cheetah form, which is a very low mana cost, comes out and the druid is just gonna run and run and run. And that insect swarm moonfire might not seem very scary, but if it's if moonfire insect swarm is on you for ten minutes straight like it it will kill you it will it, it's enough damage to to kill you and and that's kind of what the druid is is banking on and it's not that it's a very quick way to you know get to lethal here on the mage but the the druid um is never putting himself in danger he's never pushing in to get nova to get shatter combo there's an arcane bomb and boom that's what dendario is going to need i love that combo it was a it was a thorium nade into an iron bomb which was very well played those are the types of out of the box thinking combos wow. that we're going to need from dendario to finish it off yeah and he, and he blinked he blinked that arcane bomb coming up right after it now i, I did see moonfire beam actually did uh he he actually faked the uh the counter spell on the entangling roots but it didn't matter because he got blanket cs and then on top of that after getting the arcane bomb it was another blanket so uh that's why he wasn't able to cast even though he faked it yeah i i must say tendario is really holding his own here in the matchup the druids already used a t already used a mana pot and already used evo and tendario is at 50 percent mana so i'm, I'm pretty impressed like that this is going uh more mage favored than i would expect Backed for sure so r r like hats off to dendario i think these clever use of items um with the nade and arcane bombs are are evening this matchup out and to be honest like yeah dendario is looking great yeah i mean i'm, I'm very very impressed i mean from what we've seen so far from druids and mages uh in the druid mage matchup in this tournament and just historically uh, Dendario is, is, he really is doing phenomenal. And it, it's very much a battle of attrition. Like this oh. Druid spec is they are trying to tick you down the whole time. That was a big, big, big arcane bomb uh, yeah. coming from Dendario. And he is, he's trying to press Moonfire Beam. Dude, this is like uh, he was in bear form for the arcane bomb. Like, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you're in bear form, it's not going to drain your mana. But MFB decided to go Cheetah to avoid the arcane bomb which made the arcane bomb drain his mana because he yeah. went cheetah right uh, if i'm understanding that correctly so another arcane bomb coming up from the druid counterspell goes out but counterspell does not stop arcane bomb a lot of players like almost panic hit counterspell on that arcane bomb uh because it looks like a cast it's not a cast it's a grenade you can't counterspell it so dentario unfortunately does get hit with that arcane bomb and now mfb tv's back in the driver's seat there's no evocate I think dentario might have an ice block but now it's going to be moonfire spam um How's he getting the Moonfire dot off? Restopot must be Restopot, maybe. Uh, yeah, that's what it looked like to me. And then that rest, that Restopot's gonna go. Uh, it's gonna go hard because they're gonna remove so many things periodically. Um, and it's uh, it's gonna be big because Dendario right now no mana, uh, very little health, and that battle of attrition that's coming in is uh, <laughs> and look at the poly. Play, excuse me, it's really starting to hurt. Yeah, and that's is what that, that marbles that's what this deck does. <laughs> I think he might have just used a Marvel's uh, like any item. He's just looking through his bags and just clicking everything. <laughs> like, <laughs> throwing at him, man. Everything on his desk. <laughs> oh, oh, Dendario, it hurts, it hurts. Uh, it witness hurts. me. Yeah, there you go. I mean, bro, what a great showing this tournament from Dendario. Yeah. 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 What a great I mean, showing, man. It hurts, right? I'm a mage. I've been in that position, and 
like I want to root for Dendario because he's a great player. You know, he had a great showing and, you know, I, I want to see Magus do well. But like yeah, in that yeah. situation, it's just hard, just hard. Um, That's why I was so excited this morning when I woke up and I saw Zico's bracket. No druids, no locks, no priests. I'm like, bro, Z this, this is Zico's tournament, man. I, I'm saying it. I'm saying it again, dude. I'm Z saying it Zico's, again. His, his bracket looks really good. That bracket RNG is big time. Hey, speaking of bracket RNG. Uh, let's talk about the rogues again, man. I mean, all, all the rogues did get knocked out, but somebody mentioned this earlier, uh, and, and they're right. Pretty much all the rogues, uh, I think it was, I think I saw Sarth in chat say it, but, um, yeah, all, all the rogues ended up facing as hunters at some point and that the hunters are a, a very tough counter for rogues. So that bracket RNG does come into play, you know, except for, uh, yeah, except Sony, Sony went up against perp. So. Uh, but even throughout the course of the uh, throughout the course of the tournament, you know, we saw that hunters have trouble against rogues. Or excuse me, other way around, rogues have trouble against hunters. So, um, so yeah, it's uh, it, a lot of it is bracket RNG. Zico has a very nice, clean bracket. He's he's got a he's got a nice uh, nice path potentially to uh, to the finals here. So he's got Cdu next, and then he has the winner of Mez and Bean, which is going to be a fun mirror to watch. Absolutely. Definitely. I think in this next matchup, uh, we have Jay versus Gorthax. Warrior versus Warrior. Your buddy, Gorthax. Warrior. Yeah. There you go, Mike, yeah, editor, Mike. right? Yeah. Um, Warrior versus Warrior is it's just a fun one to spectate because uh, you know, in a lot of these duels, you know, you, you, you look at it and, and players are like, oh, uh, this rogue is resetting. Oh, the hunter is scatter trapping, or the mage is polying, or the druid is running, and the warlock is running and fearing. Warrior every warrior, man. It's just as down and dirty as it gets. Two players pressing buttons until one of them dies. It's always a short duel. I mean, it can't really go long. One warrior is going to kill the other warrior at some point. And uh, it's just a fun one to watch. Yeah, yeah. This is going to be a great one, man. It's going to be really, really good. Zug, zug. Let's we have... Gorthax at 50% rage. They, they trade charges here, and it looks like the uh, Goblin Rocket Elm is going to make it out on top. So well done from mm. Gorthax having the premonition to use that. Sunders from the side. Wow, nice, I love this great. opener. Oh, I love wait. it. What a great way to open. He's not breaking the, dam uh, the CC because Sunders don't do damage. He just builds up three sacks of Sunders before the rest of the duel even starts. Brilliant Resist play from Gorthax. And I think I saw recklessness from Jay. So this is big damage. Retail into the recklessness. Let's see if Gorthax can hold oh. on the onslaught oh. with the retail. Oh no, this is gonna be huge. Big this damage. This is close. This oh, is close. Jay's backing off. He's backing off. Looks like Retail and Rec are about to fade. Both warriors are about even here. 40% life. We'll see what consumables come into play here as they're both 30%. Whirlwind's coming out from Gorthax! Going no! to 1% no! and oh, falls. Shay. What a duel. Getting what the right duel. damage at the right time with the right crits and the right executes. Well done. What a fun one to spectate. Warrior that v. Warrior, really man. That was really fun, man. That was really fun, dude. That was like... Dude, two heavyweights just going at it. I love the opener. The strat at the open was so good. Go with the Goblin Rocket Helm and then try and stack Sunders to try and get an armor advantage was so crafty. I love it. I That was that was so good. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. Uh, Jay going with, the, uh, going with the recklessness into the retail and then backing off whenever we realized that Gorthax popped the retail. Just fantastic man Fa fantastic duel and uh yeah really really good showing this uh this tournament man i'm, I'm just so happy to see warriors showing up and doing well uh, it kind of sucks to see a warrior eliminate another warrior doesn't it I know, a, a little bit yeah it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's like we we're on the them. same we team <laughs> yeah we're on the same team here uh, uh, next uh, up we have another warrior we have lapan uh who <laughs> I believe might be at a slight disadvantage here versus Hydra as the Shadow Priest. Um, I don't, have we seen Warrior versus Shadow Priest? I know. Uh, is I think this can go either way. Hydra though, just so so experienced. You can see the debuff above Lapon's head. You know it's there. We'll uh, recognize that. Oh man, just unfortunate circumstance. Um. There was no ability to remove the debuff, unfortunately. And that, you know, it's just one of those things. And like, we knew something like that 
would happen. Uh, we did tell the competitors ahead of time that like something like this can happen. It probably will happen, um, unfortunately. And uh, so that's the situation we're in. Uh, there's nothing we could really uh, do. We, we did reach out to try to circumvent it, but we know we're here and we have that uh, debuff. So for those of you guys that don't know, uh, earlier, Lapan uh, unfortunately had a situation where he got CC'd out of the dual area, got a debuff called Coward. This Coward debuff lasts three days in game and it decreases all attributes by 20%, all damage by 20%, all armor by 20%, and all resistances by 20 So. I mean, we can root for Lapan here. You know, it would be cool if you won a Makara, you're no longer a coward. Maybe we that, could have Blizzard hotfix that in. That would be cool. That would be sick, actually. Yeah, if you are a coward and you win a Makara, it removes the debuff. I would love that. Anyway, duel's underway. Lapan does have that disadvantage. Maybe we could see Lapan win anyway. Hydra getting the nice distance. The net comes out, or the sticky glue from Lapan. Fear immediately breaks there with the Zerka Rage. Lapan connecting damage onto Hydra, building up some rage. Shadow Reflector comes through. Doesn't reflect any damage, though. Hydra, too smart for that. Pops the potion, kiting it out with the Power Word Shield. Pops the Inner Focus to conserve mana. Lapon's having trouble connecting here. Maybe uh, just hard time building Rage because the Warrior is hitting into the shields of Hydra. Intercept comes out. Looks like Hydra just keeps jumping around. There's the Hamstring. Hamstring proc on top of that. That's really great for Lapon. Um, Lapon is just getting dangerously low here. Fear comes out. The Shadow Word Pain's ticking. The Mind Flay's ticking. Hydra must be feeling pretty good about this one. F's in the chat for La Pond. Thanks for coming out and playing. It's unfortunate, but it happened. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We're there. That's how it goes. That's how, yeah. that's how it goes. It's an unfortunate situation. Uh, La Pond <clears throat> uh, falling to Hydra. Hydra, Hydra, another great player. La Pond, a great player. So, 07. Hearth in the chat for La Pond. It's, uh, it, what are you drinking? I just know <laughs> it's a it's a protein shake. Yeah, oh, okay. I was like, I can't eat all day, so we're just gonna be drinking our no, food dude, today. I, am, I do I do not. Bl I, all I had was that one little sandwich, so I'm uh, yeah. starving. But yeah, no, and then, <laughs> bro, look what I got for later. Look what I got for later. Sick, oh. nice, <laughs> hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, that uh, it's it's an unfortunate situation for Lapon. Lapon is a he's a great player. Uh, you know, he's he's been playing uh been playing classic for a long time, retail for a long time. And uh, yeah, it's it's unfortunate we had to lose a warrior that way, but uh, hearts and chat for Lapon and uh, and Hydra advances to the next round. So there it is. Next matchup we have uh, Big Sad versus JMDS. Man, uh, we have a lot of warriors in this tournament. We have Jayla, JMD, Lapon. Uh, Gorthax just lost. We have Jay moving on and Sony. We have almost all the warriors doing really well today. Like yeah. every warrior is winning. The only warrior that's lost is the warrior v warrior, which, yeah. you know, obviously one warrior has to lose. And the only other warrior that's lost um, is against Zeroshi the hunter, it looks like. Yeah. Uh, so we have yeah, the war the warrior another hunter have, versus have, Bean. Yeah. The warriors have, have performed uh, tremendously well. Uh, there's been a ton of warriors that have been partaking in their tournament too, which is very cool. There's also a ton of streamers watching this event. And uh, if you are a streamer watching this event and you are interested in talent management, you guys can check out Mythic Talent at mythictalent.com. Uh, that is uh, for sponsors, for anything that you want to be repped by to, uh, to be able to get more sponsors and, and do events and stuff like that. Uh, check out mythictalent.com and... Uh, We'll uh, we'll get in touch with you. So you can either you can either reach out to Asmin, myself, uh, whoever, and uh, we can we can get you in touch with the right people if you guys are interested in talent management. So cool. We got our next Perfect. duel coming up here, bro. I, I was looking forward to these brackets too, and <laughs> it's, it's a bunch of warlock. Like warlocks are doing really well, and warriors are doing well. Later on today, once we get closer to the grand finals, it's just going to be a ton of locks into a ton of warriors. And that's just a hard matchup for both of them. So we're going to see a lot of these uh, big names collide in a little bit here. Uh, but right now, we have JMDS versus Big Sad. Um, I don't know if we can get an inspect. I, I, I'm mixing up a lot of the gear sets these guys have 
for specs and stuff like that we do have a very prep jmd and he's going in hard with the goblin rocket helmet to get that gap closed right away and he's going to build rage by killing the uh, mechanical dragonling and some totems but the heartbeat break early is really unfortunate for big sad hamstring coming in mortal strike to follow jmd trinkets out of that sticky glue as well big sad purging down to even the playing field here has the shield equipped to reduce incoming damage taken but after all of that shaman's doing pretty well big damage coming into jmd wow this is the best i've seen a shaman fair head to head big chain lightning coming in oh my gosh 40 percent life from jmd big arcane bomb it looks like he cancels because it looks like it was gonna miss big sad popping the t regenerating some of that health and mana this is a this is a huge 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 open for big sad jmd fighting for his life oh, right now oh. trying to stick to him that fire nova hits gets the man or the health potion off excuse me health potion off trying to survive and get out as much damage as he can but big sad is able to finish him off with the frost shock oh my and gosh jmd falls to big sad what a duel man that was high octane dude big damage coming right out the gate ellie shaman versus warrior Oh huge God. man huge we, huge 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 we just spent a bunch of time covering about warriors not losing and then like, <laughs> no, then it's big sad it's like watch this <laughs> like, yeah. yeah not gonna let it happen uh well yeah. played it that was some big uh ellie damage i must say i think big sad did use the t i don't know if i saw a t coming out from jmd so it could have been a preparation difference too but Big Sad showed up prepared and ready to play. In the next yeah. matchup, we got Josito versus Infestors. We got another oh, Shadow Priest Warlock here. Here we go. One more. Man, but that's another thing. You talk about you talk about preparation. I think uh one step beyond preparation. This is this is a long, long tournament. This time yesterday, we were getting pretty close to finishing up. And we got, I think, two more rounds left. There were like two and a half rounds left before we're, we're done with the tournament. A lot of the duels are done. The rounds get smaller and smaller. But uh, yeah, this is, a, this is a long, long time to be sitting here waiting in between duels. Your cooldowns come back up and stuff. It's easy to, to kind of fall asleep a little bit on, on, oh, wait, I need to have this. I need to have that. And kind of being focused for that long, it's tough, man. It's props to all these guys for, for sticking through it. Yeah, it's like playing a tournament and you show up and you have like one match at like 9 a.m. and the next one at like 4 p.m. and you're just kind of waiting around. You're like, come on, let me play, you know, and uh, yeah, these players have to have that longevity, the mindset of longevity and uh, yeah, it can be tough. And uh, oh. just to clarify a little bit on that last duel, Big Sad is not a pure elemental shaman. That's why we're trying to figure out what spec he is. Uh, we got insight from the admins. He's actually a tri-spec. So a little bit of resto, a little bit of Ellie, and a little bit of enhance. And me personally, I love that about Classic. To me, yep. that's one of Classic's biggest selling points is that you can make these really unique specs. Like I know druids do a tri-spec. I know mages do a spec called elementalist, which is half fire, half frost. And to see that from a shaman, and, and not only that, not to only see it, but to see him perform so well with it, it's like, man, classic is so cool for that reason. Yeah, no, I, I love it. The the build variety that you have in classic, a lot, a lot of people think that uh, like the old talent system is not good because it's too cookie cutter or whatever. But in reality, especially when it comes to PvP, it's wide open so people will put pa talents wherever they wherever they want to be able to kind of fine-tune their spec to be able to play against certain matchups people might have looked at the brackets today and and spec uh like you might look at the brackets look at your group and you might spec a certain way for that in in a dueling tournament or something so uh, yeah pretty cool to uh pretty cool to see that in classic man this is uh this is a little scary it's one of those matchups that we've seen Go in the warlock favor nearly every time and Josito is is uh you know he's a he's a friend of mine he's a good priest he's a good player i want to see him do well and it's just like it's against lock uh, it can be hard uh, if anyone can do it though i know Josito can i would love to see some tech come out we've seen we've seen priests maybe uh go for mana burns uh unsuccessfully we've seen priests try to race him down at damage unsuccessfully maybe Josito has something up his sleeve that will actually work here as he's uh logging back in might have been some lag or something like that uh, it looks like he might have disconnected again so we'll see if there'll be another matchup or if we're gonna okay Josito's having some connection issues we're, we're uh allowing three a couple minutes, minutes due to the rules yeah just three couple minutes and then if not we'll move on okay. um to the next one okay I'll, we'll do a quick little uh I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a quick little uh drink break i'm gonna grab a drink really fast
Perfect. Okay. If we don't get to see this duel, we have a lot of really great duels to look forward to. We have four uh, versus Snuts. That's going to be a Warlock Mirror coming up next. And then we have Peace versus J-Law. Uh, and, and, and the winner of this will be a big deal too, because if it's J-Law that beats Peace, Snuts uh, has been saying J-Law is one of his hardest opponents out of anyone in the bracket because of the nature of Undead Warrior and the expertise of J-Law himself and the preparation of J-Law. So it's like Snuts... I uh, was saying if there's anyone he doesn't want to fight, it's J-Law. If J-Law beats Peace, Snuts will have to fight his biggest fear here in that round of C8. Um, and after that, we're done with round two. So we have Hosey versus Infestors, four versus Snuts, Peace versus J-Law. And then we're going to really be uh, back to the top of round three. And once we're there, we have... Zico versus Sidu. What a great way to start round three. Uh, it's going to be a classic matchup, an instant classic. Then Mez versus Bean shortly after that. Hunter Mir matchup versus two big names. We have another Warlock Mir, Madnox versus Gripping. And Warlocks have been slaying all the priests. Now they get to take each other out. After that, we have Sony versus Zero. Oh man, Zero's been slaying the rogues. He's been slaying the warriors. I'm sure Sony is not looking forward to fighting Zero because Zero is one of those players that has so much expertise against those melee classes, and he's shown it today. Next up, Gordon versus MFB TV. It's going to be a Druid Mirror matchup, and the Druid Mirror can take a while. So we'll see which one of these Druids wants to play the slow game versus the fast one. But jumping into the round hand, we have Hosito versus Infestor. Duel to the Death Flag dropped. I'm very excited to see what Hosito has in store for us, what he has planned, what we're going to see coming out it's it has to be something novel it has to be something different a new strategy a new item or maybe some great rng a great shadow reflect on a death coil you know um something like that because if not we know how this one goes the duel has commenced corruptions and shadow word pains being traded out hosito not opting for many dispels he's just spamming that shadow word pain fear comes out instant will of forsaken into a refear into a will of forsaken to follow Looks like the pet goes down, and the second pet, Feldom, comes right back up. Fear being casted from Infester. That's a Shadow Reflect on the Fear. Well played from Hosey. Hosey, 80% mana. Really strong start to the duel. Hosey opting for Dispels now, about a minute into the duel, instead of right away. But Infester knows how this goes. Popping the Drain mana, keeping Hosito on the back foot there. Full Fear coming out, and I don't think Hosito's too mad with this opener. I really don't. I mean, he's 83% mana, and Fester's used more mana than that, but the drain manas are gonna slowly tick down Hosito. There's the Tidal Charm from Infestors into the Arcane Bomb. Great combo. I love that combo, being able to guarantee that mana drain. Hosito pushing back in. The Fear uh, does land. Shadow Reflector used. Hosito sees it, stops cast for the time being, so it doesn't reflect. Uh, unfortunately, the Reflector does not work in the AoE abilities like that Psychic Scream from the side of the Shadow Priest, so that does work through that Reflect. Silence coming out onto Infestors. Dots ticking down. Shadow Priest dots stacking up. Three stacks of Shadow Vulnerability here. Hosito in Hot Pursuit, but Infestor seems to be the one in the lead. Hosey realizes that turns around in its tracks. Fell Hunters taking Devours every few seconds here, taking big chunks out of Hosey, but the Fear connects. Fear lands with no line of sight available. I don't know what Hosey's gonna do. Mana Pot being used. Maybe, uh, hopefully that was the second Mana Pot of the duel. If not, if that was the first, it might have been a bit late. Death Coil lands to interrupt Hosey's plan, though. Into the full Fear once again. It might have been a resist. Corruption, Agony, Drain, Mana, Fear coming out. Hosey's on the back foot. We might have a T available from Hosey. I believe he might have used two of them earlier today. I could be incorrect there. The Hellstone from Infestor coming out. Keeping a nice healthy health total. Has that Arcane Bomb. Number two misses this time. No title charm to pair it up. Big fear coming out on the Hosey once again. And that's the name of the game for the Warlock. Life tap into Drain Mana. There's a tuber from Hosey to restore a little bit of that life. 26% mana. Fellhunter still chasing him down. They're getting close to the edge of the duel arena. They need to be aware of that. That is written in the rules. Can't run away. Hosey, 17%. If you leave Shadow Form, it's going to be the beginning of the end, though. If you leave Shadow Form to heal, he's not going to have enough mana to go back in. And that's pretty much forfeiting the duel. Infester. 
completely tapped, has to life tap, and he does. The diminishing return of fear resets. Full fear lands. Infester going to get the drain mana, not looking to push it too aggressive. Just wants to slow roll it till it's done. Another fear being interrupted there from Hosey. Will have forsaken the answer from Infester. Well done. Arcane Bomb from Hosey. Kind of evening it out a little bit in terms of mana, but the problem is the Warlock can just live tap. Another Resto Pod expanded from Infester. The dots ticking down. Hosey has nothing left. He falls. Infester looking like a pro. GG. Well played to Hosey, and that's pretty much going to be it. Um, There's only one Priest left, I think, in this tournament, and that's Hydra. Is that correct? Maybe? I, all the all the warlocks are just slaying these priests, man. Uh, it really, you know, it's painful to see, but part of the tournament that that is correct. I'm um, getting it from the admins. All the priests are gone. All the rogues are gone, guys. We're left with warlocks, war, a lot of warlocks, a lot of warriors, um, and we have a couple uh, shamans and one mage, I, I think, Zico. So. Um, Moving on to round three soon, but next out we get to see Snuts play, and it's always a pleasure against the Warlock matchup here. We have four SFMG versus Snuts, and, and like the Warlocks are slaying in all the other classes, but when you see a Warlock mirror, there's one guarantee that a Warlock will lose, and a Warlock will win. So uh, that's what we know for next round. So you said, Welcome back. Uh, I'm back. I'm back. Sorry about that. Yeah, so we saw we saw the Warlock versus Priest matchup. Hosey lost. So Warlock just yeah. slaying all the priests. Yeah. yeah. Really? Okay. Well, so it's the, the same course. story. You, like you you it's the same story we've seen, man. Like the priests go in, they they lose on mana after a while. Um yeah, and that's pretty much it. Like it just gets scary, you know? And then after the priest is zoom, he's just running. Warlock just keeps live tapping, train mana, and the warlock wins in the long game. Uh, but next up we have Lock Mirror. Lock versus Warlock, and that'll be fun. Okay, here we go. Lock Mirror coming right up. No, I was not people keep saying I was playing the warlock. I was not playing the warlock. I was Oh, is that why you went to the other room? No. Uh, oh, yes. that actually makes sense. Yes. Okay. I, I didn't pick that up. Thanks. Thanks, John. Yeah, I was uh, I was putting things in another portal uh, that gets flushed down. Uh, for oh, okay. So a little different yeah. than the warlock. Yeah, a little different than a summoning portal. Okay. So. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Jeez. All right. There we go. We got snuts versus four. Snuts versus four. Lock me your matchup. Double fell hunters out. Oh, we're underway. Dots being traded. Corruptions, agonies, back and forth. Immolate being casted. And oh, it's nuts. Oh, I just can't wait to see what he has in store for us. And four, man, could you imagine if four just takes out Snuts right now? Could you imagine? Like, like Snuts just gets eliminated? Like, that would be insane. Dude, Maybe it'll it happen. So, I mean, dude, after, after all the expectation, yeah. if, if four ends up eliminating Snuts, it, that blows the thing wide open, man. Snuts shadow reflects life taps early on tries to get value out of it for well played oh, cancels the cast fear gets interrupted with the death coil looks like four is maybe in the lead so far snuts though don't want to count him out he pops the life tap in the fur bug medicine pouch a lot of damage coming in here to four another fell hunter being uh, summoned so it looks like snuts killed the first pet and it looks like snuts is going to go for the second pet kill we saw this yesterday in the warlock mirrors for the qualifiers the warlocks who played the long game and killed the pet started off weak but in a long game, it came back because the access to that fell hunter snuts, hiding it out brilliantly, killing the first pet and the second pet. Forrest is going to have no pet for the remainder of this duel. Now, Snuts looks like he's behind, but he's slowly going to start coming back here, especially with the Hellstone, the Drain Lives, the Life Taps, the Shadow Bolts. It's all coming together, and Snuts' damage is going to start crippling For He's not going to have access to the Soul Link from the pet. He's not going to have access to the Devour from the pet. He's not going to have access to the damage from the pet. Snuts is pulling ahead slowly, but surely, and Forrest is crumbling over time. Absolutely. Snuts is playing this matchup so incredibly well. Four is going for the ban uh, the banish on the pet to try and mitigate the fact that he doesn't have one and Snuts does. However, I don't think it's going to make a difference in the long run. Snuts is doing a phenomenal job of separating, getting back to his pet, first dating, 
His pet is at full health, so he's not going to need a uh, health funnel or anything to it. Force is probably casting another pet here. It looks like nice he is. Hit. And he, he gets hit? spell lock. Oh. He gets spell lock, doesn't get it off. And Fours is on his back heels right now. Four is, it is not looking good. Getting wanded down. Snuts. <sighs> finishing him off right here, man. What an incredible play by Snuts. Like you said, it did look like four had the lead to start off. It looked like four came out on top at the very beginning, but Snuts played that matchup so incredibly well. Uh, the the meta understanding of knowing that matchup, what he can do, what I can do, it's all the same. So like it's you're trading cards here, you're trading cooldowns and uh, seeing how it plays out, killing that pet. We've seen in the warlock warlock matchup time and time again, killing the pet is uh, is a key key factor, especially when it's a fell hunter because with a fell hunter you lose the devour, and when you lose your fell hunter you also lose your devour, which is a dispel. You have buffs stacked up all on top of you, so you lose that the ability to ruin somebody's buffs. You also lose the ability to spell lock the opposing warlock. So you have no counter, no no counter spell, no kick type ability to be able to counter the spellcasters. And it's a long play too, you know, like in four's defense, like you want to, you have to kill the first pet and then you have to kill the second pet. And by then you're really far behind because if the other warlock was just focused on killing you. So it's like one of those long term strategies, like long plays, it's like we you really have to think out like four or five minutes. Like, okay, the first minute or two, I'm going to be down. Second minute, or the minute or two after that, it will be kind of even, and then I'm going to pull ahead. And Snuts had the, the forethought for that one, and it really worked out for him. Here we have another massive matchup. I, I can't stress this enough. Shayla versus Peace. The winner of this is a big deal. And the, the, the duel's already started. Scatter, I don't know if he's going to have time to make it for the trap. Fain Death trap. Oh my gosh, it looks like... Um, yeah, I think it resisted, but he did have the, uh, oh, no, the shake like... in there. Oh, yeah. he already had that place before. He has the improved trap, so he got the uh, he, he got the root on top of it, and it ticks again. He gets two of them in a row. He ends up trinking out of it. J-Law is now pressing Peace, but Peace is doing such a good job of kiting him in the ice trap. Keeping yeah. him slowed as much as possible. Keeping that applied to him the entire time, and he is just getting rooted over and over again. He's dropping an ice trap on top of him right there and separating. Let's see if he can uh, get some of his back. Oh, it looks like we got a, uh, is that a heartbeat? But he can't really do anything. He can't move because he's rooted. <laughs> right. hey, dude, that is so unfortunate. <laughs> oh, the gap is closed with the goblin rocket helm. I did... So the Peace is not playing with a pet, right? Because he doesn't want him to build rage. Is that what's going on? And I, I haven't seen a pet this whole duel unless he killed it without me noticing. Um, scatter to another feign death trap more distance being created and we keep seeing this we keep seeing this we see warriors being kited forever but no one can pack a punch to kill a warrior like j law is like you know what kite me all you want i'll wait till you're um and i'll wait till you're out of cooldowns and then i'll kill you and warriors just seem so tanky that like yeah they can be kited for like half an hour but but you can't kite a warrior forever and you know once once you're out of cooldowns once you're out of mana or you can't even bad resist yeah, bad resist. Oh, look at that. We got the uh, whatever that is. It's the chest piece that turns him into an ogre or something like that. I would yeah. love to see what item that actually is. It's really cool. Looks cool, at least. Yeah, let's see if Peace Blade can uh, turn this around. I believe it's from Dire Maul. I don't know if it just looks cool or if it, if it does anything, but I'm scared. Thorium Nade going in. It lands. What a great grenade. Goes for the title charm piece uh, to, to answer that. So Trinket's the intercepts done into the title charm on the J-Law. Peace needs to get out of there, man. Is there a scatter? There it is. Scatter trap. But it, like, if this resists, okay, it didn't resist. But if it did, that's J-Law's opening, right? Like, what do you do if you're Peace at that point? Right, and that's kind of what Shayla's waiting for. It's just like the right RNG to finish out the duel in peace. And is hoping he just doesn't get unlucky and slowly take out Shayla for many, 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 many minutes. And warriors just are those tanks. And peace finally pulling out the pet. And this is what we were talking about. Um, d should you dismiss the pet on purpose? Yeah, we saw we we saw this a little bit earlier with the pet. Is, is do you want to keep the pet on him or do you not? The idea being that if the pet is hitting him, he's generating rage. But also, if you don't have the pen on him, you have a harder time keeping the warrior in combat and keeping pressure on him. So uh, it's it's really like a trade-off that is... Uh, I, I think the best way to play it is is not to just not have the pet altogether, but to maybe send him whenever you need to. And yep. that's something we didn't see earlier in the uh, in the duel earlier. But man, Peace. this is close. J-Law is in, is in the danger zone right now. 
And what that does is, so that's the, that, by the way, that's the Gordok suit from, from Dire Maul. And it actually, this is something I didn't know. I was just told by admin. It actually increases your hitbox so your attack range is bigger. Oh. I did not know that. This is so close. Jayla almost in execute range, but pieces too. Jayla I might finish him first. Oh, is there going to be another scatter? If not, it's over oh, for peace. Jayla! First aid! There's just an execute away. Oh, Bro, no. Jayla is going to win this. And that means Jayla versus Snuts is going to be next. Let's see it. Oh, Boom! Oh, the man. ogre taking out peace. Snuts oh. has to fight his worst nightmare. Coming up next. Oh my gosh. Wow. That is Jayla is so impressive. Man. If someone's going to take out Snuts, it's going to be Jayla. Like, it's going to be Jayla. Snuts, Snuts said it. Like, if I was Snuts, it's like, that's, that's a one matchup we don't want to get, and, and Snuts is getting it. So if Snuts wins this, like, it, it, there's even more glory in it, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and Peace, dude, Peace played phenomenal, dude. He really did this this whole tournament. I'm I'm really, really proud of Peace Blade. Uh, you know, at, you know, taking a taking a break from the paladin for a little bit, whipping out the hunter, and uh, doing a phenomenal job doing it. So, uh, yeah, making making the crusaders proud. Good stuff. So, really, really, next, uh, really good try here. Next matchup, I think we're moving to round three. We're seeing Zico versus Sidu. I believe it is round three. Yeah, dude, like Zico versus Sidu in 2023. <laughs> <laughs> on a tuesday what a treat man <laughs> this is great oh, like great. this is great um yeah. so cd was playing enhance zico is playing frost and i i mean i've got to say i think the mage is favored in the enhance it, you know we've seen this, this matchup play out what's so cool though is we get to see the top, top, top end of mage gameplay and the top, top, top end of shaman gameplay. And we just get to watch how it unfolds with all consumables, pretty much no rules, and see two of the best players in the world get out. Yeah, I mean, this is this is going to be incredible. I mean, these are, these are two of the most highly decorated WoW players ever. I mean, uh, Zico... Uh, actually, both these guys, Sidu's done some casting as well, hasn't he? I know Zico is also a legendary, legendary caster, and they're getting started right now. Title Charm into the Polymorph to start it off with Zico, and it seems like he loves that opener, and I love it too. It's so safe, it's so clean. You just Title Charm Sheep, and right from the Title Charm Sheep, you get to uh, kill all the totems, change your trinkets, and get a nice clean opener. Um, looks like the net backfired for Zico, uh, if I'm not mistaken there, which is a like really what you don't want to happen if you're Zico, but... Yeah, it worked out. It worked out for him. He got the distance once again, and the, the Frost Reflector from Sidu is great. Um, but once again, like, uh, see, it's going to be an uphill battle for him. The Nova comes out. Trinket immediately on the Nova. Uh, Sleeping Dust from Zico, and the Totems are being slain. So what Zico wants to do in this matchup is wait till Sidu's out of mana. He wants to wants yeah. to kite out Sidu, let Sidu use a lot of mana, kill the Totems, fake the Urshocks, kill the Groundings, keep oh, kiting. Ground. And Sidu will run out of mana. Sidu is hoping to rush Zico down. Pops the sprint, has the free action potions, you know, as much damage as possible. Zico, if he pay plays patiently, uh, you know, should be able to kite him out and wait till Sidu's oom to really start doing damage. Yeah, no, I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. Trying to trying to take an Enhanced Shaman and, and make him burn as much mana as possible is, is key here because Enhanced Shamans, again, because of the build, because of the items in, in vanilla that they will use, they don't have a lot of intellect, they don't have a lot of mana, and uh, really, Sidu is, uh, he just has to try and close the gap here, man. Uh, but Zigo is just, I mean, he's he's one of the best, man. He Like, he you you have such a hard time just trying to catch up to him, man. Getting those okay. bolts off, just tagging him and just stepping away, tagging him, stepping away. And Look at Sidu's mana, though. I'm really impressed with Sidu's mana. Really, like good. normally in this matchup, you would see the the enhance go oom like super fast, and Sidu knows that Zico is trying to oom him. Maybe he put on more spirit gear. Maybe he changed his set around. Um, but Sidu is really impressing me. Like if Sidu never goes oom, it's gonna be tough for Zico to kill. Why? Well. Because there's going to be non-stop groundings, non-stop Urshocks. There's the Arcane Bomb from Zico to drain 1,500 mana from Sidu. Really like it. But if Sidu can keep up his mana, Zico's, it's going to take Zico a long time to get through the defense of Shaman. Yeah, no, you're you're, uh, you're absolutely right. And uh, Sidu is, uh, see, he keeps, he keeps getting close. You know, he gets he gets that Frost Shock off and he's trying to, he's trying to close on him. But 
he just can't quite get there. And, uh... He's really feeling it, man. This has got to be brutal, man. I, this has got to be one of the most frustrating things to do is trying to chase down a, a Frost Mage like that. And, you know, you have some counter play, right? You have the Earth Shock, you have the Grounding Totem, you have the Frost Shock, but sometimes there's just not a big counter spell on Sea-Doo. So he can't cast anything right now for another couple of seconds, and that puts him way behind, and he's in the danger zone. As soon as he was able to cast, he tried, but then he got hit with a big, big rocket helm, and this might be it for Sidu. This yeah. might be it. Zico is going to go with the oh, Arcane Bomb to seal the no deal. Doubt. Oh! Healing Pot he being used from Sidu. It yeah, Ice matter. Block coming out to break the CC. Cold Snapping, Kona Cold at resist. Lesser Healing Wave coming through. Earthshock coming out. Lesser Healing Waves to follow. Zico has no mana, but he has Evo. He has uh, no mana gem for about 30 seconds and no mana pot for about 60 seconds. So Zico kind of has to wait for those. Um, but he still has the Evo too, I, I think. So he can also just re-sheep to full an Evo. So it's not like Zico's in trouble by any means. But c lived that onslaught. Uh, and Zico really played that impressive. pretty safe too with the Arcane Bomb silence and everything like that so i really like how zico has done it but Sidu managed to hang on for another little bit and you can you can just see the respect that zico has for Sidu. i mean he knows that this is a this is a very favorable matchup for him uh class to class but he has so much respect for Sidu. he does not want to give Sidu a chance to do anything i mean that you you mentioned the the patience on waiting for the arcane bomb trying to cover all his bases to try and finish right there i think a lot of people would have gone into that duel seeing a shaman at 16 percent health and just try and go for the big dam right and just try and finish him off right there but zico he's Ooh. He, he has the ability to just take it slow and finish him off right there and down goes Sidu. amazing ah. amazing showing in the tournament i mean that was uh Sidu is has been a uh i mean he's he's been a great player for such a long time man yeah it's been a great player for such a long time and it was uh uh it's great to see him compete in this tournament and do as well as he has yeah i mean it's sad to see it's sad to see but i mean zico played textbook um and it's still cool to see it play out the arcane bomb plays from zico i thought were brilliant the opener with the title charm sheep i thought was brilliant um and Sidu, you know staying alive as long as he did and conserving mana for as long as he did and uh, like ooming zico to the point where like that was once the mages oom and out of cooldowns then it becomes a duel again like the shaman ooms first and it's scary the shaman could die but if the mages oom then it gets back to serious business zico first player in the first seed to advance to the fourth round mm. Semi semi finals, if that's a thing, I don't know. Mez versus Big B next. <laughs> <laughs> we have the double hunter. I'm excited for this one, man. Like Bean and Mez need no introduction, right? Bean oh, uh second place uh BlizzCon, Mez first place BlizzCon, well <laughs> and, and yeah. Bean um Normally his main Feral, but in Classic WoW goes on the Hunter, and Mez normally mains Death Knight, but in Classic WoW also plays Hunter. Both players so experienced. They're used to the big stage. They're used to the pressure. Both picking up the Hunter and doing very well in this tournament. Both players obviously haven't lost today because they're still alive and they're standing uh, there in, in front of us. And uh, Hunter versus Hunter is, is, is not a matchup I have, like, a ton of expertise in i would uh probably expect to see is a, a pretty decently fast matchup here you can't run against another hunter uh too long sleeping dust from mez to start things off just the, the sleeping dust from range and it looks like he's gonna get that big aim shot to start but it might have heartbeat broke yeah uh i, I mean I, I think this is gonna be one of those where like you mentioned earlier is like bean and mez are uh very both very well-known players and uh, it's going to be exciting to see how this one fares out to see who plays Zico in the next round. Double Viper Steam coming out. They're both 60% mana. Mez has a slight favor in the health and Scare Beast coming out from Big Bean on the Fred. Mez taking a bit of Viper Sting damage. So it might be more of like Hunters kite each other out to Viper Sting whatever Hunters Oom first loses. It could be a situation like that. And if that is the case, Big Bean is 40% mana. Mez up to 50. So Bean is is losing this. Mez has the health advantage as well. But anything can happen. RNG can happen. Classic WoW can happen. Mez using the Elixir of Poison Resistance. Removing the Viper Sting from himself. Concussive shot RNG onto Bean. Unlucky. And can the Imp Wing Click too right after. Yeah. Oh, look at... Fred gets ice trapped. Oh no. See, that's what I really want to see today. It's Bean and Mez is a great matchup. I really want to see who does better, Fred or uh, Grayson over there. 
Yeah, seriously. We have concussive shot RNG, wing clip RNG. We have crit RNG, resist, misses. We'll see how it plays out. It's very close. I would maybe dare to say Mez is slightly in the lead. Both pets are just CC'd forever. Hunters are in melee range going for the wing clips. Bean might be the first one to get the other hunter Um, They're pretty much both Um at this point. They're both within 5% life of each other. This could be anyone's game. Bean fighting for his life. Another improved wing clip from Mez. He's all over Bean now. Both pets connecting. Fred and Grayson doing work. Being at half life, no mana for scatter or feign death or trap or anything like that. Major healing pot used. Doesn't look like it does almost anything though. Um, for Bean. I wonder what consumables we have left. If we have teas, if we have flasks, now is the time to bring them out. This is a duel to the death. Whoever oh, loses will fall. Yeah. B big big trap avoiding the pet. I mean, this is uh look, these guys are completely tapped. They have no mana. I mean, they're just sitting here, standing 10 paces apart and shooting each other, maybe. They're getting in melee. Fred's trapped now. Bean has gotten some unfortunate... Oh, uh, that's huge. The, he gets the first oh, aid. Big. He got the cross CC. Yeah, he, he traps one and magic dust the other. Bean is going to be able to first aid and drink. This might be the momentum Bean needs to turn the tides here. <laughs> oh, no. Cross CC on the two players. The Viper Sting is coming out. Bean's taking the lead. Mez is trying to get back in the range. He's not quite shooting. Bean's getting a massive lead from this. There's the healing pot. pot. Mez is not shooting. He's just running in. Now he finally gets that Viper Sting off. But Bean now has a 10 or 15% health advantage. Mez uses the magic dust and it looks like it resists. He will not be able to pull that same play that Bean just played. He can't take it from his playbook today. The Viper Sting and the Sticky Glue connecting onto Mez. Another concussive shot RNG onto Bean. And I think, oh, this could go either way, it's but a big, It's a race. It's a, oh, Bean with mana. Bean with mana. It's a DPS race. Oh, the flask. The flask to get his health back up just a little bit. Mez Who's going to win? Like... Is it going to be Fred or Grayson? <laughs> oh, Mez, Mez pops the tuber the and the tuber. flask to gain more life. Bean <gasps> pops the, the tube to gain more life and mana. Trap into the scare beast. It might be dude, a bandage. Cross it might be a bandage. The first data on the dot, dude. Right uh. as the bandage dropped, right as the debuff dropped, he was able to get just enough healing off. Viper scene coming out from both ends. Both hunters are pretty much tapped. Mez is on 10%. Bean trying to finish it off, but so is Mez. It's as close as it can be. Bean's kiting it out. There's a scatter trap. Grayson connects and Mez oh, goes down. Uh, Bean <laughs> takes down Mez. What a duel. Oh my goodness, man. Holy. If, hey, if this tournament started, when this tournament started yesterday, if I told you Bean was going to take out Mez, what would you have said? I mean, I would have said I want to see that, and we just did. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> what a duel. That was amazing, man. That, that was, was absolutely great. amazing. The last, like, two minutes of that, they're just out of mana and just trying to just shoot into each other nonstop, just 10 bases apart, like an old-school Western dude. That was crazy. Yeah, that's a perfect analogy. I like Hunter Mears. I would love to see more Hunter Mirrors. That was a fun duel to watch. Like, some mirrors are just boring, you know? Like, we have that Druid versus Druid or whatever. And like, Hunter Mirrors, I would love to see more of them, man. Like, yeah, what a fun one. Next up, we have another mirror. We have the Warlock Mirror. And this is a mirror where we've seen a lot of strategies, differing strategies come out, like pet kills or just going in for the kill, more damage. And seems like any Warlock that's gone for the pet kill strategy comes out ahead. So I would probably be willing to bet uh, Gripping and Madnox might both go for the pet kill strat. Because like that just seems to be the strategy that is winning the Warlocks uh, uh, duels every single time. Yeah, no, 100%. I mean, that's, that is the key. The key is for sure to kill the Fell Hunter. We've seen it time and time again. And uh, I mean, now, one, one thing's uh, curious is seeing the Banishes go out. Because what I've noticed multiple times is... One one warlock kills the other warlock's pet, and the other one starts banishing it. But why? Uh, I, I I'm kind of surprised as to see why they don't just go for the banish right off the bat, and try and uh, make them choose like if they want to go for the pet or not. I mean he, they're they're railing that they're railing the pets right now real hard. So let's see how this one plays out. It's a good question. You know, um, maybe the banish gets spell locked, and now you're locked in shadow, and you can't fear. And then the next banish, you could maybe fear their banish you just stop the banish over and over kind of a thing yeah. and then all of a sudden you're in the, the spot where your pet's dead you can't stop the banish and now you're just behind uh, maybe that's my best guess uh yeah i'd love yeah I'd, lo I'd love to ask them yeah it might be a, a weird interaction with soul link or uh 
with mm -hmm. with how it works it might be like giving them free 20 percent mitigation because also a big reason to kill the pet is to stop that soul link right and so yeah there's the second pet coming in from cripping mad Knox secures that first kill cripping kind of kiting it out pretty well here fear coming out looks like yeah it's hard to tell who's ahead i guess guess the warlock with two pets is ahead still but both pets about 50 percent life Mad Knox gets a full howl of terror there. Furbog medicine pouch coming out from Cripping. Health funnel onto the pet. They're trying to keep the pet alive at all costs, and I don't blame them. Once that pet dies, you lose all the class's utility. Both pets about to drop once again. Uh, and we'll see whose pet gets resummoned. I can't quite remember. It's hard to <laughs> Dude, see whose pet belongs to who. Yeah. Well, right now, there's no pets, but we're doing a. Uh, well, it looks like he's going for a full summon. No he way. Did curse of tongues on him, but it was after he started oh, the cast. Oh, he gets coiled. And he gets coiled at the last second. Yeah, so it looks like both pet. No, Madnox has the second pet. So Madnox is super far ahead of gripping oh, here. Huge. Yeah, the arcane bomb could even it out, but yeah, Madnox um, with the pet. He also has the mana advantage. I don't know what gripping's gonna do here, as fan. Yeah, I, I think this is a really, really bad situation for gripping. I mean, you, you, your pet down, your fell dom's down. Uh, this is really bad. That Fell Hunter is such a big part of the Warlock's kit. Again, with the Spell Lock, with the Devour, uh, with damage. They, they have a lot of magic resist, so they're hard to kill in the first place. But, um, and even if you're melee and you try and hit the Fell Hunter, you have a stacking debuff that reduces your attack power. So, uh, the, they have a lot of mitigation, and, uh, once it's down, it's like, oh man, this is, uh, this is, this is a rough go. So, we'll see if, uh, we'll see if he can survive, but I think it looks like it's about over for gripping. Yeah. I agree. Oh, get the fear off. Oh, he's I going agree. For the banish. You. There's that. There's that last second banish that he's trying for. Seeing maybe if he can cross CC and reset. Is that a fear he's going for? Banish fear. He gets it off. He's Will. three percent life. That's uh, done. Yeah, that's done. Uh, well, Mad Knox successfully killed both pets. As it stands right now, that seems to be the most effective Warlock strategy. Killing the Fell Hunter, killing the second Fell Hunter, and then winning with your Fell Hunter supposedly still up. And and uh, Mad Knox showed us just that, did very well, and advances to the next round. Yeah, no, no, I, absolutely. Uh, I, I think the, uh, I mean, I think the thing that, that we've seen time and time again in these Warlock-Warlock duels is exactly that. Kill the pet, Fell Dom, kill the pet again, Usually both of their pets die at some point and then somebody uses their fell dom and or they both use their fell dom and then it's once that second pet is dead, it's just so hard to recover. Yep. So uh yeah, you, you really gotta get that lead early on and, and it just snowballs off of that. So oh seven. Another yep. another valiant effort and uh Mad Knox moves on. So For sure. Yeah, another Big oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry, sorry. Before we head sorry, into the I'm next duel, <laughs> exactly. Uh, before the next duel, guys, I apologize. I just came to clear up something real quick. Uh, no pun intended. Going back to the cower debuff situation, I just want to give a big shout out to Blizzard. They were actually going to be able to remove the debuff for us. There were some crossed hairs of communication with us internally, as well as some different interpretation of the rules. Blizzard was about to help us out. We fucked up behind the scenes on our end. I take full responsibility for that. So guys, please don't blame Blizzard. I fucked up on the communication there. They were willing to help us. I owe Lepin a big lunch. And again, super sorry about that, guys. We're trying our best. This thing is crazy to manage, but we're doing the best job we can. So yeah, I mean, no, that, thanks. Thanks for clarifying for that for, for us tips. I mean, that was uh, I mean, obviously this thing and production, the the admins, everybody behind the scenes has, has done an unbelievable job and, and heart, hearts and chat for blizzard too, uh you know being uh being willing to to fix that i know there's a lot of there's a lot of things people say i mean i, I saw it in chat a little bit too where people are like oh well you know typical blizzard typical this typical that but uh it's it's cool to see blizzard has been so welcoming uh, of community events and letting us us run a community event like this especially something with such a big prize pool and so many eyes on it like this is a massive deal right and yep. uh blizzard has hit you know what, chat? You know what? You guys are right. Historically, Blizzard might have not allowed this stuff, but it's cool to see that over the last couple of years, and uh, especially more recently, Blizzard has uh, really been, uh, they, they've really embraced the community and they've embraced these kinds of events and stuff. So uh, we just hope to see that them continue to do it in the future. So uh, like, we appreciate that. Absolutely. And, and thank you to Tips in the back end, man. It, it, things happen, but you guys are crushing it, man. This is so fun. I'm excited to jump in all these games. So it, it happens. It's all good. Yeah. You guys are killing it. Thank you guys so much for supporting this event. The casters are killing it. Everyone's killing it. The duelers are amazing. I'll go back to uh, doing a shitty job. See you guys later. <laughs>
<laughs> Keep crushing well, it, bro. Uh, you know, you know what you're not doing a shitty job at tips is actually uh, being being a, a, an owner of OTK and an owner of Starforge Systems. Yes, StarforgeSystems.com uh, sponsoring this event as well. So uh, if you guys want to check out Starforge Systems mods, if you can spam that link, uh, mods, if you can spam that link, they have the new custom cases and plate lights. They are phenomenal. They look gorgeous. You may have seen them in person at Comic Con at. Uh, at TwitchCon, I think we had some at PAX as well. You might have seen them on my IRL streams whenever I was there. So uh, check them out, StarforgeSystems.com. There's also uh, all kinds of builds from all kinds of uh, all kinds of budgets. We've got more uh, more affordable builds. We've got more expensive builds, and of course, there's a big Halloween sale going on right now as well. So if you're really teetering on whether you're looking to get a new PC or not, now might be the time to uh, to check out a new PC. StarforgeSystems.com. It's definitely the time, and it's also time to hop back into Sony versus Zero, Hunter versus Warrior. This is another big matchup, and we're underway. Starts off with a scatter trap and the uh, offhand here to break the CC. Uh, Skull of Impending Doom being used from Sony. Looks like a little chicken being used, and the intercept lands. Now, this is uh, big because if Sony advances, he's going to be fighting a Warlock. If Zero advances, he's going to be fighting the Warlock. It's very uh, dependent on the winner here for the next matchup for Mad Knox. Now, uh, Sony gets CC'd, and he's trinketing out. One of the reoccurring themes we've seen in this tournament is Warriors being so tanky, and Hunter's doing a great job against them, but not being able to finish it and seal the deal. And that's that's kind of what mages have been struggling against Warriors. Hunter have been struggling against warriors warriors just are so tanky like look at this so sony's barely touched zero sony is full life zero is 50 percent this is the situation as a hunter it's like okay my pet's dead almost the, the warriors on top of me warriors full life the resto pot my oh sony pre resto pot of this if the trap goes out it's going to be dispelled sony's all over zero t's already been used zerker stance coming out sony might be able to get that intercept off to zero and if not sony's in a great spot anyway intercept lands sony looking like like a professional here today. Sony is ding off on Zeroji right now. And Zeroji is no slouch. I mean, this guy has been on fire all tournament. Oh, and oh, just like oh. that, Sony pops the hell off on Zeroji, who has been putting on a clinic all tournament long. Wow. Wow. Unbelievable performance by Sony. Unbelievable performance by Zeroji in this tournament so far this has been absolutely incredible absolutely incredible job uh by sony in this duel and wow that ended quick just for context zero guys finished very high um on the hunter bracket yesterday into today his first matchup was a warrior zero took out the warrior no problem next zero took out Peo as another melee player no problem next zero uh, you know, it's going into Sony and from Zero's perspective, it's like, oh, another warrior business as usual. Let me kill another melee player. And Sony has a whole different game plan. Zero just wasn't ready for it. Sony took him out. I mean, it wasn't even close. Next up, we have uh, the, the Druid Mirror. Uh, but before or in the next round, we're going to have Sony against Madnox. And once again, if I was Madnox, I'd be like, damn it. I have yeah. to fight Sony, man. That's a tough one, man. It's a tough one. It's a very, very tough one. Um, in that next matchup, we have the Druid Mirror. I am going to go take a quick restroom break as fun. Yeah, so I will right drop it to you. I'll be right back. Go right ahead. Yeah, man. To, to see Sony uh, perform as well as he has and to see Warriors perform as well as they have all tournament has been absolutely unbelievable. And we've got a uh, <laughs> we've got a Druid Mirror here. <clears throat> Gordon uh, going with what I believe is like a Feral Resto hybrid versus Moonfire Beam's uh, Moonfire Spam build, the balance uh, hybrid build. So I really wish we had Soda here for this one because he, he knows this better than anybody. But uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be watching this right here. So uh, Gordon is in stealth, waiting for Moonfire Beam uh, to see what they're doing. Moonfire is just sitting in bear form. Just chilling, just chilling. I wonder what the strat is going to be here. Seeing two, it's it is a mirror, but it's a it's a mirror with two different builds. Gordon opening up with a pounce, and the fairy fire into the bear form. Moonfire coming out with a war stomp into a hibernate. Gordon shifts out, and whenever he shifts out, he avoids the hibernate. But of course, he does burn mana. Doing so, he gets slept. 
Moonfire coming out and hitting a regrowth, trying to heal up, keep his health high, and he has uh, he has the bear off peasant collar out, and he's casting a starfire, trying to kill the pet. It looks like, or no, it's, excuse me, he's uh, he's engaging on Gordon here. Gordon uses his uh, title charm, gets back to him, and you are not going to be able to kite. Really, Moonfire's strength here is going to be the ability to uh, the ability to kite in most duels. Whereas now, when you're facing another druid, they're going to be stuck on top of each other constantly. So, Moonfire doesn't have the same ability to be able to get at range, get a, get a range advantage against Gordon. And Gordon, being a, uh, a deeper feral hybrid, hybrid build with a resto, uh, I think is going to have an advantage here. Moonfire is starting to separate a little bit, but it's not going to be quite enough. Moonfire's mana is looking low. He's under 40% already. It looks like he popped the mana potion and was able to get his mana back up. Gordon's mana we'll see whenever he switches out of form. And Moonfire sitting in bear form. He has the bleeds ticking on him. He has the he has the uh, the bleed damage ticking through from cat form, which is going to cut directly through his armor whenever Moonfire goes into bear form. And he is just ticking him away with dots, keeping that fairy fire up for his physical damage, hit, hitting the Moonfires whenever he can, just constantly ticking away at his health, getting the big bash, getting into the arcane bomb, stunning into the arcane bomb is going to allow him to hit it. It's very hard to hit an arcane bomb on a druid and Moonfire is low. He is currently at 22% with a rocket helm and Gordon is ready to tee off on him. He's probably gonna go for a restealth pounce out of form. Let's see what happens here. Is he able to finish? Boom, there it is. Great job by Gordon Ramsey. Great job by Gordon Ramsay, just like we suspected. He was going to have the advantage in that duel against Moonfire's uh, balanced hybrid build. Not being able to take advantage of his ability to kite, which he normally can against the other classes. However, not in this case against Gordon Ramsay's uh, Feral Druid build. Oh my gosh, it's already over? I was expecting the Druid Mirror to go forever. Well, I think it would have if they were the same spec. Okay. Because yeah, Gordon, well, Gordon was playing that feral build, so that uh, so he wasn't able to get away. Moonfire wasn't able to get away. Wow! So Gordon just slayed it. So Gordon's moving on. That's pretty important for the bracket as well. Um, you know, seeing a druid up there is is great because yeah. yeah, with a lot of different warriors and warlocks and stuff. I'm curious how like Gordon's going to do against a, a super great warlock or something like that. But it's good to see his name so high. We have Hydra versus Jay up next. Hydra got that win against Lapan with the uh, you know unfortunate circumstance, but Hydra gets to kind of prove himself against another warrior here, Jay, up in a second, seeing if he can have that same type of strategy with no debuffs or anything like yeah. that. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, absolutely. And the winner of this duel will face Gordon Ramsay. Yeah, and that'll be another great matchup. If I'm Gordon, I could either fight a priest or I could fight a warrior. I, mean, I don't even know. Both of those seem hard from the, from the Druid Pov. But, uh, man, warriors have just been doing so well in the tournament. I don't know if I'd want to fight a warrior, especially as Feral, like going head to head with that warrior as the Feral. So maybe I'm actually rooting for Hydra here. Dual flag has been dropped. Competitors 10 yards from the flag, as per the rules. Going to get it started here shortly. Looks like Jay has 57 rage. Probably wants to start any second, and there he goes. Improved hamstring right away. Arcane Bomb lands. I love the opener. We have the Shadow Reflector pop and the Enrage for the Fear. So the Fear breaks instantly. Hydra just turtling and shielding himself and waiting for the next Fear to give himself a relief from the unrelenting damage of Jay. Mm. Yeah, I think with Jay, a lot of what we see with Warriors... Uh, it is similar with, uh, or sorry, with, with warriors to warlocks is a little bit similar to war, warriors with shadow priest. Uh, being able to avoid those fears, that psychic scream is, is going to be a pretty big deal. But these blackout procs are brutal, man. The blackout procs stacking up against Jay, allowing him to get so much, uh, allowing Hydra to get so much distance. Jay closing the gap, getting in there, charging in there, and... <clears throat> being able to stick to him as much as possible. Hydra is just spamming dispels, trying to make sure Jay has as few buffs as possible. He gets his Mind Flay pummeled, Shadow Locked, and he will be able to uh, fear again very, very soon. Uh, very shortly, he will be able to fear again. I think Jay is playing undead despite looking like a human currently. There's the tuber. The, the kick looks like it either missed or actually missed. And then Jay's at 15% life already. Jay's wow, Hydra real, is just Mind just Flaying mind him down. Is that going to be spam? it? Oh what? my gosh, Hydra came to play! Look at that, he's just killing him in the opener. I was That's expecting insane. a lot different duel than that. Hydra had 
I, I mean, I was going to say earn my respect. Hydra, you already had my respect. But now <laughs> he's the warrior slayer taking them all out. Hydra is going to be making it uh, to the next round. Congratulations. That was a, a master class of a Shadow Priest. It didn't even look close. Hydra was like, you know what? I'll just pretend I'm uh, PVEing here and, and mind flay the warrior down. They got, uh, you know, the casters say warriors are raid bosses. Well, I'll treat them like a raid boss and min max my, my you know, my, my PVE damage. Unbelievable. Yeah, that was that was amazing. I mean, the fact that he just stood in there the entire time and just was spamming mind flay and he like it was it was a DPS race and he was not able to uh, he, Jay was not able to out DPS him straight up. I mean, that nope. was that was insane. No, no need to kite. No need to do nothing. It's not what you would really expect, right? Like, you would expect, yeah. okay, if a priest is going to stand still against a warrior, the warrior's going to rip right through the priest, and Jay had trouble building rage, and Jay had trouble connecting damage. I think the, the, the pummel, did it just miss? I don't know if it missed or if it, like, missed, right? Like, oh, uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it, it just didn't land, and, and Hydra just strained him down. It was crazy. Um, that the Shadow Priest have that Shadow Form, which is uh, physical damage reduction, I believe, 20%, and uh, just tanked the damage and killed him. Next up, Big Sad versus Infestors. Both of these players had a great, great, great showing today. Um, we've seen Warlocks just do really well in general. Shaman's going to him pretty fast. Uh, if we can get an inspect on Big Sad, it'd be great to see the, uh, the talents and the gear. Looks like that two-hander is equipped. We have that Shadow Reflector on. The Glimmering Mithril Insignia for the Fear immunity for 30 seconds. We have big five set or six set pieces uh, here on. We have the 100 HP Librum. That Mithril Insignia from the Blacksmithing makes all the difference. A fear immunity for 30 seconds into a Warlock. I mean, that's the item you want if you're big sad. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. I mean, that thing is... That thing is so, so strong. Uh, I mean, I've, I've had it myself whenever I was playing Classic and, uh, I mean, when I was playing Vanilla, and it's it's just such a powerful tool. We have the Goblin Rocket Helm charge right off the bat from Infester, killing all of the totems, building some distance as well. Looks like the Warlock will probably want to swap the helm. So drop combat, swap off that helm now that it's on cooldown. No reason to keep it on. So right there, he probably swapped. We get the Fear casted with the Curse of Tongues. Fear might have resisted Curse of Tongues. Lands... Not what you want to see. You have the Tidal Charm connecting from Infester into the Full Fear. This one doesn't resist. 19 second CC from the Warlock. Of course, the damage and the Heartbeat will make it break a little sooner. Train Mana's coming out. Looks like Infester sticking to the strategy of burning the mana of the Shaman and uh, trying not to die in the meantime. Yeah, I mean, the Big Sad, as you can see, is trying to stick to him as much as possible. I'm trying to stick as close to him as possible, not only for... Uh, uh, I mean, this is, this is uh, excuse me, this is, he's an Enhanced Shaman, so he's trying to come in, trying to get that big win free procs on him, trying to do the big burst damage that Enhanced Shamans try and do, and uh, really just keep it on him. He fakes the he fakes the Earth Shock, able to get the fear out right here. Nice coil into the CC combo. Wands coming down to kill the totems. Another Arcane Bomb drops as it lands. It looks like Evasion uh, from Big Sad on the bomb, which is great. Another Arcane Bomb, though, onto the Warlock. And this one lands. That's a five-second silence. That kind of turns the tides. Hellstone to top him off a little bit there. Life taps will surely have to come out. Big Chain Lightning from Big Sad. Infester popping the... Was that Noggin Fogger Elixir? Urshot coming in. Big Sad looking to close it off. Infester's pet is dead. He fell Dom summons another one. Almost expected a... Uh, uh, a void walker for the shield to come out because infester is so low there's another life tap almost no mana to work with big sad and hot pursuit infester is gonna fall it looks like he's gonna fall that's a flask puts him back to 17 percent life three flasks allowed per day infester gets earth shocked he fakes the cast re-fears big sad's not happy with that fear breaks early infester on the run curse of agony ticking down big sad i mean it is close frost shock lands big sad close the gap a couple more auto swings could finish it off infester at two percent off to the life tap are you kidding me another fear oh my gosh infester's one percent i can't believe he went for the life tap there infester you gotta Dude, run bro. i don't you know how he's alive right now man this is nuts if 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 infester takes any damage at all he's dead the pet is running after the shaman shaman mana pots back up instead of the health pot which is also another crazy play the chain lightning being cast it decides to frost shock it's gonna be it no magic dust. dust magic dust Oh, it breaks! He's the fear! He's trying to the fear! Is that a tremor? He tremored the magic dust as fan! He tremored it! Dude, that's amazing, dude! The tremor totem breaking the magic dust. Huge, man! He pre-tremored! Unbelievable play by Big Sad! 
Unbelievable, dude. Holy hell, dude. Bro. Big Sad taking out and Fester, oh. one of the top warlocks in the tournament. Wow. Bro, that, ma Magic Dust is an instant cast ability. Just for context for everyone in the chat. It's not like the Warlock was casting a Fear and you threw down a Tremor. That's not what happened. Magic Dust is an instant ability. You get it from uh, the Elementals in Westfall, all right? It's a 20-second sleep. The sleep can break to the Tremor pulses. The Shaman had the foresight of, this Magic Dust could come. If I get uh -huh. CC'd, the Warlock can reset. Let me throw down the Tremor on the instant cast. It's, it's similar to, like, Deathing a Blind. Really well played from the Shaman there. Definitely yeah, deserves yeah. to advance to the next round. We, we do see a Warlock indeed fall in. Oh my gosh. Dude, we have Snuts versus Shayla next. This might be the biggest match of the day. Yeah, this could I mean, spell this out. Is, like, this could change the outcome of the entire yep. tournament. This yep. is, uh, I, I believe, is this the first Warrior that Snuts has fought? <sighs> no, second, I think. But Second Warrior. But uh, it's a, it's the first today, and J Law is a is a top flight warrior. I mean, this is going to be one hell of a matchup. Snuts, Bro. one of the greats. J Law, one of the great warriors. I mean, this is gonna be this is the one to watch, man. You do not want to miss this duel right here. So you do I know. Not want to miss this. I know Zico's tuning in right now. You know why? Because if J Law wins, Zico has a great shot of winning this whole thing. If Snuts wins, Zico has to uh, fight Snuts, you know, eventually, probably. And this, this, the whole tournament hinges on this match. If the Warrior takes out Snuts. Here it is. Dual flags dropped. I can't wait. Snuts trading the opener. The um, pet is out so we can sack the pet for the shield. No fell hunter here. Okay, we have the charge being expended from Jayla and the helm being expended from Snuts. Snuts dropping combat, swapping helms, keeping Jayla on combat. Charge with the Fab Death it's Coil fab. coming out to respond. Beautifully played and responded to from Snuts here. If that Death Coil didn't come out, Jayla is going to start shredding through Snuts' life. Now, Snuts, brilliant positioning, staying far, making sure Jayla <laughs> cannot connect for even a second because if he does, Snuts is going to get ripped with that Jayla damage. Dude, this is, uh, <laughs> you want to talk? dude, he was so far out of range, we lost sight of him. Uh, literally, the draw, he's farther than draw distance right now. So he's mounting up, he's going to get back in on this. And uh, he's probably going to get in combat. I would expect him to be, get in combat before he's able to charge. But he may have to go with an intercept, which is exactly what we see. Intercept into a hamstring, and he pops wreck. He pops wreck right onto him. So he's, he's trying to tee off on him right now, gets title charmed. Snuts trying to keep his distance as much as possible, continue to kite, keep his health up. He does sack the pet and he casts another one. There's a lot of absorb, sorry, there's a lot of absorb coming up uh, and does not sack the pet yet. But uh, he continues, there it is. Okay, he did sack the pet, oh. right, there it is. He did sack the pet right there. And then he uh, is absorbing, not allowing J-Law to generate any rage. Oh. Not allowing J-Law to generate any rage while J-Law is trying to tee off on Snuts. Pops Berserker Rage, stops the fear. Hamstring continuing to stick to him as much as possible. This is one of the biggest duels of the entire tourney. j -Law with an AGM. Uh, Grandmaster Trinket being able to go with some absorbs. We're going to add some absorb to him. Gets feared away. Wills intercepts back, sticking to him. There is just an onslaught from j -Law and Snuts is standing tall. Hardly taking any damage. Avoiding everything he possibly can. Dropping the sleep and disengaging. Snuts used the first T of the tournament. He used zero T's yesterday to go 5-0. and oh. The first one expanded out of three. Snuts would only pull the T out if he felt like he needed to. So J-Law is a really big opponent here for Snuts. There's the magic dust from Snuts to reset. And the magic dust from J-Law. Will have forsaken immediately. Another death coil coming in. J-Law getting low and Snuts takes him out. That could be GG. We have another pet sacrifice. A full fear from J-Law. J-Law is looking like he might fall. Another health potion used. He's back up to 30%. There's the drain life coming out j law is so scared another fate coming out from snuts well played there's the mortal strike drain life taking snuts down the mithril dragon link's not gonna be enough j law falls and snuts advances that's amazing man wow what a duel what a duel dude snuts to be able to stand strong and just be getting absolutely railed by j law and not even skipping a beat Bro, just... speaking of beat, like, what's my beats per minute right now? I'm, I'm <laughs> freaking out over here. We need to talk to Zico. 
<laughs> we need to talk. We need to get Zico in here think, and, and see I, how he's feeling. I, I think we should. I think I think absolutely we should. Let me see if uh, let me get out on the field there. Let me have a word with him. Perfect. Oh, that last game, man. My 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 breath. I'm like freaking out over there, man. Oh, so. Uh, oh, we have a live interview out on the field. Looks like Esfon. Oh, he's actually going to go and talk to the competitors. Yes. Hello. I'm, uh, I'm out here on the field right now. Can you guys hear me? Zarya, can you hear me? Yo. I can hear you. Oh, hey, we're here. How's it going, Zico? Hello. Uh, it's Hi. going well. That's fun. Wait, uh, let, me, uh, let me walk up to you there. I'm being a little bit shy here. Oh, yeah, please. Uh, don't, don't be shy. Don't be shy, Zico. How do you feel? Uh, I feel amazing. You know, uh, we've had a great run so far. Had a couple of tough uh, uh, games, but overall, it's been pretty smooth sailing. I'm uh, going to be fighting off against Bean, you know. Uh, the man does have a 100% lose rate against me in tournaments, mm. but uh, anything can happen today, you know, so we'll see. Wow, wow. No, that's crazy. Now, if uh, when, this, when this tournament started, if we were to tell you who do you expect to face in the tournament, is it Bean or Mez at Hunter, who would you have said? Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, it's a really tough one. I think Bean has a little bit more classic experience, but mm. Mez, he's been putting in the work too. I, I think I would have to go with Bean though. Um, yeah, he's he's just a little bit better, I would say, because of that experience. So, how uh, are you? Are you afraid of this matchup coming up at all? Do you think uh, Do you think Bean has an opportunity to uh, to take you out? I mean, you can never count out uh, Bean, but I, I feel like, uh, yeah. You know, statistically speaking, it's not looking too good for him. Ah, okay. Well, how about we talk to Bean right here? Bean, yeah. go ahead and come on over here. Bean, don't be shy. Oh, he's muted. Bean, get your ass over here. Oh, 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 do my buffs. I can't. Can I be Sony? Do your buffs, okay? Well, my buff, dude, there's no more, like... Uh... This look, this guy right here, this guy here, he's dude. Zico just talks so much shit about you, dude. Yeah, yeah. Listen, Zico, we never had fucking pots, buddy. All right, like just wait, but oh. Bucko. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, your okay. fucking little mage ass with two fucking blocks can't be CC'd ass, like motherfucking ass. Sorry, <laughs> Zico, you should have heard what Bean said about you before the tournament privately to me. Oh, oh my what god. Is there? Yeah, it was. Oh, it was bad. Oh, what? I, oh, oh my god. god. That, you know. Bean, he talks a lot, but at the end of the day, he had the easiest bracket out of anyone here. So, oh, dude, no fucking snots. warlocks in your bracket. Motherfucking hell, I guess you're my bracket. Uh, anyway, yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. love our bracket. Yeah, we do love the bracket. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 don't be mean to the bracket. Sometimes you get lucky with the brackets. Don't be mean. You can be mean to the bracket another time, but today's Zico, I don't think you can be mean to the bracket because that bracket is, uh, <laughs> is doing, not that you need it, but uh, it's doing you some favors, isn't it? It has been doing me some favors uh, this far, uh, thus far, but like, you know, it could it could be better, right? It could be worse as well. Like, I, you know, my break has been good, but has it been snuts level good? You know, f getting a buy in round one, fighting greens, like I don't know, True. dude. Uh, I had a decent bracket. I had a decent bracket. You heard it here first, folks. Zico's words exactly. Snuts does not deserve to be in this round. That's exactly what I just yeah. heard him say. That's through. word for word what he said. So we'll uh, we'll <laughs> see if uh, he has a chance to back it up later. And uh, you guys are about to face off right now. So, or here soon, excuse me, soon you guys are, is it right now or soon? Zarya, can you uh, hear me in the studio? I, I can hear you as fan. It looks like we do have a Zico versus Bean matchup coming up next. This is going to be a big one. Bean's pretty confident. So is Zico. We'll see uh, see how it unfolds. All right. Well, uh, back to you, Zaryu. We'll uh, we'll see these guys on the battlefield. Good luck to Bean. Good luck to Zico. Thanks for that interview. That was great. Uh, Mage versus Hunter is uh, is going to be a good one. You know, it's it's going to be one of those duels where the Hunter is looking to escape and the Mage is crowding the plate. And what's so cool about this duel specifically is Mage is always the class that runs away. Mage is always the class that turtles it out. And in this matchup, it's the opposite. Mages are running in and the Hunter's the one running away. And we have the Mage playing very aggressively. How's it out on the field as fan? Is that crazy out there or what? Oh, oh man, it was crazy in there, man. The, the a lot of blood flush and it was a whole it was a whole thing, man. <laughs> Is there a lot of blood out on the battlefield? No, oh, there was a lot of blood. Let me tell oh, you. Oh man, it was brutal. I did. I did not wash my hands either.
<laughs> All right, we have Zico versus Bean coming up. What a great matchup. And man, it was great to get that interview and hear their thoughts before. And both players uh, very confident going into this. Bean has lost to Zico in the past uh, in other dueling tournaments, it sounds like. But in the past, there's been rules. In this tournament, there's pretty much no rules. It's a Makara tournament, so anything will go. And Bean thinks that's his advantage. Bean's going to have free action potions. Bean's going to have uh, flasks and other items that he normally wouldn't have access to. And Zico, looking for that same game plan. I can't wait for this duel because in a minute or two from now, one of these players is going to be dead on the ground. Yeah, it's crazy. 300 hours of play time going to these characters roughly roughly 300 hours each and it's all gonna end right here there it is full sheep to start things off well played from zico pops the detect magic trying to find the pet in stealth if he can find the pet in stealth he was gonna kill the pet he couldn't find it so he's just gonna open up on bean without the pet there's gonna be a scatter trap in bean looking for the reset zico instantly knows to block uh, magic dust from bean after the block magic dust will have forsaken from zico zico blinks in there's the viper sting ticking a lot of stuff happening uh, magic dust to reply from zico zico elixir of poisons the viper sting off goes back into range and the nets bean very beautiful exchange from both players but bean though short end of the stick big frost bolts coming in Frostbite RNG going Zico's way. Big Frostbolt, uh, Coin of Cold connects. That's big damage. Zico's trying to raise Bean to the finish. This is exactly what he has to do. There's the second Scatter Trap. Zico is going to have to block this one. Looks like the trap resists. Bean sees it resisted. Uses the helm instead as the backup CC. Incredibly played from both players. Bean probably swapping out that helm. There's the Viper staying. Zico can't quite get rid of that because he's in the CC. There's the Elixir of Poison resist now. Zico's playing the max range very well. Pushing into Bean, but he's going to have to close the gap he's gonna have to push in somehow some way beans pet is out in the middle of the field getting slowed beans pulling it back beans uh has the ch chance here to potentially kite zico out the blink into the goblin Dude. rocket helm to close a hundred yard gap what an aggressive play by zico coming in to, to cc bean and try to take out the pet trying to get the pet out of the picture entirely and make it a one-on-one -on -one. Mono y mano, no pet, fist to cuffs. Let's see if he gets this trap off. And he does. Oh, but he has the he has the poison on him. The poison! Oh poison no. Poison breaking the trap there is huge. If that trap didn't break, I don't know how Zico, I mean Zico might have had that second ice block. The magic dust resist. So a little bit of RNG going both ways. Zico out of mana, popping the major mana pot, going back up to 34%. Bean landing some swings. Big frostbolt connects, but Bean is very tanky. Bean waiting for that three, two, one for the poison to fall off for this next scatter trap play. Let's see it happen. There's the Kona Cold scatter trap right when the poison falls. Feign death to drop combat. Trap lands. That's the last ice block of Zico. If Bean can make it one more dr one more scatter trap bean will win this zico will have nothing left the viper sting comes out but zico's oom there's the full poly and the evocate that zico's last defense bean though ticking every second for that next scatter trap zico has no cooldowns remaining bean doesn't look super healthy either though but with 34 percent mana he can still do another scatter trap here that scatter trap can land he can kite zico out if he can do that bean can actually win this duel We'll see if he pulls this off here. Wait until the last second on that Frostbolt. Combo oh, counterspell into a Cone of Cold. Gets the scatter off. Sleep. Will. No, so he missed the trap. Oh, no. You can't trap. Well, counterspell. So Zico pre cs the scatter. That was an MLG play. Rank one play there. If he didn't do that, Zico might have lost. Now Bean needs to wait for the next trap. The chicken eating the trap. <laughs> Zico playing out trap. of his damn mind. This is insane to witness. We have the frostbite proc. Bean trinketing out. Zico is not letting him escape. There's the magic dust once again. Zico getting back in range. This is amazing. Zico once again. No. Knows he's in the lead, but doesn't want to blow it. Drinks just for a second for another little bit of mana tick. There's another counter. No way. Out of his mind. This is really incredible. The trap off. does go off, though. Bean needs to reset this. He doesn't have much time. He was CC'd. The Gnomish cloaking device comes out. Oh, the the heartbeat chicken. breaks. The Zico's insane. The chicken will not let Bean go. Oh, no. Zico all over him. How is Bean not going to die here? A Magic Dust half DR comes out. Remember, Magic Dust shares DR with the trap. If that... 
Oh no, Bean won't be able to get away. I think Zico has done it. 20% life. Another flask has been used. Bean has 16%. And Bean is going to fall. Another flask. Back to 20. But what is Bean going to do? What is he really going to do? The Frost Nova comes out into the Kona Cold. Zico is a master class mage. Wand after wand. Bean back into the sleep. Zico going to drink back up. Yeah, and I don't think there's here. anything Bean can do to get himself out of this one. I, 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 dude, I just love the respect. Like, he goes and he's like, look, I'm just going to play it slow. I have the dust. Use it. Finish it off. What an amazing duel, man. What an amazing duel. And that could have gone. That could have gone so differently if Bean was able to land that trap off of the counter spell. Oh, If he was yeah. able to land that, that, Bean that won, was I think. the definitive turning point where it's like, boom, it is done. It is, it is over. Immediately, full tilt. Zico was just driving into Bean, and Bean was just on his back heels, just taking it nonstop. So, I mean, that was a really, really, really good play by Bean up until that point. That's whenever Zico took over, and Zico moves on to the next round. Unbelievable. I don't think Zico would have won without landing those clutch counter spells. I really don't. 100%. The, the counter spell made all the difference. If Zico didn't pre counter spell not one, but two of the scatter traps in the clutch, he lost. And there were so many mechanical things happening in that duel. Like it was scatter trap. And then when the scatter trap was ice blocked, it was magic dusted from Bean, but then Will of Forsaken from Zico, and then the, the uh, Rocket Helm, and then another CC break. It was just back and forth. It was like, it was like seeing the highest level chess match. It was so, so great. It was it was amazing. It was absolutely incredible, man. They uh, that was an unbelievable duel. It was great to watch. Uh, a huge, huge play by Zico at the end there. And uh, yeah, I mean that's that's part of the course. That's what we expected out of this bracket. We thought that Zico was going to come out on top. We thought that he had favorable matchups all the way uh, up the ladder. And uh, we're here. So our next match coming up. We're gonna have an uh, interview. Oh. Coming up, oh, that's found. Get back to the field, bro. <laughs> oh, I gotta, I gotta get out there with my microphone. We have Sony versus Madnox. This is the next matchup we're gonna see, guys, in the semi semifinals. We have Warrior versus Warlock up next, and as fans going out there to speak with them live in person and kind of collect their thoughts. <laughs> Hello, can you guys hear me? Barely. Yeah. What's up? They're barely. Yeah. Uh... There, I left my I left my microphone on the on the desk. That's what happened. Hello, <laughs> or I mean in, Yo, the, in the in the in the broadcast truck. That's what happened. How are you guys doing? <laughs> good. How are you? I'm I'm good. So this is what I heard before. I heard there was a lot of smack talk between you guys. Is this true? Dude, I tried to like half-heartedly smack talk because I got the vibe he was like a nice guy, and then he just started like complimenting me and just saying all kinds of stuff. Like I don't. It's... Wow. We're just hanging out, honestly. Mad Knox would do that. Mad Knox. Yeah, me too. How did you uh -huh. say those terrible things to Sony? Yeah, I don't know. I'm just born that way, I guess. <laughs> wow, man. You can just hear the hate and vitriol in his voice. This is obviously going to be a very, very deep seated personal match between Sony and Mad Knox. Uh, I don't think either of these guys like each other. I don't think either of these guys will ever like each other. Nope. Gonna be <laughs> I hate this guy, man. Yeah, he's I'm just worst. kidding. I'm just kidding. This guy has been super respectful. He's a really good warlock. Uh, we faced off in the qualifiers, and I'm excited to do it again. Yeah, Sony was my only loss in the qualifiers, and now we're meeting again. So let's see. That's fun. You ready, ask, brother? Ask oh. uh, Madnox if he learned anything from watching the duels today. Oh, I'm hearing in the studio. We have a question from the studio. Uh, did you learn anything from watching the duels uh, today, Mad Knox? Um, yes and no. Uh, I feel like it's really hard to do some of the tactics that other Warlocks try to do versus Warriors. Snuts is like really good mechanically, so he can pull it off. Uh, but yeah, it, it's hard. But it's you're hard. better, right? Uh, sure. Wow, significantly better. That's amazing. That's that's quite the <laughs> words, Mad Knox. Let's do it. All right. Well, uh, we'll see you guys back. Uh, we'll see you guys on the battlefield here shortly. We got Mad Knox and Sony coming right up. Zara, you back to you in the studio.
Great. This is such an exciting matchup to see, right? Once again, it's a big one. Warlock versus Warrior. Um, Sony has laid quite a bit of Warlocks. It sounds like these guys did face off in the qualifying rounds, and Sony did win. See if we can see uh, Sony take him out in a similar fashion. I was asking Madnox maybe if there was anything he learned because, uh, you know, we have seen this duel go both ways. It does seem very difficult and it seems like an uphill battle for Madnox. I know, Madnox, you can still hear me, can't you, buddy? <laughs> Good luck yeah, on your duel, bro. Sure. Thank you, man. <laughs> still hanging out in here. That's great. Good luck yeah. on your duel. In just a second, you can. Thank I don't want to distract you in this upcoming duel, though. Uh, if you want to mute me, that'd be. Maybe advantageous. We have a uh, dual flag about to be dropped. Sony's full rage here, and uh, looks like he's ready to go, man. Yeah, this is uh, this is gonna be a good one, man. Sony's. Uh, I mean, this is, a, this is a good matchup for the Warrior. This is the Warlock's worst matchup, actually, from what we've seen so far. And uh, so you know, Sony's coming prepared. Sony, he definitely. I think he came out of yesterday with a with a target. <laughs> on, the, on the back of the warlocks so he said look if i can i've got everything down if i can compete well against the warlocks then i'm going to be doing uh fantastic tomorrow so let's see it he opens up with a charge right here charge into an arcane bomb you've got the improved hamstring proc while he's silenced and he's really <clears throat> getting a chance to to tear into him right now Manox has got those absorb shields up preventing sony from building any rage getting feared out, getting separated from him. Berserker Rage to stop the fear, and he's going to go and he's going to re-engage on him while he's getting dotted up. You got the Curse of Agony ticking. You have the Corruption ticking, and uh, <clears throat> Sony is wailing on him. Madnox goes and he fell down, so he does a sack fell down with the Void Walker to get even more of an Absorb Shield up, and as you can see, Sony is running dry right now. He's hardly generating any rage with those Absorb Shields running. He finally got some, finally got through that Absorb Shield, and we can expect to see Madnox go in after that fear. He will probably be using that, uh, that pet again to get a pet sack. He has almost no mana already, running Drain Lives. I would expect him to sack the pet here soon. Fear being casted from Madnox, Sony not gonna get faked here. Another Zerker Rage coming out preemptively. Arcane Bomb silenced for five seconds, not what Madnox wanted. Second sack coming through, as you mentioned, and Sony's gonna have difficulty building Rage. Sony's getting very dangerously low, waiting for those dots to fall off. Maybe he's gonna be able to get a first aid or a bandage kick off here. Madnox, oh, though, not happy. Flask. Yeah, oh, the Diamond Flask said, that's went, great, he gets the charge. Diamond Flask. Really well played from from Sony here. Madnox, that shield's about to follow the life tap coming through because he's close to out of mana. The fake on the pummel from Madnox, very well played. But the mortal strike's coming in, it might not matter. He's a couple percent away from getting executed here from Sony. 21% shadow oh! locked, and that's gonna seal the deal. Huge. Sony moving to the semifinals. Huge, huge, huge lockout on the pummel. Pummeled the fear. Uh, he faked it and then tried it again. Sony got it right away on the second fear. Huge, huge play. I mean, Sony is uh, Sony's on fire right now, man. This is uh, this is Sony's redemption arc a little bit. Getting to uh, getting to come out and getting to perform. You know, he, we, you know, we've we've talked about it before, but the Warriors have not really gotten to uh, to show how good they are uh, in previous tournaments and previous classic tournaments because of, uh, the rule sets and not being able to use really the whole scope of the game. And you know, Sony is going to take advantage of every damn inch of it that he can. I mean, he is here. He's here for vengeance. He wants to show that, Hey, he's still got it. Okay. This guy's been a gladiator since he was about 12 years old. So he, uh, <laughs> he definitely wants to show out and put on. So it's uh, well, very, very exciting to see. Next matchup. Sony has is Zico. Mage versus Warrior. Mm. I mean, I can't wait to see it. We were talking to Sony yesterday during the interview, and uh, it was uh, potentially going to be a situation where, where Sony was like, I, I think I could do it. I would love to see S Sony show up against Zico, like a, a Mage versus Warrior duel classically very mage favored but that's going to be for later right now we have gordon versus hydra and i do believe we have the pleasure of interviewing them as well beforehand as fan if you want to go back to the field and see what they have to say yeah we do we do let me uh let me let me go have a word with them perfect i know we're gonna have a lot of great questions for them hydra guys he needs no introduction one of the most decorated players of all time absolutely incredible shadow priest and it's just a pleasure to get to watch him play in gordon classic expert he's done incredibly well in the qualifiers and um up in this tournament so far uh to you as vand 
Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Zoryu. Uh, I'm here with Hydra right now. I'm here with Hydra and Gordon will be short, uh, joining us shortly. Hydra, how do you feel about the tournament so far? Oh, what's up, man? Yes. Um, my main goal was getting top three, which we've done. So pressure's off a bit. I think we didn't waste our time. Uh, oh, well, pretty glad. much never play Shadow, so yeah, doing yeah, all right. I'm glad to hear that, man. It's you know you're, you've never you never played Shadow. You're performing uh, as well as you thought you could perform. So uh, what what made you decide to go Shadow Priest? I tested all the specs, and Shadow made me the most moist. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's so. So your moist meter was high. Yeah. Well, that's great to hear, man. That's usually that's usually how I determine what I want to do on any given day about anything. So uh, you're facing Gordon Ramsay. Do you hear what Gordon said like 20 minutes ago about you? What I, I just said. I just hope he doesn't start shagging me mid duel, man. Yeah, he might. He might. Uh. <laughs> Gordon, what do you have to say for yourself? Uh, in context of what? What it would? <laughs> what's the context here? Oh, you said he was a great guy, and you can't wait to duel him. Oh yeah, he he's the best, man. Look at him sitting next to me. He is just looking like an absolute. You know his his wallet is looking mighty thick right now too. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Wow, Hydra! Can you believe he would say that about you? That is so crazy. Yeah, no, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'm not saying I'm not going to yell him. Okay, I can't get banned. All right, guys, I'm not <laughs> Paula Gordon. All right, Gordon, we what, respect so our competitors. I want to. I want. I want to hear this. Uh, so, you did you go with like a feral resto hybrid build? What what build are you running? With? I am deep about? feral because every other druid build is so boring. There we go. That's it. So going for uh, going for the uh, the style over the performance that we've seen from other people. So Soda yesterday said Deep Feral is stupid and nobody should ever play it. But here you are, deep into the Starforge Hardcore Mott Garat Finals. So how does that make you feel? Well, just let me remind Soda that I beat him in a duel to qualify for the first ever CDL as Feral, all right? Ooh. All right. Ooh. Soda? No, I'm kidding. No. Uh, I generally think, though, for this tournament format, that Feral just is overall better just because of the ruling for like protection potions and whatnot. So it kind of fit my niche already because I main feral forever. So it's one to roll with that and prove it wrong or prove everyone playing, wrong. Playing to your strength. So we got two different strategies coming up in this next matchup. Hydra trying a new build for the tournament. He's never played Shadow before. And Gordon Ramsay on the other hand, playing his tried and true deep feral spec despite uh, other other druids may be saying it's not as good and winning uh, winning some mirror matches and stuff too really really showing up and playing late into the tournament so we're excited to see what's going to happen next and uh, back to you Zaryu in the studio great uh, that's perfect I also just wanted to congratulate Gordon I believe he is the top ranked druid in the tournament and uh, to Hydra for being the top ranked priest which guarantees them each $6,250 of that remaining prize pool which is pretty awesome to see uh, we have Warlock still battling out for that top Warlock spot Mad Nox and Snuts of course still in the tournament and uh, it looks like Zico is that top mage Big Sad is that top shaman and we have a couple other spots that might have some tiebreakers or, or something like that that we still have to uh, see but for some of these players that is Awesome, man, especially like Hydra was saying, you know, for a priest, it might just be the goal not to win the tournament, but to come top priest. And Hydra's like, that's that's what I wanted to do. Maybe Hydra's goal was to never, uh, you know, win the entire thing. But if he could be that top rated priest, that's why he picked priest. And it looks like he did. And so congrats to Gordon and to Hydra. And we're going to see these two uh, behemoths battle it out here in just a second. Gordon with a full, deep, feral spec. Hydra with that shadow priest spec and i think hydro is being a bit humble he says he's never played shadow but i he is such a priest legend that uh i know he could pick it up real quick and and gordon with that familiarity with that feral spec it'll be really cool to see how it goes out hydra though in his last few matchups slaying these melee players like they are barely uh, a threat you know he's so tanky he's doing so much damage um that if i was gordon I, I might be a little scared here you know what i mean i might be a little scared if i was gordon to just to face the mind flays of hydra no absolutely absolutely uh yeah <clears throat> sorry i took a little bit longer to come back i was dry i was like dragging some sand into here but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, we we are back. Uh, yeah, no, I think I think this is going to be really exciting to see. I mean, we're probably going to see more of uh, 
So what we saw earlier with that matchup was we saw the Shadow Priest trying really hard to stick to Druids, which was very difficult because uh, the Druids have so much mobility, and that's a weak point for Shadow Priests. So they really got to hope for the Blackout procs. Uh, even, even if they Mind Flay, they're slowing you a little bit, but they're not, uh, you're not moving while they are moving, and they're moving faster. So that percentage uh, decrease isn't really that strong. Uh, Gordon's build is the opposite. Being that deep feral build, he's going to want to engage on Hydra and really fight him toe-to-toe, -to -toe. and uh, I, I think what we're going to see here is going to be something probably different than any other Priest Druid matchup that we've seen, and uh, we might see a little bit of what we saw with, uh, uh, with, the, with the last Shadow Priest matchup, where you're just standing there toe-to-toe -to -toe and just spamming Mind Flay at some point even. Who knows? But uh, I, I don't necessarily think that's going to be uh, what's going to happen, but it could be interesting to see. It'll be it'll be a very different matchup. Yeah, and looking at these brackets, we're really getting there, man. We have the semi-finalists, uh, Zico and Sony, and Gordon and Hydra, and Big Sad and Snuts are going to be battling it out for those final two spots in the semifinals. Uh, after that, we see Zico versus Sony. The winner of that will uh, advance to the grand finals. And then from there, we're going to have, uh, you know, the winner of Gordon versus Hydra versus the winner versus Nuts and Big Sad also du duke it out for the grand final spot. So we're really getting towards the end of today and some of the best matches we've seen yet are about to happen. Like we said, next up, it's going to be Feral Druid versus Shadow Priest, the top priest versus the top druid in the entire OTK Hardcore Makara tournament here today um and then next up we have the warlock versus uh shaman matchup and uh there are still two warlocks uh fighting it out for that top warlock spot and uh some of these other ones we'll have to figure out exactly who's coming out on top but here we have duelers moving into position here just to remind you all this is a makara tournament what makara means is you're dueling to the death one of these players will die momentarily here today. Gordon and Hydra have put in hundreds of hours into preparing and leveling these tunes in classic hardcore World of Warcraft, and one of them will fall. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, this is, uh, is going to be a big duel. This is going to be an exciting one to watch. Very, very, very exciting to watch. And it uh, looks like we're getting started right here. Gordon's opening up on the Hydra. Pounce coming out. Goblin Rocket Helmet from Hydra. I'll probably go with the spam purges here. Make sure Gordon has absolutely zero buffs to help out, you know, his duel here. Hydra after the spam purge. It's going to be a little bit lower mana, but it's definitely worth the trade. A full fear would be likely to come out here in a second. Uh, um, looks like a Mithril Dragonling and Barov's Trinket. So, and, and a Shik and a lot of different pets here from Hydra. Blackout procs. It's exactly what Hydra's looking for. Fear still off of cooldown. And my Blast mind flake combo connects. Gordon just wow. taking so much damage, and the shadow reflector isn't gonna stop as much as Gordon wanted it to. Wow, yeah, no, this is exactly what uh what we mentioned we might see. Uh it's it's really just standing toe to toe. Uh, a lot of what we saw against the warrior matchup for the Shadow Priest, where Hydra is just able to to tee off, man. Oh my gosh, this looks so one-sided. Hydra standing his ground with the Mind Flays, just like he's done to all the Warriors, and Gordon's gonna meet the same fate. It's not gonna the be Dots enough. Might it's 1% of the Shadowward Pain will finish oh. him off. Hydra taking out all of the melee players with a single Mind Flay. Very impressive. Wow. Man, if I am any of these players, I'm scared to fight Hydra. For uh, I mean, he just stands his ground and just kills them. It didn't even, it looks so one-sided. So wild. well played, man. Yeah, that was that was absolutely wild. I mean, we mentioned it. I, I didn't know if that was exactly what was going to happen, but uh, that was... I mean, that was exactly what we saw happen with the Warrior. So, uh, no, that was very, very impressive. I mean, these guys, so Shadow Form actually has massive physical damage reduction. Uh, and uh, in, even though they're a cloth wearer, they have, like, something like 15% physical damage reduction when they're in Shadow Form. So uh, against any sort of physical class like that, they're just avoiding so much damage. So they're able to stand tall there and, and be able to take those hits and uh, dish out a hell of a lot of damage, you know? Shadow... Shadow Priest melt faces in PvP. You know, everybody knows it. Everybody said it for years. Shadow Priest melt faces in PvP, and we just saw it happen there uh, against a very, very good druid. The uh, the winner of sixty two uh, sixty two hundred and fifty dollars, uh, Gordon Ramsay is. So congrats to him for that. But unfortunately, his character has been slain today. Next up, we have Big Sad versus Snuts.
Snuts has been slaying everyone. He has not lost a single round yet. Same as Zico. Zico has not lost any rounds in the qualifiers. Snuts has not lost any rounds in the qualifiers. And it's going to be Snuts versus Big Sad coming up. Snuts uh, just so well prepared and so well practiced for this. I would love to see what Big Sad has in store for him. I will say Big Sad just took out Infestors. The Infestor being the, the last Warlock to be eliminated. So Big Sad does have practice recently for killing Warlocks. Um, so we'll see if he can uh, dish that same fate on over to Snuts. I think we might have uh, Snuts and Big Sad to talk to shortly here as well. Mm. Okay, they're going to be joining us here very, very soon. Yeah, they're going to be joining us very soon. Uh, again, <clears throat> so the guys we had that were undefeated going into today... Were, were Snuts, Zico, and Sony. Is that right? Did we have anybody else that was undefeated going into today? I, I don't believe we did. And the Shadow the, Priest, uh, Sots. Oh, Sot was undefeated. Oh, yeah, you're right. He was. Sot was also undefeated going into today. So, uh, yes. The, uh, if you were undefeated going into today, this is a single elimination. So those, those guys who are still alive are still undefeated. So they have killed... A, a lot of people. They have won a lot of duels. And, uh, I mean, like you said earlier in the day, Zoryu, these characters are going to have, like, a collection of ears whenever, whenever this tournament is done. One is player. Sick. Yeah, one, one player. Sorry, excuse me. One player is going to have a collection of ears when this thing is done. So, um, yeah, it's, it's very cool to see. Very cool to see. And one player is going to walk away with this with how many years? Like, how, how many rounds? Is there five rounds plus the grand final? So one player is going to walk away with six years. And we'll see if we can uh, use advanced technologies to talk to these players uh, using some type of radio cell phone instead of going out to the field, if that's all right with you, as fan. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can, I can head back out there. So I just cleaned up in here, and I'm... Um... Oh, uh, I'm going to go back out on the field, and I'll talk. <laughs> okay. All right, S fans going back out on the field. Uh, we have Snuts here and Big Sad uh, chatting uh, with S fan here. Uh, yeah, hey. I'm excited for this next matchup. Can you guys Hello. hear me over there? Hello. Am I not Hello. No, I know you guys are shy and don't want to be on camera, but uh, <laughs> but no, I, I'm just waving at you guys from here. We can just talk from a distance. Sounds How good. How are you guys doing? You guys ready for this duel? Yeah, a little scared, a little scared. Oh, no, I mean, that's not what I heard earlier. I heard you say, man, Snuts is going to be a joke. I have practice against Warlocks, and Snuts is going to be so easy. Is that true? Sort of. So I, I got to level 39 in the tournament, and I uh, died, and I immediately renamed as Big Sad. But I usually go by EMCL, and so that's kind of where I'm at right now. Nice, nice, very good. Well, look, it's good to see you perform here today. You have some practice against Warlock. Snuts is shaking in his boots. Is that right, Snuts? 100%. 100%. Yeah. After he... I saw that last duel against the other Warlock, this is not going to be easy. Snuts is terrified. And uh, again, I, I, I know you guys are hiding off camera right now and you're shy. So please, if you guys are watching at home in the studio, please, uh, you know, show some respect to our competitors. They don't, they don't want to be on camera. Uh, they, they said they want to get in the shade. It's very hot out here in the sun. So, uh, yeah. What, I mean, what are you guys going to do with your prize money if you guys win? I'm gonna take Snuts to Vegas. All right, Snuts, what are you gonna do? I like the plan of that. I like the plan. I'll take I'll take EMCL to Vegas. Hell we'll hang yeah, out. we'll hang out. We got a deal. Well, great. So this is a little bit of collusion going on. Live. <laughs> right, right. So they're taking each other to Vegas. All right. So look, I'm gonna let you guys stay in the shade and let you guys relax a little bit before your duel, and we'll go back out to the studio. Zoryu, uh, back to you. There it is first. No matter who wins this next duel, Snuts versus Big Sad, they're going to Vegas. It's going to be a good time. And Snuts is fighting for that top Warlock spot. I do believe if he makes it, then that means he gets the top Warlock, guaranteed, uh, to meet Zico and Sony in the Grand Finals and Hydra. Uh, same with Big Sad. I think Big Sad is the top Shaman no matter what. So Big Sad might be able to make it to Vegas all on his own no matter what, win or lose. Um, and Hydra is awaiting the victor of these two. We're going to get started here in just a second. And uh, Warlock versus Shaman, another classic matchup. Players have logged in. Looks like that dual flag is about to be sent down as soon as these players get all buffed up. Yeah, it should, uh, this, should, this should be a great, great duel. This should be a really good one uh, coming up. It's, uh, it's going to be very exciting. These guys are about to drop that Mott Garaw flag. Uh, 
Snuts and Big Sad. A lot is on the line right here. A whole lot is on the line. And they're uh, they're about to get started here shortly. Definitely. Snuts looking good. He has that weapon enchant, the fell hunter by his side. And look at all the corpses out all around him, man. It's a battlefield of blood. Duel has commenced. Big Sad running towards Snuts. Fear coming out. He's trying to fake cast the Earth Shock, but Big Sad knows better. He's not going to get faked. He does get faked there. As I say that, full of fear lands. No tremor totem down. Snuts is very happy with an opener like this. Full of fear. Big Sad. 40 yards away casting that ghost wolf to try to close the gap and one of snuts's strongest assets is his mindfulness when it comes to positioning he is always using positioning to his advantage he's pre-kiting he's staying max range that's the difference between a professional or someone that's good or someone that's great and snuts knows this he's making sure that shaman can never play never get close to him he's very careful on where on the map he's positioned title charm into the full fear train man a combo coming out big sad getting feared right through snuts snuts is gonna have to get a re-fear going off big sad landing a frost shock and a two-handed swing onto snuts it's the first point of damage big sad is done done here from second fear comes out looks like it breaks might be that elemental trinket 30 second fear immunity the, the big sad zoom and 50 percent life great job i was about to say snuts has done a great job of burning big sad's mana so i mean he's he's really just kept him <clears throat> he's kept him at bay keeping his mana low i mean snuts has played his resource management is just impeccable dude and warlocks more than probably any other class have the ability to manipulate it Big Sad is trying to do whatever he can, but he is completely dry. He's low on health. He's getting slept. And Snuts dropping the dots on him, sending the Fell Hunter. He knows there's no chance. Chain Lightning. Big Sad just trying the Chain Lightning as he goes down, and it's just <laughs> not enough. And Snuts, Snuts is Damn. the victor. Big Sad tries his best, but he is unable to sustain and uh, survive the onslaught of the mana drains, burning his mana down all the way and then taking him out. So great, great job by Snuts. Great job by Big Sad. EMCL uh, is what, his, what he normally goes by, but he named his character Big Sad for a uh, <laughs> tournament. Cause he a lot of... A lot of big things just happened there. Snuts secured himself in the semifinals. It's top four time. It's really exciting. And not only that, but Snuts secured himself $6,250 by being the top rated Warlock in today's tournament. As we take a look at the brackets, Madnox did not make it to the semis. Madnox is that second place Warlock. Now, if I'm Madnox, I want Snuts to win, right? Because if Snuts wins, Madnox will be the top lock and get paid sixty two fifty, and Snuts will take the 50. So Madnox is hoping Snuts wins right now for big payday. Um, but in the semifinals, we have Hydra versus Snuts. We have Zico versus Sony. And the winner of each is going to be placed in that grand final spot for the grand prize of $50,000. Now, one thing I want to I want to confirm here, maybe maybe one of the admins can help us out with this. But uh, I, I'm pretty sure Big Sad uh, was the top shaman in the tournament now at this point. So Big Sad does get the 6250 or, or yeah, get a, big. That is yep. true. OK, yeah. So Big Sad goes home with 6250 at this point, which is a uh, to be honest, that's a, I mean, that's a big payout. You, you end up being the top of your class in this tournament. You're getting a massive payout. I mean, sixty two hundred dollars is huge. Uh, so the, the first place is just unbelievable. It's $50,000, but, uh, even first place or sorry, even top of your class gets 6250. So, yeah. And next up we have Zico versus Sony and I'm, and we're going to, we're going to chat with them first. And then after we chat with them, we're going to, we're going to get to see that matchup Zico versus Sony coming up soon. And uh, mage has traditionally favored in the warrior, but there's a lot of different things happening here. One, it's not any warrior. It's Sony, the top warrior of this tournament. So no matter what, Sony's getting that 6250. Once again, for that second place warrior, you're hoping Sony wins, right? For that payday. Yeah. And Sony has all the all the potions and all the buffs in the world. So like Sony is is as prepared as he can be, but so is Zico. And we've seen mages be taken out from warriors today. We've seen warriors take out hunters today for the sole reason of warriors being so tanky. We'll see if Zico can handle the tankiness of Sony or if Sony will be able to surprise us all and take out Zico in that warrior versus mage. Very difficult matchup. Yeah, huge, huge. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, they're uh, they're 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 getting a water break. Players are taking a quick water break, so uh, we're gonna take a quick break too. And that is going to be to tell you guys about uh, OTKNetwork.com merch. If you guys want new merch, uh, new merch is available here. I'm gonna show you guys this. I don't even know. What the heck? I don't even know if these are still in stock, right? I don't even know. I uh, I don't even know if these are still in stock, but this hoodie is sick. Uh, we've got all kinds of new merch, otknetwork.com. If you guys want to get a nice cozy hoodie, and a nice cozy crew neck, it's starting to get cold out there. So look at that. Beautiful, nice color, great quality. Very, very nice hoodie, otknetwork.com. New merch is available now. Uh, show us the feet. No, I, uh, this is, you get that on the green screen. Next, we also have the <laughs> OTK Video Game Awards. OTKVGA.com. Make your nominations now. We're doing a community video game awards event, a, a, a big VGA, uh, OTKVGA.com, and it's going to be on Soda Poppins' channel. So there's going to be four big categories, general, indie, genre, and then best of the best. And then within those big categories, we have a ton of different categories. Best mobile, best narrative, uh, most addictive, game of the year, everything. So we want the nominations to come from the community. And, oh, apparently those nominations end tonight at midnight. Yeah, those nominations end tonight at midnight. So, uh, yeah, if you guys want to make your nominations, make sure to do those now. And, uh, again, huge shout out to our title sponsor, StarForgeSystems.com. So if you guys want a new PC, check out StarForgeSystems.com. There's a Halloween sale going on right now as well. And uh, there's new custom cases, custom plate lights. You can get plate lights uh, just for your own PC at home right now. The, uh, that Lee and Lee case right there, you can see the, uh, the new plate lights. You can get acrylics and stuff for that. That you can fit in. They look absolutely amazing. And uh, you know what else is going to be amazing is having us go out on the field and uh, have a word with uh, with Zico right now. Sick, bro. Sorry. Hello. Hello. Zico, how do you feel? Uh, I'm feeling good, feeling a little nervous. Um, yeah, it feels good, man, to be to be in the semis for sure. So How do you feel? Did you did you wake up today thinking that you were going to be here? Um, I thought it was a, a kind of a low percentage chance uh, that I would have the run that I've had so far. Uh, a lot of it, you know, depending on the bracket mm. and uh, just how I perform on the day. And uh, so far, I feel like I've been uh, lucky uh, with the bracket for sure. So really, you came out against all odds. And uh, you've been able to been able to compete and uh, doing incredibly well, doing incredibly well here today, uh, even in this in this horrible hot sand. I mean, it is it is hot out here. How how have you been uh, handling the heat? Well, you know, um, my parents are from Egypt, so I got that uh, I got that Egyptian blood in me. So the heat it's not a problem. It's more about the cold. So I'm glad you guys picked this location. It actually gives me kind of a a bit of an edge, I think, over over the other competitors. Oh, very good. Yeah, I'm the same way. That's why I've been. I'm dipping my dipping my toes in the sand here a little bit, kind of getting getting deep in here because it's just so comfortable. And uh, yeah, you're gonna be facing at Sony, and uh, Sony's around here somewhere. Sony, Sony is coming in soon. Yo, it's... oh, there he is. Yo, Sony. Sony, how do you feel about facing Zico right here? Honestly. I'm chilling. I'm like just zen. It's been so many huge matches and such a long tournament that I'm just like, I'm excited to play. I'm excited for the ex this exchange of, it's like just this exchange in this battle in this moment. Cause like we have, I'm not on any drugs by the way. I'm just <laughs> vibing bitch. Like, <laughs> no, it's just like, it's really cool. Like I was thinking about it. I like went into my backyard and put my bare feet in the grass and took a piss. And I was like, this has been such a cool day. It's like, when are we ever going to have this moment again of like all these consumables, all these big names, Makara battle to the death. Um, and the fact that it's on Classic WoW, the game that I love and grew up with, and like we're all coming back to it. It's just, I mean, I'm sure you guys feel the same way. It's dope. I'm excited. I'm excited for this fight. No, absolutely. Absolutely, man. I mean, this is, this is something that like, 
Uh, I mean, we, we first started talking about doing this event, and uh, when we heard about the hardcore servers being a thing, we are like, dude, we should do this. I mean, Tips, obviously, like, you know, Tips Tips was real bullish on it. I mean, he was like the Vince Carter. Like, he's trying to come back. He's like, man, I, I, I'm getting the itch to do, like, a CDL type thing again. I'm like, dude, I'm down, but I, <laughs> I want it to be an event where it's just no holds barred. No, I said no rules at all at first. I was like, yeah. I no rules. But then as we kind of started thinking about it and planning it some more, it's like, okay, well, we got to do a little thing here, a little thing there. And I think this has probably ended up being probably really the best dueling tournament that we've, well, certainly that we've done in Classic WoW. And, uh, 100%. It's been amazing. Yeah. So, no, yeah, I'm glad it's, that it... you guys are having fun. I'm glad that, uh, I'm glad that the viewers hopefully are having fun and, uh, it's been an absolute blast putting this thing on. Yeah. Production has been killing it. Everybody's been killing it. Our volunteers, everyone. So. 100%. And I, I hope you guys take pride in the fact that you brought it full circle, right? Like, you guys went off and did your own thing after 2019 Classic. But for Tips, like, we all knew Tips is, like, the private server guy, right? He was the warrior. He put together CDL. Then you guys yeah. popped off with OTK and then coming it all, like, all the way full circle and putting $100,000 up for Classic WoW players out of all games. That's just sick, man. So shout out to you guys. Like this, you guys got some good minds and good hearts. It's dope shit. I, I appreciate it, dude. I mean, you remember like back when we were doing like, I mean, you you came on Classic Cast with us, you know, that, on that one episode. And <laughs> oh yeah, it was me, you, Tips, and Stay Safe, and we were talking about Classic Cast, and those were like the good old days. And like the thing is, like I, I think if you love Classic WoW, you will always love Classic WoW, the, regardless of what you're doing now, what you're doing tomorrow. I mean, there's there's always gonna be like, if I have a chance, like I think I think all of us feel this way. If you have a chance to like uh feed into the community and to give back and to, to be able to host something oh yeah big. like that's how all of us feel so it's it was something really cool to be able to do and, and i i really do appreciate that so yeah so did you okay, know sure. said about you he was talking mad shit so this was is, he oh, <laughs> oh dude mad shit dude You're i can't help mad. myself yeah and <laughs> no it's all good bro oh man i can't believe the, the the bad blood between these two guys is gonna be unbelievable today i mean this duel is is this is gonna be one for the ages it's warrior versus mage. Sony's got yep. something to prove. He's like, look, yep. everybody says warriors stand no chance against the mage, but I'm going to be the guy. I'm going to be the guy that stands up against the mages. And not only that, I'm standing yep. up against the mage yep. to beat the yep. undefeated Zico. Yep. And Zico is yep. ready for it. It's going to yep. be amazing. Zora, you back I'm gonna, in the studio. Oh, I'm going to kill Zico. I'm going to kill Zico today for all warriors around the world that have been getting kited for 20 years. All right, boys? It's for you guys. <laughs> Here right. we go. Zoryu, we'll back to the studio. <laughs> Well, guys, you heard it here first. Sony is going to be the first warrior to take out a mage in the history. He's going to be uh, fighting for all warriors and take down Zika. We'll see if that comes true or not. I know Zika was very well prepared for this up and coming match, and I myself can't wait for it. Guys, this is this is the best of the best of the best. One of the best warriors ever to do it. One of the best mages to ever do it. Clash in a head to head warrior versus mage. But this time with no rules you can fap you uh, free action potion you can <laughs> you can you can use flasks oh, well, consumables <laughs> no hey man get back here uh, you can use anything you want all right and it's it's gonna make it into a duel of the century i can't wait to see this one um because like i said normally may just have that uh, advantage but uh, we've seen warriors do very well Sony has uh, that Torin uh, increasing its hitbox. Sony has every piece of gear you would want, every enchant you would want, every consumable you'd want, but same with Zico. So these guys are really going to put these two classes to the test and see with no rules who is actually favored in this matchup that uh, has normally been considered a very, very one-sided matchup from the start of time. Oh, and here we go. We have the dual flag going down here shortly. Sony looking good in that tier set. Zico has that human consumable on. Sony has that full rage. So I know he's probably like, come on, let's get the duel started. Come on. Uh, Zico is prepping up with buffs here. Getting fully consumed up. And duel to the death flag about to be dropped any second now. Predictions, Esfond? I mean, obviously normally mage, but predictions into this one. Dude, I think that... If there's anybody that's going to do this matchup right, it's going to be Zico. Uh, and I think if there's anybody that's going to do this matchup right, it's going to be Sony. Yep. So this is going to be a tough one, man. This is a, this is going to be the big show. And I, it... I was Sorry. just going to say, 
I think Zico is going to take this, but man, it'll be great to see Sony win this. There's the Skull of Impending Doom to break CC right away. Sony popping the trinket. Opponent cold to follow. Zico kiting out. Fear comes out. Will Forsaken to respond. Well played from both ends. Full Polymorph does land. Sony was very low. It heals him back up. But Zico knows he needs the distance here. Frostbolt going off. Trinket back to full HP. Or full mana, rather. 86%. Sony gets that charge on the heartbeat break. That's not what Zico is looking for. Frost Nova comes out. Sony breaking the Nova there. Zerker comes out as well. A little... A little preemptive, though, because the magic dust. Uh, Sony now has to sit that uh, sleep there from the magic dust. Zico's going to get some distance from this. Another Frostbolt coming out. Heartbeat break not in Sony's favor this time. Frostbolt lands, and a Frostbite connects as well. Zico's happy about that. We have Sony bridge in the gap. Zico insta ice block cancel into the Frost Nova Kona Cold. I think the Kona Cold resisted. It was just a rank one though. Zico's fighting for control here. He's not fighting to kill Sony. He's fighting to not die. Rank one Frostbolt's coming out. Zico very prepared for this. Five stacks. A winner's chill pretty shortly. Fire blast for a little bit of damage. Big Frostbolt on the Sony here. Sony's on a 75% life. He hasn't really connected quite yet. There's the blink on the intercept. Zico keeps keeping distance another frostbolt coming out zico popping the early major mana potion i love it arcane let's see if zico can avoid oh it, it lands Ooh, the very nicely aimed arcane bomb there from sony huge 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 arcane bomb uh, sony is trying to build some distance back i mean he's definitely hurting right now getting kited it's something that he's uh, obviously had nightmares about in the past but sony does have everything at his disposal to be able to come back on this and to be able to try and finish this thing out he's trying to get out of combat he did switch to battle stance i think he was trying for a uh, trying for a charge but unfortunately he was unable to without getting back into combat again he does have a detect magic on him and he is getting that winter shield stacked up the charge gets blinked immediately afterwards and sony is feeling it right now this is a this is a rough one man sony is gonna pull out all the stops to be able to follow up against zico <clears throat> and uh, he pops the fap right there but then zico does something we've seen him do before he uses that rocket helm to try and wait out the time of the free action potion the free action potion is going to keep oh heartbeat resist big heartbeat resist so he does still have his fap however <laughs> zico follows it up with a sleep right afterwards and he ends up waiting out the entirety of the free action potion and follows it up almost immediately with a frost bolt and sony is back getting kited once more just perfect timing from Zico. There's a net coming out. This could be the second ice block. Trinket instead and a renova. Perfectly played there from Zico. He knows the timer on that. It's a fro oh! Combo. Damn, there There's a it Frost is, Nova, man. Kona Cold, Cold Snap, second Kona Cold Fire Blast. It all happened so fast, we could barely see that. Huge burst from Zico, and Zico secures himself a spot in the Grand Finals today. What an incredible run from Zico. Well played to Sony as well. I, I mean, I mean, it's a hard matchup one way or another. Well played to Sony. Sony still gets the top warrior, but Zico, not only is he the top mage, but he is the Grand Finalist, the first Grand Finalist today. Look at Sony. Guys, these Incredible, are Makaraz. Every player that loses is dead. Incredible. Look at that, dude. I mean, Sony Sony did a phenomenal job in this tournament, man. He he really did, and he, he deserves all the props. I mean, he was he was my dark horse pick, you know, not because of it being Sony at all, but it was because he plays Warrior, and historically, people count Warriors out. And he he played there right up until the semifinals, getting a chance to uh, to compete in the big grand finals, and he does go home with 6250 He does go home with $6,250, and he deserves all the props in the world for preparing for this thing, coming Coming out hot and uh, performing big time, big, big, big time. Yeah, that was that was awesome to see. So I guess mages do indeed beat warriors, <laughs> no matter <laughs> what. no matter what. Oh man, it happens. Um, what a what a fun duel to spectate as well. But looking at the bracket, next up, Hydra versus Nuts. Oh, uh, man, if you're Hydra, I mean, you've made it to that top priest spot. It's really uh, exciting. Hydra said that was his goal, and he succeeded in his goal. Of course, mm -hmm. you never want to stop fighting, and Hydra's up against Snuts next. And Snuts, I mean, uh, it's, sorry, historically, Warlocks in this tournament are taking out every priest. We have not seen a yeah. single priest, I, I believe, take out a Warlock today. Just every priest fall into the Warlocks, and it's not a Warlock, it's Snuts. Having said that, it's not just a priest either, it's Hydra. If there's a priest to do it, it could be Hydra. I'm excited for this matchup. It seems to be Warlock favored. 
Oh, man. Who do you have for it, Esfand? Man, I, I, I don't see how Hydra pulls this one out. I mean, Hydra's an unbelievable player, but I feel like whenever you whenever you have guys playing at the highest level, right, like you're, you're min-maxing, playing your class to 100% of its capacity like these guys will, it's going to be really hard to see a, a Shadow Priest beat a Warlock pulling out all the stops. So uh, it's going to be cool to see. It's going to be cool to see how it finishes up. But I think we're setting up right now to see that uh, that Zico snuts final. I mean, hopefully. Uh, I mean, I, I would. I, I'm gonna be honest. I love snuts. It would the storyline of Hydra beating snuts would be sick, but the storyline of Zico and snuts in the final is also sick. So, uh, I mean, that's this has been a this has been an amazing tournament so far. Uh, everybody has done an amazing job. All the competitors. Everybody working on the production, everybody on the back end, the volunteers, the admins, running all those duels yesterday. I mean, I, I couldn't even imagine uh, how hard these guys were working to try and keep track of everything, keep that bracket updated, uh, <clears throat> counting, tallying every single thing. And uh, and you too, Zar, you man, like you, you have done an absolutely phenomenal job uh, co-hosting this with me. Uh, unbelievable play-by-play -play stuff, man. You're you're you've, you've been killing it. I really appreciate you being here, man. Hey, back at you, man. This has been such a great treat to be able to just watch this. Like I said uh, earlier today and yesterday, if I wasn't, uh, you know, a part of this event, I'd be right there watching it with you guys. There's nothing I'd rather do than watch a bunch of the best players to ever do it. Get out and duels to the death. Doesn't get much better than that. And we have Snuts versus Hydra. Just, man, both of these names we have uh have known i mean i've known snuts his name since i was probably 14 and same with hydra watching their montages on warcraft movies watching their montages on youtube watching their streams watching them in tournaments and uh, to see these two legends legends duke it out today is just such an absolute pleasure um like we said snuts on the warlock might have that slight advantage there and the duel commences hydra getting some early purges off dots being shared and spread around snuts once again with the positioning he's known for running away instantly using that max range to his advantage against the shadow priest fell hunter being called back magic dust used and snuts wanting to slow down the duel yeah, just going in right at it. <clears throat> He's got that sleep up. He's uh, going for the drain mana strat. We saw this earlier from the Warlocks. Draining mana is, uh, if, you, if you go toe-to-toe -to -toe trying to drain each other's mana, it looks like it's not going to work out for the Shadow Priest, even though that's one of their strengths. Uh, the Warlock sustain is so high that it's, uh, it's not going to turn out well for them. Uh, Snot's going out, <clears throat> uh, reducing his mana as much as possible, but now he's separating. Now he's running away, kiting him out a little bit, reapplying dots, putting that corruption back up. He's got that curse of elements on him as well. And uh, going back out with the drained mana as soon as he gets in range. Both players so experienced using the major mana potion within the first minute of the duel. And, you know, if you're tuning in today from home, you might be wondering, why would you use a mana pot when you're 80% mana? Well, because it takes you to 100% mana and starts the cooldown on mana pots. You can use that second mana pot sooner. Both players did that within the first minute, and I just it just goes to show how experienced these two players are. I must say, Hydra is holding his own. 72% mana and still full life against Snuts. We have not seen a Priest versus Warlock duel this close yet. Snuts using a second T. Mm. That's Snuts' second T of the three for today. That's only one T remaining, and Snuts uh, is finding this matchup so close that he has to use that T. Hydra using the T of his own as well. Well, there's the magic dust coming out on the Hydra once again here from Snuts. And man, this is looking great for Hydra. The early heartbeat break onto Hydra. Shadow Reflector from Snuts. Hydra stunning himself with the Shadow Reflector. Reflect Huge. on the Mind Blast. He gets the proc. That's very big for Snuts. Huge for Snuts. And following up that fear with another Drain Mana. Separating from him. Dotting him up. And just working him down just like that. That Shadow Reflector was absolutely massive. I mean, having that Blackout proc on a Shadow, uh, on a, on a shadow Reflector is insane RNG. Insane RNG. And uh, really... <clears throat> Snuts using, uh, really, the thing that hurts Shadow Priest more than anything is, is movement, mobility, and uh, using that strategy to his advantage, keeping him moving, not allowing him to uh, just stand tall and, and be able to tee off. So there's a blackout proc on the Snuts right there, Ooh. following it up with a death coil, or returning it with a death coil. Again, working that drain mana, draining his mana, getting his own mana back, not losing the mana battle, managing his resources impeccably against Hydra. 
Hydra's doing a great job, but Snuts is pulling ahead in the long game. The shields are starting to get purged from the Fell Hunter. The Fell Hunter starts to hurt after a while. Hydra using another mana pot. He has nice and healthy mana, but once the priest uh, drops Shadow Form to heal back up, it's the beginning of the end, right? Because then you have to heal back up, use all your mana, and he drops Shadow Form right there. He's using mana for Renew. Maybe you're going to use more mana for a heal, and Snuts taking his time to first aid. He pulls the pet back expertly to drop combat. That's for Snuts to swap gear sets out of combat. Snuts swapped trinkets there and surely swapped helmets as well maybe even a belt swap um shadow reflector and title charm hmm. maybe not <laughs> so it's not putting the pet back in curse of agony connect same with that corruption and hydra still not back into shadow form hydra 40 percent life 50 percent mana and uh, now goes back shadow form but hydra doesn't get to top himself back off there there's another t that's a second t from hydra so, uh, probably the the third t for today so i don't think hydra has any more t's it's every consumable used but hey why not you're in the semifinals. if you don't win you're you, you lose and you die and your character is deleted every single item in the bags should be used right here you want to leave nothing on the table you want to put everything out in this duel and snuts and hydra are duking it out for this win yeah, I mean, this is this is just, I mean, th this is something where they're going toe to toe back and forth. I'm very, very surprised at uh, Hydra's ability to be able to hang on. I mean, obviously, he's an unbelievable player, uh, incredibly well known, but it seems to be that he's on his last leg right now. He wills the fear going for the mind play is just sending whatever he can. Arcane but this bomb. arcane bomb might be too much for him. The mana drain into the silence. Let's see if Snuts can finish. Snuts is low mana, but he is he has the patience to not life tap that's it and finish him with the wand that's incredible it. we have incredible. our grand incredible oh my gosh at the start of the day i was like the number one matchup i want to see today is zico versus snuts in the grand finals and guys we get to see it this could not have been a better grand finals game to get to snuts versus zico i mean come on you can't script it better than this you just can't i can't wait to watch i must say though congrats to hydra on a very well played job during this tournament top priest and hydra i mean did a great phenomenal job in that duel it's just it, it is a very difficult matchup and and hydra really fought to the end yeah, no, that was that was unbelievable, man. It was unbelievable from Hydra uh, coming out. And, uh, I mean, he, he had an unbelievable run. He normally doesn't play Shadow, like he said. Uh, but he's he's a big-time PvPer. And, uh, actually, we're going to go have a... Uh, I think we're going to have a word with his uh, with his spirit. I'm going to have to... Uh, I'm going to have to find a way to get out there. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Move to, the, move to the graveyard. And I think Hydra will be somewhere around there. But yeah, that last duel is just an absolute pleasure to watch. I think in a, momentarily we're going to be able to find Hydra's Hydra's uh, corpse here. There it is uh, to you in a second here as fan. I think, I think we found him. Oh, we found him. Oh, <coughs> hello. Hydra. Uh, I'm not feeling too good, bro. I, I'm seeing that. Do you, do you need to see a doctor? Uh, I don't know. I think I might need more than that. Have we got an exorcist? I, I mean, look, the way your skin's looking, we might need two exorcists. I mean, what's happening to your jaw? Uh, I mean, uh, it's a beard, bro. That's my stubble. That's your stubble? I mean, your yeah, yeah, yeah. flesh looks like it's rotting off the bone. I mean, I mean, yeah, it was stubble once. It was stubble. Okay, well, how, how are you going to recover from this? Uh, I guess we go again, bro. Hey, it's time to go again. So maybe, yeah. uh, maybe, maybe we'll do another one of these in the future and you can go again. Yeah, man. Maybe the next one could be on EU. I think there's a lot of lads on EU that want to play, but they didn't want to want to contend with the US ping. Yeah, to be fair, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So I had a lot of fun. Maybe if we can get me a passport, I can get out to the uh, EU calendar and we can figure. Yeah, let's go, dude. Yeah. Okay. How'd you, how'd you feel about your performance in the tournament? Over uh, I always knew Wallet was going to be hard. Um, I practiced a lot for it. It came down to RNG a little bit, but. Like, he kited really well. Like, he, he basically he has to range uh, my fear as much as possible. If I get fears on him, then I have a good shot. But my fear in the opener resisted, and uh, after that, he just kited really well. So I got I, I basically need to get the blackout on the rank 1 pain spam to try and push him for the fear. But if he's good and CSs me, then I can't get a fit anyway. So it's, it's, it's a rough matchup. No, absolutely. Well, you performed unbelievably all tournament you uh you really put it on like you said you don't normally play shadow but you've been performing at an unbelievably high level and uh i think eu is very proud of you you know you put on for the eu boys and uh you're gonna be going home with sixty two hundred and fifty dollars 
Uh, I hope my boy Z can uh, can avenge me, man. I wanted to face him so bad in the final, dude. We were talking about it. I was like, it was like if we meet in the final, it'd be like the best thing ever. And I was so, I was trying so hard for it, but yeah, yeah it was uh, wasn't meant to be. Hey, next time when you go again. Sounds good, man. Thanks All for right. uh, thanks for the inv. All right, we'll see you later, man. Hey, back Bye. to you, Zoryu. Man, what a great guy, absolute legend, and that was just such an amazing duel. And man, speaking of European versus NA, one thing that I just realized is once and for all, after today's Grand Finals, we're going to see if NA or Europe is better. We have Snuts from NA. We have Zico from EU. Once and for all, we'll know the answer to the age-old question. NA versus EU, it's going to be great. Zico versus Snuts coming up soon. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. This is for all the marbles. And I think right before it, we're going to take a look at all the blood that's been shed on this oh. battlefield. Oh. What a day. Mm. Look at that. 63 competitors were killed today. Look well, at the 62. bodies. We have one more to go. Oh, excuse me. 63 will be killed today. 62 <laughs> have been killed so far. Well, 61, somebody did, it was a no-show and got DQ'd. <laughs> but lots of bodies. Lots of dead bodies today. 07's in the chat. What a beautiful, beautiful sight to behold. Fighting for honor, fighting for glory, and fighting for their share of a hundred thousand dollar prize pool. The biggest prize pool in classic WoW history. This is one of the things from day one I was excited for. Like this final spot, we knew it was gonna be the resting place for 63 contestants. And one player will be able to last long enough to stand in front of all of them with all of their ears gathered up in a string around their neck. So damn cool. And Zico versus Snuts couldn't have scripted a better ending. Like either way, it's gonna be Mage versus Warlock. I must say it's gonna be a little maybe Warlock favored, but it's Zico. If any mage can do it, it's gonna be the big Z. Look at all these Absolutely. corpses, Absolutely. This man. This is gonna be a big one, man. This is gonna be exciting to see. So, uh, and again, huge shout out to Jay the Bard. I don't, I don't think Jay the Bard's gotten enough credit for this, but uh, Jay the Bar is the, uh, this is his song. He he wrote us a Mott Garas song. So uh, hopefully we'll get to be seeing Jay the Bard at BlizzCon, uh, friend of the show. He's uh, He's been on Loot Goblins and, and many, many things that we've done in the past. So uh, huge shout out to Jay the Bard for this lovely ballad of Mott Garas. Man, all these players' corpses, all the gear, all the hours, every quest, every dungeon, every boar slain to level up. Look at those shoulders. It's just like, man, that, that was what I was so excited for for this tournament, man. All the uh, professions, the goblin rocket helms, they're all dead on the ground. Every single one of them, except Zico and except for Snuts. They have the most blood on their hands. So much blood has been shed today. It's going to be the best grand finals ever. I just can't wait to see it. Yeah, it's going to be amazing, man. It's going to be amazing. Man, I love seeing all those dead horde. There's just something about it, man. That's just beautiful. That's a sight to behold. Yeah, absolutely. Man, I'm really curious. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if we're going to have the opportunity to speak to Zico and Snuts before this match or after. Actually, we're going to be able to jump into a Zico Snuts interview before the match. What an opportunity. I'm really excited to see what's going through these uh, guys' heads right now. Yeah, oh, maybe absolutely. head out to the field and see if they're out there getting prepped for the duel. Because, yeah, I mean, I want to see specifically if, if Zico has anything, uh, you know, up his sleeve. Some hidden tech maybe saving for the finals. I know Snuts is almost at a T. Uh, to you, Esvand. Oh, thanks for thanks for having me, Zaryu. I'm I'm out here on the field. It's uh it's getting hot out here. I mean this uh like I said, the sand is getting hot and hopefully it's gonna cool down here pretty soon. It is getting late in the day uh here on the NA side of Kalimdor. Uh and uh we are ready for a massive, massive grand finals, Snuts versus Zico. 
And uh, I think they're going to be ready to join us here in a second. Are you guys, uh, oh, I think they're over there. Hey, can, hey, can you guys hear me? Uh, I can hear you. What's up? Hey. What up? What up? How's it going? These guys are real shy. They're, they don't want to, they don't want to see each other before the wedding. So like they're, they're standing <laughs> off camera. So how do you guys feel? I mean, this is it. This is a big show. Whichever one of you guys wins this duel <laughs> will win $50,000 and the loser takes home nothing plus 6250. How's that feel? <laughs> um, you know, it's been a long time coming, uh, for sure. Me and Snuts, you know, we were talking about it a little bit earlier, but since level one, basically, we've been talking about how uh, it's been a lot of banter, you know, when I'm leveling, uh, Snuts has been grinding, and, I, you know, it's like 4 a.m. my time, and I'm like, yo, Snuts, uh, are you not feeling a little tired, bro? Go take some rest, man. Like, you're doing good. Like, you don't need to be playing right now. Mm. Uh, and he's been he's been kind of hitting me with the same lines. Every time he gets an item, he links it to me. If he gets something with frost res on it, he's like, "Oh, this could be nice." I'm like, ah, "I don't think you need that." So it's been it's been fun, you know. We're old friends, and uh, yeah, we played a lot together in the past. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to, uh, yeah, to to play him. Wow, so that's crazy. Even even at the early age of level one, these guys have been uh, training together since the very early days, and now they've made it all the way to level sixty. And they've had banter, they've had it back and forth, they've had a very uh, serious, intense, but loving rivalry. And it all comes down to this. Snuts, how does that make you feel? Uh, yeah, like Zeke said, we've been back and forth for the last month now. I think both of us are just happy for this to be kind of be over. Um, or like today, for it to be the last day, because it's been on, on our minds a lot. Both of us put in a lot of work, and... Um, yeah, I'm just... I, I'm happy I do get to play Zico one time this tournament, going back and forth. Yeah, it is. It is the finals. So <laughs> what kind of storyline is this? You know, we're opposite brackets and we just somehow both sweep our competition and, and we make it to the finals. So make it all the yep. way to the finals. The only two remaining players who are undefeated in the entire tournament. Now, I got to ask, are you guys going to have any sort of uh, personal uh, hate towards each other after this duel? No, um, no, no. Oh. Why not? Sorry, you go ahead. Well, the way I see it, at best, Snuts gets his revenge, you know, after the last OTK tournament where, yep. uh, you know, uh, things didn't go exactly his way, if we put it like that. Um, and, uh, you know, I I'm okay with that. Snuts is a good player, you know, losing to Snuts. Uh, many, you know, there's a long list of people who have lost to Snuts, so, you know, it's, it's no shame uh, if that happens. But I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, it's crazy that both you guys say that there won't be any uh, hatred towards each other after this duel because both of you guys sent me private messages telling me otherwise, but we can talk about that later. Uh, Zor, <laughs> you back to you in the studio. Let's get this duel started. Perfect, man. I can't wait, guys. One of the top Orlocks and top mages of all time about to duke it out in the OT hard OTK Hardcore Makara Finals. I can't wait. We have a bingo card to take a look at after today. You can interrupt. Yep. Level 40 green gear. Yep. Duels timing out. Yep. Snuts versus Zico. Yep. Payo is late. Yep. <laughs> like almost all of these things. Oh, that's great. Wow. Snuts loses is not did checked off yet. A bingo. That's amazing. We actually got a bingo. Very good. Very, very good. <laughs> oh, that's great. I. Can can you believe the like the the amount of drama that these guys have between each other? It's just it, it's second to none. I've never, man, I've never seen two guys be be so uh, just passive aggressive. I mean, you heard that whole thing, right? Yeah, I mean, I, they sent me DMs too. Like it's crazy, crazy, like the crap talk going in between these two guys, and like they don't want to say it to each other's faces though. Um, but let's just let them battle it out to the death instead, and whoever wins is you know is gonna be alive, and whoever's dead will just die forever. So it's fine. Yeah, I mean, that's just that's just how it goes. I mean, this really sets it all uh, to rest, puts it all to rest. It's going to settle the whole thing. So, I mean, hopefully, you know, hopefully the things that were said to me were, uh, you know, it was just uh, it was just in passing. Maybe it was just a heat of the moment thing and they didn't actually mean it because that was oh, man, some things were said that I mean, I didn't even know what half those words meant. So it was, it was uh, crazy. The stuff I heard, man. All right. Well, in this matchup, guys, it is historically Warlock favored. You know, like we, we saw Zico talk about that a little bit. Um, there are plays that could be made. The Death Coil is one of the strongest 
cooldowns on the side of the warlock and that's snuts and snuts wanting to land this death coil for many reasons one it's a hard cc that's instant so you can fear off of it two it heals the warlock and three it actually deals damage zico looking to shadow reflector the death coil or ice block the death coil um those plays could turn the tide a bit for zico right if we see a shadow reflector on the death coil and the, the death coil reflects back to snuts man i'm gonna freak out like that those are the types of plays that need to come out from zico to win this we're gonna need to see zico kiting it out and killing the, f the fell hunter and then like counter spelling the fell dom so he doesn't get a <laughs> second pet on that point two second cast and then re cc snuts for the remainder and then snuts is stuck without a pet like we're gonna have to see miracles being made here from zico but if a miracle is gonna happen i think zico could perform it He's, he is absolutely the guy to be able to pull it off. So, no, I'm, I'm very excited to see this. I mean, we're going to – I think they're going to pull out all the stops. I mean, you, you mentioned earlier the uh, the secret tech that Zico claims he has up his sleeve that he he uh, did not tell us about. And uh, I'm hearing that we are getting ready for people's cooldowns. So we're waiting for their cooldowns uh, to – pass so i wish we had uh i mean really i wish we had quinn here to help us stall because i mean that you want to talk about a master class if we had if we had quinn here it'd be great but in the meantime i'll go ahead and tell you guys more about starforcesystems.com so uh starforcesystems.com uh new custom cases and plate lights of course i've talked about it before if you guys want to check out star force systems that's the golden dragon the clouded gates and uh the other one that i'm drawing a blank on the name of and then also there's a halloween sale right now there are computers for every single range of the budget uh so if you if you're looking for something a little bit more affordable if you're something for a little looking for something a little bit more high end Starforge has everything. Uh, whatever you want to get, it's right there for you. And uh, yeah, so uh, Blizzard Entertainment as well. Huge shout out to Blizzard for helping us put this thing on, for allowing us to put this thing on. Uh, I should say, you know, having to get this thing approved by them because it was such a big prize pool. And uh, yeah, so big shout out to Blizzard. And of course, Raider IO for handling the back end. Uh, that's the place to go for all your tournament needs you're, you're trying to organize raids tournaments uh all kinds of different wow guides that's the place to go so huge uh huge shout out to them as well so uh that, that really helped make this tournament possible also new merch otknetwork.com new merch uh just came out a little while ago so there is still some merch left some things are sold out but there's still plenty of merch left if you guys want to check it out now uh that's available you guys can scan those qr codes and help us pay for this 100k uh prize pool so that's uh we need all the help we can get so if you guys if you guys want some merch if you guys want something to get cozy for uh for the winner uh go ahead and check that out absolutely and like you just said as fan this tournament would not happen without the sponsors and without all of the admins and volunteers in the background making it possible as fan and i have an easy job we just get to watch the games and talk about them all day but uh people like tips out pulling all nighter after all nighter and these admins and these you know the players leveling up and the viewers at home making it all possible so huge shout out to everyone for making this happen we just uh we get the best seats in the house you know we just get to watch it live some of the best duels of all time play out and it's just been absolutely a pleasure i, I can't wait to get into this yeah no absolutely it's gonna be it's gonna be amazing man uh it, it is gonna be absolutely amazing do we have a uh, do we have an eta Ooh, okay, so we got about a minute coming up, man. We got about a minute coming up until uh, until we get these guys started. We're Quick predictions. Cool Quick predictions in, in the last 60 seconds, as fan. Who do you got? It's it's hard for me to go against Snuts. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say it's, it's Snuts. That's oh, call. man. I mean, so from day one, you guys asked me my predictions. I've been saying Snuts the whole time. So I can't say Snuts, but let me say this. All right, I can't not say Snuts, but let me say this. I, I would love Zico to win. Like, how cool would it be to see Zico on the mage take out Snuts? Oh, here we go. Oh, here we are, boys. All the right. final These moment. Guys are here. 
It's all kind of come down to this. We got Zico and Snuts, both fully vest and slot out. They had the time, the preparation, the mindset to get into this tournament. They've made it here. Each player concurrently has five ears. Snuts with five ears, Zico with five ears. The winner will have six and $50,000. Mage versus Warlock here. We got the Arena Grandmaster and that Ice Reflector equipped from Snuts. Dual flag has been dropped, and we're about to get into the Grand Finals today, as fanned. Absolutely. This thing is going to be massive. I cannot wait to see how this thing goes. Imagine they draw. It's like a sapper that kills them both. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, we have the we curse go. of tongues coming out we have the corruption to follow snuts doing what he does best and running away with that positioning zico has to chase him down in a super long duel the the warlock is going to get more and more and more and more value and zico knows this i wonder if zico is going to go for a pet kill strategy or if he's just going to try to just kill snuts in a burn strategy fireballs being casted with with uh, the curse of tongues it's a long cast time for not much damage arcane explosions coming out and conical the pet already to half HP and snuts popping that resto pot, which does share cooldown with other valuable potions. Yeah, big resto pot right there, trying to uh, trying to stop everything. Curses, everything, the whole nine yards. Curse magic, everything. Uh, it's going to be huge. It's going to be huge in this duel. So hopefully it pans out. You know, going the decision to use that instead of using uh, like a health or a mana pot. Yeah, there's the uh, Goblin Rocket Helm from Zico. Zico's looking great so far. Still two blocks, plenty of consumables, flasks, teas, but so does Snuts. There's the Death Coil, no block or reflect on it, but there's still time. Ice block on the fear. Snuts knows he has to get it done that way. There's another Thorium Nade. It lands on the pet and the Snuts. The pet goes down. That's pet number one, Snuts. Uh, sleeping Zico with the Magic Dust, fell doming the second pet. Huge sleep, huge sleep. It allowed him to be able to cast the pet without worrying about a counter spell. So let's see, Zico is probably going to try and separate, and maybe he's going to try and kill this pet right here. I'm thinking Z Zico goes for two pet kills, and if Snuts isn't careful, that second pet will go down, and then the mage will have, uh, you know, a chance in this. And that's exactly what we were talking about. If both pets die, the warlock is a lot weaker. It's just hard sometimes to kill that second pet. Zico, if there's going to be someone to do it, it's going to be him. Another rank one frostbolt lands. Snuts trying to devour those buffs off of him with the pet dispel. Zico getting the remove curse on himself as well. Health and mana have been pretty much equalized. Zico has one block remaining. Snuts, no Feldom left. There are tons of consumables, though, from both ends. And Snuts just playing the max distance game like an absolute legend. Not letting Zico bridge the gap here. Keeping him dotted up. Just one or two dots will do all the work Snuts needs. He does not need to overextend here. Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, I mean, this is like two, two gladiators going at it, man. These guys, they're oh, shouting. The it's beautiful, dude. They're doing the dance. They're going back and forth. Perfect kiting. Snuts taking the pet in and out. This is a, this is a master class, man, on both ends. That's fake from Snuts there on the counter spell. The blanket might have resisted Snuts being able to successfully cast that fear. Although Zico is going out of the dual range. I wonder if he's going to make it back in. It's he's so far out. It looks like he will make it back in. Polymorph being casted. Drain mana from Snuts. And this is not what you want to see from the side of Zico. Snuts full health, full mana. Zico on the run. There's the mana gem, the cold snap. One ice block remaining. Zico definitely on the back foot right now. Fell Hunter in hot pursuit. Ice barrier up. Snuts pushing his advantage the fell hunter devours a spell unfortunately not the ice barrier but the ice barrier breaks anyway so much damage from snot second resto pot used here it's going to dispel a magic uh, ability every five seconds grabs the nova it's really well played from snuts the spell lock comes in it acts as a blanket silence there on zico for three seconds the drain mana is ticking zico lower and lower and the last and final defensive cooldown from zico has been used that's the second ice block and keep in mind, none of these guys, neither of these guys have lost a duel in the entire tournament. They're undefeated today, obviously, but also in the qualifiers, they have not lost a single match. So this is huge, absolutely huge. One of the things that makes this matchup so difficult for Zico is not to so tanky. It's King oh! Kings. Snuts has done it. $50,000 in the Makarot tournament. Look at his face. He's, oh my gosh, he's so excited. Holy. Congratulations to Snuts. We're going to have to grab him in here for an interview momentarily. What a moment. What a moment. That's incredible. Oh well played to Zico as well, still securing himself that spot as the top mage, but just so well played here from both players. What a masterclass of a warlock from Snuts. 
the kites, the patience, the feldoms. It was just beautiful to see. Well played. Congratulations. And I think Esfan is going to go out to the field momentarily to give uh, Snus a congrats and a quick chat. Absolutely. I'm, I'm, out, I'm out here on the field right now. Do you, do you have me? Can you hear me? Can you hello, hear me? hello, sorry. Yeah, yeah, hello. Hey, Snuts, how are you looking? Uh, you're, I, I thought you were much taller. <laughs> I'm 5'5 five, five king, man. Oh, well, hell, dude, you're playing like a 7'5", like a <laughs> just a bigger king. Uh, <laughs> congratulations, man. You have won $50,000 here in the OTK Stars Forge Hardcore Mont Carat Tournament, the Classic Wild Mont Carat Tournament. The biggest prize pool in WoW history. How does that feel? Dude, I'm in I'm in disbelief right now, man. I'm just a lot of emotions. It's a long, long, long month, man. Very long month, bro. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean you you got fifty thousand dollars. I know you talked about Vegas. Is there anything else you want to do with this fifty thousand dollars? Uh I I might have to send a BlizzCon. I, I originally I wasn't planning on it, but we'll see we'll see how we feel. I, I I'm definitely gonna need a break after this. After hey, this uh, tournament, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Absolutely, man. You've been grinding for 30 days straight. If you want to take a vacation, you want to go to BlizzCon. I think you absolutely deserve it. You've done an unbelievable job, not just this month, but in the past. You're one of the most highly decorated players in the history of WoW, and uh, to bring it full circle, doing it for many years in retail and all the later expansions, but also coming back and doing it in classic and vanilla as well. That's got to feel special, doesn't it? It feels great, man. And I want to say thank you to you guys for putting on the tournament. Uh, I mean, obviously, this was the biggest classic, probably the big one of the biggest tournaments we've ever seen. Um, and also on top of that, just shout out to all the competitors, too. This has been a very long and draining month for all of us. So at the end of the day, I know it was just one person that won, but everyone put in the work, everyone put in the effort, and everyone deserves a shout out because this was just an absolute insane month to grind and, and try to try to prepare for this tournament. Absolutely, dude. I mean, this is something that, that you guys, you guys have done a phenomenal job getting ready for this thing. Just like you said, you've done a phenomenal job. Everybody, also everybody on the back end, we've talked about production and, and how, how much work has gone in this. We have volunteers, people working on the back, back end as admins as well. I mean, Raider IO helping set up all the tournament stuff, all the bracket stuff, every, everything, dude. It's this this is a this is a big community event, right? And it takes everybody from from start to finish. And uh, for me, like I'm I'm super appreciative of you guys for competing, uh, of everybody who's put the, the sleepless nights in getting this thing ready, and uh, for how amazingly well it's gone. It's it's super cool. So congratulations to you, Snuts. You've been incredible. You've done incredible today. You've done incredible in the past, and you're gonna keep doing incredible in the future, man. I'm incredibly proud of you. And uh, hey, I'll see you at BlizzCon. Hey, I'll see you there. Thank you again, guys. Thank you, and thank you to everyone that helped me out. And uh, yes, like I said, man, shout out to all the competitors, every single one. Um, GG's to, uh, to everyone. GG's. We're going back to you in the studios, are you? I think we might also have a few questions here for Zico, but before we hop into that, I just want to say uh, congrats to Zico for becoming that top-ranked mage player and second in the tournament. Zico, um, I don't know if you can hear me from uh, from the desk. Yeah. If not, we'll have to go back to Ez. Oh, you can. Oh, 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 yes, sir. Oh, Esfan might go talk to you there in person. <laughs> He's going. <laughs> to <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, if you can hear me, Zico, we're going to shoot over to Esfan for a quick interview. Oh, yeah. oh, absolutely. Oh, no, Zico. I, uh, yeah. how, how are you feeling down there? Well, you remember how we were talking about how it's too hot? Uh, that's definitely not the case anymore. It's kind of cold down here, bro. Oh, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. You, hey, look, you played phenomenal all day, bringing it all the way to the last second. I think the sun is going down. I think that's why you're feeling a little cold. <laughs> I'm feeling a little cold, too. My feet are kind of getting cold here, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put them <laughs> in the sand. Maybe, that, maybe that'll help a little bit. So, uh, look, uh, hey unbelievable job i know it sucks that you know it, losing never feels good but you still go home with six thousand two hundred and fifty dollars which is amazing yep. that's that's still a lot of money it may not be the 50k but it's still a whole lot of money you you competed at a super high level for the entirety of the tournament and uh you should be really really proud of that thank you thank you so much uh for those words that's fine i appreciate that and 
Uh, I feel like I had I had a pretty good run. Uh, made a couple of mistakes in the in the last match, and uh, you know when you fight somebody as good as Snuts and and you're playing uh, you know against a, a kind of a counter matchup as well, you can't afford to make a single mistake. Uh, so yeah, fair play to Snuts. Uh, congrats on the win to him and. Uh, um, just massive thank you as well for uh, to you and Czar for the incredible casting to Soda. You know, I guess he was okay too. And uh, yeah, just uh, in general, the OTK gang and all the admins and everyone just for putting this on. It's been a, an absolute blast uh, to to be doing uh, uh, this event with you guys. So thank you so much. Thanks, dude. I, I really appreciate it. And, and I, I said this earlier too, but but I'm appreciative of you guys, right? Like. The, the tournament is, is, is great, everybody's done, everybody's done great, right? But we have the best players in the world, the best players in, in the history of WoW competing in this. So uh, it's, it, it helps a lot when you guys are the ones showing up and, and putting on for the tournament. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, the, it, the competition made it really funny and uh, exciting to be here. And, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of people, you know, it's always bittersweet uh, when, you, when you make it, you know, all the way to, the, to that last finish line. But uh, there was a lot of great players in this tournament. Uh, and uh, yeah, it, was, it was fun to just be a part of that. So, uh, you know, shout out to all the, the competitors for uh, putting in the work. And uh, it was fun, you know. This was really a unique event because, um, you know, first of all, it's hardcore. So it was always like a little risky going into groups and, and doing things like that. And uh, also working as a team with the people that you're going to be facing. It was It was really a unique experience. So I, I really loved uh, this event. Yeah, man. Well, you, hey, look, you absolutely killed it. Are we going to see you at BlizzCon? Uh, sadly, no, I, I can't make it uh, this year. I would have loved to, but uh, uh, next year, hopefully, I'll, I'll be there. Okay. Well, hey, well, we'll see you next year then. But uh, but until then, thanks a ton for joining us, man. And uh, we're going to head back to Zaryu in the studio. Thank you, too. Congratulations again to Zico, still placing number one for mages in the tournament. And I mean, same with like Hydra went into this thinking like, I want number one priest. And it might seem like, oh, a loss or whatever. But dude, Zico got number one mage. That is awesome. And of course, congratulations to Snuts as that grand final champion, proving why Snuts is such a household name, proving why he is so good. If you guys don't remember, um, historically, 2019 CDL, Snuts won. Four years later, Makara OTK Hardcore Tourney, Snuts wins again. Just, I can't speak highly enough of Snuts. Such a good player. Congratulations to Snuts for taking home the 50,000. Incredibly well-deserved. Such, yeah, there's the winner. Guys, go check him out. He streams on Twitch. He has social media, Snuts. Just go, just Google Snuts Twitter, Snuts YouTube. Follow him absolutely everywhere. Go show the man some love. I mean, when you think of like WoW Legend, I mean, Snuts is, is always up there. Take a look at, there's his stream right there. Go say hi to him. Go support him. Go mm -hmm. show him some love. And and man, he, he really did put in the time, the work, the energy, the effort to play Warlock to its absolute max level Absolutely. and uh, it showed today yeah and and go support all these guys man go go throw these guys follows uh make sure to go follow zaryu if you guys uh if you guys are new here make sure to go follow follow everybody man uh this has been uh this has been a great tournament everybody has done a phenomenal phenomenal job uh for this whole thing and uh i'm super super thankful and appreciative of everybody putting in on this man even uh even like tips man tips is uh you know he's he's been working all the backhand stuff for otk lately you know with with our whole otk crew like everybody kind of ha does different things has different roles and uh tips is like t to varying degrees tips basically completely doesn't stream anymore and he just only works on backhand stuff so i'm super appreciative that uh tips kind of you know he, he put the cleats back on and ran out there to to help organize this whole thing just like he did with the cdl with um uh helping get the rules situated and managing all the admins and all the staff and everything like that so uh huge huge hearts in the chat for everybody man they they all did phenomenal you're the man as fan honestly you killed it oh, those man. interviews are hilarious are you much props to you we owe you one man you were amazing out there and I'm just going to pop in real quick. I just want to give some shout outs to some special people that made this event possible. So I appreciate all the kind words. There were 30 people involved in putting this event together. We had a team of 30 behind the scenes, scouting out dueling locations, organizing, you know, the competitors. We had 2,600 people register and play in this tournament. Only 130 made it to the qualifiers and 64 today with Snuts coming out on top. So shout out to everybody that participated over 45,000 hours 
of DGen lives were lost to this tournament. So uh, uh, no sevens for those, I guess. Um, also, just want to give a few special shout outs to Space, who stayed up with us two nights in a row to scout out these awesome dueling locations. A uh, big shout out to him. Saren, Zulace, Prestige, and Lemmings in particular. The past couple of days, we haven't slept just to make sure everything was as smooth and perfect as it could be. Big shout out to the Raider IO team for setting up the entire registration process and the back end for this tournament. The Mythic Talent team that helped us coordinate both duels yesterday as well as helped us facilitate this whole thing. Um, the full production team, Rockman, who's been doing the camera work today and yesterday. Big shout out to him. Kondu, and his team, who set up the website, the bracket that you guys saw today, as well as yesterday, and they made that awesome cinematic transition that you saw today, the super, like, highly produced Makara animation. Jay the Bard for the awesome Makara song. Big shout out to him. Much love to Jay. He pulled that off in, like, 24 hours. It was amazing. Um, shout out to Wowhead as well, who wrote a couple of articles about us. And, of course, Blizzard for letting us put this event on. You know, obviously this was an, I think this was an awesome event. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. They took a big risk on us, letting us do a hundred thousand dollar tournament. Um, so big, big shout out to Blizzard. And if you guys enjoyed it, let us know. And uh, BlizzCon's a couple of days. Maybe they'll let us do do more. Who knows? Um, yeah. And finally, sorry, one more. I'm so sorry. I haven't taken so much time, but one more shout out to Lepin, who I totally fucked over today. And I'm never going to live this one down. But uh, Twitch.tv slash Lapon. He was the warrior that got the coward debuff. Totally screwed him over today. Guys, if you could go check out his Twitch channel, if we could have some mods, span his Twitch channel in the chats, Twitch.tv slash Lepin. Please give him some love. He played awesome today. Um, he just, he he was super brave going in that duel with Hydro with that coward debuff. And just want to say thank you to him and thank you to all the competitors that competed and uh, all the staff, everybody. Thank you so much. This was so awesome. And I'll shut up now. Yeah, I think, uh, you, you know, it's funny, somebody, I saw somebody when Leppin was going, I think somebody goes, oh, Leppin, that's the Twitter guy. So if you want to follow him on Twitter, it's <laughs> Leppin DK. I always see his tweets in my for you, so <laughs> I'm going to follow his Twitter, too. Uh, I, had to, I had to double check. I was like, wait, is it Leppin or Leppin DK? I was like, no, DK on Twitter. So there you go. Yeah, no, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's very... I don't know. This, is, this has been great, man. So thank you guys for watching, man. Uh, viewers, I'm, I hope you guys enjoyed this. This was, uh, uh, I'm kind of like, uh, like <laughs> <laughs> this, this has been like, this whole thing has just been like, a, like it's just been on my mind since, and before we started even, because obviously we're organizing it and everything. And we got, we got BlizzCon, BlizzCon coming up and I'm so like I, I think I think we all want it so bad, man. This Classic Plus, you, you, like we're all so passionate about Classic WoW, and and uh, I'm, I'm I, I just hope that we get. I don't I know it's not gonna happen, but like I <laughs> like, like it's just, every time somebody talks about it, it's like a it's like a progress bar, and like I'm just please like you know like uh, so we'll see we'll see what happens at BlizzCon. We know there's gonna be some classic news, but what it is, I don't know, man. I mean, we're we're just. We all love Classic WoW. We we want Classic WoW to get the the respect it deserves, and uh, it's been super cool to see that it's it's getting that. So I'm I'm really really appreciative of everybody who's watching the stream and um and and supportive of everything that we're doing. I mean we're always just trying to do our best, and and sometimes our best is uh, sometimes our best is good, and sometimes our best is really good. So. And sometimes our best isn't so good. So <laughs> <laughs> that's how it goes, man. That's <laughs> just how it goes. But no matter what, we're we're always just gonna try our best here. So we really appreciate all you guys, man. And and everybody who's restreaming this, everybody's watching this. Appreciate you guys watching. I hope you guys had a good time. I hope you guys chats had a good time watching the show. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been great. Zari, do you have anything else? I want to say a final thank you to to you, as fan, for uh, one you crushed it today too for for having me on this whole event. Uh, it's just been such uh, such a great time. Uh, thank you to Tips for for having me. I've got to say this has probably been the highlight of my entire career. <laughs> like today's been great. It's been really cool. If you guys enjoy the stream, uh, just follow. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for having me. The whole OTK crew's been great. Uh, Pecky's in the background's been great. And uh, all the staff, the admins, the volunteers, and the players 100%. and the viewers. So uh, thank you guys for having me. 100%. Dude, yeah, they, uh, thanks, thanks for coming, man. You, you absolutely killed it. I mean, I, I keep telling you this, but you, you absolutely killed it as a play by play guy. Uh, that's not my strength. Play by play is not my strength. I'm. I can I can watch something and I can de decipher it, but you're you just you got the comms, dude. You got the rank one comms, man. Like it's it's you're you're so good at it. So uh, I'm really appreciative of you uh, of you coming on and, and being our play by play guy, dude. Thanks for having me.
<laughs> yeah. Well, so, great. Uh, I think. Uh, do we do we have anything else? I think. I think. Uh, I think that's it for the the tournament. I mean, I was just kind of like, like I said, I kind of feel like a weight's lifted off my chest. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll stick around. I'll, I'll hang out for a little bit tonight. This went a little bit longer mm. than I expected. I do got to get ready to go to 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 go to BlizzCon. So uh, I'm not going to be around for too much longer. But um, yeah, we gotta we gotta do some BlizzCon prep. I gotta I gotta get my my stuff situated for it. But. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed the stream. I hope everybody enjoyed the show. That is uh, that is it for the show. So if you guys want to stick around and hang out, uh, you're more than welcome to. Uh, if not, we'll uh, we'll catch you guys next time. So thank you guys so much for watching the OTK Starforge Hardcore Mock Garage Tournament. Huge shout out to everybody involved. We'll see you guys next time.